Forward the National Curriculum Framework NCF 2005 recommends that children's life at school must be linked to their life outside the school. This principle marks a departure from the legacy of bookish learning which continues to shape our system and causes a gap between the school, home and community. The syllabi and textbooks developed on the basis of NCF signify an attempt to implement this basic idea. They also attempt to discourage road learning and the maintenance of sharp boundaries between different subject areas. We hope these measures will take us significantly further in the direction of a child-centered system of education outlined in the National Policy on Education NPE, 1986. The success of this effort depends on the steps that school principals and teachers will take to encourage children to reflect on their own learning and to pursue imaginative activities and questions. We must recognize that, given space, time and freedom, children generate new knowledge by engaging with the information passed on to them by adults. Treating the prescribed textbook as the sole basis of examination is one of the key reasons why other resources and sites of learning are ignored. Inculcating creativity and initiative is possible if we perceive and treat children as participants in learning, not as receivers of a fixed body of knowledge. These aims imply considerable change in school routines and mode of functioning. Flexibility in the daily timetable is as necessary as rigor in implementing the annual calendar so that the required number of teaching days are actually devoted to teaching. The method used for teaching and evaluation will also determine how effective this textbook proves for making children's life at school a happy experience rather than a source of stress or boredom. Syllabus designers have tried to address the problem of curricular burden by restructuring and reorienting knowledge at different stages with greater consideration for child psychology and the time available for teaching. The textbook attempts to enhance this endeavor by giving higher priority and space to opportunities for contemplation and wondering. Discussion in small groups, and activities requiring hands-on experience, the National Council of Educational Research and Training CERT appreciates the hard work done by the textbook development committee responsible for this book. We wish to thank the chairperson of the advisory group in science and mathematics, Professor J.V. Narlucker and the chief advisor for this book. Professor A.W. Joshi for guiding the work of this committee, several teachers contributed to the development of this textbook, we are grateful to their principals for making this possible. We are indebted to the institutions and organizations which have generously permitted us to draw upon their resources, material and personnel. We are especially grateful to the members of the National Monitoring Committee, appointed by the Department of Secondary and Higher Education. Ministry of Human Resource Development under the chairpersonship with Professor Rhino Mary and Professor G.P. Deshpande. For their valuable time and contribution, as an organization committed to systemic reform and continuous improvement in the quality of its products. Insert welcomes comments and suggestions which will enable us to undertake further revision and refinement. Director New Delhi National Council of Educational December 20, 2006 Research and Training 2019-2 Textbook Development Committee Chairperson, Advisory Group for Textbooks in Science and Mathematics J.V. Narlikar Emeritus Professor, Inter-University Center for Astronomy and Astrophysics IUCAA, Ganesh Kind, Pune University Campus Pune Chief Advisor A.W. Joshi, Honorary Visiting Scientist, National Center for Radio Astrophysics NCRA. Pune University Campus, Pune Formerly Professor at Department of Physics, University of Pune Members A.K. Gatuk. Emeritus Professor, Department of Physics, Indian Institute of Technology, New Delhi Alika Kara. Professor, Department of Physics, Indian Institute of Technology, Guwati Angelique Shersagar, Reader. Department of Physics, University of Pune, Pune Anuradha Mathur, PGT, Modern School, Vasant Theater. New Delhi Atul Modi, Lecturer SG, Viz College of Arts, Science and Commerce, Mumbai BK Sharma. Professor, Desam, Insert, New Delhi Chitra Goal, PGT, Rajkaya Pratibha Vikas Vidyalaya, Tyagrajnagar. New Delhi Gagan Gupta, Reader, Desam, Insert, New Delhi HC Pradhan, Professor, Homi Babha Center of Science Education TIFR. Mumbai and Panchapakasan, Professor Rett, Department of Physics and Astrophysics, University of Delhi. Delhi R. Joshi, Lecturer SG, Desam, Insert, New Delhi SK- Reader, Desam, Insert, New Delhi S. Rai Chowdhury. Professor, Department of Physics and Astrophysics, University of Delhi, Delhi SK Apadhyay, PGT, General Hernavadaya Vidyalaya. Musafar Nagar S. N. Prabhakara, PGT, DM School, Regional Institute of Education CERT, Mysore V. H. Ray Badkar. Reader, Norris G. Wadia College, 
Pune Vishwajiko Karni, Teacher Grade I, Higher Secondary Section, SMT. Parvata Bay Chowgil College, Margao, Go Member Coordinator VP Srivastava, Reader, Desim, Insert. New Delhi. Constitution of India Fundamental duties It shall be the duty of every citizen of India to abide by the Constitution and respect its ideals and institutions. The national flag and the national anthem, be to cherish and follow the noble ideals which inspired our national struggle for freedom, see to uphold and protect the sovereignty. Unity and integrity of India, D to defend the country and render national service when called upon to do so, E to promote harmony and the spirit of common brotherhood amongst all the people of India transcending religious, linguistic and regional or sectional diversities, to renounce practices derogatory to the dignity of women, F to value and preserve the rich heritage of our composite culture, G to protect and improve the natural environment including forests, lakes, rivers, wildlife and to have compassion for living creatures, H to develop the scientific temper, humanism and the spirit of inquiry and reform, I to safeguard public property and to abjure violence, J to strive towards excellence in all spheres of individual and collective activity so that the nation constantly rises to higher levels of endeavor and achievement, K who is a parent or guardian, to provide opportunities for education to his child or, as the case may be, ward between the age of 6 and 14 years. Note, the Article 51A containing fundamental duties was inserted by the Constitution 42nd Amendment Act, 1976 with effect from January 3, 1977. K was inserted by the Constitution 86th Amendment Act, 2002 with effect from April 1, 2010. Part 4A Article 51A Acknowledgements The National Council of Educational Research and Training acknowledges the valuable contribution of the individuals and organizations involved in the development of physics textbook for Class 12. The Council also acknowledges the valuable contribution of the following academics for reviewing and refining the manuscripts of this book, Anuva Nurgopalan. Lecturer, School of Basic and Applied Sciences, GGSIP University, Delhi, A.K. DOS, PGT, St. Xavier Senior Secondary School. Delhi, Bharti Kukul, PGT, Kindraya Vidyalaya, Pashtthihar, New Delhi, D.A. Desai, Lecturer at Ruparal College, Mumbai, Devendra Kumar, PGT. Rajkiya Pratibha Vikas Vidyalaya, Yamuna Vihar, Delhi, I.K. Gurja. PGT, Kindraya Vidyalaya, Gold Market, New Delhi, K.C. Sharma, Reader, Regional Institute of Education CERT. Ajmer, M.K. Nandi, Associate Professor, Department of Physics, Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati, M.N. Bapat. Reader, Regional Institute of Education CERT, Majuru, R. Bhattacharji, Assistant Professor, Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering. Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati, R.S. Das, Vice Principal Reth, Balwant Ramada Senior Secondary School. Lajpat Nagar, New Delhi, Sangeeta Gikadar, Reader, Kirori Mal College, Delhi, Suresh Kumar, PGT, Delhi Public School. Dwarka, New Delhi, Sushma Jareth, Reader, Department of Women's Studies, Insert, New Delhi, Shyam Rath, Reader, Department of Physics and Astrophysics, University of Delhi, Delhi, Yashu Kumar, PGT. Kulachi Hans Raj Model School, Ashok Vihar, Delhi. The Council also gratefully acknowledges the valuable contribution of the following academics for the editing and finalization of this book, B.B. Triparty. Professor Rett, Department of Physics, Indian Institute of Technology, New Delhi, Dipin K. Gosh. Professor, Department of Physics, Indian Institute of Technology, Mumbai, Dipanjan Mitra, Scientist. National Center for Radio Astrophysics TIFR. Pune, G.K. Mehta, Raj Aramana Fellow, Inter-University Accelerator Center. New Delhi, G.S. Viswaswaran, Professor, Department of Electrical Engineering, Indian Institute of Technology. New Delhi, H.C. Canville, Head, Optical Radiation Standards, National Physical Laboratory, New Delhi, H.S. Mani. Raj Aramana Fellow, Institute of Mathematical Sciences, Chennai, K. Thyagarajan, Professor, Department of Physics. Indian Institute of Technology, New Delhi, P. C. Kumar, Professor, Department of Physics, Sardar Patel University. Vallabh Vidyanagar, Gujarat, S. Anapurni, Professor, Department of Physics and Astrophysics, University of Delhi. Delhi, S. C. Dutta Roy, Emeritus Professor, Department of Electrical Engineering, Indian Institute of Technology. New Delhi, S. D. Joglikar, Professor, Department of Physics, Indian Institute of Technology, Kanpur, and V. Sundara Raja. Professor, Sri Venkateshwara University, Tirupati, the Council also acknowledges the valuable contributions of the following academics for refining the text in 2017, A.K. Sri Vastrava. 
Assistant Professor, Desim, Nsert, New Delhi, Arnab Sen, Assistant Professor, Neri, Shilong, L.S. Chauhan. Assistant Professor, Re, Bhopal, O. Anawasti, Professor Rett, Re, Bhopal, Rajnagarg, Professor. Desim, Nsert, New Delhi, Raman Nambuduri, Assistant Professor, Re, Majuro, R. R. Quarang, Assistant Professor. DCS, Nsert, New Delhi, Shashi Prabha, Professor, Desim, Nsert, New Delhi, and S. V. Sharma, Professor, Re, Ajmer. Special thanks are due to Hukam Singh, Professor and Head, Desim, Nsert for his support. The Council also acknowledges the support provided by the APC office and the administrative staff of the Desim, Deepak Kapoor, in charge, Computer Station, Inder Kumar, DTP Operator, Mode. Kamar Tibrez, Copy Editor, Ashima Srivastava, Proofreader in shaping this book. The contributions of the Publication Department in bringing out this book are also duly acknowledged. Constitution of India Part 3 Articles 1235 Subject to certain conditions, some exceptions and reasonable restrictions guarantees these fundamental rights right to equality, before law and equal protection of laws, irrespective of religion, race, caste, sex or place of birth, of opportunity in public employment, by abolition of untouchability and titles, right to freedom, of expression, assembly, association, movement, Residence and profession, of certain protections in respect of conviction for offenses, of protection of life and personal liberty, of free and compulsory education for children between the age of 6 and 14 years, comma of protection against arrest and detention in certain cases. Right against exploitation, for prohibition of traffic in human beings and forced labor, for prohibition of employment of children in hazardous jobs. Right to freedom of religion, freedom of conscience and free profession. Practice and propagation of religion. Freedom to manage religious affairs, freedom as to payment of taxes for promotion of any particular religion, comma freedom as to attendance at religious instruction or religious worship in educational institutions wholly maintained by the state. Cultural and educational rights, for protection of interests of minorities to conserve their language. Script and culture, for minorities to establish and administer educational institutions of their choice. Right to constitutional remedies, by issuance of directions or orders or writs by the Supreme Court and High Courts for enforcement of these fundamental rights. Preface It gives me pleasure to place this book in the hands of the students, teachers and the public at large whose role cannot be overlooked. It is a natural sequel to the Class Sci textbook which was brought out in 2006. This book is also a trimmed version of the textbooks which existed so far. The chapter on thermal and chemical effects of current has been cut out. This topic has also been dropped from the CBSE syllabus. Similarly, the chapter on communications has been substantially curtailed. It has been rewritten in an easily comprehensible form. Although most other chapters have been based on the earlier versions, several parts and sections in them have been rewritten. The development team has been guided by the feedback received from innumerable teachers across the country. In producing these books, Class Sci as well as Class 12, there has been a basic change of emphasis. Both the books present physics to students without assuming that they would pursue this subject beyond their higher secondary level. This new view has been prompted by the various observations and suggestions made in the National Curriculum Framework NCF, 2005. Similarly, in today's educational scenario where students can opt for various combinations of subjects, we cannot assume that a physics student is also studying mathematics. Therefore, physics has to be presented, so to say, in a standalone form, as in class sci textbook. Some interesting box items have been inserted in many chapters. They are not meant for teaching or examinations, their purpose is to catch the attention of the reader. To show some applications in daily life or in other areas of science and technology, to suggest a simple experiment, to show connection of concepts in different areas of physics, and in general, to break the monotony and enliven the book. Features like summary, points to ponder, exercises and additional exercises at the end of each chapter, and examples have been retained. Several concept-based exercises have been transferred from end-of-chapter exercises to examples with solutions in the text. It is hoped that this will make the concepts discussed in the chapter more comprehensible. Several new examples and exercises have been added. Students wishing to pursue physics further would find points to ponder and additional exercises very useful and thoughtful. To provide resources beyond the textbook and to encourage learning, each chapter has been provided with some relevant website addresses under the title of Physics. These sites provide additional material on specific topics and also provide learners with the Porture Nights for interactive demonstrations experiments. The intricate concepts of physics must be understood, comprehended and appreciated. Students must learn to ask questions like why, how, how do we know it? 
they will find almost always that the question why has no answer within the domain of physics and science in general. But that itself is a learning experience, is it not on the other hand, the question how has been reasonably well answered by physicists in the case of most natural phenomena. In fact, with the understanding of how things happen, it has been possible to make use of many phenomena to create technological applications for the use of humans. For example, consider statements in a book, like a negatively charged electron is attracted by the positively charged plate, or in this experiment, lighter electron behaves like a wave. You'll realize that it is not possible to answer why, this question belongs to the domain of philosophy or metaphysics. But we can answer how, we can find the force acting, we can find the wavelength of the photon or electron, we can determine how things behave under different conditions, and we can develop instruments which will use these phenomena to our advantage. It has been a pleasure to work for these books at the higher secondary level, along with a team of members. The textbook development team, review team and editing teams involved college and university teachers. Teachers from Indian Institutes of Technology, scientists from national institutes and laboratories, as well as, higher secondary teachers. The feedback and critical look provided by higher secondary teachers in the various teams are highly laudable. Most box items were generated by members of one or the other team, but three of them were generated by friends and well-wishers not part of any team. We are thankful to DRPN Sen of Pune, Professor Roop Mandri Ghosh of Delhi and Dr. Rajesh B. Kapur of Mumbai for allowing us to use their box items, respectively, in Chapters 3, 4 Part 1 and 9 Part 2. We are thankful to the members of the review and editing workshops to discuss and refine the first draft of the textbook. We also express our gratitude to Professor Krishna Kumar, Director, Insert, for entrusting us with the task of presenting this textbook as a part of the national effort for improving science education. I also thank Professor G. Ravindra, Joint Director, Insert, for his help from time to time, Professor Hukam Singh, Head, Department of Education in Science and Mathematics, Insert, was always willing to help us in our endeavor in every possible way. We welcome suggestions and comments from our valued users, especially students and teachers. We wish our young readers a happy journey into the exciting realm of physics. A.W. Joshi Chief Advisor Textbook Development Committee 12 Chapter 1 Electric Charges and Fields 1.1 Introduction All of us have the experience of seeing a spark or hearing a crackle when we take off our synthetic clothes or sweater. Particularly in dry weather, this is almost inevitable with ladies' garments like a polyester sari. Have you ever tried to find any explanation for this phenomenon? Another common example of electric discharge is the lightning that we see in the sky during thunderstorms. We also experience a sensation of an electric shock either while opening the door of a car or holding the iron bar of a bus after sliding from our seat. The reason for these experiences is discharge of electric charges through our body, which were accumulated due to rubbing of insulating surfaces. You might have also heard that this is due to generation of static electricity. This is precisely the topic we are going to discuss in this in the next chapter. Static means anything that does not move or change with time. Electrostatics deals with the study of forces, fields and potentials arising from static charges. 1.2 Electric charge Historically the credit of discovery of the fact that amber rubbed with wool or silk cloth attracts light objects goes to Thales of Miletus. Greece, around 600 BC The name electricity is coined from the Greek word electron meaning amber. Many such pairs of materials were known which two physics on rubbing could attract light objects like straw, pith balls and bits of papers. You can perform the following activity at home to experience such an effect. Cut out long thin strips of white paper and lightly iron them. Take them near a TV screen or computer monitor. You will see that the strips get attracted to the screen. In fact they remain stuck to the screen for a while. It was observed that if two glass rods rubbed with wool or silk cloth are brought close to each other, they repel each other fig. 1.1 A, the two strands of wool or two pieces of silk cloth, with which the rods were rubbed, also repel each other. However, the glass rod and wool attracted each other. Similarly, two plastic rods rubbed with cats for repelled each other fig. 1.1 B but attracted the fur on the other hand, the plastic rod attracts the glass rod figure 1.1 C and repel the silk or wool with which the glass rod is rubbed. The glass rod repels the fur if a plastic rod rubbed with fur is made to touch two small pith balls. Nowadays we can use polystyrene balls suspended by silk or nylon thread, then the balls repel each other fig. 1.1 D and are also repelled by the rod. A similar effect is found if the pith balls are touched with a glass rod rubbed with silk fig. 1.1 E. A dramatic observation is that a pith ball touched with glass rod attracts another pith ball touched with plastic rod fig. 1.1 F. These seemingly simple facts were established from years of efforts and careful experiments in their analyses. 
It was concluded, after many careful studies by different scientists, that there were only two kinds of an entity which is called the electric charge. We say that the bodies like glass or plastic rods, silk, fur and pith balls are electrified, they acquire an electric charge on rubbing. The experiments on pith balls suggested that there are two kinds of electrification and we find that I like charges repel and two unlike charges attract each other. The experiments also demonstrated that the charges are transferred from the rods to the pith balls on contact. It is said that the pith balls are electrified or are charged by contact. The property which differentiates the two kinds of charges is called the polarity of charge. When a glass rod is rubbed with silk, the rod acquires one kind of charge and the silk acquires the second kind of charge. This is true for any pair of objects that are rubbed to be electrified. Now if the electrified glass rod is brought in contact with silk, with which it was rubbed, they no longer attract each other. They also do not attract or repel other light objects as they did on being electrified. Thus, the charges acquired after rubbing are lost when the charged bodies are brought in contact. What can you conclude from these observations? It just tells us that unlike charges acquired by the objects figure 1.1 rods and pith balls, like charges repel and unlike charges attract each other. Interactive animation on simple electrostatic experiments, HTTP, DamaoabPhysicsUkla.edu Content 100 Simple Electrostatic Experiments Electric charges and fields 3 neutralize or nullify each other's effect, therefore, the charges were named as positive and negative by the American scientist Benjamin Franklin. We know that when we add a positive number to a negative number of the same magnitude, the sum is zero. This might have been the philosophy in naming the charges as positive and negative. By convention, the charge on glass rod or cat's fur is called positive and that on plastic rod or silk is termed negative. If an object possesses an electric charge, it is said to be electrified or charged. When it has no charge it is said to be electrically neutral. Unification of electricity and magnetism In olden days, electricity and magnetism were treated as separate subjects. Electricity dealt with charges on glass rods, cat's fur, batteries, lightning, etc., while magnetism described interactions of magnets, iron filings, compass needles, etc. In 1820 Danish scientist Ersted found that a compass needle is deflected by passing an electric current through a wire placed near the needle. Ampere and Faraday supported this observation by saying that electric charges and motion produce magnetic fields and moving magnets generate electricity. The unification was achieved when the Scottish physicist Maxwell and the Dutch physicist Lawrence put forward a theory where they showed the interdependence of these two subjects. This field is called electromagnetism. Most of the phenomena occurring around us can be described under electromagnetism. Virtually every force that we can think of like friction, chemical force between atoms holding the matter together, and even the forces describing processes occurring in cells of living organisms, have its origin in electromagnetic force. Electromagnetic force is one of the fundamental forces of nature. Maxwell put forth four equations that play the same role in classical electromagnetism as Newton's equations of motion and gravitation law play in mechanics. He also argued that light is electromagnetic in nature and its speed can be found by making purely electric and magnetic measurements. He claimed that the science of optics is intimately related to that of electricity and magnetism. The science of electricity and magnetism is the foundation for the modern technological civilization. Electric power, telecommunication, radio and television, and a wide variety of the practical appliances used in daily life are based on the principles of this science. Although charged particles in motion exert both electric and magnetic forces, in the frame of reference where all the charges are at rest, the forces are purely electrical. You know that gravitational force is a long-range force. Its effect is felt even when the distance between the interacting particles is very large because the force decreases inversely as the square of the distance between the interacting bodies. We will learn in this chapter that electric force is also as pervasive and is in fact stronger than the gravitational force by several orders of magnitude refer to chapter 1 of class Psi physics textbook. A simple apparatus to detect charge on a body is the gold leaf electroscope figure 1.2a. It consists of a vertical metal rod housed in a box, with two thin gold leaves attached to its bottom end. When a charged object touches the metal knob at the top of the rod, charge flows onto the leaves and they diverge. The degree of divergence is an indicator of the amount of charge. Four physics students can make a simple electroscope as follows figure 1.2b, take a thin aluminium curtain rod with ball ends fitted for hanging the curtain. Cut out a piece of length about 20 centimeters with the ball at one end and flatten the cut end. Take a large bottle that can hold this rod and a cork which will fit in the opening of the bottle. Make a hole in the cork sufficient to hold the curtain rod snugly. Slide the rod through the hole in the cork with the cut end on the lower side and ball end projecting above the cork. 
Fold a small, thin aluminium foil about 6 cm in length in the middle and attach it to the flattened end of the rod by cellulose tape. This forms the leaves of your electroscope. Fit the cork in the bottle with about 5 cm of the ball end projecting above the cork. A paper scale may be put inside the bottle in advance to measure the separation of leaves. The separation is the rough measure of the amount of charge on the electroscope. To understand how the electroscope works, use the white paper strips we use for seeing the attraction of charged bodies. Fold the strips into half so that you make a mark of fold. Open the strip and iron it lightly with the mountain fold up, as shown in Fig. 1.3. Hold the strip by pinching it at the fold. You would notice that the two halves move apart. This shows that the strip has acquired charge on ironing. When you fold it into half, both the halves have the same charge, hence they repel each other. The same effect is seen in the leaf electroscope. On charging the curtain rod by touching the ball end with an electrified body, charge is transferred to the curtain rod in the attached aluminium foil. Both the halves of the foil get similar charge and therefore repel each other. The divergence in the leaves depends on the amount of charge on them. Let us first try to understand why material bodies acquire charge. You know that all matter is made up of atoms and or molecules. Although normally the materials are electrically neutral, they do contain charges, but their charges are exactly balanced. Forces that hold the molecules together, forces that hold atoms together in a solid, the adhesive force of glue, forces associated with surface tension, all are basically electrical in nature, arising from the forces between charged particles. Thus the electric force is all pervasive and it encompasses almost each and every field associated with our life. It is therefore essential that we learn more about such a force. To electrify a neutral body, we need to add or remove one kind of charge. When we say that a body is charged, we always refer to this excess charge or deficit of charge. In solids, some of the electrons, being less tightly bound in the atom, are the charges which are transferred from one body to the other. A body can thus be charged positively by losing some of its electrons. Similarly, a body can be charged negatively. Figure 1.2 electroscopes, or the gold leaf electroscope. B schematics of a simple electroscope. Figure 1.3 Paper Strip Experiment Electric charges and fields 5 by gaining electrons. When we rub a glass rod with silk, some of the electrons from the rod are transferred to the silk cloth. Thus the rod gets positively charged and the silk gets negatively charged. No new charge is created in the process of rubbing. Also the number of electrons that are transferred is a very small fraction of the total number of electrons in the material body. Also only the less tightly bound electrons in a material body can be transferred from it to another by rubbing. Therefore, when a body is rubbed with another, the bodies get charged and that is why we have to stick to certain pairs of materials to notice charging on rubbing the bodies. 1.3 Conductors and Insulators A metal rod held in hand and rubbed with wool will not show any sign of being charged. However, if a metal rod with a wooden or plastic handle is rubbed without touching its metal part, it shows signs of charging. Suppose we connect one end of a copper wire to a neutral pith ball and the other end to a negatively charged plastic rod. We will find that the pith ball acquires a negative charge. If a similar experiment is repeated with a nylon thread or a rubber band, no transfer of charge will take place from the plastic rod to the pith ball. Why does the transfer of charge not take place from the rod to the ball? Some substances readily allow passage of electricity through them, others do not. Those which allow electricity to pass through them easily are called conductors. They have electric charges electrons that are comparatively free to move inside the material. Metals, human and animal bodies and earth are conductors. Most of the non-metals like glass, porcelain, plastic, nylon, would offer high resistance to the passage of electricity through them. They are called insulators. Most substances fall into one of the two classes stated above. When some charge is transferred to a conductor, it readily gets distributed over the entire surface of the conductor. In contrast, if some charge is put on an insulator, it stays at the same place. You will learn why this happens in the next chapter. This property of the materials tells you why a nylon or plastic comb gets electrified on combing dry hair or on rubbing, but a metal article like spoon does not. The charges on metal leak through our body to the ground as both are conductors of electricity, when we bring a charged body in contact with the earth. All the excess charge on the body disappears by causing a momentary current to pass to the ground through the connecting conductor such as our body. This process of sharing the charges with the earth is called grounding or earthing. Earthing provides a safety measure for electrical circuits and appliances. A thick metal plate is buried deep into the earth and thick wires are drawn from this plate. These are used in buildings for the purpose of earthing near the main supply. The electric wiring in our houses has three wires, live, neutral and earth. The first two carry there is a third category called semiconductors, which offer resistance to the movement of charges which is intermediate between the conductors and insulators.
six physics electric current from the power station and the third is earthed by connecting it to the buried metal plate. Metallic bodies of the electric appliances such as electric iron, refrigerator, TV are connected to the earth wire. When any fault occurs or live wire touches the metallic body, the charge flows to the earth without damaging the appliance and without causing any injury to the humans. This would have otherwise been unavoidable since the human body is a conductor of electricity. 1.4 Charging by induction When we touch a pith ball with an electrified plastic rod, some of the negative charges on the rod are transferred to the pith ball and it also gets charged. Thus the pith ball is charged by contact. It is then repelled by the plastic rod but is attracted by a glass rod which is oppositely charged. However, why electrified rod attracts light objects, is a question we have still left unanswered. Let us try to understand what could be happening by performing the following experiment. I bring two metal spheres, A and B, supported on insulating stands, in contact as shown in Fig. 1.4 to bring a positively charged rod near one of the spheres, say A, taking care that it does not touch the sphere. The free electrons in the spheres are attracted towards the rod. This leaves an excess of positive charge on the rear surface of sphere B. Both kinds of charges are bound in the metal spheres and cannot escape. They, therefore, reside on the surfaces. As shown in figure 1.4b, the left surface of sphere A has an excess of negative charge and the right surface of sphere B has an excess of positive charge. However, not all of the electrons in the spheres have accumulated on the left surface of A as the negative charge starts building up at the left surface of A. Other electrons are repelled by these. In a short time, equilibrium is reached under the action of force of attraction of the rod and the force of repulsion due to the accumulated charges. Figure 1.4b shows the equilibrium situation. The process is called induction of charge and happens almost instantly. The accumulated charges remain on the surface, as shown, till the glass rod is held near the sphere. If the rod is removed, the charges are not acted by any outside force and they redistribute to their original neutral state. Three separate the spheres by a small distance while the glass rod is still held near sphere A, as shown in Fig. 1.4c, the two spheres are found to be oppositely charged and attract each other I've removed the rod. The charges on spheres rearrange themselves as shown in figure 1.4d, now, separate the spheres quite apart. The charges on them get uniformly distributed over them, as shown in figure 1.4e. In this process, the metal spheres will each be equal and oppositely charged. This is charging by induction. The positively charged glass rod does not lose any of its charge, contrary to the process of charging by contact. When electrified rods are brought near light objects, a similar effect takes place. The rods induce opposite charges on the near surfaces of the objects and similar charges move to the farther side of the object. Figure 1.4 Charging by Induction Electric charges and field 7 Example 1.1 This happens even when the light object is not a conductor. The mechanism for how this happens is explained later in sections 1.10 and 2.10. The centers of the two types of charges are slightly separated. We know that opposite charges attract while similar charges repel. However, the magnitude of force depends on the distance between the charges and in this case the force of attraction overweighs the force of repulsion. As a result the particles like bits of paper or pith balls, being light, are pulled towards the rods. Example 1.1 How can you charge a metal sphere positively without touching its solution? Figure 1.5 shows an uncharged metallic sphere on an insulating metal stand. Bring a negatively charged rod close to the metallic sphere, as shown in Figure 1.5b. As the rod is brought close to the sphere, the free electrons in the sphere move away due to repulsion and start piling up at the farther end. The near end becomes positively charged due to deficit of electrons. This process of charge distribution stops when the net force on the free electrons inside the metal is zero. Connect the sphere to the ground by a conducting wire. The electrons will flow to the ground while the positive charges at the near end will remain held there due to the attractive force of the negative charges on the rod, as shown in Fig. 1.5c. Disconnect the sphere from the ground. The positive charge continues to be held at the near end Fig. 1.5d. Remove the electrified rod. The positive charge will spread uniformly over the sphere as shown in Fig. 1.5e. Figure 1.5 In this experiment, the metal sphere gets charged by the process of induction and the rod does not lose any of its charge. Similar steps are involved in charging a metal sphere negatively by induction, by bringing a positively charged rod near it. In this case the electrons will flow from the ground to the sphere when the sphere is connected to the ground with a wire. Can you explain why interactive animation on charging a two-sphere system by induction? www.
dot physics classroom dot com media statics it's cfm 8 physics 1.5 basic properties of electric charge we have seen that there are two types of charges namely positive and negative and their effects tend to cancel each other here we shall now describe some other properties of the electric charge if the sizes of charged bodies are very small as compared to the distances between them we treat them as point charges all the charge content of a body is assumed to be concentrated at one point in space one five one additivity of charges we have not as yet given a quantitative definition of a charge we shall follow it up in the next section we shall tentatively assume that this can be done and proceed if a system contains two point charges q1 and q2 the total charge of the system is obtained simply by adding algebraically q1 and q2 that is charges add up like real numbers or they are scalars like the mass of a body if a system contains n charges q1 q2 q3 qn then the total charge of the system is q1 q2 q3 qn charge has magnitude but no direction similar to mass however there is one difference between mass and charge Mass of a body is always positive whereas a charge can be either positive or negative. Proper signs have to be used while adding the charges in a system. For example, the total charge of a system containing 5 charges 1, 2, minus 3, 4 and minus 5, in some arbitrary unit, is 1, 2, minus 3, 4, minus 5, minus 1 in the same unit. 1, 5, 2 charges conserved we have already hinted to the fact that when bodies are charged by rubbing, there is transfer of electrons from one body to the other, no new charges are either created or destroyed. A picture of particles of electric charge enables us to understand the idea of conservation of charge. When we rub two bodies, what one body gains in charge the other body loses, within an isolated system consisting of many charged bodies. Due to interactions among the bodies, charges may get redistributed but it is found that the total charge of the isolated system is always conserved. Conservation of charge has been established experimentally. It is not possible to create or destroy net charge carried by any isolated system although the charge carrying particles may be created or destroyed in a process. Sometimes nature creates charged particles. A neutron turns into a proton and an electron. The proton and electron thus created have equal and opposite charges and the total charge is zero before and after the creation. 1. 5. 3. Quantization of charge Experimentally it is established that all free charges are integral multiples of a basic unit of charge denoted by E. Thus charge Q on a body is always given by Q net. Electric charges and fields 9 where N is any integer, positive or negative. This basic unit of charge is the charge that an electron or proton carries. By convention, the charge on an electron is taken to be negative, therefore charge on an electron is written as E and that on a proton is E. The fact that electric charge is always an integral multiple of E is termed as quantization of charge. There are a large number of situations in physics where certain physical quantities are quantized. The quantization of charge was first suggested by the experimental laws of electrolysis discovered by English experimentalist Faraday. It was experimentally demonstrated by Millikan in 1912, in the International System SI of Units. A unit of charge is called a coulomb and is denoted by the symbol C. A coulomb is defined in terms of the unit of the electric current which you are going to learn in a subsequent chapter. In terms of this definition, one coulomb is the charge flowing through a wire in 1s if the current is 1A ampere. See Chapter 2 of Class I, Physics Textbook, Part 1. In this system, the value of the basic unit of charge is E1.602192x10-19c thus. There are about 6x1018 electrons in a charge of minus 1c, in electrostatics. Charges of this large magnitude are seldom encountered and hence we use smaller units 1 micric microcoulomb 10-6c or 1 mc millicoulomb 10-3c. If the protons and electrons are the only basic charges in the universe, all the observable charges have to be integral multiples of E. Thus, if a body contains n1 electrons and n2 protons, the total amount of charge on the body is n2xcn1xcn2n1e. Since n1 and n2 are integers, their difference is also an integer. Thus the charge on any body is always an integral multiple of e and can be increased or decreased also in steps of e. The step size e is, however, very small because at the macroscopic level, we deal with charges of a few microns. At this scale the fact that charge of a body can increase or decrease in units of e is not visible. In this respect, the grainy nature of the charge is lost and it appears to be continuous. This situation can be compared with the geometrical concepts of points and lines. A dotted line viewed from a distance appears continuous to us but is not continuous in reality, as many points very close to each other normally give an impression of a continuous line. Many small charges taken together appear as a continuous charge distribution. At the macroscopic level, one deals with charges that are enormous compared to the magnitude of charge E. 
since e 1.6 x 10-19 c, a charge of magnitude, say 1 micric, contains something like 1013 times the electronic charge. At this scale, the fact that charge can increase or decrease only in units of E is not very different from saying that charge can take continuous values. Thus, at the macroscopic level, the quantization of charge has no practical consequence and can be ignored. However, at the microscopic level, where the charges involved are of the order of a few tens or hundreds of E, that is, they can be counted, they appear in discrete lumps and 10 physics example 1.3 example 1.2 quantization of charge cannot be ignored, it is the magnitude of scale involved that is very important. Example 1.2 if 109 electrons move out of a body to another body every second, how much time is required to get a total charge of 1 C on the other body solution in 1 second 109 electrons move out of the body. Therefore the charge given out in 1 second is 1.6 x 10-19 x 109 c 1.6 x 10-10 c The time required to accumulate a charge of 1 c can then be estimated to be 1 c percent 1.6 x 10-10 c s 6.25 x 109 s 6.25 x 109 percent 365 x 24 x 3600 years 198 years. Thus to collect a charge of 1 coulomb. From a body from which 109 electrons move out every second, we will need approximately 200 years. One coulomb is, therefore, a very large unit for many practical purposes. It is, however, also important to know what is roughly the number of electrons contained in a piece of one cubic centimeter of a material. A cubic piece of copper of side 1 cm contains about 2.5 x 1024 electrons. Example 1.3 How much positive and negative charge is there in a cup of water solution? Let us assume that the mass of one cup of water is 250 grams. The molecular mass of water is 18 grams. Thus, 1 mo 6.02 x 1023 molecules of water is 18 grams. Therefore the number of molecules in one cup of water is 250 18 x 6.02 x 1023. Each molecule of water contains two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, that is, 10 electrons and 10 protons. Hence the total positive and total negative charge has the same magnitude, it is equal to 250 18x 6.02x 1023x 10x 1.6x 10-19c 1.34x 107c. 1.6 Coulomb's Law Coulomb's Law is a quantitative statement about the force between two-point charges. When the linear size of charged bodies are much smaller than the distance separating them, the size may be ignored and the charged bodies are treated as point charges. Coulomb measured the force between two point charges and found that it varied inversely as the square of the distance between the charges and was directly proportional to the product of the magnitude of the two charges and acted along the line, joining the two charges. Thus, if two point charges Q1, Q2 are separated by a distance R in vacuum, the magnitude of the force F between them is given by 21 to QQFKR 1.1. How did Coulomb arrive at this law from his experiments? Coulomb used a torsion balance for measuring the force between two charged metallic. A torsion balance is a sensitive device to measure force. It was also used later by Cavendish to measure the very feeble gravitational force between two objects, to verify Newton's law of gravitation. Electric charges and fields 11 spheres. When the separation between two spheres is much larger than the radius of each sphere, the charged spheres may be regarded as point charges. However, the charges on the spheres were unknown. To begin with, how then could E discover a relation like E? 1.1 Coulomb thought of the following simple way. Suppose the charge on a metallic sphere is Q. If the sphere is put in contact with an identical uncharged sphere, the charge will spread over the two spheres. By symmetry, the charge on each sphere will be Q2. Repeating this process, we can get charges Q2, Q4, etc. Coulomb varied the distance for a fixed pair of charges and measured the force for different separations. He then varied the charges in pairs, keeping the distance fixed for each pair, comparing forces for different pairs of charges at different distances. Coulomb arrived at the relation, ek. 1.1, Coulomb's Law, a simple mathematical statement, was initially experimentally arrived at in the manner described above. While the original experiments established it at a macroscopic scale, it has also been established down to subatomic level R10-10 meters. Coulomb discovered his law without knowing the explicit magnitude of the charge. In fact, it is the other way round. Coulomb's law can now be employed to furnish a definition for a unit of charge. In the relation, ek 1.1, k is so far arbitrary, we can choose any positive value of k. The choice of k determines the size of the unit of charge. In SI units, the value of K is about 9x10922 nmc. The unit of charge that results from this choice is called a coulomb which we defined earlier in section 1.4.
Putting this value of k in x 1.1, we see that for q1 q2 1c, r1 meters f9 x 109 n that is. 1c is the charge that when placed at a distance of 1 meters from another charge of the same magnitude in vacuum experiences an electrical force of repulsion of magnitude 9 x 109 n. 1 coulomb is evidently too big a unit to be used. In practice, in electrostatics, one uses smaller units like 1 mc or 1 microok. The constant k in x 1.1 is usually put as k140 for later convenience. So that Coulomb's law is written as 012214 QQF or Greek letter pi 1.2 Greek letter epsilon 0 is called the permittivity of free space. The value of Greek letter epsilon 0 in SI units is 0 Greek letter epsilon 8.854x10-12 C2 and 1 M2 implicit in this is the assumption of additivity of charges and conservation, two charges Q to each add up to make a total charge Q. Charles Augustine de Coulomb 1736-1806 Coulomb, a French physicist, began his career as a military engineer in the West Indies. In 1776, he returned to Paris and retired to a small estate to do his scientific research. He invented a torsion balance to measure the quantity of a force and used it for determination of forces of electric attraction or repulsion between small charged spheres. He thus arrived in 1785 at the inverse square law relation, now known as Coulomb's law. The law had been anticipated by Priestley and also by Cavendish earlier, though Cavendish never published his results. Coulomb also found the inverse square law of force between unlike and like magnetic poles. Charles Augustine de Coulomb 1736-1806 12. Physics since force is a vector. It is better to write Coulomb's law in the vector notation. Let the position vectors of charges Q1 and Q2 be R1 and R2 respectively see figure 1.6a. We denote force on Q1 due to Q2 by F12 and force on Q2 due to Q1 by F21. The two point charges Q1 and Q2 have been numbered 1 and 2 for convenience and the vector leading from 1 to 2 is denoted by R21, R21, R2, R1 in the same way. The vector leading from 2 to 1 is denoted by R12, R12, R1, R2, R21. The magnitude of the vectors R21 and R12 is denoted by R21 and R12, respectively R12, R21. The direction of a vector is specified by a unit vector along the vector, to denote the direction from 1 to 2 or from 2 to 1. We define the unit vectors, 21 21 21 RRR, 12 12 21 12 12, RRR RRR Coulomb's force law between two point charges Q1 and Q2 located at R1 and R2 is then expressed as 1 2, 2 1 2 1, 2, 2 1, 1, 4, OQQ Greek letter pi RF 1.3 Some remarks on X. 1.3 are relevant. Equation 1.3 is valid for any sign of Q1 and Q2 whether positive or negative. If Q1 and Q2 are of the same sign either both positive or both negative, F21 is along R21, which denotes repulsion, as it should be for like charges. If Q1 and Q2 are of opposite signs, F21 is along R21 R12, which denotes attraction, as expected for unlike charges. Thus, we do not have to write separate equations for the cases of like and unlike charges. Equation 1.3 takes care of both cases correctly fig. 1.6b, the force F12 on charge Q1 due to charge Q2, is obtained from ek 1.3, by simply interchanging 1 and 2, that is, 1 2, 1 2 1 2, 2 1 2, 0, 1 2, 1, 4, Q Q or Greek letter pi R F F thus, Coulomb's law agrees with the Newton's third law. Comma Coulomb's law at 1.3 gives the force between two charges Q1 and Q2 in vacuum. If the charges are placed in matter or the intervening space has matter, the situation gets complicated due to the presence of charged constituents of matter. We shall consider electrostatics in matter in the next chapter. Figure 1.6 A geometry and B forces between charges. Electric charges and fields 13 Example 1.4 Example 1.4 Coulomb's law for electrostatic force between two point charges and Newton's law for gravitational force between two stationary point masses. Both have inverse square dependence on the distance between the charges and masses respectively. A compare the strength of these forces by determining the ratio of their magnitudes I for an electron and a proton and two for two protons. B estimate the accelerations of electron and proton due to the electrical force of their mutual attraction when they are 1A ring 10 10 meters apart MP 1.67 x 10-27 kg. Me 9.11 x 10-31 kg solution I the electric force between an electron and a proton at a distance R apart is 22014 EEF for Greek letter pi where the negative sign indicates that the force is attractive. The corresponding gravitational force always attractive is 2 PEGMMFGR where MP and ME are the masses of a proton and an electron respectively. 
2.39.02.4104 EGPEFEFGMX Greek letter pi 2 on similar lines. The ratio of the magnitudes of electric force to the gravitational force between two protons at a distance R apart is FFEGMMEGPP2041.3 X1036 however. It may be mentioned here that the signs of the two forces are different. For two protons, the gravitational force is attractive in nature and the Coulomb force is repulsive. The actual values of these forces between two protons inside a nucleus distance between two protons is 10-15 meters inside a nucleus or Fe 230 N. Whereas, Fg 1.9 x 10-34 N the dimensionless ratio of the two forces shows that electrical forces are enormously stronger than the gravitational forces. B. The electric force F exerted by a proton on an electron is same in magnitude to the force exerted by an electron on a proton. However, the masses of an electron and a proton are different. Thus, the magnitude of force is F14022 ER8.987x109nm2c2x1.6x10-19c2 10-10m2.2.3x10-8 10 using Newton's second law of motion. F ma, the acceleration that an electron will undergo is a 2.3 x 10-8 10 9.11 x 10-31 kg 2.5 x 1022 meters s2 comparing this with the value of acceleration due to gravity. We can conclude that the effect of gravitational field is negligible on the motion of electron and it undergoes very large accelerations under the action of Coulomb force due to a proton. The value for acceleration of the proton is 2.3 x 10-8 n 1.67 x 10-27 kg 1.4 x 1019 meters s2 interactive animation on Coulomb's law, HTTP, webphysicsdavidson.edu Fislet resources Boo Semester 2 Menu Semester 2 HTML 14 Physics Example 1.5 Example 1.5 A charged metallic sphere A is suspended by a nylon thread. Another charged metallic sphere be held by an insulating handle is brought close to A such that the distance between their centers is 10 cm, as shown in Fig. 1.7A, the resulting repulsion of A is noted for example, by shining a beam of light and measuring the deflection of its shadow on a screen. Spheres A and B are touched by uncharged spheres C and D respectively, as shown in Figure 1.7B. C and D are then removed and B is brought closer to A to a distance of 5.0 cm between their centers, as shown in Fig. 1.7c, what is the expected repulsion of A on the basis of Coulomb's law spheres A and C and spheres B and D have identical sizes? Ignore the sizes of A and B in comparison to the separation between their centers. Figure 1.7 15 Example 1.5 Solution Let the original charge on sphere A be Q and that on B be Q. At a distance R between their centers, the magnitude of the electrostatic force on each is given by FQQR1402 neglecting the sizes of spheres A and B in comparison to R. When an identical but uncharged sphere C touches A, the charges redistribute on A and C and, by symmetry, each sphere carries a charge Q2. Similarly, after D touches B, the redistributed charge on each is Q2. Now, if the separation between A and B is halved, the magnitude of the electrostatic force on each is FQQRQQRF142221420 Greek letter pi pi Greek letter epsilon thus the electrostatic force on A due to B, remains unaltered 1.7 forces between multiple charges the mutual electric force between two charges is given by Coulomb's law. How to calculate the force on a charge where there are not one but several charges around consider a system of n stationary charges Q1, Q2, Q3, Qn in vacuum. What is the force on Q1 due to Q2, Q3, Qn Coulomb's law is not enough to answer this question. Recall that forces of mechanical origin at according to the parallelogram law of addition, is the same true for forces of electrostatic origin experimentally. It is verified that force on any charge due to a number of other charges is the vector sum of all the forces on the charge due to the other charges, taken one at a time. The individual forces are unaffected due to the presence of other charges, this is termed as the principle of superposition. To better understand the concept, consider a system of three charges Q1, Q2 and Q3, as shown in Fig. 1.8a, the force on one charge, say Q1, due to two other charges Q2, Q3 can therefore be obtained by performing a vector addition of the forces due to each one of these charges. Thus, if the force on Q1 due to Q2 is denoted by F12, F12 is given by at 1.3 even though other charges are present. Thus, F12 1401212212 pe QQRR in the same way, the force on Q1 due to Q3, denoted by F13, is given by FR13013321314 pe QQR figure 1.8 A system of a three charges B multiple charges. 
16 physics example 1.6 which again is the Coulomb force on Q1 due to Q3, even though other charge Q2 is present. Thus the total force F1 on Q1 due to the two charges Q2 and Q3 is given as FFFRR1 12 13 0 1 2 12 2 12 0 1 3 13 2 13 1 4 1 4 Greek letter pi pe Greek letter epsilon Q Q R Q Q R 1.4 The above calculation of force can be generalized to a system of charges more than 3, as shown in Fig. 1.8b the principle of superposition says that in a system of charges Q1, Q2, Qn, the force on Q1 due to Q2 is the same as given by Coulomb's law, that is, it is unaffected by the presence of the other charges Q3, Q4, Qn. The total force F1 on the charge Q1, due to all other charges, is then given by the vector sum of the forces F12, F13, F1N, that is, FFFFRR1 1213 1N, 1401 12 2 12 2 12 1 3 13 2 13 PEQQR QQR QQR NNN 1 1 2 1 R QQR I 2 N I 1 0 1 2 2 14 R 1.5 The vector sum is obtained as usual by the parallelogram law of addition of vectors. All of electrostatics is basically a consequence of Coulomb's law and the superposition principle. Example 1.6 Consider three charges Q1, Q2, Q3 each equal to Q at the vertices of an equilateral triangle of side L. What is the force on a charge Q with the same sign as Q placed at the centroid of the triangle, as shown in Fig. 1.9 Figure 1.9 Solution in the given equilateral triangle ABC of sides of length L, if we draw a perpendicular AD to the side BC, ADAC cos 30 masculine ordinal 3 2 L and the distance AO of the centroid O from A is 2 3 AD 1 3 L. By Symmetry AOBO Company. 17 Example 1.6 Thus. Force F1 on Q due to charge Q at A3402 QQL along AO force F2 on Q due to charge Q at B3402 QQL along BO force F3 on Q due to charge Q at C3402 QQL along CO the resultant of forces F2 and F3 is 3402 QQL along OA, by the parallelogram law. Therefore, the total force on Q3402 QQLR R0, where R is the unit vector along OA. It is clear also by symmetry that the three forces will sum to zero. Suppose that the resultant force was non-zero but in some direction. Consider what would happen if the system was rotated through 60 degrees about O. Example 1.7 Consider the charges Q, Q, and Q placed at the vertices of an equilateral triangle, as shown in figure 1.10. What is the force on each charge? Figure 1.10 Solution The force is acting on charge Q at A due to charges Q at B and Q at C are F12 along BA and F13 along AC respectively, as shown in Fig. 1.10 by the parallelogram law, the total force F1 on the charge Q at A is given by F1 F1 R where 1 R is a unit vector along BC. The force of attraction or repulsion for each pair of charges has the same magnitude FQ2024 L. The total force F2 on charge Q at B is thus F2 FR2. Where R2 is a unit vector along AC. Example 1.7 18 Physics Example 1.7 Similarly the total force on charge Q at C is F33 Fn, where N is the unit vector along the direction bisecting the BCA. It is interesting to see that the sum of the forces on the three charges is zero. That is, F1 F2 F3 0 the result is not at all surprising. It follows straight from the fact that Coulomb's law is consistent with Newton's third law. The proof is left to you as an exercise 1.8 Electric field let us consider a point charge Q placed in vacuum. At the origin O if we place another point charge Q at a point P, where O P R, then the charge Q will exert a force on Q as per Coulomb's law. We may ask the question, if charge Q is removed, then what is left in the surrounding is there nothing if there is nothing at the point P. Then how does a force act when we place the charge Q at P in order to answer such questions? The early scientists introduced the concept of field. According to this, we say that the charge Q produces an electric field everywhere in the surrounding. When another charge Q is brought at some point P, the field there acts on it and produces a force. The electric field produced by the charge Q at a point R is given as ERRR1414202 Greek letter pi pe Greek letter epsilon QRQR1.6 where RRR is a unit vector from the origin to the point R thus, EC1.6 specifies the value of the electric field for each value of the position vector R. The word field signifies how some distributed quantity which could be a scalar or a vector varies with position. The effect of the charge has been incorporated in the existence of the electric field. We obtain the force F exerted by a charge Q on a charge Q. As FR1402 QQR1.7 note that the charge Q also exerts an equal and opposite force on the charge Q. 
The electrostatic force between the charges Q and Q can be looked upon as an interaction between charge Q and the electric field of Q and vice versa. If we denote the position of charge Q by the vector R, it experiences a force F equal to the charge Q multiplied by the electric field E at the location of Q. Thus, FRQER 1.8 equation 1.8 defines the SI unit of electric field as NC. Some important remarks may be made here. I from Ac. 1.8 We can infer that if Q is unity, the electric field U to a charge Q is numerically equal to the force exerted by it. Thus, the electric field U to a charge Q at a point in space may be defined as the force that a unit positive charge would experience if placed in alternate unit VM will be introduced in the next chapter. Figure 1.11 Electric field A due to a charge Q, B due to a charge Q. Electric charges and fields 19 at that point, the charge Q, which is producing the electric field, is called a source charge and the charge Q, which tests the effect of a source charge, is called a test charge. Note that the source charge Q must remain at its original location, however, if a charge Q is brought at any point around Q, Q itself is bound to experience an electrical force due to Q and will tend to move. A way out of this difficulty is to make Q negligibly small. The force F is then negligibly small but the ratio FQ is finite and defines the electric field. EF lim Q Q 0 1.9 A practical way to get around the problem of keeping Q undisturbed in the presence of Q is to hold Q to its location by unspecified forces. This may look strange but actually this is what happens in practice. When we are considering the electric force on a test charge Q due to a charged planar sheet section 1.15. The charges on the sheet are held to their locations by the forces due to the unspecified charged constituents inside the sheet. To note that the electric field E due to Q, though defined operationally in terms of some test charge Q, is independent of Q. This is because F is proportional to Q, so the ratio FQ does not depend on Q. The force F on the charge Q due to the charge Q depends on the particular location of charge Q which may take any value in the space around the charge Q thus. The electric field E due to Q is also dependent on the space coordinate R for different positions of the charge Q all over the space. We get different values of electric field E. The field exists at every point in three-dimensional space 3 for a positive charge. The electric field will be directed radially outwards from the charge. On the other hand, if the source charge is negative, the electric field vector, at each point, points radially inwards. I've since the magnitude of the force F on charge Q due to charge Q depends only on the distance R of the charge Q from charge Q. The magnitude of the electric field E will also depend only on the distance R thus at equal distances from the charge Q, the magnitude of its electric field E is same. The magnitude of electric field E due to a point charge is the same on a sphere with the point charge at its center, in other words, it has a spherical symmetry. 1, 8, 1 electric field E to a system of charges consider a system of charges Q1, Q2, Qn with position vectors R1. R2, Rn relative to some origin O like the electric field at a point in space due to a single charge. Electric field at a point in space due to the system of charges is defined to be the force experienced by a unit test charge placed at that point. Without disturbing the original positions of charges Q1, Q2, Qn, we can use Coulomb's law and the superposition principle to determine this field at a point P denoted by position vector R. 20 Physics Electric Field E1 at R due to Q1 at R1 is given by E1140112 QRP1 PR where 1 PR is a unit vector in the direction from Q1 to P. And R1 P is the distance between Q1 and P in the same manner. Electric Field E2 at R due to Q2 at R2 is E2140222 QRP2 PR where 2 PR is a unit vector in the direction from Q2 to P and R2 P is the distance between Q2 and P. Similar expressions hold good for fields E3, E4, and due to charges Q3, Q4, Qn. By the superposition principle, the electric field E at R due to the system of charges is as shown in Fig. 1.12 ERE1 RE2R, NR1414141121210222202 Greek letter pi Greek letter pi pi Greek letter epsilon Greek letter epsilon QRQRQRNNNPPPPPP. RRRER140PIPPQRI2N21R1.10 E is a vector quantity that varies from one point to another point in space and is determined from the positions of the source charges. 1, 8, 2 Physical significance of electric field You may wonder why the notion of electric field has been introduced here at all. After all, for any system of charges, the measurable quantity is the force on a charge which can be directly determined using Coulomb's law and the superposition principle EC. 1.5 why then introduce this intermediate quantity called the electric field for electrostatics? The concept of electric field is convenient, but not really necessary. 
Electric field is an elegant way of characterizing the electrical environment of a system of charges. Electric field at a point in the space around a system of charges tells you the force a unit positive test charge would experience if placed at that point without disturbing the system. Electric field is a characteristic of the system of charges and is independent of the test charge that you place at a point to determine the field. The term field in physics generally refers to a quantity that is defined at every point in space and may vary from point to point. Electric field is a vector field, since force is a vector quantity, the true physical significance of the concept of electric field, however, emerges only when we go beyond electrostatics and deal with time-dependent electromagnetic phenomena. Suppose we consider the force between two distant charges Q1, Q2 in accelerated motion, now the greatest speed with which a signal or information can go from one point to another is C, the speed of light. Thus, the effect of any motion of Q1 on Q2 cannot figure 1.1 to electric field at a point due to a system of charges is the vector sum of the electric fields at the point due to individual charges. Electric charges and fields 21 arise instantaneously, there will be some time delay between the effect force on Q2 and the cause motion of Q1. It is precisely here that the notion of electric field strictly, electromagnetic field is natural and very useful. The field picture is this, the accelerated motion of charge Q1 produces electromagnetic waves, which then propagate with a speed c, reach Q2 and cause a force on Q2. The notion of field elegantly accounts for the time delay, thus, even though electric and magnetic fields can be detected only by their effects forces on charges, they are regarded as physical entities, not merely mathematical constructs. They have an independent dynamics of their own, that is, they evolve according to laws of their own. They can also transport energy, thus, a source of time-dependent electromagnetic fields, turned on for a short interval of time and then switched off, leaves behind propagating electromagnetic fields transporting energy. The concept of field was first introduced by Faraday and is now among the central concepts in physics. Example 1.8 An electron falls through a distance of 1.5 cm in a uniform electric field of magnitude 2.0 x 104 nc1 sig. 1.13 up, the direction of the field is reversed keeping its magnitude unchanged and a proton falls through the same distance fig. 1.13 b, compute the time of fall in each case, contrast the situation with that of free fall under gravity. Figure 1.13 solution in figure 1.13 of the field is upward, so the negatively charged electron experiences a downward force of magnitude e where e is the magnitude of the electric field. The acceleration of the electron is a e me where me is the mass of the electron, starting from rest. The time required by the electron to fall through a distance h is given by 22 e e h m h t e for e 1.6 x 10 19 c. me 9.11 x 10 31 kg, e 2.0 x 104 nc 1, h 1.5 x 10 2 meters, t 2.9 x 10 9 s in figure 1.13 b. The field is downward, and the positively charged proton experiences a downward force of magnitude E. The acceleration of the proton is Ap EMP where MP is the mass of the proton, MP 1.67 x 10-27 kg. The time of fall for the proton is example 1.8. 22 physics example 1.9 example 1.8 minus 722-1310 SPPPHM HTEEX thus, the heavier particle proton takes a greater time to fall through the same distance. This is in basic contrast to the situation of free fall under gravity where the time of fall is independent of the mass of the body. Note that in this example we have ignored the acceleration due to gravity in calculating the time of fall. To see if this is justified, let us calculate the acceleration of the proton in the given electric field, PPEEM 19412716 C2010 and C16710 kg. Dot xxxx 12 minus 21 9 10 meters sx which is enormous compared to the value of g 9.8 meters s2, the acceleration due to gravity. The acceleration of the electron is even greater, thus, the effects of acceleration due to gravity can be ignored in this example. Example 1.92 point charges q1 and q2, of magnitude 10-8c and minus 10-8c, respectively, are placed 0.1 meters apart. Calculate the electric fields at points A, B and C shown in figure 1.14. Figure 1.14 solution the electric field vector E1A at A due to the positive charge Q1 points towards the right and has a magnitude 92281A2910 NMC 10C 0.05 meters EXX 3.6X 104NC1 the electric field vector E2A at A due to the negative charge Q2 points towards the right and has the same magnitude. 
Hence the magnitude of the total electric field A at A is A I E 1 A E 2 A 7.2 X 104 N C 1 A I is directed toward the right. 23 The electric field vector E 1 B at B due to the positive charge Q 1 points towards the left and has a magnitude 9 2 minus 2 8 1 B 2 9 10 N M C 10 C 0 0.05 meters E X X 3.6 X 104 N C 1 The electric field vector E 2 B at B due to the negative charge Q 2 points towards the right and has a magnitude 9 2 minus 2 8 2 B 2 9 10 N M C 10 C 0 0.15 meters E X X 4 X 103 N C 1 The magnitude of the total electric field at B is E B E 1 B. E2B 3.2X 104 NC1 EB is directed towards the left. The magnitude of each electric field vector at point C, due to charge Q1 and Q2 is 9 2 minus 2 8 1 C2 C2 9 10 NMC 10 C 0 0.10 meters E E X X 9 X 103 NC1 The directions in which these two vectors point are indicated in Fig. 1.14 the resultant of these two vectors is 1 2 cos cos 3 3 C E E Greek letter pi Greek letter pi 9 X 103 and C 1 E C points towards the right. 1.9 Electric field lines We have studied electric field in the last section. It is a vector quantity and can be represented as we represent vectors. Let us try to represent E due to a point charge pictorially. Let the point charge be placed at the origin. Draw vectors pointing along the direction of the electric field with their lengths proportional to the strength of the field at each point. Since the magnitude of electric field at a point decreases inversely as the square of the distance of that point from the charge, the vector gets shorter as one goes away from the origin, always pointing radially outward. Figure 1.15 shows such a picture. In this figure, each arrow indicates the electric field, that is, the force acting on a unit positive charge, placed at the tail of that arrow. Connect the arrows pointing in one direction and the resulting figure represents a field line. We thus get many field lines, all pointing outwards from the point charge. Have we lost the information about the strength or magnitude of the field now, because it was contained in the length of the arrow? No. Now the magnitude of the field is represented by the density of field lines. E is strong near the charge, so the density of field lines is more near the charge and the lines are closer. Away from the charge, the field gets weaker and the density of field lines is less, resulting in well-separated lines. Another person may draw more lines, but the number of lines is not important. In fact, an infinite number of lines can be drawn in any region. Figure 1.15 Field of a Point Charge Example 1.9 24 Physics It is the relative density of lines in different regions which is important. We draw the figure on the plane of paper, that is, in two dimensions but we live in three dimensions. So if one wishes to estimate the density of field lines, one has to consider the number of lines per unit cross-sectional area, perpendicular to the lines. Since the electric field decreases as the square of the distance from a point charge and the area enclosing the charge increases as the square of the distance, the number of field lines crossing the enclosing area remains constant, whatever may be the distance of the area from the charge. We started by saying that the field lines carry information about the direction of electric field at different points in space. Having drawn a certain set of field lines, the relative density that is, closeness of the field lines at different points indicates the relative strength of electric field at those points. The field lines crowd where the field is strong and are spaced apart where it is weak. Figure 1.16 shows a set of field lines. We can imagine two equal and small elements of area placed at points R and S normal to the field lines there. The number of field lines in our picture cutting the area elements is proportional to the magnitude of field at these points. The picture shows that the field at R is stronger than it is to understand the dependence of the field lines on the area. Or rather the solid angle subtended by an area element. Let us try to relate the area with a solid angle, a generalization of angle to three dimensions. Recall how a plane angle is defined in two dimensions. Let a small transverse line element L be placed at a distance R from a point O then the angle subtended by L at O can be approximated as Greek letter theta L R likewise. In three dimensions the solid angle subtended by a small perpendicular plane area S, at a distance R, can be written as Greek letter omega S R2. We know that in a given solid angle the number of radial field lines is the same. In figure 1.16, for two points P1 and P2 at distances R1 and R2 from the charge, the element of area subtending the solid angle Greek letter omega is 2 1 R Greek letter omega at P1 and an element of area 2 2 R Greek letter omega at P2, respectively. The number of lines say and cutting these area elements are the same. The number of field lines, cutting unit area element is therefore n 2 1 r Greek letter omega at P1 and n 2 2 r Greek letter omega at P2, respectively. 
Since N and Greek letter omega are common, the strength of the field clearly has a 1 R2 dependence. The picture of field lines was invented by Faraday to develop an intuitive non-mathematical way of visualizing electric fields around charged configurations. Faraday called them lines of force. This term is somewhat misleading, especially in case of magnetic fields. The more appropriate term is field lines electric or magnetic that we have adopted in this book. Electric field lines are thus a way of pictorially mapping the electric field around a configuration of charges. An electric field line is, in general, figure 1.16 dependence of electric field strength on the distance and its relation to the number of field lines. Solid angle is a measure of a cone. Consider the intersection of the given cone with the sphere of radius R. The solid angle Greek letter omega of the cone is defined to be equal to SR2, where S is the area on the sphere cut out by the cone. Electric charges and fields 25 a curve drawn in such a way that the tangent to it at each point is in the direction of the net field at that point. An arrow on the curve is obviously necessary to specify the direction of electric field from the two possible directions indicated by a tangent to the curve. A field line is a space curve, that is, a curve in three dimensions. Figure 1.17 shows the field lines around some simple charge configurations. As mentioned earlier, the field lines are in three-dimensional space, though the figure shows them only in a plane. The field lines of a single positive charge are radially outward while those of a single negative charge are radially inward. The field lines around a system of two positive charges Q, Q give a vivid pictorial description of their mutual repulsion. While those around the configuration of two equal and opposite charges Q, Q, a dipole, show clearly the mutual attraction between the charges. The field lines follow some important general properties. I field lines start from positive charges and end at negative charges. If there is a single charge, they may start or end at infinity to in a charge-free region. Electric field lines can be taken to be continuous curves without any breaks. 3-2 field lines can never cross each other, if they did, the field at the point of intersection will not have a unique direction, which is absurd I've electrostatic field lines do not form any closed loops. This follows from the conservative nature of electric field chapter 2 1.10 electric flux consider flow of a liquid with velocity V, through a small flat surface DS, in a direction normal to the surface. The rate of flow of liquid is given by the volume crossing the area per unit time V DS and represents the flux of liquid flowing across the plane. If the normal to the surface is not parallel to the direction of flow of liquid, that is, to V, but makes an angle Greek letter theta with it, the projected area in a plane perpendicular to V is V ds cos Greek letter theta. Therefore, the flux going out of the surface ds is the NDS. For the case of the electric field, we define an analogous quantity and call it electric flux. We should, however, note that there is no flow of a physically observable quantity unlike the case of liquid flow. In the picture of electric field lines described above, we saw that the number of field lines crossing a unit area, placed normal to the field at a point is a measure of the strength of electric field at that point. This means that at figure 1.17 field lines due to some simple charge configurations. 26 Physics We place a small planar element of area S normal to E at a point, the number of field lines crossing it is proportional to E S. Now suppose we tilt the area element by angle Greek letter theta, clearly. The number of field lines crossing the area element will be smaller, the projection of the area element normal to E is S cos. Thus, the number of field lines crossing S is proportional to E S cos. When Greek letter theta 90 degrees, field lines will be parallel to S and will not cross it at all fig. 1.18 The orientation of area element and not merely its magnitude is important in many contexts. For example, in a stream, the amount of water flowing through a ring will naturally depend on how you hold the ring. If you hold it normal to the flow, maximum water will flow through it than if you hold it with some other orientation. This shows that an area element should be treated as a vector, it has a magnitude and also a direction. How to specify the direction of a planar area clearly, the normal to the plane specifies the orientation of the plane. Thus the direction of a planar area vector is along its normal. How to associate a vector to the area of a curved surface we imagine dividing the surface into a large number of very small area elements. Each small area element may be treated as planar and a vector associated with it, as explained before. Notice one ambiguity here, the direction of an area element is along its normal, but a normal can point in two directions. Which direction do we choose as the direction of the vector associated with the area element? This problem is resolved by some convention appropriate to the given context. For the case of a closed surface, this convention is very simple. The vector associated with every area element of a closed surface is taken to be in the direction of the outward normal. 
This is the convention used in figure 1.19. Thus, the area element vector S at a point on a closed surface equals Sn where S is the magnitude of the area element and N is the unit vector in the direction of outward normal at that point. We now come to the definition of electric flux. Electric flux Greek letter phi through an area element S is defined by Greek letter phi ESES cos 1.11 which, as seen before, is proportional to the number of field lines cutting the area element. The angle Greek letter theta here is the angle between E and S. For a closed surface, with the convention stated already, Greek letter theta is the angle between E and the outward normal to the area element. Notice we could look at the expression ES cos in two ways, ES cos that is, E times the figure 1.18 dependence of flux on the inclination Greek letter theta between E and N. Figure 1.19 convention for defining normal N and S, it will not be proper to say that the number of field lines is equal to ES, the number of field lines is after all. A matter of how many field lines we choose to draw, what is physically significant is the relative number of field lines crossing a given area at different points. Electric charges and fields 27 projection of area normal to E, or ES, that is, component of E along the normal to the area element times the magnitude of the area element. The unit of electric flux is NC1M2. The basic definition of electric flux given by EC 1.11 can be used, in principle, to calculate the total flux through any given surface. All we have to do is to divide the surface into small area elements, calculate the flux at each element and add them up. Thus, the total flux Greek letter phi through a surface S is Greek letter phi Greek letter sigma ES 1.12 The approximation sign is put because the electric field E is taken to be constant over the small area element. This is mathematically exact only when you take the limit S0 and the sum in EC 1.12 is written as an integral. 1.11 electric dipole An electric dipole is a pair of equal and opposite point charges Q and Q, separated by a distance 2A. The line connecting the two charges defines a direction in space. By convention, the direction from Q to Q is said to be the direction of the dipole. The midpoint of locations of Q and Q is called the center of the dipole. The total charge of the electric dipole is obviously zero. This does not mean that the field of the electric dipole is zero. Since the charge Q and Q are separated by some distance, the electric fields due to them, when added, do not exactly cancel out. However, at distance is much larger than the separation of the two charges forming a dipole R, to a, the fields due to Q and Q nearly cancel out. The electric field due to a dipole therefore falls off, at large distance, faster than like 1 R2 the dependence on R of the field due to a single charge Q. These qualitative ideas are borne out by the explicit calculation as follows. 1, 1, 1, 1 the field of an electric dipole The electric field of the pair of charges Q and Q at any point in space can be found out from Coulomb's law and the superposition principle. The results are simple for the following two cases, I when the point is on the dipole axis, and 2 when it is in the equatorial plane of the dipole, that is, on a plane perpendicular to the dipole axis through its center. The electric field at any general point P is obtained by adding the electric field ZQ due to the charge Q and DQ due to the charge Q, by the parallelogram law of vectors. I for points on the axis let the point P be at distance R from the center of the dipole on the side of the charge Q, as shown in fig. 1.20 up, then EPQQR a 402 pair 1.13 aware P is the unit vector along the dipole axis from Q to Q. Also EPQQR a 402 1.13 B. 28 physics the total field at P is E EPQQQR a 411022 QRR a 44222 P 1.14 for R, a EP4403 QRR. A 1.152 for points on the equatorial plane the magnitudes of the electric fields due to the two charges Q and Q are given by EQR Q41022 1.16 EQR Q41022 1.16 B and are equal. The directions of EQ and EQ are as shown in figure 1.20 B. Clearly, the components normal to the dipole axis cancel away. The components along the dipole axis add up. The total electric field is opposite to P. We have VEQ EQ cos P242232 QRAOP 1.17 at large distances R. Uh, this reduces to EP243 QRRL 1.18 from EQS. 1.15 and 1.18. It is clear that the dipole field at large distances does not involve Q and a separately, it depends on the product Ka. This suggests the definition of dipole moment. The dipole moment vector P of an electric dipole is defined by PQX2 a P1.19 that is. It is a vector whose magnitude is charge Q times the separation to it between the pair of charges Q, Q and the direction is along the line from Q to Q. In terms of P, 
The electric field of a dipole at large distances takes simple forms. At a point on the dipole axis EP243 or R, a 1.20 at a point on the equatorial plane EP43 or R, a 1.21 figure 1.20 electric field of a dipole at a point on the axis, B a point on the equatorial plane of the dipole. P is the dipole moment vector of magnitude PQX2 and directed from Q to Q. Electric charges and fields 29 example 1.10 Notice the important point that the dipole field at large distances falls off not as 1R2 but as 1R3. Further, the magnitude and the direction of the dipole field depends not only on the distance R but also on the angle between the position vector R and the dipole moment P. We can think of the limit when the dipole size 2 approaches 0, the charge Q approaches infinity in such a way that the product PQX2A is finite. Such a dipole is referred to as a point dipole. For a point dipole, EQS 1.20 and 1.21 are exact, true for any R. 1, 1, 1, 2 Physical significance of dipoles in most molecules, the centers of positive charges and of negative charges lie at the same place. Therefore, their dipole moment is zero, CO2 and CH4 are of this type of molecules, however, they develop a dipole moment when an electric field is applied. But in some molecules, the centers of negative charges and of positive charges do not coincide, therefore they have a permanent electric dipole moment, even in the absence of an electric field. Such molecules are called polar molecules. Water molecules, H2O, is an example of this type. Various materials give rise to interesting properties and important applications in the presence or absence of electric field. Example 1.102 charges plus or minus 10 micric are placed 5.0 millimeters apart. Determine the electric field at a point P on the axis of the dipole 15 centimeters away from its center O on the side of the positive charge, as shown in Fig. 1.21 A, and B a point Q, 15 centimeters away from O on a line passing through O and normal to the axis of the dipole, as shown in Fig. 1.21 B, Figure 1.21 Center of a collection of positive point charges is defined much the same way as the center of mass, RRCMQQIIIII. 30 Physics Example 1.10 Solution of field at P due to charge 10 micric 512212 10C48.854 10C and M Greek letter pi x 24215 0.25 10 meters xx 4.13 x 106 and C1 along the P field at P due to charge minus 10 micric minus 512212 10C48.854 10C and M. Greek letter pi x 24215 0.25 10 meters x x 3.86 x 106 and c1 along p a the resultant electric field at p due to the two charges at a and b is 2.7 x 105 and c1 along bp. In this example, the ratio op ob is quite large 60, thus, we can expect to get approximately the same result as above by directly using the formula for electric field at a far away point on the axis of a dipole. For a dipole consisting of charges plus or minus q, to a distance apart, the electric field at a distance r from the center on the axis of the dipole has a magnitude EPR2403 penara, one where P to a Q is the magnitude of the dipole moment. The direction of electric field on the dipole axis is always along the direction of the dipole moment vector that is, from Q to Q. Here, P10-5 CX5 X10-3 meters 5 X10-8 CM therefore, E8122225 10 centimeters 48854 10 CN MXX Greek letter Pi X363115 10 meters XX2.6 X105 N C1 along the dipole a moment direction AB. Which is close to the result obtained earlier. B field at Q due to charge 10 micric at B5122110 C48.854 10 CNM Greek letter Pi X2242115 0.25 10 meters XX 3.99 X106 and C1 along BQ field at Q due to charge minus 10 micric at A5122110 C48.854 10 CNM Greek letter Pi X2242. 115 0.25 10 meters XX 3.99 X106 and C1 along QA. Clearly, the components of these two forces with equal magnitudes cancel along the direction OQ but add up along the direction parallel to BA, therefore. The resultant electric field at Q due to the two charges at A and B is 2x6-1220.253.99 10 and C 15 0.25 xx along BA 1.33 x105 and C 1 along BA, as in a. We can expect to get approximately the same result by directly using the formula for dipole field at a point on the normal to the axis of the dipole.
Electric charges and fields 31 example 1.10 EPR 4 3 Greek letter pi 0 Greek letter epsilon aura 1 8 12 2 minus 1 minus 2 5 10 centimeters 4 8 dot 854 10 cnm x Greek letter pi x 3 6 3 1 15 10 meters x x 1.33 x 105 nc 1. The direction of electric field in this case is opposite to the direction of the dipole moment vector. Again, the result agrees with that obtained before 1.12 dipole in a uniform external field consider a permanent dipole of dipole moment P in a uniform external field E, as shown in Fig. 1.22, by permanent dipole, we mean that P exists irrespective of E, it has not been induced by E there is a force QE on Q and a force QE on Q. The net force on the dipole is zero, since E is uniform, however, the charges are separated, so the forces act at different points, resulting in a torque on the dipole. When the net force is zero, the torque couple is independent of the origin, its magnitude equals the magnitude of each force multiplied by the arm of the couple perpendicular distance between the two anti-parallel forces. Magnitude of torque QEX2 is in 2 QEs in its direction is normal to the plane of the paper, coming out of it. The magnitude of PXE is also PE sin and its direction is normal to the paper, coming out of it. Thus, Greek letter tau 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 PXE 1.22 This torque will tend to align the dipole with the field E when P is aligned with E. The torque is zero. What happens if the field is not uniform in that case? The net force will evidently be non-zero. In addition there will, in general, be a torque on the system as before. The general case is involved. So let us consider the simpler situations when P is parallel to E or anti-parallel to E in either case. The net torque is zero, but there is a net force on the dipole if E is not uniform. Figure 1.23 is self-explanatory. It is easily seen that when P is parallel to E, the dipole has a net force in the direction of increasing field. When P is anti-parallel to E, the net force on the dipole is in the direction of decreasing field. In general, the force depends on the orientation of P with respect to E. This brings us to a common observation in frictional electricity. A comb run through dry hair attracts pieces of paper. The comb, as we know, acquires charge through friction, but the paper is not charged. What then explains the attractive force taking the clue from the preceding figure 1.22 dipole in a uniform electric field? Figure 1.23 electric force on a dipole, a E parallel to P, B E anti parallel to P. 32 Physics Discussion The charged comb polarizes the piece of paper, that is, induces a net dipole moment in the direction of field. Further, the electric field due to the comb is not uniform. In this situation, it is easily seen that the paper should move in the direction of the comb. 1.13 Continuous Charge Distribution We have so far dealt with charge configurations involving discrete charges Q1, Q2, Qn. One reason why we restrict it to discrete charges is that the mathematical treatment is simpler and does not involve calculus. For many purposes, however, it is impractical to work in terms of discrete charges and we need to work with continuous charge distributions. For example, on the surface of a charged conductor, it is impractical to specify the charge distribution in terms of the locations of the microscopic charged constituents. It is more feasible to consider an area element as figure 1.24 on the surface of the conductor which is very small on the macroscopic scale but big enough to include a very large number of electrons and specify the charge Q on that element. We then define a surface charge density Greek letter sigma at the area element by QS Greek letter sigma 1.23. We can do this at different points on the conductor and thus arrive at a continuous function Greek letter sigma. Called the surface charge density, the surface charge density Greek letter sigma so defined ignores the quantization of charge and the discontinuity in charge distribution at the microscopic level. Greek letter sigma represents macroscopic surface charge density, which in a sense, is a smoothed out average of the microscopic charge density over an area element S which, as said before, is large microscopically but small macroscopically. The units for Greek letter sigma are CM2. Similar considerations apply for a line charge distribution and a volume charge distribution. The linear charge density Greek letter lambda of a wire is defined by QL Greek letter lambda 1.24 where L is a small line element of wire on the macroscopic scale that However, includes a large number of microscopic charged constituents, and Q is the charge contained in the line element. The units for Greek letter lambda are cm. The volume charge density sometimes simply called charge density is defined in a similar manner, QV Greek letter rho 1.25 where Q is the charge included in the macroscopically small volume element V that includes a large number of microscopic charged constituents. The units for Greek letter rho are cm3. The notion of continuous charge distribution is similar to that we adopt for continuous mass distribution in mechanics. 
when we refer to figure 1.24 definition of linear, surface and volume charge densities. In each case, the element L, S, V chosen is small on the macroscopic scale but contains a very large number of microscopic constituents. At the microscopic level, charge distribution is discontinuous, because they are discrete charges separated by intervening space where there is no charge. Electric charges and fields 33 the density of a liquid, we are referring to its macroscopic density. We regard it as a continuous fluid and ignore its discrete molecular constitution. The field due to a continuous charge distribution can be obtained in much the same way as for a system of discrete charges. Ec. 1.10. Suppose a continuous charge distribution in space has a charge density Greek letter rho. Choose any convenient origin O and let the position vector of any point in the charge distribution be R. The charge density Greek letter rho may vary from point to point, that is, it is a function of R dividing the charge distribution into small volume elements of size V. The charge in a volume element V is, now, consider any general point P inside or outside the distribution with position vector R figure 1.24. Electric field due to the charges given by Coulomb's law, 2014 VR Greek letter rho Greek letter epsilon Greek letter pi ER 1.26 where R is the distance between the charge element and P. And R is a unit vector in the direction from the charge element to P by the superposition principle. The total electric field due to the charge distribution is obtained by summing over electric fields due to different volume elements. 2014 all VVR Greek letter rho Greek letter epsilon Greek letter sigma Greek letter pi ER 1.27 note that Greek letter rho, R, R all can vary from point to point. In a strict mathematical method, we should let V0 and the sum then becomes an integral, but we omit that discussion here, for simplicity. In short, using Coulomb's law and the superposition principle, electric field can be determined for any charge distribution, discrete or continuous or part discrete and part continuous. 1.14 Gauss law is a simple application of the notion of electric flux. Let us consider the total flux through a sphere of radius r, which encloses a point charge q at its center. Divide the sphere into small area elements, as shown in figure 1.25. The flux through an area element s is 204 qr Greek letter phi Greek letter epsilon Greek letter pi esrci 1.28 where we have used Coulomb's law for the electric field due to a single charge q. The unit vector r is along the radius vector from the center to the area element. Now, since the normal to a sphere at every point is along the radius vector at that point, the area element s and r have the same direction. Therefore, 204 qsr Greek letter phi Greek letter epsilon Greek letter pi 1.29 Since the magnitude of a unit vector is 1, the total flux through the sphere is obtained by adding up flux through all the different area elements. Figure 1.25 flux through a sphere enclosing a point charge q at its center. 34 physics 204 all sqsr Greek letter phi Greek letter epsilon Greek letter sigma Greek letter pi Since each area element of the sphere is at the same distance r from the charge. 22044 all s o q q s s r r greek letter phi greek letter epsilon greek letter epsilon greek letter sigma greek letter pi greek letter pi now s the total area of the sphere equals 4 2 thus 220044 q q r r greek letter phi greek letter epsilon greek letter epsilon x greek letter pi greek letter pi 1.30 equation 1.30 is a simple illustration of a general result of electrostatics called gauss's law we state Gauss's law without proof. Electric flux through a closed surface S Q Greek letter epsilon 0 1.31 Q total charge enclosed by S. The law implies that the total electric flux through a closed surface is zero if no charge is enclosed by the surface. We can see that explicitly in the simple situation of figure 1.26. Here the electric field is uniform and we are considering a closed cylindrical surface. With its axis parallel to the uniform field E, the total flux Greek letter phi through the surface is Greek letter phi Greek letter phi 1 Greek letter phi to Greek letter phi 3. Where Greek letter phi 1 and Greek letter phi to represent the flux through the surface is 1 and 2 of circular cross section of the cylinder and Greek letter phi 3 is the flux through the curved cylindrical part of the closed surface. Now the normal to the surface 3 at every point is perpendicular to E, so by definition of flux, Greek letter phi 3 0. Further, the outward normal to 2 is along E while the outward normal to 1 is opposite to E therefore. Greek letter phi 1 E S 1, Greek letter phi 2 E S 2 S 1 S 2 S where S is the area of circular cross section. Thus, the total flux is 0, as expected by Gauss's law. Thus, whenever you find that the net electric flux through a closed surface is 0, we conclude that the total charge contained in the closed surface is 0. The great significance of Gauss's law at 1.31 is that it is true in general, and not only for the simple cases we have considered above.
Let us note some important points regarding this law. Igaz's law is true for any closed surface, no matter what its shape or size. 2. The term Q on the right side of Gauss's law, EC 1.31, includes the sum of all charges enclosed by the surface. The charges may be located anywhere inside the surface 3. In the situation when the surface is so chosen that there are some charges inside and some outside, the electric field whose flux appears on the left side of EC. 1.31 is due to all the charges, both inside and outside as the term Q on the right side of Gauss's law. However, represents only the total charge inside as figure 1.26 calculation of the flux of uniform electric field through the surface of a cylinder. Electric charges and fields 35 example 1.11 I've the surface that we choose for the application of Gauss's law is called the Gaussian surface. You may choose any Gaussian surface and apply Gauss's law. However, take care not to let the Gaussian surface pass through any discrete charge. This is because electric field due to a system of discrete charges is not well defined at the location of any charge. As you go close to the charge, the field grows without any bound. However, the Gaussian surface can pass through a continuous charge distribution. The Gauss's law is often useful towards a much easier calculation of the electrostatic field when the system has some symmetry. This is facilitated by the choice of a suitable Gaussian surface V. Finally, Gauss's law is based on the inverse square dependence on distance contained in the Coulomb's law. Any violation of Gauss's law will indicate departure from the inverse square law. Example 1.11 The electric field components in Fig. 1.27 or X12, ES0, in which Greek letter alpha 800 and CM12, calculated the flux through the cube, and be the charge within the cube. Assume that as 0.1 meters, figure 1.27 solution is since the electric field has only an X component, for faces perpendicular to X direction, the angle between E and S is plus or minus Greek letter pi 2. Therefore, the flux Greek letter phi ES is separately zero for each face of the cube except the two shaded ones. Now the magnitude of the electric field at the left face is L's 1 to A 1 2 X A at the left face. The magnitude of electric field at the right face is ER Greek letter alpha X 1 2 Greek letter alpha to A 1 2 X 2 A at the right face. The corresponding fluxes are LL dot S L L S E N L S cos L S, since Greek letter theta 180 degrees L 2 DR dot S E R S cos E R S. Since Greek letter theta 0 degrees 0 2 net flux through the cube. 36 physics example 1.1 to example 1.11 a lira 2 l 2 a 2 er l 2 to a 1 to a 1 to a 5 2 2 minus 1 800 0 dot 1 5 2 2 minus 1 1.05 1 nm 2 c 1 b we can use Gauss's law to find the total charge q inside the cube. We have Greek letter phi q Greek letter epsilon 0 or q 0, therefore. Q 1.05 x 8.854 x 10-12 c 9.27 x 10-12 c example 1.12 an electric field is uniform and in the positive x direction for positive x and uniform with the same magnitude but in the negative x direction for negative x. It is given that E 200 I and C for x, 0 and E minus 200 I and C for x, 0, a right circular cylinder of length 20 cm and radius 5 cm has its center at the origin and its axis along the x-axis so that one face is at x 10 cm and the other is at x minus 10 cm fig. 1.28 A What is the net outward flux through each flat face B? What is the flux through the side of the cylinder? C. What is the net outward flux through the cylinder? D. What is the net charge inside the cylinder solution? A. We can see from the figure that on the left face E and S are parallel. Therefore, the outward flux is a LES 200 IC 200 S, since ICS 200 X Greek letter pi 0.0521.57 nm 2 C1 on the right face, E and S are parallel and therefore Greek letter phi RES 1.57 nm 2 C1. B for any point on the side of the cylinder E is perpendicular to S and hence ES0, therefore, the flux out of the side of the cylinder is zero. C net outward flux through the cylinder Greek letter phi 1.57 1.5703.14 nm 2 C1 figure 1.28 D the net charge within the cylinder can be found by using Gauss's law which gives Q Greek letter epsilon 0 Greek letter phi 3.14 x 8.854 x 10-12 C 2.78 x 10-11 C. Electric charges and fields 37 1.15 Applications of Gauss law The electric field due to a general charge distribution is, as seen above, given by EC. 1.27 In practice, except for some special cases, the summation or integration involved in this equation cannot be carried out to give electric field at every point in space. For some symmetric charge configurations, however, it is possible to obtain the electric field in a simple way using the Gauss's law.
This is best understood by some examples 1, 1, 5, 1 field you to an infinitely long straight uniformly charged wire consider an infinitely long thin straight wire with uniform linear charge density Greek letter lambda. The wire is obviously an axis of symmetry, suppose we take the radial vector from O to P and rotate it around the wire. The points P, P, P so obtained are completely equivalent with respect to the charged wire, this implies that the electric field must have the same magnitude at these points. The direction of electric field at every point must be radial outward if Greek letter lambda, zero, inward if Greek letter lambda, zero. This is clear from figure 1.29. Consider a pair of line elements P1 and P2 of the wire, as shown. The electric fields produced by the two elements of the pair when summed give a resultant electric field which is radial the components normal to the radial vector cancel. This is true for any such pair and hence the total field at any point P is radial. Finally, since the wire is infinite, electric field does not depend on the position of P along the length of the wire. In short, the electric field is everywhere radial in the plane cutting the wire normally, and its magnitude depends only on the radial distance R. To calculate the field, I imagine a cylindrical Gaussian surface, as shown in the figure 1.29b. Since the field is everywhere radial, flux through the two ends of the cylindrical Gaussian surface is zero. At the cylindrical part of the surface, E is normal to the surface at every point, and its magnitude is constant, since it depends only on R. The surface area of the curved part is toral, where L is the length of the cylinder. Figure 1.29 electric field U to an infinitely long thin straight wire is radial, B the Gaussian surface for a long thin wire of uniform linear charge density. 38 physics flux through the Gaussian surface flux through the curved cylindrical part of the surface EX toral the surface includes charge equal to Greek letter lambda L. Gauss's law then gives ZX toral the Greek letter epsilon 0 that is, E0 to R Greek letter lambda F vectorially, E at any point is given by 0 to R Greek letter lambda Greek letter epsilon Greek letter pi EN 1.32 where N is the radial unit vector in the plane normal to the wire passing through the point. E is directed outward if Greek letter lambda is positive and inward if Greek letter lambda is negative. Note that when we write a vector A as a scalar multiplied by a unit vector, that is, as A A, -A the scalar A is an algebraic number. It can be negative or positive. The direction of A will be the same as that of the unit vector A if A, 0 and opposite to A if A, 0. When we want to restrict to non-negative values, we use the symbol A and call it the modulus of A thus. 0A. Also note that though only the charge enclosed by the surface was included above, the electric field E is due to the charge on the entire wire. Further, the assumption that the wire is infinitely long is crucial. Without this assumption, we cannot take E to be normal to the curved part of the cylindrical Gaussian surface. However, EC 1.32 is approximately true for electric field around the central portions of a long wire, where the end effects may be ignored. 1. 1. 5. 2 field you to a uniformly charged infinite plane sheet let Greek letter sigma be the uniform surface charge density of an infinite plane sheet fig. 1.30 We take the x-axis normal to the given plane, by symmetry, the electric field will not depend on y and z coordinates and its direction at every point must be parallel to the x-direction. We can take the Gaussian surface to be a rectangular parallelopiped of cross-sectional area A, as shown. A cylindrical surface will also do, as seen from the figure. Only the two faces 1 and 2 will contribute to the flux. Electric field lines are parallel to the other faces and they, therefore, do not contribute to the total flux. The unit vector normal to surface 1 is in x direction while the unit vector normal to surface 2 is in the x direction. Therefore, flux ES through both the surfaces are equal and add up. Therefore the net flux through the Gaussian surface is 2 AA. The charge enclosed by the closed surface is A. Therefore by Gauss's law. Figure 1.30 Gaussian surface for a uniformly charged infinite plane sheet. Electric charges and fields 39 2 AA A Greek letter epsilon 0 or E Greek letter sigma 2 Greek letter epsilon 0 victorically 0 2 Greek letter sigma Greek letter epsilon EN 1.33 where N is a unit vector normal to the plane and going away from it. E is directed away from the plate of Greek letter sigma is positive and toward the plate of Greek letter sigma is negative. Note that the above application of the Gauss law has brought out an additional fact, E is independent of X also. For a finite large planar sheet, EC 1.33 is approximately true in the middle regions of the planar sheet, away from the ends. 1, 1, 5, 3 field U to a uniformly charged thin spherical shell let Greek letter sigma be the uniform surface charge density of a thin spherical shell of radius R fig. 1.31, the situation has obvious spherical symmetry, the field at any point P, outside or inside, can depend only on R the radial distance from the center of the shell to the point and must be radial that is, along the radius vector. 
I field outside the shell. Consider a point P outside the shell with radius vector R to calculate E at P. We take the Gaussian surface to be a sphere of radius R and with center O, passing through P. All points on this sphere are equivalent relative to the given charged configuration. That is what we mean by spherical symmetry. The electric field at each point of the Gaussian surface, therefore, has the same magnitude and is along the radius vector at each point. Thus, E and S at every point are parallel and the flux through each element is ES, summing over all S. The flux through the Gaussian surface is EX4 Greek letter pi R2. The charge enclosed is Greek letter sigma X4 Greek letter pi R2. By Gauss's law EX4 Greek letter pi R2204 R Greek letter sigma Greek letter epsilon Greek letter pi R. 2220004 RQER R Greek letter sigma Greek letter epsilon Greek letter epsilon Greek letter pi where Q4 Greek letter pi R2 Greek letter sigma is the total charge on the spherical shell. Vectorially, 204Q or Greek letter pi ER 1.34 The electric field is directed outward of Q, 0 and inward of Q, 0. This, however, is exactly the field produced by a charge Q placed at the center of us for points outside the shell. The field due to a uniformly charged shell is as if the entire charge of the shell is concentrated at its center. Two field inside the shell. In figure 1.31b, the point P is inside the shell. The Gaussian surface is again a sphere through P centered at O. Figure 1.31 Gaussian surfaces for a point with R, R, B, R, R. 40 Physics Example 1.13 The flux through the Gaussian surface, calculated as before, is EX4 Greek letter pi R2. However, in this case, the Gaussian surface encloses no charge. Gauss's law then gives ZX4 Greek letter pi R20 that is, E0R, R1.35 R that is, the field due to a uniformly charged thin shell is zero at all points inside the shell. This important result is a direct consequence of Gauss's law which follows from Coulomb's law. The experimental verification of this result confirms the 1R2 dependence in Coulomb's law. Example 1.13 An early model for an atom considered it to have a positively charged point nucleus of charge A. Surrounded by a uniform density of negative charge up to a radius R the atom as a whole is neutral, for this model. What is the electric field at a distance R from the nucleus figure 1.32 solution the charge distribution for this model of the atom is as shown in fig. 1.32, the total negative charge in the uniform spherical charge distribution of radius R must be ZE, since the atom nucleus of charge ZE negative charge is neutral. This immediately gives us the negative charge density Greek letter O, since we must have 3403Rz Greek letter pi or 334Zr Greek letter rho Greek letter pi to find the electric field ER at a point P which is a distance R away from the nucleus, we use Gauss's law. Because of the spherical symmetry of the charge distribution, the magnitude of the electric field ER depends only on the radial distance, no matter what the direction of R. Its direction is along R opposite to the radius vector R from the origin to the point P. The obvious Gaussian surface is a spherical surface centered at the nucleus. We consider two situations. Namely, R, R and R, R I R, R. The electric flux Greek letter phi enclosed by the spherical surface is Greek letter phi E R X 4 Greek letter pi R2 where E R is the magnitude of the electric field at R. This is because compare this with a uniform mass shell discussed in section 8.5 of class Psi textbook of physics. Example 1.13 The field at any point on the spherical Gaussian surface has the same direction as the normal to the surface there, and has the same magnitude at all points on the surface. The charge Q enclosed by the Gaussian surface is the positive nuclear charge and the negative charge within the sphere of radius R. That is, 34 3 RQZE Greek letter rho Greek letter pi substituting for the charge density Greek letter rho obtained earlier. We have 3 3 RQZE CER Gauss's law then gives 2 3 0 1 4 ZER Greek letter pi the electric field is directed radially outward. 2 R, R, in this case, the total charge enclosed by the Gaussian spherical surface is zero since the atom is neutral. Thus, from Gauss's law, ERX4 Greek letter pi R2 0 or ER0, R, R at RR, both cases give the same result, E0. On symmetry operations in physics, we often encounter systems with various symmetries. Consideration of these symmetries helps one arrive at results much faster than otherwise by a straightforward calculation. Consider, for example an infinite uniform sheet of charge surface charge density Greek letter sigma along the YZ plane. This system is unchanged if a translated parallel to the YZ plane in any direction, be rotated about the x-axis through any angle. As the system is unchanged under such symmetry operation, so must its properties be. In particular, in this example, the electric field E must be unchanged. Translation symmetry along the y-axis shows that the electric field must be the same at a point 0, y1, 0 is at 0, y2, 0. 
Similarly translational symmetry along the z-axis shows that the electric field at 2.0, 0, z1 and 0, 0, z2 must be the same. By using rotation symmetry around the x-axis, we can conclude that E must be perpendicular to the yz plane, that is, it must be parallel to the x-direction. Try to think of a symmetry now which will tell you that the magnitude of the electric field is a constant, independent of the x-coordinate. It thus turns out that the magnitude of the electric field due to a uniformly charged infinite conducting sheet is the same at all points in space. The direction, however, is opposite of each other on either side of the sheet. Compare this with the effort needed to arrive at this result by a direct calculation using Coulomb's law. 42 Physics Summary 1 Electric and magnetic forces determine the properties of atoms, molecules and bulk matter. 2. From simple experiments on frictional electricity, one can infer that there are two types of charges in nature, and that like charges repel and unlike charges attract. By convention, the charge on a glass rod rubbed with silk is positive, that on a plastic rod rubbed with fur is then negative. 3. Conductors allow movement of electric charge through them, insulators do not, in metals, the mobile charges are electrons, in electrolytes both positive and negative ions are mobile. 4. Electric charge has three basic properties, quantization, additivity and conservation. Quantization of electric charge means that total charge Q of a body is always an integral multiple of a basic quantum of charge E that is, Q and E, where N0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3. Proton and electron have charges E, E, respectively, for macroscopic charges for which N is a very large number, quantization of charge can be ignored. Additivity of electric charges means that the total charge of a system is the algebraic sum that is, the sum taking into account proper signs of all individual charges in the system. Conservation of electric charges means that the total charge of an isolated system remains unchanged with time. This means that when bodies are charged through friction, there is a transfer of electric charge from one body to another, but no creation or destruction of charge. 5. Coulomb's Law the mutual electrostatic force between two point charges Q1 and Q2 is proportional to the product Q1-Q2 and inversely proportional to the square of the distance R21 separating them. Mathematically, F21 force on Q2 due to 121 212 21 KQQQRR where 21R is a unit vector in the direction from Q1 to Q2 and K014F is the constant of proportionality. In SI units, the unit of charge is Coulomb. The experimental value of the constant Greek letter epsilon 0 is Greek letter epsilon 0 8.854 x 10-12 c2 n1 m to the approximate value of k is k9 x 109 n m2 c2 6. The ratio of electric force and gravitational force between a proton and an electron is 2, 3, 9, 2, 4, 1, 0, EPK. GMM x 7. Superposition principle. The principle is based on the property that the forces with which two charges attract or repel each other are not affected by the presence of a third or more additional charge S. For an assembly of charges Q1, Q2, Q3, the force on any charge, say Q1, is 43 the vector sum of the force on Q1 due to Q2, the force on Q1 due to Q3, and so on. For each pair, the force is given by the Coulomb's law for two charges stated earlier. 8. The electric field E at a point due to a charge configuration is the force on a small positive test charge Q placed at the point divided by the magnitude of the charge. Electric field due to a point charge Q has a magnitude Q40R2, it is radially outwards from Q, if Q is positive, and radially inwards if Q is negative. Like Coulomb force, electric field also satisfies superposition principle 9. An electric field line is a curve drawn in such a way that the tangent at each point on the curve gives the direction of electric field at that point. The relative closeness of field lines indicates the relative strength of electric field at different points. They crowd near each other in regions of strong electric field and are far apart where the electric field is weak. In regions of constant electric field, the field lines are uniformly spaced parallel straight lines. 10. Some of the important properties of field lines are, I field lines are continuous curves without any breaks. 2. 2 field lines cannot cross each other. 3. Electrostatic field lines start at positive charges and end at negative charges they cannot form closed loops. 11. An electric dipole is a pair of equal and opposite charges Q and Q separated by some distance 2A. Its dipole moment vector P has magnitude 2 Ka and is in the direction of the dipole axis from Q to Q. 12. Field of an electric dipole in its equatorial plane that is, the plane perpendicular to its axis and passing through its center at a distance r from the center, 2232140 of a Greek letter pi p e3. 40 for r, Greek letter pi p dipole electric field on the axis at a distance r from the center, 
R R R Greek letter pi P E three zero two four for R R Greek letter pi P the one R three dependence of dipole electric field should be noted in contrast to the one R two dependence of electric field U to a point charge. Thirteen in a uniform electric field E, a dipole experiences a torque Greek letter tau Greek letter tau Greek letter tau Greek letter tau given by Greek letter tau Greek letter tau Greek letter tau Greek letter tau P X E but experiences no net force. Fourteen. The flux Greek letter phi of electric field E through a small area element S is given by Greek letter phi E S the vector area element S is S S N where S is the magnitude of the area element and N is normal to the area element, which can be considered planar for sufficiently small S. 44 Physics for an area element of a closed surface, N is taken to be the direction of outward normal, by convention. 15. Gauss's law, the flux of electric field through any closed surface S is one Greek letter epsilon zero times the total charge enclosed by S. The law is especially useful in determining electric field E. When the source distribution has simple symmetry, I thin infinitely long straight wire of uniform linear charge density Greek letter lambda zero to R Greek letter lambda Greek letter epsilon Greek letter pi and where R is the perpendicular distance of the point from the wire and N is the radial unit vector in the plane normal to the wire passing through the point. 2 infinite in plane sheet of uniform surface charge density Greek letter sigma 0 2 Greek letter sigma Greek letter epsilon e and where n is a unit vector normal to the plane, outward on either side. 3 thin spherical shell of uniform surface charge density Greek letter sigma 2 0 4 q r r Greek letter pi e r e 0 r, r where r is the distance of the point from the center of the shell and r the radius of the shell. Q is the total charge of the shell. Q42 Greek letter sigma, the electric field outside the shell is as though the total charge is concentrated at the center. The same result is true for a solid sphere of uniform volume charge density. The field is zero at all points inside the shell. Physical quantity symbol dimensions unit remarks vector area element SL2 M2 SSN electric field EMLT 3A 1 VM 1 electric flux Greek letter phi ML3 T 3A 1 VM Greek letter phi ES dipole moment PLT ACM vector directed from negative to positive charge charge density linear Greek letter lambda L1 T ACM 1 charge length surface Greek letter sigma L2 T ACM 2 charge area volume Greek letter rho L3 T ACM 3 charge volume Electric charges and fields 45 points to ponder 1. You might wonder why the protons, all carrying positive charges, are compactly residing inside the nucleus. Why do they not fly away? You will learn that there is a third kind of a fundamental force, called the strong force which holds them together. The range of distance where this force is effective is, however, very small 10-14 meters. This is precisely the size of the nucleus. Also the electrons are not allowed to sit on top of the protons, that is inside the nucleus, due to the laws of quantum mechanics. This gives the atoms their structure as they exist in nature too. Coulomb force and gravitational force follow the same inverse square law. But gravitational force has only one sign always attractive, while Coulomb force can be of both signs attractive and repulsive, allowing possibility of cancellation of electric forces. This is how gravity, despite being a much weaker force, can be a dominating and more pervasive force in nature. 3. The constant of proportionality K in Coulomb's law is a matter of choice if the unit of charge is to be defined using Coulomb's law. In SI units, however, what is defined is the unit of current A via its magnetic effect Ampere's law and the unit of charge Coulomb is simply defined by 1 C1 AS. In this case, the value of K is no longer arbitrary, it is approximately 9x109 nm2 C2, 4, the rather large value of K. That is, the large size of the unit of charge 1C from the point of view of electric effects arises because as mentioned in point 3 already the unit of charge is defined in terms of magnetic forces forces on current carrying wires which are generally much weaker than the electric forces. Thus while 1 ampere is a unit of reasonable size for magnetic effects, 1C1 AS is too big a unit for electric effects. 5. The additive property of charge is not an obvious property, it is related to the fact that electric charge has no direction associated with it, charge is a scalar. 6. Charge is not only a scalar or invariant under rotation, it is also invariant for frames of reference in relative motion. This is not always true for every scalar, for example, kinetic energy is a scalar under rotation, but is not invariant for frames of reference in relative motion. 7. Conservation of total charge of an isolated system is a property independent of the scalar nature of charge noted in point 6. Conservation refers to invariance in time in a given frame of reference. A quantity may be scalar but not conserved like kinetic energy in an inelastic collision. On the other hand, one can have conserved vector quantity e.g., angular momentum of an isolated system. 
8. Quantization of electric charge is a basic unexplained law of nature. Interestingly, there is no analogous law on quantization of mass. 9. Superposition principle should not be regarded as obvious, or equated with the law of addition of vectors. It says two things. Force on one charge due to another charge is unaffected by the presence of other charges. And there are no additional three-body, four-body, etc. Forces which arise only when there are more than two charges. 10. The electric field due to a discrete charge configuration is not defined at the locations of the discrete charges. For continuous volume charge distribution, it is defined at any point in the distribution. For a surface charge distribution, electric field is discontinuous across the surface. 46 Physics 11. The electric field due to a charge configuration with total charge zero is not zero, but for distance is large compared to the size of the configuration. Its field falls off faster than 1R2. Typical of field due to a single charge, an electric dipole is the simplest example of this fact. Exercise is 1.1 What is the force between two small charge spheres having charges of 2x10-7c and 3x10-7c placed 30 cm apart in air? 1.2 The electrostatic force on a small sphere of charge 0.4 micric due to another small sphere of charge minus 0.8 micric in air is 0.2 and what is the distance between the two spheres? B. What is the force on the second sphere due to the first 1.3? Check that the ratio K to G memp is dimensionless. Look up a table of physical constants and determine the value of this ratio. What does the ratio signify 1.4? I explain the meaning of the statement electric charge of a body is quantized. B. Why can one ignore quantization of electric charge when dealing with macroscopic that is, large scale charges 1.5 when a glass rod is rubbed with a silk cloth, charges appear on both. A similar phenomenon is observed with many other pairs of bodies. Explain how this observation is consistent with the law of conservation of charge. 1.64 point charges Ka 2 micric, QB minus 5 micric, QC 2 micric, and QD minus 5 micric are located at the corners of a square ABCD of side 10 cm. What is the force on a charge of 1 micric placed at the center of the square 1.7? An electrostatic field line is a continuous curve. That is, a field line cannot have sudden breaks. Why not be explain why two field lines never cross each other at any point? 1.82 point charges Ka 3 micric and QB minus 3 micric are located 20 centimeters apart in vacuum. Oh, what is the electric field at the midpoint O of the line AB joining the two charges B if a negative test charge of magnitude 1.5 x 10-9 C is placed at this point? What is the force experienced by the test charge 1.9 A system has two charges Ka 2.5 x 10-7 C and QB minus 2.5 x 10-7 C located at points A, 0, 0, minus 15 centimeters and B, 0, 0, 15 centimeters, respectively. What are the total charge and electric dipole moment of the system 1.10 An electric dipole with dipole moment 4x 10-9 cm is aligned at 30 degrees with the direction of a uniform electric field of magnitude 5x 104nc1. Calculate the magnitude of the torque acting on the dipole 1.11 A polythene piece rubbed with wool is found to have a negative charge of 3x 10-7 cm estimate the number of electrons transferred from which to which. B. Is there a transfer of mass from wool to polythene 1.1 to a two insulated charged copper sphere J and B have their center separated by a distance of 50 centimeters? What is the mutual force of? Electric charges and fields 47 electrostatic repulsion if the charge on each is 6.5 x 10-7 C the radii of A and B are negligible compared to the distance of separation. B. What is the force of repulsion if each sphere is charged double the above amount, and the distance between them is halved 1.13 Suppose the spheres A and B in exercise 1.12 have identical sizes. A third sphere of the same size but uncharged is brought in contact with the first, then brought in contact with the second, and finally removed from both. What is the new force of repulsion between A and B? 1.14 Figure 1.33 shows tracks of three charged particles in a uniform electrostatic field. Give the signs of the three charges, which particle has the highest charge to mass ratio figure 1.33 1.15 Consider a uniform electric field E3x 103i circumflex NC or what is the flux of this field through a square of 10 cm on a side whose plane is parallel to the is plane. B. What is the flux through the same square if the normal to its plane makes a 60 degrees angle with the x-axis? 1.16 What is the net flux of the uniform electric field of exercise 1.15 through a cube of side 20 cm oriented so that its faces are parallel to the coordinate planes? 1.17 Careful measurement of the electric field at the surface of a black box indicates that the net outward flux through the surface of the box is 8.0 x 103 nm2c.
A what is the net charge inside the box B if the net outward flux through the surface of the box were zero? Could you conclude that there were no charges inside the box Y or Y not 1.18 A point charge 10 acrylic is a distance 5 cm directly above the center of a square of side 10 cm, as shown in Fig. 1.34. What is the magnitude of the electric flux through the square hint? Think of the square as one face of a cube with edge 10 cm. Figure 1.34. 48 Physics 1.19 A point charge of 2.0 micric is at the center of a cubic Gaussian surface 9.0 cm on edge. What is the net electric flux through the surface 1.20 A point charge causes an electric flux of minus 1.0 x 103 nm 2 c to pass through a spherical Gaussian surface of 10.0 cm radius centered on the charge. But if the radius of the Gaussian surface were doubled, how much flux would pass through the surface B? What is the value of the point charge 1.21 A conducting sphere of radius 10 cm has an unknown charge? If the electric field 20 cm from the center of the sphere is 1.5 x 103 nc and points radially inward, what is the net charge on the sphere 1.22 A uniformly charged conducting sphere of 2.4 m diameter has a surface charge density of 80.0 micric m2? A find the charge on the sphere B. What is the total electric flux leaving the surface of the sphere 1.23? E. An infinite line charge produces a field of 9x104 nc at a distance of 2 cm. Calculate the linear charge density 1.24 Too large, thin metal plates are parallel and close to each other. On their interfaces, the plates have surface charge densities of opposite signs and of magnitude 17.0 x 10-22 cm2. What is E? A in the outer region of the first plate. B in the outer region of the second plate. And C between the plates additional exercise is 1.25 An oil drop of 12 excess electrons is held stationary under a constant electric field of 2.55 x 104 nc1 millikens oil drop experiment. The density of the oil is 1.26 gram cm3. Estimate the radius of the drop g9.81 meters s2 e1.60 x 10-19 c. 1.26 which among the curves shown in figure 1.35 cannot possibly represent electrostatic field lines. Electric charges and fields 49 figure 1.35 1.27 in a certain region of space. Electric field is along the z direction throughout. The magnitude of electric field is, however, not constant but increases uniformly along the positive z direction, at the rate of 105 nc1 per meter. What are the force and torque experienced by a system having a total dipole a moment equal to 10-7 cm in the negative z direction 1.28 a conductor a with a cavity as shown in fig. 1.36 is given a charge q show that the entire charge must appear on the outer surface of the conductor. b another conductor b with charge q is inserted into the cavity keeping b insulated from a show that the total charge on the outside surface of a is q q fig. 1.36 BCA sensitive instrument is to be shielded from the strong electrostatic fields in its environment. Suggest a possible way. Figure 1.361.29 A hollow charged conductor has a tiny hole cut into its surface. Show that the electric field in the hole is Greek letter sigma 2 Greek letter epsilon 0 n, where n is the unit vector in the outward normal direction, and Greek letter sigma is the surface charge density near the hole. 1.30 Obtain the formula for the electric field due to a long thin wire of uniform linear charge density E without using Gauss's law. Hint, use Coulomb's law directly and evaluate the necessary integral 1.31 It is now believed that protons and neutrons which constitute nuclei of ordinary matter are themselves built out of more elementary units called quarks. A proton and a neutron consist of three quarks each, two types of quarks, the so-called up quark denoted by U of charge 2 3 E, and the down quark denoted by D of charge minus 1 3 E together with electrons build up ordinary matter. Quarks of other types have also been found which give rise to different unusual varieties of matter, suggest a possible quark composition of a proton and neutron. 50 Physics 1.32 A consider an arbitrary electrostatic field configuration. A small test charge is placed at a null point that is, where E0 of the configuration. Show that the equilibrium of the test charge is necessarily unstable B. Verify this result for the simple configuration of two charges of the same magnitude and sign placed a certain distance apart. 1.33 A particle of mass M in charge Q enters the region between the two charge plates initially moving along x-axis with speed Vx like particle 1 in fig. 1.33 The length of plate is L and an uniform electric field E is maintained between the plates. Show that the vertical deflection of the particle at the far edge of the plate is Cal 2 2 meters Vx2. Compare this motion with motion of a projectile in gravitational field discussed in section 4.10 of class Psi textbook of physics. 
1.34 Suppose that the particle in exercise in 1.33 is an electron projected with velocity Vx 2.0 x 106 meters S1. If E between the plates separated by 0.5 cm is 9.1 x 102 nc, where will the electron strike the upper plate E 1.6 x 10-19 c? Me 9.1 x 10-31 kg. 2.1 Introduction in Chapter 6 and 8 Class I, the notion of potential energy was introduced, when an external force does work in taking a body from a point to another against a force like spring force or gravitational force, that work gets stored as potential energy of the body. When the external force is removed, the body moves, gaining kinetic energy and losing an equal amount of potential energy. The sum of kinetic and potential energies is thus conserved. Forces of this kind are called conservative forces. Spring force and gravitational force are examples of conservative forces. Coulomb force between two stationary charges is also a conservative force. This is not surprising, since both have inverse square dependence on distance and differ mainly in the proportionality constants. The masses in the gravitational law are replaced by charges in Coulomb's law. Thus, like the potential energy of the mass in a gravitational field, we can define electrostatic potential energy of a charge in an electrostatic field. Consider an electrostatic field E due to some charge configuration. First, for simplicity, consider the field E due to a charge Q placed at the origin. Now, imagine that we bring a test charge Q from a point R to a point P against the repulsive force on it due to the charge Q. With reference chapter 2 electrostatic potential and capacitance. Physics 52 to figure 2.1. This will happen if Q and Q are both positive or both negative. For definiteness, let us take Q, Q, 0. Two remarks may be made here. First, we assume that the test charge Q is so small that it does not disturb the original configuration. Namely the charge Q at the origin or else, we keep Q fixed at the origin by some unspecified force. Second, in bringing the charge Q from R to P, we apply an external force fix just enough to counter the repulsive electric force Fe that is, fix Fe. This means there is no net force on or acceleration of the charge Q when it is brought from R to P, that is, it is brought with infinitesimally slow constant speed. In this situation, work done by the external force is the negative of the work done by the electric force, and gets fully stored in the form of potential energy of the charge Q. If the external force is removed on reaching P, the electric force will take the charge away from Q. The stored energy potential energy at P is used to provide kinetic energy to the charge Q in such a way that the sum of the kinetic and potential energies is conserved. Thus, Work done by external forces in moving a charge Q from R to P is WRPF Rx died RPF Re RPD 2.1 This work done is against electrostatic repulsive force and gets stored as potential energy. At every point in electric field, a particle with charge Q possesses a certain electrostatic potential energy. This work done increases its potential energy by an amount equal to potential energy difference between points R and P thus. Potential energy difference PRRPUUUW 2.2 Note here that this displacement is in an opposite sense to the electric force and hence work done by electric field is negative. That is, WRP, therefore. We can define electric potential energy difference between two points as the work required to be done by an external force in moving without accelerating charge Q from one point to another for electric field of any arbitrary charge configuration. Two important comments may be made at this stage. Either right side of act 2.2 depends only on the initial and final positions of the charge. It means that the work done by an electrostatic field in moving a charge from one point to another depends only on the initial and the final points and is independent of the path taken to go from one point to the other. This is the fundamental characteristic of a conservative force. The concept of the potential energy would not be meaningful if the work depended on the path. The path independence of work done by an electrostatic field can be proved using the Coulomb's law. We omit this proof here. Figure 2.1A test charge Q, 0 is moved from the point R to the point P against the repulsive force on it by the charge Q, 0 placed at the origin. Electrostatic potential and capacitance 53 to equation 2.2 defines potential energy difference in terms of the physically meaningful quantity work. Clearly. Potential energy so defined is undetermined to within an additive constant. What this means is that the actual value of potential energy is not physically significant. It is only the difference of potential energy that is significant. We can always add an arbitrary constant Greek letter alpha to potential energy at every point. Since this will not change the potential energy difference, PRPRUUU or Greek letter alpha put it differently. There is a freedom in choosing the point where potential energy is zero. A convenient choice is to have electrostatic potential energy zero at infinity. With this choice, if we take the point R at infinity, we get from Ac. 
2.2 PPPWUU 2.3 Since the point P is arbitrary, EC 2.3 provides us with a definition of potential energy of a charge Q at any point. Potential energy of charge Q at a point in the presence of field U to any charge configuration is the work done by the external force equal and opposite to the electric force in bringing the charge Q from infinity to that point. 2.2 Electrostatic potential Consider any general static charge configuration. We define potential energy of a test charge Q in terms of the work done on the charge Q. This work is obviously proportional to Q, since the force at any point is QE, where E is the electric field at that point due to the given charge configuration. It is, therefore, convenient to divide the work by the amount of charge Q, so that the resulting quantity is independent of Q. In other words, work done per unit test charge is characteristic of the electric field associated with the charge configuration. This leads to the idea of electrostatic potential V due to a given charge configuration, from EC. 2.1 We get, work done by external force in bringing a unit positive charge from point R to PVP, VRUUQPR 2.4 where VP and VR are the electrostatic potentials at P and R, respectively. Note, as before, that it is not the actual value of potential but the potential difference that is physically significant. If, as before, we choose the potential to be zero at infinity, EC 2.4 implies, work done by an external force in bringing a unit positive charge from infinity to a point electrostatic potential V at that point. Count Alessandro Val to 1745 minus 1827 Count Alessandro Val to 1745 1827 Italian physicist, professor at Pavia. Volta established that the animal electricity observed by Luigi Galbani, 1737-1798, in experiments with frog muscle tissue placed in contact with dissimilar metals, was not due to any exceptional property of animal tissues but was also generated whenever any wet body was sandwiched between dissimilar metals. This led him to develop the first voltaic pile, or battery, consisting of a large stack of moist disks of cardboard electrolyte sandwiched between disks of metal electrodes. Physics 54 In other words, the electrostatic potential V at any point in a region with electrostatic field is the work done in bringing a unit positive charge without acceleration from infinity to that point. The qualifying remarks made earlier regarding potential energy also apply to the definition of potential. To obtain the work done per unit test charge, we should take an infinitesimal test charge, obtain the work done in bringing it from infinity to the point and determine the ratio. Also, the external force at every point of the path is to be equal and opposite to the electrostatic force on the test charge at that point. 2.3 Potential due to a point charge Consider a point charge Q at the origin figure 2.3. For definiteness, take Q to be positive. We wish to determine the potential at any point P with position vector R from the origin. For that we must calculate the work done in bringing a unit positive test charge from infinity to the point P for Q, 0. The work done against the repulsive force on the test charge is positive, since work done is independent of the path. We choose a convenient path, along the radial direction from infinity to the point P at some intermediate point P on the path. The electrostatic force on a unit positive charge is 2014 Qrex Greek letter pi R 2.5 where R is the unit vector along OP. Work done against this force from R to RR is 204 QWR or Greek letter pi 2.6 The negative sign appears because for R, 0, W is positive. Total work done W by the external force is obtained by integrating X 2.6 from R to RR. WQRD RQRQRRR 4442200 Greek letter pi Greek letter pi pe Greek letter epsilon Greek letter epsilon 2.7 This by definition is the potential at P due to the charge Q04 QVR or Greek letter pi 2.8 figure 2.2 work done on a test charge Q by the electrostatic field U to any given charge configuration is independent of the path, and depends only on its initial and final positions. Figure 2.3 work done in bringing a unit positive test charge from infinity to the point P, against the repulsive force of charge QQ, 0. Is the potential at P due to the charge Q? Electrostatic potential and capacitance 55 example 2.1 equation 2.8 is true for any sign of the charge Q, though we considered Q, 0 in its derivation. For Q, 0, V, 0, that is, work done by the external force per unit positive test charge and bringing it from infinity to the point is negative. This is equivalent to saying that work done by the electrostatic force and bringing the unit positive charge from infinity to the point P is positive. This is as it should be, since for Q, 0, the force on a unit positive test charge is attractive, so that the electrostatic force and the displacement from infinity to P are in the same direction. Finally, we note that EC. 2.8 is consistent with the choice that potential at infinity be 0, 
Figure 2.4 shows how the electrostatic potential 1R and the electrostatic field 1R2 varies with R. Example 2.1 A calculate the potential at a point P due to a charge of 4x 10-7C located 9 cm away. B has obtained the work done in bringing a charge of 2x 10-9C from infinity to the point P. Does the answer depend on the path along which the charge is brought? Solution of 4x 104VBWQV 2x 10-9C x 4x 104V 8x 10-5J No, work done will be path independent. Any arbitrary infinitesimal path can be resolved into two perpendicular displacements, one along R and another perpendicular to R. The work done corresponding to the later will be 0 2.4 potential due to A an electric dipole as we learnt in the last chapter. An electric dipole consists of two charges Q and Q separated by a small distance 2A. Its total charge is zero. It is characterized by a dipole moment vector P whose magnitude is Qx2 and which points in the direction from Q to Q fig. 2.5. We also saw that the electric field of a dipole at a point with position vector R depends not just on the magnitude R, but also on the angle between R and P. Further, figure 2.4 variation of potential V with R in units of Q40M1 blue curve and field with R in units of Q40M2 black curve for a point charge Q. Physics 56 The field falls off, at large distance, not as 1R2 typical of field U to a single charge but as 1R3. We, now, determine the electric potential due to a dipole and contrast it with the potential due to a single charge. As before, we take the origin at the center of the dipole, now we know that the electric field obeys the superposition principle. Since potential is related to the work done by the field, electrostatic potential also follows the superposition principle. Thus, the potential due to the dipole is the sum of potentials due to the charges Q and QV QR QR 140122.9 where R1 and R2 are the distances of the point P from Q and Q, respectively. Now, by geometry. 2221 to RRR cost 2222 RRR cost 2.10 We take R much greater than R, and retain terms only up to the first order in RRRRR 122212 cost RR212 cost 2.11 Similarly, RRR22212 cost 2.12 Using the binomial theorem and retaining terms up to the first order in R, we obtain 11121111 to RRRRR cos cos Greek letter theta Greek letter theta 2.13011121211 to RRRRR cos cos Greek letter theta Greek letter theta 2.13b using EQS 2.9 and 2.13 MP2 ka we get VQR PR 442.02 Greek letter pi pi Greek letter theta Greek letter theta Greek letter epsilon 2 cos cos 2.14 now P cos Greek letter theta PR figure 2.5 quantities involved in the calculation of potential due to a dipole. Electrostatic potential and capacitance 57 where R is the unit vector along the position vector OP. The electric potential of a dipole is then given by VR1402 PR, R, a 2.15 equation 2.15 is. As indicated, approximately true only for distances large compared to the size of the dipole, so that higher order terms in R are negligible. For a point dipole P at the origin, EK 2.15 is, however, exact, from EK 2.15, potential on the dipole axis Greek letter theta 0. Greek letter pi is given by 2014 PV plus or minus Greek letter pi 2.16 positive sign for Greek letter theta 0, negative sign for Greek letter theta Greek letter pi, the potential in the equatorial plane Greek letter theta Greek letter pi 2 is 0. The important contrasting features of electric potential of a dipole from that due to a single charge are clear from EQS. 2.8 and 2.15, either potential due to a dipole depends not just on R but also on the angle between the position vector R and the dipole moment vector P. It is, however, axially symmetric about P that is, if you rotate the position vector R about P. Keeping Greek letter theta fixed, the points corresponding to P on the cone so generated will have the same potential as at P2 the electric dipole potential falls off. At large distance, as 1R2, not as 1R, characteristic of the potential due to a single charge. You can refer to the figure 2.5 for graphs of 1R2 versus R and 1R versus R, drawn there in another context 2.5 potential due to a system of charges consider a system of charges Q1, Q2. Qn with position vectors R1, R2, Rn relative to some origin fig. 2.6, the potential V1 at P due to the charge Q1 is 1101 P14 QV Greek letter pi where R1P is the distance between Q1 and P similarly. The potential V2 at P due to Q2 and V3 due to Q3 are given by 2202 P14 QV Greek letter pi. 
3303P14QV Regreek letter pi where R2P and R3P are the distances of P from charges Q2 and Q3, respectively, and so on for the potential due to other charges. By the superposition principle, the potential V at P due to the total charge configuration is the algebraic sum of the potentials due to the individual charges V V1 V2. VN 2.17 figure 2.6 potential at a point due to a system of charges is the sum of potentials due to individual charges. 58 example 2.21401122 QRQRQRNNPPP 2.18 If we have a continuous charge distribution characterized by a charge density Greek letter rho R, we divide it, as before, into small volume elements each of size V and carrying a charge V. We then determine the potential due to each volume element and some strictly speaking, integrate over all such contributions, and thus determine the potential due to the entire distribution. We have seen in Chapter 1 that for a uniformly charged spherical shell, the electric field outside the shell is as if the entire charge is concentrated at the center. Thus, the potential outside the shell is given by 014 QV Regreek letter pi RR 2.19 where Q is the total charge on the shell and R its radius. The electric field inside the shell is zero. This implies section 2.6 that potential is constant inside the shell as no work is done in moving a charge inside the shell. N, therefore, equals its value at the surface, which is 014 QV Greek letter pi 2.19 B example 2.22 charges 3x 10-8 C and minus 2x 10-8 C are located 15 centimeters apart. At what point on the line joining the two charges is the electric potential zero take the potential at infinity to be zero. Solution Let us take the origin O at the location of the positive charge. The line joining the two charges is taken to be the x-axis. The negative charge is taken to be on the right side of the origin fig. 2.7 Figure 2.7 Let P be the required point on the x-axis where the potential is zero. If x is the x-coordinate of P, obviously x must be positive. There is no possibility of potentials due to the two charges adding up to zero for x. Zero, if x lies between O and A. We have 1 4 3 10 10 2 10 15 10 0 0 8 2 8 2 x x x x x x where x is in cm. That is, 3 2 0 15 times x which gives x 9 centimeters. If x lies on the extended line OA, the required condition is 3 2 0 15 times x. 59 example 2.2 which gives x 45 centimeters thus, electric potential is 0 at 9 centimeters and 45 centimeters away from the positive charge on the side of the negative charge. Note that the formula for potential used in the calculation require choosing potential to be zero at infinity. Example 2.3 figures 2.8 and b show the field lines of a positive and negative point charge respectively. Figure 2.8 give the signs of the potential difference VP, VQ, VB, VAB give the sign of the potential energy difference of a small negative charge between the points Q and P, A and B. C give the sign of the work done by the field in moving a small positive charge from Q to PD give the sign of the work done by the external agency in moving a small negative charge from B to A. E does the kinetic energy of a small negative charge increase or decrease in going from B to A solution as 1 VR, VP, VQ. Thus, VP, VQ is positive, also VB is less negative than VA, thus, VB, VA or VB, VA is positive. BA small negative charge will be attracted towards positive charge. The negative charge moves from higher potential energy to lower potential energy. Therefore the sign of potential energy difference of a small negative charge between Q and P is positive. Similarly, PEA, PEB and had sign of potential energy differences is positive C and moving a small positive charge from Q to P. Work has to be done by an external agency against the electric field. Therefore, work done by the field is negative D and moving a small negative charge from B to A work has to be done by the external agency. It is positive E due to force of repulsion on the negative charge, velocity decreases and hence the kinetic energy decreases in going from B to A example 2.3 electric potential. Equipotential surfaces, HTDP, video mit.edu watch for electrostatic potential electric energy of conservative field equipotential surfaces 12584. Physics 60 Figure 2.10 Equipotential Surfaces for a Uniform Electric Field 2.6 Equipotential Surfaces An equipotential surface is a surface with a constant value of potential at all points on the surface. For a single charge Q, the potential is given by Ec 2.8, 140QV Regreek letter Pi This shows that V is a constant if R is constant. Thus, equipotential surfaces of a single point charge are concentric spherical surfaces centered at the charge. Now the electric field lines for a single charge Q are radial lines starting from or ending at the charge, depending on whether Q is positive or negative. 
Clearly, the electric field at every point is normal to the equipotential surface passing through the point. This is true in general. For any charge configuration, equipotential surface through a point is normal to the electric field at that point. The proof of this statement is simple. If the field were not normal to the equipotential surface, it would have non-zero component along the surface. To move a unit test charge against the direction of the component of the field, work would have to be done. But this is in contradiction to the definition of an equipotential surface. There is no potential difference between any two points on the surface and no work is required to move a test charge on the surface. The electric field must, therefore, be normal to the equipotential surface at every point. Equipotential surfaces offer an alternative visual picture in addition to the picture of electric field lines around a charge configuration. Figure 2.9 For a single charge Q equipotential surfaces are spherical surfaces centered at the charge, and B electric field lines are radial, starting from the charge of Q, 0. For a uniform electric field E, say, along the x-axis, the equipotential surfaces are planes normal to the x-axis, that is, planes parallel to the yz plane fig. 2.10 Equipotential surfaces for a dipole and B2 identical positive charges are shown in fig. 2.11 Figure 2.11 Some equipotential surfaces for a dipole, B to identical positive charges. Electrostatic potential and capacitance 61 2, 6, 1 relation between field and potential Consider two closely spaced equipotential surfaces A and B fig. 2.12 With potential values V and V Greek letter delta V, where Greek letter delta V is the change in V in the direction of the electric field E. Let P be a point on the surface B Greek letter delta L is the perpendicular distance of the surface A from P. Imagine that a unit positive charge has moved along this perpendicular from the surface B to surface A against the electric field. The work done in this process is E Greek letter delta L. This work equals the potential difference V A V B. Thus, E Greek letter delta L V V that is, E Greek letter delta Greek letter delta V L 2.20 since is negative. We can rewrite tech 2.20 as E Greek letter delta Greek letter delta Greek letter delta Greek letter delta VL VL 2.21. We thus arrive at two important conclusions concerning the relation between electric field and potential. I electric field is in the direction in which the potential decreases steepest. Two its magnitude is given by the change in the magnitude of potential per unit displacement normal to the equipotential surface at the point. 2.7 Potential energy of a system of charges Consider first the simple case of two charges Q1 and Q2 with position vector R1 and R2 relative to some origin. Let us calculate the work done externally in building up this configuration. This means that we consider the charges Q1 and Q2 initially at infinity and determine the work done by an external agency to bring the charges to the given locations. Suppose, first the charge Q1 is brought from infinity to the point R1. There is no external field against which work needs to be done, so work done in bringing Q1 from infinity to R1 is zero. This charge produces a potential in space given by VQ R101114 Pepe where R1P is the distance of a point P in space from the location of Q1. From the definition of potential. Work done in bringing charge Q2 from infinity to the point R2 is Q2 times the potential at R2 due to Q1. Work done on Q2 1401212 QQR figure 2.12 from the potential to the field. Physics 62 where R12 is the distance between points 1 and 2. Since electrostatic force is conservative, this work gets stored in the form of potential energy of the system. Thus, the potential energy of a system of two charges Q1 and Q2 is UQQR1401212.2 obviously. If Q2 was brought first to its present location and Q1 brought later, the potential energy U would be the same. More generally, the potential energy expression, EC2.22, is unaltered whatever way the charges are brought to the specified locations, because of path independence of work for electrostatic force. Equation 2.22 is true for any sign of Q1 and Q2. If Q1 Q2 is greater than zero, potential energy is positive. This is as expected. Since for like charges Q1 Q2 is greater than zero, electrostatic force is repulsive and a positive amount of work is needed to be done against this force to bring the charges from infinity to a finite distance apart. For unlike charges Q1 Q2 is less than zero, the electrostatic force is attractive. In that case, a positive amount of work is needed against this force to take the charges from the given location to infinity. In other words, a negative amount of work is needed for the reverse path from infinity to the present locations, so the potential energy is negative. Equation 2.22 is easily generalized for a system of any number of point charges. Let us calculate the potential energy of a system of three charges Q1, Q2 and Q3 located at R1, R2, R3, respectively. To bring Q1 first from infinity to R1, no work is required, 
Next we bring Q2 from infinity to R2. As before, work done in this step is 12212014 QQQV Greek letter pi R2.23 The charges Q1 and Q2 produce a potential which at any point P is given by VQRQR12011214, per PP2.24 work done next in bringing Q3 from infinity to the point R3 is Q3 times V1. 2 at R3 QVQQR QQR3123013223314, R per 2.25 The total work done in assembling the charges at the given locations is obtained by adding the work done in different steps at 2.23 and act 2.25 uqqrqqrqqr 2.26 again because of the conservative nature of the electrostatic force or equivalently the path independence of work done the final expression for u act 2.26 is independent of the manner in which the configuration is assembled the potential energy figure 2.13 potential energy of a system of charges q1 and q2 is directly proportional to the product of charges and inversely to the distance between them figure 2.14 potential energy of a system of three charges is given by act 2.26 with the notation given in the figure Electrostatic potential and capacitance 63 example 2.4 is characteristic of the present state of configuration, and not the way the state is achieved. Example 2.44 charges are arranged at the corners of a square ABCD of side E, as shown in Fig. 2.15 Find the work required to put together this arrangement BA charge Q0 is brought to the center E of the square, the four charges being held fixed at its corners. How much extra work is needed to do this figure 2.15 solution is since the work done depends on the final arrangement of the charges. And not on how they are put together, we calculate work needed for one way of putting the charges at A. B, C and D suppose, first the charge Q is brought to A, and then the charges Q, Q, and Q are brought to B, C and D, respectively. The total work needed can be calculated in steps, I work needed to bring charge Q to A when no charge is present elsewhere, this is zero. 2 work needed to bring Q to B when Q is at A. This is given by charge at BX electrostatic potential at B due to charge Q at AX Q Q D Q D 442 0 Greek letter pi pi Greek letter epsilon 3 work needed to bring charge Q to C when Q is at A and Q is at B. This is given by charge at CX potential at C due to charges at A and B Q Q D Q D 4240 Greek letter pi pi Greek letter epsilon Q D 204112 I've work needed to bring Q to D when Q at A, Q at B, and Q at C. This is given by charge at DX potential at D due to charges at A, B and C Q Q D Q D Q D 4 4 2 40 0 0 Greek letter pi Greek letter pi pi Greek letter epsilon Greek letter epsilon Q D 2 0 4 2 1 2 64 example 2.4 add the work done in steps I, 2, 3 and I've. The total work required is Q D 2 0 4 0 1 1 1 2 2 1 2 Q D 2 0 4 4 2 pa the work done depends only on the arrangement of the charges, and not how they are assembled. By definition, this is the total electrostatic energy of the charges. Students may try calculating same work energy by taking charges in any other order they desire and convince themselves that the energy will remain the same be the extra work necessary to bring a charge Q0 to the point E when the four charges are at A, B, C and D is Q0x electrostatic potential at E due to the charges at A, B, C and D. The electrostatic potential at E is clearly zero since potential due to A and C is cancelled by that due to B and D hence. No work is required to bring any charge to point E2.8 potential energy in A and external field 2, 8, 1 potential energy of a single charge in section 2.7. The source of the electric field was specified the charges and their locations and the potential energy of the system of those charges was determined. In this section, we ask a related but a distinct question, what is the potential energy of a charge Q in a given field this question was, in fact, the starting point that led us to the notion of the electrostatic potential sections 2.1 and 2.2. But here we address this question again to clarify in what way it is different from the discussion in section 2.7. The main difference is that we are now concerned with the potential energy of a charge or charges in an external field. The external field E is not produced by the given charge S whose potential energy we wish to calculate. E is produced by sources external to the given charge S. The external sources may be known, but often they are unknown or unspecified. What is specified is the electric field E or the electrostatic potential V due to the external sources. We assume that the charge Q does not significantly affect the sources producing the external field. This is true if Q is very small, or the external sources are held fixed by other unspecified forces. 
Even if Q is finite, its influence on the external sources may still be ignored in the situation when very strong sources far away at infinity produce a finite field E in the region of interest. Note again that we are interested in determining the potential energy of a given charge Q and later. A system of charges in the external field, we are not interested in the potential energy of the sources producing the external electric field. The external electric field E and the corresponding external potential V may vary from point to point. By definition, V at a point P is the work done in bringing a unit positive charge from infinity to the point P. Electrostatic potential and capacitance 65 example 2.5 We continue to take potential at infinity to be zero, thus. Work done in bringing a charge Q from infinity to the point P in the external field is QV. This work is stored in the form of potential energy of Q. If the point P has position vector R relative to some origin, we can write potential energy of Q at R in an external field QVR 2.27 where VR is the external potential at the point R. Thus, if an electron with charge QE 1.6 x 10-19 C is accelerated by a potential difference of V1 volt, it would gain energy of QV 1.6 x 10-19 J. This unit of energy is defined as 1 electron volt or 1 av. That is, 1 av 1.6 x 10-19 J. The units based on av are most commonly used in atomic, nuclear and particle physics. 1 kev 103 av 1.6 x 10-16 J. 1 mev 106 av 1.6 x 10-13 J. 1 gev 109 av 1.6 x 10-10 J and 1 tev 1012 av 1.6 x 10-7 J. This has already been defined on page 117, Xi Physics Part 1, Table 6.1, 2, 8. Two potential energy of a system of two charges in an external field next. We ask, what is the potential energy of a system of two charges Q1 and Q2 located at R1 and R2, respectively, in an external field first, we calculate the work done in bringing the charge Q1 from infinity to R1. Work done in this step is Q1 VR1, using X2.27. Next, we consider the work done in bringing Q2 to R2. In this step, work is done not only against the external field E but also against the field U to Q1. Work done on Q2 against the external field Q2VR to work done on Q2 against the field U to Q1 12124OQQ Greek letter pi where R12 is the distance between Q1 and Q2. We have made use of EQS 2.27 and 2.22. By the superposition principle for fields, we add up the work done on Q2 against the two fields E and that due to Q1. Work done in bringing Q2 to R to 122224OQQQ V Greek letter pi R2.28 thus. Potential energy of the system The total work done in assembling the configuration 12112204 QQQV QV Greek letter pi RR 2.29 Example 2.5 A determine the electrostatic potential energy of a system consisting of two charges 7 micric and minus 2 micric and with no external field placed at minus 9 centimeters, 0, 0 and 9 centimeters, 0, 0 respectively. B How much work is required to separate the two charges infinitely away from each other? 66 Example 2.5 C Suppose that the same system of charges is now placed in an external electric field E A1 R2, A9 X105 C M2. What would the electrostatic energy of the configuration be? Solution A 1291201721010410410418 Q BWU2U10 U0 minus 0.70.7 Joule C The mutual interaction energy of the two charges remains unchanged. In addition, there is the energy of interaction of the two charges with the external electric field, we find. 11227C2C 0 0.09 meters 0 0.09 meters, meters QVQVAA micro micro RR and the net electrostatic energy is 12112201272C2C 0 0.7J4 0 0.09 meters 0 0.09 meters QQQVQVAA micro micro Greek letter pi RR 7020.749.3J2, 8. 3 Potential energy of a dipole in an external field Consider a dipole with charges Q1, Q and Q2Q placed in a uniform electric field E, as shown in Fig. 2.16, as seen in the last chapter, in a uniform electric field, the dipole experiences no net force, but experiences a torque Greek letter tau 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 given by Greek letter tau 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 PXE 2.30 which will tend to rotate it unless P is parallel or anti-parallel to E. Suppose an external torque Greek letter tau Greek letter tau Greek letter tau x is applied in such a manner that it just neutralizes this torque and rotates it in the plane of paper from angle Greek letter theta 0 to angle Greek letter theta 1 at an infinitesimal angular speed and without angular acceleration. 
The amount of work done by the external torque will be given by WD pay D0101 Greek letter tau Greek letter theta 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 EXT sin cos cos Greek letter theta Greek letter theta 012.31 This work is stored as the potential energy of the system. We can then associate potential energy U Greek letter theta with an inclination Greek letter theta of the dipole. Similar to other potential energies, there is a freedom in choosing the angle where the potential energy U is taken to be zero. A natural choice is to take Greek letter theta zero Greek letter pi two. An explanation for it is provided towards the end of discussion. We can then write. U pay pay Greek letter theta Greek letter theta 2 cos 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 Greek letter pi pe 2.32 figure 2.16 potential energy of a dipole in a uniform external field. Electrostatic potential and capacitance 67 example 2.6 This expression can alternately be understood also from ec. 2.29 We apply ec 2.29 to the present system of two charges Q and Q. The potential energy expression then reads 21242QUQV the a Greek letter theta Greek letter epsilon 0 Greek letter pi XRR 2.33 here, R1 and R to denote the position vectors of Q and Q. Now, the potential difference between positions R1 and R2 equals the work done in bringing a unit positive charge against field from R2 to R1. The displacement parallel to the force is 2 across, thus, VR1 VR2 EX2 across, we thus obtain 2 2 cos 4242 2 Greek letter theta Greek letter theta Greek letter epsilon Greek letter epsilon 0 0 Greek letter pi x Greek letter pi x peq q u pay a 2.34 we note that u Greek letter theta differs from u Greek letter theta by a quantity which is just a constant for a given dipole. Since a constant is insignificant for potential energy, we can drop the second term in ec 2.34 and it then reduces to ec. 2.32. We can now understand why we took Greek letter theta 0 Greek letter pi 2. In this case, the work done against the external field E and bringing Q in, Q are equal and opposite and cancel out, that is, Q VR1 VR2 0. Example 2.6 A molecule of a substance has a permanent electric dipole a moment of magnitude 10 29 cm. A mole of this substance is polarized at low temperature by applying a strong electrostatic field of magnitude 106 VM1. The direction of the field is suddenly changed by an angle of 60 masculine ordinal. Estimate the heat released by the substance in aligning its dipoles along the new direction of the field. For simplicity, assume 100 polarization of the sample. Solution here, dipole moment of each molecule's 10-29 cm as one mole of the substance contains 6x1023 molecules. Total dipole moment of all the molecules, P6x1023 x 10-29 cm 6x10-6 cm initial potential energy. UI pay cos Greek letter theta minus 6x 10-6x 106 cos 0 degrees minus 6j final potential energy when Greek letter theta 60 degrees, of minus 6x 10-6x 106 cos 60 degrees minus 3j change in potential energy minus 3j minus 6j 3j so, there is loss in potential energy. This must be the energy released by the substance in the form of heat in aligning its dipoles 2.9 electrostatics of conductors conductors and insulators were described briefly in chapter 1. Conductors contain mobile charge carriers. In metallic conductors, these charge carriers are electrons. In a metal, the outer valence electrons part away from their atoms and are free to move. These electrons are free within the metal but not free to leave the metal. The free electrons form a kind of gas. They collide with each other and with the ions, and move randomly in different directions. In an external electric field, they drift against the direction of the field. The positive ions made up of the nuclei and the bound electrons remain held in their fixed positions. In electrolytic conductors, the charge carriers are both positive and negative ions, but Physics 68 The situation in this case is more involved. The movement of the charge carriers is affected both by the external electric field as also by the so-called chemical forces see Chapter 3. We shall restrict our discussion to metallic solid conductors. Let us note important results regarding electrostatics of conductors. 1. Inside a conductor, electrostatic field is zero. Consider a conductor, neutral or charged. There may also be an external electrostatic field. In the static situation, when there is no current inside or on the surface of the conductor, the electric field is zero everywhere inside the conductor. This fact can be taken as the defining property of a conductor. A conductor has free electrons. As long as electric field is not zero, the free charge carriers would experience force and drift. In the static situation, the free charges have so distributed themselves that the electric field is zero everywhere inside. Electrostatic field is zero inside a conductor too. 
at the surface of a charged conductor. Electrostatic field must be normal to the surface at every point. If he were not normal to the surface, it would have some non-zero component along the surface. Free charges on the surface of the conductor would then experience force and move, in the static situation, therefore, E should have no tangential component. Thus electrostatic field at the surface of a charged conductor must be normal to the surface at every point. For a conductor without any surface charge density, field is zero even at the surface, see result 5. 3. The interior of a conductor can have no excess charge in the static situation A neutral conductor has equal amounts of positive and negative charges in every small volume or surface element. When the conductor is charged, the excess charge can reside only on the surface in the static situation. This follows from the Gauss's law. Consider any arbitrary volume element V inside a conductor. On the closed surface S bounding the volume element V, electrostatic field is zero. Thus the total electric flux through S is zero. Hence, by Gauss's law, there is no net charge enclosed by S but the surface S can be made as small as you like. That is, the volume V can be made vanishingly small, this means there is no net charge at any point inside the conductor, and any excess charge must reside at the surface. 4. Electrostatic potential is constant throughout the volume of the conductor and has the same value as inside on its surface this follows from results 1 and 2 above. Since E0 inside the conductor and has no tangential component on the surface, no work is done in moving a small test charge within the conductor and on its surface. That is, there is no potential difference between any two points inside or on the surface of the conductor. Hence, the result, if the conductor is charged, electrostatic potential and capacitance 69 electric field normal to the surface exists. This means potential will be different for the surface and a point just outside the surface. In a system of conductors of arbitrary size, shape and charge configuration, each conductor is characterized by a constant value of potential, but this constant may differ from one conductor to the other. 5. Electric field at the surface of a charged conductor 0 Greek letter sigma Greek letter epsilon E and 2.35 where Greek letter sigma is the surface charge density and N is the unit vector normal to the surface in the outward direction. To derive the result, choose a peel box a short cylinder as the Gaussian surface about any point P on the surface, as shown in Fig. 2.17. The peel box is partly inside and partly outside the surface of the conductor. It has a small area of cross-section Greek letter delta S and negligible height. Just inside the surface, the electrostatic field is zero. Just outside, the field is normal to the surface with magnitude E thus. The contribution to the total flux through the peel box comes only from the outside circular cross-section of the peel box. This equals plus or minus h positive for Greek letter sigma, zero, negative for Greek letter sigma, zero, since over the small area sh, E may be considered constant and E and sh are parallel or anti-parallel. The charge enclosed by the peel box is sh, by Gauss's law sh0 sh Greek letter delta Greek letter epsilon e0 Greek letter sigma Greek letter epsilon 2.36 including the fact that electric field is normal to the surface. We get the vector relation, ek 2.35, which is true for both signs of Greek letter sigma, for Greek letter sigma, 0, electric field is normal to the surface outward, for Greek letter sigma, 0, electric field is normal to the surface inward. 6. Electrostatic shielding Consider a conductor with a cavity, with no charges inside the cavity. A remarkable result is that the electric field inside the cavity is zero, whatever be the size and shape of the cavity and whatever be the charge on the conductor and the external fields in which it might be placed. We have proved a simple case of this result already, the electric field inside a charged spherical shell is zero. The proof of the result for the shell makes use of the spherical symmetry of the shell see chapter 1. But the vanishing of electric field in the charge-free cavity of a conductor is, as mentioned above, a very general result. A related result is that even if the conductor figure 2.17 the Gaussian surface appeal box chosen to derive ek 2.35 for electric field at the surface of a charged conductor. Physics 70 example 2.7 figure 2.18 the electric field inside a cavity of any conductor is zero. All charges reside only on the outer surface of a conductor with cavity. There are no charges placed in the cavity as charged or charges are induced on a neutral conductor by an external field. All charges reside only on the outer surface of the conductor with cavity. The proofs of the results noted in figure 2.18 are omitted here, but we note their important implication. Whatever be the charge and field configuration outside, any cavity in a conductor remains shielded from outside electric influence. The field inside the cavity is always zero. This is known as electrostatic shielding. The effect can be made use of in protecting sensitive instruments from outside electrical influence. 
Figure 2.19 gives a summary of the important electrostatic properties of a conductor. Example 2.7 AA comb run through one's dry hair attracts small bits of paper. Why what happens if the hair is wet or if it is a rainy day remember, a paper does not conduct electricity b ordinary rubber is an insulator. But special rubber tires of aircraft are made slightly conducting. Why is this necessary see vehicles carrying inflammable materials usually have metallic ropes touching the ground during motion. Why da bird perches on a bare high power line, and nothing happens to the bird, a man standing on the ground touches the same line and gets a fatal shock. Why solution of this is because the comb gets charged by friction, the molecules in the paper gets polarized by the charged comb, resulting in a net force of attraction. If the hair is wet, or if it is rainy day, friction between hair and the comb reduces, the comb does not get charged and thus it will not attract small bits of paper. Figure 2.19 Some important electrostatic properties of a conductor. Electrostatic potential and capacitance 71 Example 2.7b to enable them to conduct charge produced by friction to the ground, as too much of static electricity accumulated may result in spark and result in fire. See reason similar to BD current passes only when there is difference in potential 2.10 dielectrics and polarization dielectrics are non-conducting substances. In contrast to conductors, they have no or negligible number of charge carriers. Recall from section 2.9 what happens when a conductor is placed in an external electric field. The free charge carriers move and charge distribution in the conductor adjusts itself in such a way that the electric field due to induced charges opposes the external field within the conductor. This happens until, in the static situation, the two fields cancel each other and the net electrostatic field in the conductor is zero. In a dielectric, this free movement of charges is not possible. It turns out that the external field induces dipole moment by stretching or reorienting molecules of the dielectric. The collective effect of all the molecular dipole moments is net charges on the surface of the dielectric which produce a field that opposes the external field. Unlike in a conductor, however, the opposing field so induced does not exactly cancel the external field. It only reduces it. The extent of the effect depends on the nature of the dielectric. To understand the effect, we need to look at the charge distribution of a dielectric at the molecular level. The molecules of a substance may be polar or nonpolar. In a nonpolar molecule, the centers of positive and negative charges coincide. The molecule then has no permanent or intrinsic dipole moment. Examples of nonpolar molecules are oxygen O2 and hydrogen H2 molecules, which, because of their symmetry, have no dipole moment. On the other hand, a polar molecule is one in which the centers of positive and negative charges are separated even when there is no external field. Such molecules have a permanent dipole moment. An ionic molecule such as HCl or a molecule of water H2O are examples of polar molecules. Figure 2.20 Difference in behavior of a conductor and a dielectric in an external electric field. Figure 2.21 Some examples of polar and nonpolar molecules. Physics 72 In an external electric field, the positive and negative charges of a nonpolar molecule are displaced in opposite directions. The displacement stops when the external force on the constituent charges of the molecule is balanced by the restoring force due to internal fields in the molecule. The nonpolar molecule thus develops an induced dipole moment. The dielectric is said to be polarized by the external field. We consider only the simple situation when the induced dipole moment is in the direction of the field and is proportional to the field strength. Substances for which this assumption is true are called linear isotropic dielectrics. The induced dipole moments of different molecules add up giving a net dipole moment of the dielectric in the presence of the external field. A dielectric with polar molecules also develops a net dipole moment in an external field, but for a different reason. In the absence of any external field, the different permanent dipoles are oriented randomly due to thermal agitation, so the total dipole moment is zero. When an external field is applied, the individual dipole moments tend to align with the field. When summed over all the molecules, there is then a net dipole moment in the direction of the external field, that is, the dielectric is polarized. The extent of polarization depends on the relative strength of two mutually opposite factors, the dipole potential energy in the external field tending to align the dipoles with the field and thermal energy tending to disrupt the alignment. There may be, in addition, the induced dipole moment effect is for nonpolar molecules, but generally the alignment effect is more important for polar molecules. Thus in either case, whether polar or nonpolar, a dielectric develops a net dipole moment in the presence of an external field. 
The dipole moment per unit volume is called polarization and is denoted by P for linear isotropic dielectrics. A PE 2.37 where A is a constant characteristic of the dielectric and is known as the electric susceptibility of the dielectric medium. It is possible to relate A to the molecular properties of the substance, but we shall not pursue that here. The question is, how does the polarized dielectric modify the original external field inside it let us consider. For simplicity, a rectangular dielectric slab placed in a uniform external field E0 parallel to two of its faces. The field causes a uniform polarization P of the dielectric, thus figure 2.22A dielectric develops a net dipole moment in an external electric field. A non-polar molecules, B polar molecules. Electrostatic potential and capacitance 73 Every volume element P of the slab has a dipole moment PB in the direction of the field. The volume element P is macroscopically small but contains a very large number of molecular dipoles. Anywhere inside the dielectric, the volume element P has no net charge though it has net dipole moment. This is, because, the positive charge of one dipole sits close to the negative charge of the adjacent dipole. However, at the surfaces of the dielectric normal to the electric field, there is evidently a net charge density. As seen in figure 2.23, the positive ends of the dipoles remain unneutralized at the right surface and the negative ends at the left surface. The unbalanced charges are the induced charges due to the external field. Thus, the polarized dielectric is equivalent to two charged surfaces with induced surface charge densities, say and Clearly, the field produced by these surface charges opposes the external field. The total field in the dielectric is, thereby, reduced from the case when no dielectric is present. We should note that the surface charge density plus or minus arises from bound not free charges in the dielectric. 2.11 Capacitors and Capacitance A capacitor is a system of two conductors separated by an insulator fig. 2.24 The conductors have charges, say Q1 and Q2, and potentials V1 and V2. Usually, in practice, the two conductors have charges Qn, Q, with potential difference VV1 V2 between them. We shall consider only this kind of charge configuration of the capacitor. Even a single conductor can be used as a capacitor by assuming the other at infinity. The conductors may be so charged by connecting them to the two terminals of a battery. Q is called the charge of the capacitor, though this, in fact, is the charge on one of the conductors. The total charge of the capacitor is zero. The electric field in the region between the conductors is proportional to the charge Q that is. If the charge on the capacitor is, say doubled, the electric field will also be doubled at every point. This follows from the direct proportionality between field and charge implied by Coulomb's law and the superposition principle. Now, potential difference V is the work done per unit positive charge in taking a small test charge from the conductor 2 to 1 against the field. Consequently, V is also proportional to Q, and the ratio QV is a constant. QCV 2.38 The constant C is called the capacitance of the capacitor. C is independent of Q or V, as stated above, the capacitance C depends only on the figure 2.23A uniformly polarized dielectric amounts to induced surface charge density, but no volume charge density. Figure 2.24A system of two conductors separated by an insulator forms a capacitor. Physics 74 Geometrical configuration shape, size, separation of the system of two conductors, as we shall see later, it also depends on the nature of the insulator dielectric separating the two conductors, the SI unit of capacitance is 1 farad 1 coulomb volt 1 or 1 F1 CV1. A capacitor with fixed capacitance is symbolically shown as, while the one with variable capacitance is shown as. Equation 2.38 shows that for large C, V is small for a given Q. This means a capacitor with large capacitance can hold large amount of charge Q at a relatively small V. This is of practical importance. High potential difference implies strong electric field around the conductors. A strong electric field can ionize the surrounding air and accelerate the charges so produced to the oppositely charged plates. Thereby neutralizing the charge on the capacitor plates, at least partly. In other words, the charge of the capacitor leaks away due to the reduction in insulating power of the intervening medium. The maximum electric field that a dielectric medium can withstand without breakdown of its insulating property is called its dielectric strength. For air it is about 3x106 Vm1. For a separation between conductors of the order of 1 cm or so, this field corresponds to a potential difference of 3x104 V between the conductors. 
Thus, for a capacitor to store a large amount of charge without leaking, its capacitance should be high enough so that the potential difference and hence the electric field do not exceed the breakdown limits. Put differently, there is a limit to the amount of charge that can be stored on a given capacitor without significant leaking. In practice, a farad is a very big unit. The most common units are its sub-multiples 1 microt 10-6F, 1 NF 10-9F, 1 PF 10-12F, etc. Besides its use in storing charge, a capacitor is a key element of most AC circuits with important functions, as described in Chapter 7. 2.12 The parallel plate capacitor A parallel plate capacitor consists of two large plain parallel conducting plates separated by a small distance fig. 2.25 We first take the intervening medium between the plates to be vacuum. The effect of a dielectric medium between the plates is discussed in the next section. Let A be the area of each plate and D the separation between them. The two plates have charges Q and Q, since D is much smaller than the linear dimension of the plates D2, A. We can use the result on electric field by an infinite plane sheet of uniform surface charge density section 1.15. Plate 1 has surface charge density Greek letter sigma QA and plate 2 has a surface charge density Greek letter sigma, using EC. 1.33, the electric field in different regions is, outer region I region above the plate 1, 0, 0, 0, 2, 2 E Greek letter sigma Greek letter sigma Greek letter epsilon Greek letter epsilon 2.39 figure 2.25 the parallel plate capacitor. Electrostatic potential and capacitance 75 outer region 2 region below the plate 2, 0, 0, 0, 2, 2 E Greek letter sigma Greek letter sigma Greek letter epsilon Greek letter epsilon 2.40 in the inner region between the plates 1 and 2. The electric fields due to the two charged plates add up, giving 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, 2 QEA Greek letter sigma Greek letter sigma Greek letter sigma Greek letter epsilon Greek letter epsilon Greek letter epsilon Greek letter epsilon 2.41 The direction of electric field is from the positive to the negative plate. Thus, the electric field is localized between the two plates and is uniform throughout. For plates with finite area, this will not be true near the outer boundaries of the plates. The field lines bend outward at the edges an effect called fringing of the field. By the same token, Greek letter sigma will not be strictly uniform on the entire plate. E and Greek letter sigma are related by EC 2.35. However, for D2, A, these effects can be ignored in the region sufficiently far from the edges, and the field error is given by EC. 2.41. Now for uniform electric field, potential difference is simply the electric field times the distance between the plates. That is, 0 1 Q D B E D A 2.42 The capacitance C of the parallel plate capacitor is then Q C V 0 A D Greek letter epsilon 2.43 which, as expected, depends only on the geometry of the system. For typical values like A 1 square meter, D 1 millimeter, we get 12 2 minus 1 minus 2 2 9 3 8 dot 85 10 C N M 1 meter 8 dot 85 10 F 10 meter C X X X 2.44 You can check that if 1 F 1 C V 1 1 C N C 1 M minus 1 1 C 2 N 1 M 1 This shows that 1 F is too big a unit in practice, as remarked earlier. Another way of seeing the bigness of 1 F is to calculate the area of the plates needed to have C 1 F for a separation of Say 1 centimeters, 0 CD a Greek letter epsilon 2 9 2 12 2 minus 1 minus 2 1 F 10 meters 10 meters 8 dot 85 10 CN MXX 2.45 which is a plate about 30 kilometers in length and breadth. 2.13 Effective dielectric on capacitance with the understanding of the behavior of dielectrics in an external field developed in section 2.10. Let us see how the capacitance of the parallel plate capacitor is modified when a dielectric is present. As before, we have two large plates, each of area A, separated by a distance D. The charge on the plates is plus or minus Q, corresponding to the charge density plus or minus Greek letter sigma with Greek letter sigma QA. When there is vacuum between the plates, 0 0 E Greek letter sigma Greek letter epsilon factors affecting capacitance, capacitors in action interactive Java tutorial HTTP, micromagnet FSU.edu electromag Java capacitance. Physics 76 and the potential difference V0 is V0 E0 D the capacitance C0 in this case is 0 0 0 Q A C V D Greek letter epsilon 2.46 consider next a dielectric inserted between the plates fully occupying the intervening region. The dielectric is polarized by the field N, as explained in section 2.10, the effect is equivalent to two charged sheets at the surfaces of the dielectric normal to the field with surface charge density spent. The electric field in the dielectric then corresponds to the case when the net surface charge density on the plates is plus or minus Greek letter sigma. 
that is, 0 pay Greek letter sigma Greek letter sigma Greek letter epsilon 2.47 so that the potential difference across the plates is 0 PVEDD Greek letter sigma Greek letter sigma Greek letter epsilon 2.48 for linear dielectrics. We expect to be proportional to E0, that is, to Greek letter sigma. Thus, Greek letter sigma is proportional to Greek letter sigma and we can write PK Greek letter sigma Greek letter sigma Greek letter sigma 2.49 where K is a constant characteristic of the dielectric. Clearly, K, 1, we then have 0 0 DQ DV K A K Greek letter sigma Greek letter epsilon Greek letter epsilon 2.50 the capacitance C, with dielectric between the plates. Is then 0 CAC CVD Greek letter epsilon 2.51 the product Greek letter epsilon 0 K is called the permittivity of the medium and is denoted by Greek letter epsilon Greek letter epsilon Greek letter epsilon 0 K 2.52 for vacuum K1 and Greek letter epsilon Greek letter epsilon 0. Greek letter epsilon 0 is called the permittivity of the vacuum. The dimensionless ratio 0 K Greek letter epsilon Greek letter epsilon 2.53 is called the dielectric constant of the substance. As remarked before, from EC 2.49, it is clear that K is greater than 1, from EQS 2.46 and 2. 51 0 CKC 2.54 Thus, the dielectric constant of a substance is the factor, 1 by which the capacitance increases from its vacuum value, when the dielectric is inserted fully between the plates of a capacitor. Though we arrived at Electrostatic potential and capacitance 77 example 2.8 ec 2.54 for the case of a parallel plate capacitor, it holds good for any type of capacitor and can, in fact, be viewed in general as a definition of the dielectric constant of a substance. Electric displacement we have introduced the notion of dielectric constant and arrived at ec 2.54. Without giving the explicit relation between the induced charge density and the polarization P. We take without proof the result that P Greek letter sigma P nu where N is a unit vector along the outward normal to the surface. Above equation is general, true for any shape of the dielectric. For the slab in figure 2.23, P is along N at the right surface and opposite to N at the left surface. Thus at the right surface, induced charge density is positive and at the left surface, it is negative, as guessed already in our qualitative discussion before. Putting the equation for electric field in vector form 0 Greek letter sigma Greek letter epsilon P N E N I I R Greek letter epsilon 0 E P N E Greek letter sigma the quantity Greek letter epsilon 0 E P is called the electric displacement and is denoted by D. It is a vector quantity, thus, D Greek letter epsilon 0 E P, D N E Greek letter sigma. The significance of D is this, in vacuum, E is related to the free charge density Greek letter sigma. When a dielectric medium is present, the corresponding role is taken up by D for a dielectric medium. It is D naught D that is directly related to free charge density Greek letter sigma, as seen in above equation. Since P is in the same direction as Z, all the three vectors P, E and D are parallel. The ratio of the magnitudes of D and D is 0 0 P D K E psi Greek letter epsilon Greek letter sigma Greek letter sigma thus, D Greek letter epsilon 0 K E and P D Greek letter epsilon 0 E Greek letter epsilon 0 K minus 1 E this gives for the electric susceptibility I defined in EC. 2.37 A Greek letter epsilon 0 K1 example 2.8 A slab of material of dielectric constant K has the same area as the plates of a parallel plate capacitor but has a thickness 3 4 D. Where D is the separation of the plates, how is the capacitance changed when the slab is inserted between the plates? Solution let E0 V0 D be the electric field between the plates when there is no dielectric and the potential difference is V0. If the dielectric is now inserted, the electric field in the dielectric will be E0K. The potential difference will then be Physics 78 Example 2.8001344 EVEDDK0013344 KEDVKK. The potential difference decreases by the factor K3K while the free charge Q0 on the plates remains unchanged. The capacitance thus increases 0000443 QQKKCCVKVK 2.14 combination of capacitors we can combine several capacitors of capacitance C1 C2 CN to obtain a system with some effective capacitance C the effective capacitance depends on the way the individual capacitors are combined Two simple possibilities are discussed below 2 1 4 1 capacitors in series figure 2.26 shows capacitors C1 and C2 combined in series the left plate of C1 and the right plate of C2 are connected to two terminals of a battery and have charges Q and Q, respectively. It then follows that the right plate of C1 has charge Q and the left plate of C2 has charge Q if this was not so. The net charge on each capacitor would not be zero, this would result in an electric field in the conductor connecting C1 and C2. Charge would flow until the net charge on both C1 and C2 is zero and there is no electric field in the conductor connecting C1 and C2. 
Thus, in the series combination, charges on the two plates plus or minus Q are the same on each capacitor. The total potential drop V across the combination is the sum of the potential drops V1 and V2 across C1 and C2, respectively. VV1 V2 1 2 Q Q C C 2.55 that is, 1 2 1 1 V Q C C. 2.56 Now we can regard the combination as an effective capacitor with charge Q and potential difference V. The effective capacitance of the combination is QCV 2.57 We compare EC 2.57 with EC 2.56 and obtain 12111 CCC 2.58 Figure 2.26 Combination of two capacitors in series Figure 2.27 Combination of N capacitors in series Electrostatic potential and capacitance 79 Example 2.9 The proof clearly goes through for any number of capacitors arranged in a similar way. Equation 2.55 For n capacitors arranged in series, generally is to 1 2 n 1 2 n q q q v v v v c c c 2.59 Following the same steps as for the case of two capacitors. We get the general formula for effective capacitance of a series combination of n capacitors. 1 2 3 n 1 1 1 1 1 CCCCC 2.602142 two capacitors in parallel figure 2.28 shows two capacitors arranged in parallel in this case the same potential difference is applied across both the capacitors but the plate charges plus or minus q1 on capacitor 1 and the plate charges plus or minus q2 on the capacitor 2 are not necessarily the same q1c1v Q2C2V2.61 The equivalent capacitor is 1 with charge QQ1 Q2 2.62 and potential difference VQCVC1VC2V2.63 The effective capacitance C is from EC2.63, CC1 C2 2.64 The general formula for effective capacitance C for parallel combination of N capacitors Fig. 2.28B follows similarly, QQ1 Q2. QN 2.65 that is, CVC1 VC2 V, CNV 2.66 which gives CC1 C2. CN 2.67 example 2.9 A network of 4 10 microv capacitors is connected to a 500 V supply, as shown in Fig. 2.29, determine the equivalent capacitance of the network and be the charge on each capacitor. Note, the charge on a capacitor is the charge on the plate with higher potential, equal and opposite to the charge on the plate with lower potential. Figure 2.28 Parallel combination of a two capacitors, B and capacitors. Figure 2.29 80 Example 2.9 Solution in the given network, C1, C2 and C3 are connected in series. The effective capacitance C of these three capacitors is given by 1 2 3 1 1 1 1 C C C C for C1 C2 C3 10 microf. C10 3 microf. The network has C and C4 connected in parallel. Thus, the equivalent capacitance C of the network is CCC41033 10 microf 13.3 microf B clearly. From the figure, the charge on each of the capacitors, C1, C2 and C3 is the same. Say Q let the charge on C4 be Q. Now, since the potential difference across AB is QC1, across BC is QC2, across CD is QC3, we have 1, 2, 3, 500 V, Q, 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 C, C, C. Also, QC4 500 V this gives for the given value of the capacitances, 310 500 F1.710 C3 QVX Micro X and 3510 F5.010 C QVX Micro X 2.15 energy stored in a capacitor A capacitor, as we have seen above, is a system of two conductors with charge Q and Q, to determine the energy stored in this configuration. Consider initially two uncharged conductors 1 and 2. Imagine next a process of transferring charge from conductor 2 to conductor 1 bit by bit. So that at the end, conductor 1 gets charge Q by charge conservation. Conductor 2 has charge Q at the end figure 2.30. In transferring positive charge from conductor 2 to conductor 1, work will be done externally, since at any stage conductor 1 is at a higher potential than conductor 2. To calculate the total work done, we first calculate the work done in a small step involving transfer of an infinitesimal that is, vanishingly small amount of charge. Consider the intermediate situation when the conductors 1 and 2 have charges Q and Q respectively. At this stage, the potential difference V between conductors 1 to 2 is QC, where C is the capacitance of the system. Next imagine that a small charge Greek letter delta Q is transferred from conductor 2 to 1, work done in this step Greek letter delta W. Resulting in charge Q on conductor 1 increasing to Q Greek letter delta Q, is given by QWVQQC Greek letter delta Greek letter delta Greek letter delta 2.68 figure 2.30 A work done in a small step of building charge on conductor 1 from Q to Q Greek letter delta Q. 
B. Total work done in charging the capacitor may be viewed as stored in the energy of electric field between the plates. Electrostatic potential and capacitance 81 Since Greek letter delta Q can be made as small as we like, ek 2.68 can be written as 221 2 WQ Q C Greek letter delta Greek letter delta 2.69 Equations 2.68 and 2.69 are identical because the term of second order in Greek letter delta Q, that is, Greek letter delta Q 2 C, is negligible. Since Greek letter delta Q is arbitrarily small, the total work done W is the sum of the small work Greek letter delta W over the very large number of steps involved in building the charge Q from 0 to Q. W W Greek letter delta sum over all steps 1 2 2 2 C Q Q Q sum over all steps Greek letter delta 2.7022 2 21 0 2 2 Q Q Q C Greek letter delta Greek letter delta Greek letter delta 2 2 3 2 Q A Greek letter delta 2 2 Q Q A 2.712 Q Q C C 2.72 the same result can be obtained directly from A. 2.68 by integration W Q C Q C Q Q C Q Q 0 2 0 21 2 2 Greek letter delta this is not surprising since integration is nothing but summation of a large number of small terms. We can write the final result. Ek 2.72 inches different ways 2 21 1 2 2 2 Q W C V Q V C 2.73 since electrostatic force is conservative. This work is stored in the form of potential energy of the system. For the same reason, the final result for potential energy ek 2.73 is independent of the manner in which the charge configuration of the capacitor is built up. When the capacitor discharges, this stored up energy is released. It is possible to view the potential energy of the capacitor as stored in the electric field between the plates. To see this, consider for simplicity, a parallel plate capacitor of area A of each plate and separation D between the plates. Energy stored in the capacitor 2201222 QADC A Greek letter sigma Greek letter epsilon x 2.7 for the surface charge density Greek letter sigma is related to the electric field E between the plates. 0 E Greek letter sigma Greek letter epsilon 2.75 from EQS 2.74 and 2.75. We get energy stored in the capacitor U2012 E8 x 2.76. 80 to example 2.10 note that it is the volume of the region between the plates where electric field alone exists. If we define energy density as energy stored per unit volume of space, ek 2.76 shows that energy density of electric field, U12 Greek letter epsilon 0 E2 2.77 though we derived ek 2.77 for the case of a parallel plate capacitor, the result on energy density of an electric field is, in fact, very general and holds true for electric field due to any configuration of charges. Example 2.10 A 900 PF capacitor is charged by 100 V battery figure 2.31 A. How much electrostatic energy is stored by the capacitor B? The capacitor is disconnected from the battery and connected to another 900 PF capacitor fig. 2.31 B. What is the electrostatic energy stored by the system? Figure 2.31 Solution of the charge on the capacitor is QCV 900X 10-12 FX 100V 9X 10-8C The energy stored by the capacitor is 12CV 212QV 12X 9X 10-8C X 100V 4.5X 10-6JB In the steady situation, the two capacitors have their positive plates at the same potential, and their negative plates at the same potential. Let the common potential difference be V, the 83 Example 2.10 Summary 1. Electrostatic force is a conservative force. Work done by an external force equal and opposite to the electrostatic force in bringing a charge Q from a point R to a point P is VP, dr. Which is the difference in potential energy of charge Q between the final and initial points 2. Potential at a point is the work done per unit charge by an external agency in bringing a charge from infinity to that point. Potential at a point is arbitrary to within an additive constant, since it is the potential difference between two points which is physically significant. If potential at infinity is chosen to be zero, potential at a point with position vector R due to a point charge Q placed at the origin is given is given by 140 QV re Greek letter pi R3. The electrostatic potential at a point with position vector R due to a point dipole of dipole moment P placed at the origin is 214 Greek letter epsilon Greek letter pi P R R O V R. The result is true also for a dipole with charges Q and Q separated by 2 of R R A. 4. For a charge configuration Q1, Q2, Qn with position vectors R1, R2, Rn, the potential at a point P is given by the superposition principle 1201 P2 P P1. For N and Q Q Q V R R a Greek letter pi where R1 P is the distance between Q1 and P, as and so on 5. 
An equipotential surface is a surface over which potential has a constant value. For a point charge, concentric spheres centered at a location of the charge are equipotential surfaces. The electric field E at a point is perpendicular to the equipotential surface through the point. E is in the direction of the steepest decrease of potential. Charge on each capacitor is then QCV, by charge conservation, QQ2, this implies VV2. The total energy of the system is 61122.2510J24 QVQVXX thus in going from a to B, though no charge is lost, the final energy is only half the initial energy. Where has the remaining energy gone there is a transient period before the system settles to the situation B. During this period, a transient current flows from the first capacitor to the second, energy is lost during this time in the form of heat and electromagnetic radiation. 6. Potential energy stored in a system of charges is the work done by an external agency in assembling the charges at their locations. Potential energy of two charges Q1, Q2 at R1, R2 is given by 1201214 QQU Greek letter pi where R12 is distance between Q1 and Q2. 7. The potential energy of a charge Q in an external potential VR is QVR. The potential energy of a dipole moment P in a uniform electric field E is PE. 8. Electrostatics field E is zero in the interior of a conductor, just outside the surface of a charged conductor. E is normal to the surface given by zero Greek letter sigma Greek letter epsilon E and where N is the unit vector along the outward normal to the surface and Greek letter sigma is the surface charge density. Charges in a conductor can reside only at its surface. Potential is constant within and on the surface of a conductor. In a cavity within a conductor with no charges, the electric field is 0 9. A capacitor is a system of two conductors separated by an insulator. Its capacitance is defined by CQV, where Q and Q are the charges on the two conductors and V is the potential difference between them. C is determined purely geometrically, by the shapes, sizes and relative positions of the two conductors. The unit of capacitance is farad, 1 F1 CV1, for a parallel plate capacitor with vacuum between the plates, C0 AD Greek letter epsilon where A is the area of each plate and D the separation between them. 10. If the medium between the plates of a capacitor is filled with an insulating substance dielectric, the electric field due to the charged plates induces a net dipole moment in the dielectric. This effect, called polarization, gives rise to a field in the opposite direction, the net electric field inside the dielectric and hence the potential difference between the plates is thus reduced. Consequently, the capacitance C increases from its value C0 when there is no medium vacuum, CKC0 where K is the dielectric constant of the insulating substance. 11. For capacitors in the series combination, the total capacitance C is given by 1 2 3 1 1 1 1. CCCC in the parallel combination, the total capacitance C is CC1C2C3. 85 physical quantity symbol dimensions unit remark potential or VM1L2T3A1 V potential differences physically significant capacitance CM1L2T4A2F polarization PL2 at CM2 dipole moment per unit volume dielectric constant K, dimensionless where C1, C2, C3. Our individual capacitance is 12. The energy used stored in a capacitor of capacitance C, with charge Q and voltage V is U Q V C V Q C 12121222 The electric energy density energy per unit volume in a region with electric field is 1 2 Greek letter epsilon 0 E2. Points to ponder 1. Electrostatics deals with forces between charges at rest, but if there is a force on a charge, how can it be at rest thus, when we are talking of electrostatic force between charges, it should be understood that each charge is being kept at rest by some unspecified force that opposes the net coulomb force on the charge. 2. A capacitor is so configured that it confines the electric field lines within a small region of space. Thus, even though field may have considerable strength, the potential difference between the two conductors of a capacitor is small. 3. Electric field is discontinuous across the surface of a spherical charged shell. It is zero inside in Greek letter sigma Greek letter epsilon zero and outside. Electric potential is, however continuous across the surface, equal to Q40R at the surface 4. The torque PXE on a dipole causes it to oscillate about E only if there is a dissipative mechanism. The oscillations are damped and the dipole eventually aligns with E5. Potential due to a charge Q at its own location is not defined, it is infinite. 6. In the expression QVR for potential energy of a charge Q, VR is the potential due to external charges and not the potential due to Q. As seen in point 5, this expression will be ill-defined if VR includes potential due to a charge Q itself. 
86 exercises 2.12 charges 5x 10-8c and minus 3x 10-8c are located 16 centimeters apart. At what point s on the line joining the two charges is the electric potential zero take the potential at infinity to be zero. 2.2 A regular hexagon of side 10 cm has a charge 5 micric at each of its vertices. Calculate the potential at the center of the hexagon. 2.3 Two charges 2 micric and minus 2 micric are placed at points A and B 6 cm apart identify an equipotential surface of the system. B What is the direction of the electric field at every point on this surface 2.4 A spherical conductor of radius 12 cm has a charge of 1.6 x 10-7 C distributed uniformly on its surface. What is the electric field inside the sphere B just outside the sphere C at a point 18 cm from the center of the sphere? 2.5 A parallel plate capacitor with air between the plates has a capacitance of 8 PF 1 PF 10-12 F. What will be the capacitance if the distance between the plates is reduced by half, and the space between them is filled with a substance of dielectric constant 6 2.63 capacitors each of capacitance 9 PF are connected in series. A what is the total capacitance of the combination B what is the potential difference across each capacitor if the combination is connected to a 120V supply 2.73 capacitors of capacitance is 2 PF, 3 PF and 4 PF are connected in parallel. A what is the total capacitance of the combination B determine the charge on each capacitor if the combination is connected to a 100V supply. 2.8 in a parallel plate capacitor with air between the plates. Each plate has an area of 6x 10-3m2 and the distance between the plates is 3 mm. Calculate the capacitance of the capacitor. If this capacitor is connected to a 100V supply, what is the charge on each plate of the capacitor 7? A cavity inside a conductor is shielded from outside electrical influences. It is worth noting that electrostatic shielding does not work the other way round, that is. If you put charges inside the cavity, the exterior of the conductor is not shielded from the field by the inside charges. Electrostatic potential and capacitance 87 2.9 Explain what would happen if in the capacitor given in exercise 2.8 A 3 mm thick mica sheet of dielectric constant 6 were inserted between the plates, a while the voltage supply remained connected. B After the supply was disconnected 2.10 A 12 PF capacitor is connected to a 50 V battery. How much electrostatic energy is stored in the capacitor 2.11 A 600 PF capacitor is charged by a 200 V supply. It is then disconnected from the supply and is connected to another uncharged 600 PF capacitor. How much electrostatic energy is lost in the process? Additional exercises 2.12A charge of 8MC is located at the origin. Calculate the work done in taking a small charge of minus 2x 10-9C from a point P0, 0, 3 cm to a point Q0, 4 cm, 0, via a point R0, 6 cm, 9 cm. 2.13 A cube of psi B has a charge Q at each of its vertices. Determine the potential and electric field due to this charge array at the center of the cube. 2.14 Two tiny spheres carrying charges 1.5 micric and 2.5 micric are located 30 centimeters apart. Find the potential and electric field at the midpoint of the line joining the two charges. And B at a point 10 centimeters from this midpoint in a plane normal to the line and passing through the midpoint. 2.15 A spherical conducting shell of inner radius R1 and outer radius R2 has a charge Q. A charge Q is placed at the center of the shell. What is the surface charge density on the inner and outer surfaces of the shell? B is the electric field inside a cavity with no charge zero. Even if the shell is not spherical, but has any irregular shape explain. 2.16 A show that the normal component of electrostatic field has a discontinuity from one side of a charge surface to another given by 210 Greek letter sigma Greek letter epsilon, EEN where N is a unit vector normal to the surface at a point and Greek letter sigma is the surface, charge density at that point. The direction of N is from side 1 to side 2, hence, show that just outside a conductor, the electric field is Greek letter sigma and Greek letter epsilon 0. Physics 88b show that the tangential component of electrostatic field is continuous from one side of a charged surface to another. Hint, for a, use Quas's law, for, b use the fact that work done by electrostatic field on a closed loop is 0 2.17 a long charge cylinder of linear charge density Greek letter lambda is surrounded by a hollow coaxial conducting cylinder. What is the electric field in the space between the two cylinders 2.18 in a hydrogen atom? The electron and proton are bound at a distance of about 0.53 a ring. I estimate the potential energy of the system in F. Taking a zero of the potential energy at infinite separation of the electron from proton B what is the minimum work required to free the electron? Given that its kinetic energy in the orbit is half the magnitude of potential energy obtained in a 
See what are the answers to A and B above if the zero of potential energy is taken at 1.06 A ring separation 2.19 if one of the two electrons of a H2 molecule is removed. We get a hydrogen molecular ion H2. In the ground state of an H2, the two protons are separated by roughly 1.5 A ring, and the electron is roughly 1 A ring from each proton. Determine the potential energy of the system. Specify your choice of the zero of potential energy. 2.202 charged conducting spheres of radii and B are connected to each other by a wire. What is the ratio of electric fields at the surfaces of the two spheres? Use the result obtained to explain why charge density on the sharpened pointed ends of a conductor is higher than on its flatter portions. 2.212 charges Q and Q are located at point 0, 0, A and 0, 0, A, respectively and what is the electrostatic potential at the point 0, 0, Z and X, Y. 0 B obtain the dependence of potential on the distance R of a point from the origin when R a 1. See how much work is done in moving a small test charge from the point 5, 0, 0 to minus 7. 0, 0 along the x-axis does the answer change if the path of the test charge between the same points is not along the x-axis 2.22 figure 2.32 shows a charge array known as an electric quadrupole. For a point on the axis of a quadrupole, obtain the dependence of potential on R for R, 1, and contrast your results with that due to an electric dipole, and an electric monopole that is, a single charge. Electrostatic potential and capacitance 89 2.23 An electrical technician requires a capacitance of 2 micro in a circuit across a potential difference of 1 kilovolt. A large number of 1 micro capacitors are available to him each of which can withstand a potential difference of not more than 400 V. Suggest a possible arrangement that requires the minimum number of capacitors 2.24 What is the area of the plates of a 2F parallel plate capacitor? Given that the separation between the plates is 0.5 cm you will realize from your answer why ordinary capacitors are in the range of micro for less. However, electrolytic capacitors do have a much larger capacitance 0.1F because of very minute separation between the conductors 2.25 obtain the equivalent capacitance of the network in fig. 2.33, for a 300V supply, determine the charge and voltage across each capacitor. Figure 2.33 2.26 The plates of a parallel plate capacitor have an area of 90 square centimeters each and are separated by 2.5 millimeters. The capacitor is charged by connecting it to a 400V supply. How much electrostatic energy is stored by the capacitor? B. View this energy is stored in the electrostatic field between the plates, and obtain the energy per unit volume U. Hence arrive at a relation between U and the magnitude of electric field E between the plates 2.27 A4 microth capacitor is charged by a 200V supply. It is then disconnected from the supply, and is connected to another uncharged 2 microth capacitor. How much electrostatic energy of the first capacitor is lost in the form of heat and electromagnetic radiation? 2.28 show that the force on each plate of a parallel plate capacitor has a magnitude equal to 1 half QE. Where Q is the charge on the capacitor, and E is the magnitude of electric field between the plates. Explain the origin of the factor 1 half. Physics 92.29 A spherical capacitor consists of two concentric spherical conductors, held in position by suitable insulating supports fig. 2.34 Show that the capacitance of a spherical capacitor is given by 012124RRCRRF where R1 and R2 are the radii of outer and inner spheres, respectively. 2.30 A spherical capacitor has an inner sphere of radius 12 cm and an outer sphere of radius 13 cm. The outer sphere is earthed and the inner sphere is given a charge of 2.5 micron. The space between the concentric spheres is filled with a liquid of dielectric constant 32. A determine the capacitance of the capacitor B. What is the potential of the inner sphere C? Compare the capacitance of this capacitor with that of an isolated sphere of radius 12 cm. Explain why the latter is much smaller. 2.31 Answer carefully. A two large conducting spheres carrying charges Q1 and Q2 are brought close to each other. Is the magnitude of electrostatic force between them exactly given by Q1Q240R2, where R is the distance between their centers B if Coulomb's law involved 1R3 dependence instead of 1R2? Would Gauss's law be still true? C a small test charge is released at rest at a point in an electrostatic field configuration. Will it travel along the field line passing through that point D? What is the work done by the field of a nucleus in a complete circular orbit of the electron? What if the orbit is elliptical figure 2.34? Electrostatic potential and capacitance 91 E. We know that electric field is discontinuous across the surface of a charged conductor. 
Is electric potential also discontinuous there? F. What meaning would you give to the capacitance of a single conductor? G. Guess a possible reason why water has a much greater dielectric constant 80 than, say, mica 6. 2.32 A cylindrical capacitor has two coaxial cylinders of length 15 cm and radii 1.5 cm and 1.4 cm. The outer cylinder is earthed and the inner cylinder is given a charge of 3.5 micron. Determine the capacitance of the system and the potential of the inner cylinder. Neglect end effects that is. Bending of field lines at the ends 2.33 A parallel plate capacitor is to be designed with a voltage rating 1 kV, using a material of dielectric constant 3 and dielectric strength about 107 Vm1. Dielectric strength is the maximum electric field a material can tolerate without breakdown, that is, without starting to conduct electricity through partial ionization. For safety, we should like the field never to exceed, say 10 of the dielectric strength. What minimum area of the plates is required to have a capacitance of 50 PF 2.34 described schematically the equipotential surfaces corresponding to a constant electric field in the Z direction? Be a field that uniformly increases in magnitude but remains in a constant say, Z direction, see a single positive charge at the origin, and D a uniform grid consisting of long equally spaced parallel charged wires in a plane. 2.35 A small sphere of radius R1 and charge Q1 is enclosed by a spherical shell of radius R2 and charge Q2. Show that if Q1 is positive, charge will necessarily flow from the sphere to the shell when the two are connected by a wire no matter what the charge Q2 on the shell is. 2.36 Answer the following. At the top of the atmosphere is at about 400 kV with respect to the surface of the Earth, corresponding to an electric field that decreases with altitude. Near the surface of the Earth, the field is about 100 Vm1. Why then do we not get an electric shock as we step out of our house into the open? Assume the house to be a steel cage so there is no field inside. B. A man fixes outside his house one evening a 2-meter high insulating slab carrying on its top a large aluminium sheet of area 1 and 2. Will he get an electric shock if he touches the metal sheet next morning? See the discharging current in the atmosphere due to the small conductivity of air is known to be 1,800 A on an average over. Physics 90 to the globe. Why then does the atmosphere not discharge itself completely in due course and become electrically neutral in other words? What keeps the atmosphere charged? E. What are the forms of energy into which the electrical energy of the atmosphere is dissipated during a lightning? Hint, the Earth has an electric field of about 100 Vm1 at its surface in the downward direction, corresponding to a surface charge density minus 10-9 Cm2. Due to the slight conductivity of the atmosphere up to about 50 km beyond which it is good conductor, about 1800 C is pumped every second into the Earth as a whole. The Earth However, does not get discharged since thunderstorms and lightning occurring continually all over the globe pump an equal amount of negative charge on the Earth. 3.1 Introduction in Chapter 1 All charges whether free or bound, were considered to be at rest. Charges and motion constitute an electric current. Such currents occur naturally in many situations. Lightning is one such phenomenon in which charges flow from the clouds to the Earth through the atmosphere, sometimes with disastrous results. The flow of charges in lightning is not steady, but in our everyday life we see many devices where charges flow in a steady manner, like water flowing smoothly in a river. A torch and a cell-driven clock are examples of such devices. In the present chapter, we shall study some of the basic laws concerning steady electric currents. 3.2 Electric current Imagine a small area held normal to the direction of flow of charges. Both the positive and the negative charges may flow forward and backward across the area. In a given time interval t, let q be the net amount that is, forward minus backward of positive charge that flows in the forward direction across the area. Similarly, let q be the net amount of negative charge flowing across the area in the forward direction. The net amount of charge flowing across the area in the forward direction in the time interval t, then, is q q, q. This is proportional to t for steady current chapter 3 current electricity. Physics 94 and the quotient QIT 3.1 is defined to be the current across the area in the forward direction. If it turn out to be a negative number, it implies a current in the backward direction. Currents are not always steady and hence more generally, we define the current as follows. Let Q be the net charge flowing across a cross section of a conductor during the time interval T that is, between times T and TT. Then, the current at time t across the cross-section of the conductor is defined as the value of the ratio of q to t and the limit of t tending to zero. Zero lim t q i t t 3.2 in SI units, the unit of current is ampere, and ampere is defined through magnetic effects of currents that we will study in the following chapter. An ampere is typically the order of magnitude of currents in domestic appliances. An average lightning carries currents of the order of tens of thousands of amperes and at the other extreme, currents in our nerves are in microamperes. 
3.3 electric currents and conductors in electric charge will experience a force if an electric field is applied. If it is free to move, it will thus move contributing to a current. In nature, free charged particles do exist like an upper strata of atmosphere called the ionosphere. However, in atoms and molecules, the negatively charged electrons and the positively charged nuclei are bound to each other and are thus not free to move. Bulk matter is made up of many molecules. A gram of water, for example, contains approximately 1022 molecules. These molecules are so closely packed that the electrons are no longer attached to individual nuclei. In some materials, the electrons will still be bound, that is, they will not accelerate even if an electric field is applied. In other materials, notably metals, some of the electrons are practically free to move within the bulk material. These materials, generally called conductors, develop electric currents in them when an electric field is applied. If we consider solid conductors, then of course the atoms are tightly bound to each other so that the current is carried by the negatively charged electrons. There are, however, other types of conductors like electrolytic solutions where positive and negative charges both can move. In our discussions, we will focus only on solid conductors so that the current is carried by the negatively charged electrons in the background of fixed positive ions. Consider first the case when no electric field is present, the electrons will be moving due to thermal motion during which they collide with the fixed ions. An electron colliding with an ion emerges with the same speed as before the collision, however, the direction of its velocity after the collision is completely random. At a given time, there is no preferential direction for the velocities of the electrons, thus on the average. The current electricity 95 number of electrons traveling in any direction will be equal to the number of electrons traveling in the opposite direction. So, there will be no net electric current. Let us now see what happens to such a piece of conductor if an electric field is applied. To focus our thoughts, I imagine the conductor in the shape of a cylinder of radius R figure 3.1. Suppose we now take two thin circular disks of a dielectric of the same radius and put positive charge Q distributed over one disk and similarly Q at the other disk. We attach the two disks on the two flat surfaces of the cylinder. An electric field will be created and is directed from the positive towards the negative charge. The electrons will be accelerated due to this field towards Q. They will thus move to neutralize the charges, the electrons as long as they are moving, will constitute an electric current. Hence in the situation considered, there will be a current for a very short while and no current thereafter. We can also imagine a mechanism where the ends of the cylinder are supplied with fresh charges to make up for any charges neutralized by electrons moving inside the conductor. In that case, there will be a steady electric field in the body of the conductor. This will result in a continuous current rather than a current for a short period of time. Mechanisms, which maintain a steady electric field are cells or batteries that we shall study later in this chapter. In the next sections, we shall study the steady current that results from a steady electric field in conductors. 3.4 Ohm's law A basic law regarding flow of currents was discovered by G.S. Ohm in 1828, long before the physical mechanism responsible for flow of currents was discovered. Imagine a conductor through which a current I is flowing and let V be the potential difference between the ends of the conductor. Then Ohm's law states that VI or VRI 3.3 where the constant of proportionality R is called the resistance of the conductor. The SI units of resistance is Ohm, and is denoted by the symbol Greek letter Omega. The resistance R not only depends on the material of the conductor but also on the dimensions of the conductor. The dependence of R on the dimensions of the conductor can easily be determined as follows. Consider a conductor satisfying it. 3.3 to be in the form of a slab of length L in cross-sectional area A figure 3.2 A. Imagine placing two such identical slabs side by side fig. 3.2 B, so that the length of the combination is 2 liters. The current flowing through the combination is the same as that flowing through either of the slabs. If V is the potential difference across the ends of the first slab, then V is also the potential difference across the ends of the second slab since the second slab is figure 3.1 charges Q and Q put at the ends of a metallic cylinder. The electrons will drift because of the electric field created to neutralize the charges. The current thus will stop after a while unless the charges Q and Q are continuously replenished. Figure 3.2 illustrating the relation R lay for a rectangular slab of length L and area of cross section A. Physics 96 identical to the first and the same current I flows through both. The potential difference across the ends of the combination is clearly sum of the potential difference across the two individual slabs and hence equals 2V. The current through the combination is I and the resistance of the combination RC is from EC 3.3, 2 CVRRI 3.4 since VIR, the resistance of either of the slabs. Thus, doubling the length of a conductor doubles the resistance, in general, then resistance is proportional to length. 
RL 3.5 Next, imagine dividing the slab into two by cutting it lengthwise so that the slab can be considered as a combination of two identical slabs of length L. But each having a cross-sectional area of A2 figure 3.2 C, for a given voltage V across the slab, if I is the current through the entire slab, then clearly the current flowing through each of the two half slabs is I2. Since the potential difference across the ends of the half slabs is V, that is, the same as across the full slab, the resistance of each of the half slabs R1 is 1 2 2. 2 V the RRI I 3.6 thus, having the area of the cross section of a conductor doubles the resistance. In general, then the resistance R is inversely proportional to the cross sectional area, 1 RA 3.7 combining EQS. 3.5 and 3.7, we have LRA 3.8 and hence for a given conductor LRA Greek letter O 3.9 where the constant of proportionality Greek letter O depends on the material of the conductor but not on its dimensions. Greek letter O is called resistivity, using the last equation, Ohm's law reads IL the IRA Greek letter O x 3.10 current per unit area taken normal to the current, IA, is called current density and is denoted by J. The SI units of the current density are AM2. Further, if V is the magnitude of uniform electric field in the conductor whose length is L, then the potential difference V across its ends is L. Using these, the last equation reads Georg Simon Ohm 1787, 1854, Georg Simon Ohm 1787, 1854 German physicist, professor at Munich. Ohm was led to his law by an analogy between the conduction of heat, the electric field is analogous to the temperature gradient, and the electric current is analogous to the heat flow. Current electricity 97 ELJ Greek letter O L R, EJ Greek letter O 3.11 The above relation for magnitudes E and J can indeed be cast in a vector form. The current density, which we have defined as the current through unit area normal to the current is also directed along E, and is also a vector J J E E. Thus, the last equation can be written as, each 3.12 or, J Greek letter sigma E 3.13 where Greek letter sigma 1 Greek letter O is called the conductivity. Ohm's law is often stated in an equivalent form, x 3.13 inches addition to x 3.3. In the next section, we will try to understand the origin of the Ohm's laws arising from the characteristics of the drift of electrons. 3.5 Drift of electrons and the origin of resistivity As remarked before, an electron will suffer collisions with the heavy fixed ions, but after collision, it will emerge with the same speed but in random directions. If we consider all the electrons, their average velocity will be zero since their directions are random. Thus, if there are n electrons and the velocity of the ith electron i1, 2, 3, n at a given time is v, then 101 n i v n 3.14 Consider now the situation when an electric field is present. Electrons will be accelerated due to this field by E A M 3.15 where E is the charge and M is the mass of an electron. Consider again the ith electron at a given time t. This electron would have had its last collision some time before t, and let t be the time elapsed after its last collision. If V was its velocity immediately after the last collision, then its velocity V at time t is E V V I I E T M 3.16 and starting with its last collision it was accelerated fig. 3.3 with an acceleration given by x 3.15 for a time interval t, the average velocity of the electrons at time t is the average of all the v's. The average of v's is 0 x 3.14 since immediately after any collision, the direction of the velocity of an electron is completely random. The collisions of the electrons do not occur at regular intervals but at random times, let us denote by Greek letter tau, the average time between successive collisions. Then at a given time, some of the electrons would have spent figure 3.3 a schematic picture of an electron moving from a point A to another point B through repeated collisions. And straight line travel between collisions full lines, if an electric field is applied as shown, the electron ends up at point B dotted lines. A slight drift in a direction opposite the electric field is visible. Physics 98 time more than Greek letter tau and some less than Greek letter tau. In other words, the time t in x 3.16 will be less than Greek letter tau for some and more than Greek letter tau for others as we go through the values of I1, 2. And the average value of t then is Greek letter tau known as relaxation time, thus, averaging x 3.16 over the n electrons at any given time t gives us for the average velocity v d e v v d i i average 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 e t m v e 0 Greek letter tau Greek letter tau e m n 3.17 this last result is surprising. It tells us that the electrons move with an average velocity which is independent of time, although electrons are accelerated. This is the phenomenon of drift and the velocity v d in x 3.17 is called the drift velocity. Because of the drift, there will be net transport of charges across any area perpendicular to E. Consider a planar area A. 
located inside the conductor such that the normal to the area is parallel to E figure 3.4. Then because of the drift, in an infinitesimal amount of time t, all electrons to the left of the area at distances up to VDT would have crossed the area. If n is the number of free electrons per unit volume in the metal, then there are NTVDA such electrons. Since each electron carries a charge E, the total charge transported across this area A to the right in time T is now AVDT. E is directed towards the left and hence the total charge transported along E across the area is negative of this. The amount of charge crossing the area A in time D is by definition X 3.2 IT, where I is the magnitude of the current. Hence, VDT and EAT 3.18 substituting the value of VD from EG 3.172 Greek letter tau NEAITTN 3.19 by definition I is related to the magnitude J of the current density by IJA 3.20 hence. From EQS 3.19 and 3.20, 2 Greek letter tau JENA and 3.21 the vector J is parallel to E and hence we can write EG. 3.21 inches the vector form 2 Greek letter tau JENA and 3.22 comparison with X 3.13 shows that X 3.22 is exactly the Ohm's law. If we identify the conductivity Greek letter sigma as figure 3.4 current in a metallic conductor. The magnitude of current density in a metal is the magnitude of charge contained in a cylinder of unit area and length VD. Current electricity 99 example 3.12 nan Greek letter sigma Greek letter tau 3.23 We thus see that a very simple picture of electrical conduction reproduces Ohm's law. We have, of course, made assumptions that Greek letter tau and n are constants, independent of E we shall, in the next section, discuss the limitations of Ohm's law. Example 3.1 I estimate the average drift speed of conduction electrons in a copper wire of cross-sectional area 1.0 x 10-7 and 2 carrying a current of 1.5 A. Assume that each copper atom contributes roughly one conduction electron. The density of copper is 9.0 x 103 kg m3, and its atomic mass is 63.5 u. B. Compare the drift speed obtained above with I thermal speeds of copper atoms at ordinary temperatures, to speed of propagation of electric field along the conductor which causes the drift motion. Solution of the direction of drift velocity of conduction electrons is opposite to the electric field direction, that is, electrons drift in the direction of increasing potential. The drift speed VD is given by X 3.18 VD I knee now, E 1.6 X 10-19 C, A 1.0 X 10-7 M2, I 1.5 A the density of conduction electrons. N is equal to the number of atoms per cubic meter assuming one conduction electron per Ku atom as is reasonable from its valence electron count of 1. A cubic meter of copper has a mass of 9.0 x 103 kilograms, since 6.0 x 1023 copper atoms have a mass of 63.5 grams. 2366.0109.01063.5 nxxx 8.5 x 1028 m3 which gives 28 minus 19 minus 71.58.5101610 10 xxxxx dv 1.1 x 10-3 meters s1 1.1 millimeters s1 bi at a temperature t. The thermal speed of a copper atom of mass m is obtained from 1 2 mv2. 3 2 kbt and is thus typically of the order of bktm, where kb is the Boltzmann constant. For copper at 300 k, this is about 2 x 102 meters as this figure indicates the random vibrational speeds of copper atoms in a conductor. Note that the drift speed of electrons is much smaller, about 10-5 times the typical thermal speed at ordinary temperatures. 2 an electric field traveling along the conductor has a speed of an electromagnetic wave, namely equal to 3.0 x 108 meters s1 you will learn about this in chapter 8. The drift speed is, in comparison, extremely small, smaller by a factor of 10-11. 100 example 3.2 example 3.2 in example 3.1, the electron drift speed is estimated to be only a few mm s1 for currents in the range of a few amperes. How then is current established almost the instant a circuit is closed b the electron drift arises due to the force experienced by electrons in the electric field inside the conductor. But force should cause acceleration, why then do the electrons acquire a steady average drift speed c if the electron drift speed is so small? And the electron's charge is small, how can we still obtain large amounts of current in a conductor d when electrons drift in a metal from lower to higher potential? Does it mean that all the free electrons of the metal are moving in the same direction E or the paths of electrons straight lines between successive collisions with the positive ions of the metal in the I absence of electric field? 2. Presence of electric field solution A electric field is established throughout the circuit, almost instantly with the speed of light causing at every point a local electron drift. Establishment of a current does not have to wait for electrons from one end of the conductor traveling to the other end. 
However, it does take a little while for the current to reach its steady value be each free electron does accelerate, increasing its drift speed until it collides with a positive ion of the metal. It loses its drift speed after collision but starts to accelerate and increases its drift speed again only to suffer a collision again and so on. On the average, therefore, electrons acquire only a drift speed C simple, because the electron number density is enormous, 1029 M3. D by no means. The drift velocity is superposed over the large random velocities of electrons E in the absence of electric field, the paths are straight lines, in the presence of electric field, the paths are, in general, curved. 3, 5, 1 mobility as we have seen, conductivity arises from mobile charge carriers, in metals, these mobile charge carriers are electrons, in an ionized gas, they are electrons and positive charged ions, in an electrolyte, these can be both positive and negative ions. An important quantity is the mobility micro defined as the magnitude of the drift velocity per unit electric field, DE micro V3.24 The SI unit of mobility is M2 versus and is 104 of the mobility in practical units CM2 versus. Mobility is positive, from X3.17, we have VDEM. Current electricity 101 hence, Greek letter tau micro DVEM 3.25 where Greek letter tau is the average collision time for electrons. 3.6 Limitations of Ohm's Law Although Ohm's Law has been found valid over a large class of materials, there do exist materials and devices used in electric circuits where the proportionality of V and I does not hold. The deviations broadly are one or more of the following types, of E ceases to be proportional to I fig. 3.5 B The relation between V and I depends on the sign of V In other words, if I is the current for a certain V, then reversing the direction of V keeping its magnitude fixed does not produce a current of the same magnitude as I in the opposite direction fig. 3.6 This happens, for example, in a diode which we will study in chapter 14 see the relation between V and I is not unique, that is, there is more than one value of V for the same current I fig. 3.7 A material exhibiting such behavior is ga as, materials and devices not obeying Ohm's law in the form of ek. 3.3 are actually widely used in electronic circuits, in this and a few subsequent chapters, however, we will study the electrical currents in materials that obey Ohm's law. 3.7 Resistivity of various materials The resistivities of various common materials are listed in Table 3.1. The materials are classified as conductors, semiconductors and insulators Figure 3.5 The dashed line represents the linear Ohm's law. The solid line is the voltage V versus current I for a good conductor. Figure 3.6 Characteristic curve of a diode. Note the different scales for negative and positive values of the voltage and current. Figure 3.7 Variation of current versus voltage for Gaia's. Physics 102 Depending on their resistivities, in an increasing order of their values, metals have low resistivities in the range of 10-8 to 10-6. At the other end are insulators like ceramic, rubber and plastics having resistivities 1018 times greater than metals or more. In between the two are the semiconductors, these, however, have resistivities characteristically decreasing with a rise in temperature. The resistivities of semiconductors are also affected by presence of small amount of impurities. This last feature is exploited in use of semiconductors for electronic devices. Table 3.1 Resistivities of some materials Material resistivity, Greek letter rho temperature coefficient Greek letter omega m at 0 degrees Celsius of resistivity. Greek letter alpha degrees Celsius minus 1 1 d at 0 c d Greek letter rho Greek letter rho degrees t conductor silver 1.6 x 10-80.0041 copper 1.7 x 10-80.0068 aluminium 2.7 x 10-80.0043 tungsten 5.6 x 10-80.0045 iron 10 x 10-80.0065 platinum 11 x 10-80.0039 mercury 98 x 10-80.0 0009 Nichrome 100, X 10-80.0004 Alloy of Ni, Fe, CR Manganin Alloy 48 X 10-80.0002 X 10-3 Semiconductors Carbon Graphite 3.5 X 10-50.0005 Germanium 0.46 to 0.05 Silicon 2300 0.07 Insulators Pure Water 2.5 X 105 Glass 1010 1014 Hard Rubber 1013 1016 and ACL 1014 Fused Quartz 1016 Commercially produced resistors for domestic use or in laboratories are of two major types, wire-bound resistors and carbon resistors. Wire-bound resistors are made by winding the wires of an alloy, viz, manganin, constantin, nichrome or similar ones. The choice of these materials is dictated mostly by the fact that their resistivities are relatively insensitive to temperature. 
These resistances are typically in the range of a fraction of an ohm to a few hundred ohms. Current electricity 103 resistors in the higher range are made mostly from carbon. Carbon resistors are compact, inexpensive and thus find extensive use in electronic circuits. Carbon resistors are small in size and hence their values are given using a color code. Table 3.2 Resistor Color Codes Color Number Multiplier Tolerance Black 0 1 Brown 1 101 Red 2 102 Orange 3 103 Yellow 4 104 Green 5 105 Blue 6 106 Violet 7 107 Gray 8 108 White 9 109 Gold 10 15 Silver 10 210 No Color 20 The resistors have a set of coaxial colored rings on them whose significance are listed in Table 3.2. The first two bands from the end indicate the first two significant figures of the resistance in ohms. The third band indicates the decimal multiplier as listed in Table 3.2. The last band stands for tolerance or possible variation in percentage about the indicated values. Sometimes, this last band is absent and that indicates a tolerance of 20 figure 3.8. For example, if the four colors are orange, blue, yellow and gold, the resistance value is 36x104 Greek letter omega, with a tolerance value of 5. 3.8 Temperature Dependence of Resistivity The resistivity of a material is found to be dependent on the temperature. Different materials do not exhibit the same dependence on temperatures, over a limited range of temperatures. That is not too large. The resistivity of a metallic conductor is approximately given by Greek letter Rho 01 Greek letter Alpha T, T0 3.26 Where is the resistivity at a temperature T and Greek letter Rho 0 is the same at a reference temperature T0. Greek letter alpha is called the temperature coefficient of resistivity, and from EC 3.26, the dimension of Greek letter alpha is temperature minus 1. Figure 3.8 color-coded resistors A 22x102 Greek letter omega plus or minus 10, B47x10 Greek letter omega plus or minus 5. Physics 104 for metals, Greek letter alpha is positive and values of Greek letter alpha for some metals at T00 degrees Celsius are listed in Table 3.1. The relation of X 3.26 implies that a graph of plotted against T would be a straight line. At temperatures much lower than 0 degrees Celsius, the graph, however, deviates considerably from a straight line fig. 3.9, equation 3.26 thus, can be used approximately over a limited range of T around any reference temperature T0, where the graph can be approximated as a straight line. Some materials like nichrome which is an alloy of nickel, iron and chromium exhibit a very weak dependence of resistivity with temperature fig. 3.10, manganin and constantin have similar properties. These materials are thus widely used in wire-bound standard resistors since their resistance values would change very little with temperatures. Unlike metals, the resistivities of semiconductors decrease with increasing temperatures. A typical dependence is shown in FIG. 3.11, we can qualitatively understand the temperature dependence of resistivity, in the light of our derivation of EC. 3.23, from this equation. Resistivity of the material is given by 2 1 meters any Greek letter rho Greek letter sigma Greek letter tau 3.27 Greek letter rho thus depends inversely both on the number n of free electrons per unit volume and on the average time Greek letter tau between collisions. As we increase temperature, average speed of the electrons, which act as the carriers of current, increases resulting in more frequent collisions. The average time of collisions Greek letter tau, thus decreases with temperature, in a metal, and is not dependent on temperature to any appreciable extent and thus the decrease in the value of Greek letter tau with rise in temperature causes Greek letter rho to increase as we have observed. For insulators and semiconductors, however, n increases with temperature, this increase more than compensates any decrease in Greek letter tau in X 3.23 so that for such materials, Greek letter rho decreases with temperature. Figure 3.9 Resistivity of copper as a function of temperature T Figure 3.10 Resistivity of nichrome as a function of absolute temperature T Figure 3.11 Temperature dependence of resistivity for a typical semiconductor Greek letter row 105 Example 3.4 Example 3.3 An electric toaster uses nichrome for its heating element, when a negligibly small current passes through it. Its resistance at room temperature 27.0 degrees Celsius is found to be 75.3 Greek letter omega, when the toaster is connected to a 230 V supply. The current settles, after a few seconds, to a steady value of 2.68 A. What is the steady temperature of the nichrome element? The temperature coefficient of resistance of nichrome averaged over the temperature range involved is 1.70 x 10-4 degrees Celsius 1. Solution when the current through the element is very small. Heating effects can be ignored and the temperature T1 of the element is the same as room temperature. When the toaster is connected to the supply, its initial current will be slightly higher than its steady value of 2.68 A but due to heating effect of the current. 
the temperature will rise. This will cause an increase in resistance and a slight decrease in current. In a few seconds, a steady state will be reached when temperature will rise no further, and both the resistance of the element and the current drawn will achieve steady values. The resistance R2 of the steady temperature T2 is R2 230 V85.82.68 A Greek letter omega using the relation R2 R11 Greek letter alpha T2 T1 with Greek letter alpha 1.70 x 10-4 degrees Celsius 1. We get T2 T1 minus 485.8 minus 75.375.31.7010 x x 820 degrees Celsius that is, T2 820 27.0 degrees Celsius 847 degrees Celsius thus. The steady temperature of the heating element when heating effect due to the current equals heat loss to the surroundings is 847 degrees Celsius. Example 3.4 The resistance of the platinum wire of a platinum resistance thermometer at the ice point is 5 Greek letter omega and its steam point is 5.39 Greek letter omega, when the thermometer is inserted in a hot bath. The resistance of the platinum wire is 5.795 Greek letter omega, calculate the temperature of the bath, solution R05 Greek letter omega. R105.23 Greek letter omega and RT5.795 Greek letter omega now, 0 0 100 0 100, 1 TTR RTR RTR R Greek letter alpha X5, 795, 5, 1 0 0, 5, 2 3, 5, X0.795 100 0 0.23 X345.65 degrees Celsius 3.9 electrical energy. Power consider a conductor with endpoints A and B, in which a current I is flowing from A to B. The electric potential at A and B are denoted by VA example 3.3. Physics 106 and VB respectively. Since current is flowing from A to B, VA, VB and the potential difference across AB is VBA VB, 0. In a time interval T, an amount of charge QIT travels from A to B the potential energy of the charge at A. By definition, with QVA and similarly at B, it is QVB, thus. Change in its potential energy a pot is a pot final potential energy, initial potential energy QVBBA QVIVT, 0.3.28 if charges moved without collision through the conductor, their kinetic energy would also change so that the total energy is unchanged. Conservation of total energy would then imply that, K a pot 3.29 that is, KIVT, 0.3.30 thus, in case charges were moving freely through the conductor under the action of electric field, their kinetic energy would increase as they move. We have, however, seen earlier that on the average, charge carriers do not move with acceleration but with a steady drift velocity. This is because of the collisions with ions and atoms during transit. During collisions, the energy gained by the charges thus is shared with the atoms. The atoms vibrate more vigorously, that is, the conductor heats up. Thus, in an actual conductor, an amount of energy dissipated as heat in the conductor during the time interval T is. WIVT 3.31 The energy dissipated per unit time is the power dissipated PWT and we have PIV 3.32 using Ohm's law VIR, we get PI 2 RV 2 R 3.33 as the power loss ohmic loss in a conductor of resistance R carrying a current I it is this power which heats up. For example, the coil of an electric bulb to incandescence, radiating out heat and light, where does the power come from as we have reasoned before, we need an external source to keep a steady current through the conductor. It is clearly the source which must supply this power. In the simple circuit shown with the cell figure 3.12, it is the chemical energy of the cell which supplies this power for as long as it can. The expressions for power, EQS 3.32 and 3.33, show the dependence of the power dissipated in a resistor R on the current through it and the voltage across it. Equation 3.33 has an important application to power transmission. Electrical power is transmitted from power stations to homes and factories, which figure 3.12 heat is produced in the resistor R which is connected across the terminals of a cell. The energy dissipated in the resistor R comes from the chemical energy of the electrolyte. Current electricity 107 may be hundreds of miles away, via transmission cables. One obviously wants to minimize the power loss in the transmission cables connecting the power stations to homes and factories. We shall see now how this can be achieved. Consider a device R, to which a power P is to be delivered via transmission cables having a resistance RC to be dissipated by it finally. If V is the voltage across R and I the current through it, then PVI 3.3 for the connecting wires from the power station to the device has a finite resistance RC. The power dissipated in the connecting wires, which is wasted is PC with PCI to RC 2 to CPRV 3.35 from EC. 3.32, thus, to drive a device of power P, the power wasted in the connecting wires is inversely proportional to V2. 
The transmission cables from power stations are hundreds of miles long and their resistance RC is considerable. To reduce PC, these wires carry current at enormous values of V and this is the reason for the high voltage danger signs on transmission lines a common sight as we move away from populated areas. Using electricity at such voltages is not safe and hence at the other end, a device called a transformer lowers the voltage to a value suitable for use. 3.10 combination of resistor series and parallel the current through a single resistor R across which there is a potential difference V is given by Ohm's law IVR. Resistors are sometimes joined together and there are simple rules for calculation of equivalent resistance of such combination. Figure 3.13A series combination of two resistors R1 and R2. Two resistors are said to be in series if only one of their endpoints is joined fig. 3.13. If a third resistor is joined with a series combination of the two figure 3.14, then all three are said to be in series. Clearly, we can extend this definition to series combination of any number of resistors. Figure 3.14A series combination of three resistors R1, R2, R3. Two or more resistors are said to be in parallel if one end of all the resistors is joined together and similarly the other ends joined together fig. 3.15. Physics 108 Consider two resistors R1 and R2 in series, the charge which leaves R1 must be entering R2. Since current measures the rate of flow of charge, this means that the same current I flows through R1 and R2. By Ohm's law, potential difference across R1 V1 I R1, and potential difference across R2 V2 I R2. The potential difference V across the combination is V1 V2. Hence, V V1 V2 I R1 R2 3.36 This is as if the combination had an equivalent resistance rec. Which by Ohm's law is REC VIR1 R2 3.37 If we had three resistors connected in series, then similarly the IR1 IR2 IR3 IR1 R2 R3. 3.38 This obviously can be extended to a series combination of any number N of resistors R1, R2, Rn. The equivalent resistance REC is REC R1 R2, Rn 3.39 Consider now the parallel combination of two resistors FIG. 3.15, the charge that flows in at A from the left flows out partly through R1 and partly through R2. The currents I, I1, I2 shown in the figure are the rates of flow of charge at the points indicated. Hence, I I1 I2 3.40 The potential difference between A and B is given by the Ohm's law applied to R1 V I1 R1 3.41 also. Ohm's law applied to R2 gives V I to R2 3.42 I I1 I2 V R V R V R R1 2 1 2 1 1 3.43 If the combination was replaced by an equivalent resistance rec, we would have, by Ohm's law rec V I R 3.44 hence, 1 2 1 1 1 E Q R R R 3.45 We can easily see how this extends to three resistors in parallel fig. 3.16 Current electricity 109 exactly as before I I1 I2 I3 3.46 and applying Ohm's law to R1. R2 and R3 we get, V I1 R1, V I2 R2, V I3 R3 3.47 so that I I1 I2 I3 the R R R1 1 1 1 1 2 3 3.48 an equivalent resistance rec that replaces the combination. Would be such that ek V I R 3.49 and hence 1 2 3 1 1 1 1 E Q R R R R 3.50 We can reason similarly for any number of resistors in parallel. The equivalent resistance of N resistors R1, R2, Rn is 1 2 N 1 1 1 1 E Q R R R R 3.51 These formulae for equivalent resistances can be used to find out currents and voltages in more complicated circuits. Consider for example, the circuit in Fig 3.17, where there are three resistors R1, R2 and R3, R2 and R3 are in parallel and hence we can replace them by an equivalent 23 EQR between point B and C with 23 2 3 1 1 1 EQ R or 23 2 3 The circuit now has R1 and 23 EQR in series and hence their combination can be replaced by an equivalent resistance with 123 23 1 EQR 3.53 If the voltage between A and C is V, the current I is given by IVR VRRR REC 123 1 2 3 2 3 2 3 1 2 1 3 2 3 The RRRRRR 3.54 Figure 3.17 A combination of three resistors R1, R2 and R3. R2, R3 are in parallel with an equivalent resistance 23 EQR, R1 and 23 EQR are in series with an equivalent resistance 123 EQR. Physics 110 3.11 cells, EMF, internal resistance we have already mentioned that a simple device to maintain a steady current in an electric circuit is the electrolytic cell. Basically a cell has two electrodes, called the positive P and the negative N, as shown in Fig. 3.18 they are immersed in an electrolytic solution, dipped in the solution, the electrodes exchange charges with the electrolyte. 
the positive electrode has a potential difference VV, zero between itself and the electrolyte solution immediately adjacent to it marked A in the figure. Similarly, the negative electrode develops a negative potential VV0 relative to the electrolyte adjacent to it, marked as B in the figure. When there is no current, the electrolyte has the same potential throughout, so that the potential difference between P and N is VVVV. This difference is called the electromotive force EMF of the cell and is denoted by Greek letter epsilon, thus Greek letter epsilon VV, 0.3.55 Note that Greek letter epsilon is, actually, a potential difference and not a force. The name EMF, however, is used because of historical reasons, and was given at a time when the phenomenon was not understood properly. To understand the significance of Greek letter epsilon, consider a resistor R connected across the cell figure 3.18. A current I flows across R from C to D as explained before. A steady current is maintained because current flows from N to P through the electrolyte. Clearly, across the electrolyte the same current flows through the electrolyte but from N to P, whereas through R. It flows from P to N. The electrolyte through which a current flows has a finite resistance R, called the internal resistance. Consider first the situation when R is infinite so that IVR0, where V is the potential difference between P and N now. The potential difference between P and A potential difference between A and B potential difference between B and N Greek letter epsilon 3.56 thus. EMF Greek letter epsilon is the potential difference between the positive and negative electrodes in an open circuit, that is, when no current is flowing through the cell. If however R is finite, I is not zero, in that case the potential difference between P and N is VVVIR Greek letter epsilon IR 3.57 Note the negative sign in the expression IR for the potential difference between A and B. This is because the current I flows from B to A in the electrolyte. In practical calculations, internal resistances of cells in the circuit may be neglected when the current I is such that Greek letter epsilon, IR. The actual values of the internal resistances of cells vary from cell to cell. The internal resistance of dry cells, however, is much higher than the common electrolytic cells. Figure 3.18 A sketch of an electrolyte cell with positive terminal P and negative terminal N. The gap between the electrodes is exaggerated for clarity. A and B are points in the electrolyte typically close to P and N be the symbol for a cell. Referring to P and N, referring to the N electrode, electrical connections to the cell are made at P and N. Current electricity 111 We also observe that since V is the potential difference across R, we have from Ohm's law of the IR 3.58 combining EQS. 3.57 and 3.58, we get IR Greek letter epsilon IR or IR Greek letter epsilon 3.59. The maximum current that can be drawn from a cell is for R0 and it is I max Greek letter epsilon R. However, in most cells the maximum allowed current is much lower than this to prevent permanent damage to the cell. Charges and clouds in olden days lightning was considered as an atmospheric flash of supernatural origin. It was believed to be the great weapon of gods, but today the phenomenon of lightning can be explained scientifically by elementary principles of physics. Atmospheric electricity arises due to the separation of electric charges. In the ionosphere and magnetosphere strong electric current is generated from the solar-terrestrial interaction. In the lower atmosphere, the current is weaker and is maintained by thunderstorm. There are ice particles in the clouds, which grow, collide, fracture and break apart. The smaller particles acquire positive charge and the larger ones negative charge. These charged particles get separated by updrifts in the clouds and gravity. The upper portion of the cloud becomes positively charged and the middle negatively charged, leading to dipole structure. Sometimes a very weak positive charge is found near the base of the cloud. The ground is positively charged at the time of thunderstorm development. Also, cosmic and radioactive radiations ionize air into positive and negative ions and the air becomes weakly electrically conductive. The separation of charges produced tremendous amount of electrical potential within the cloud, as well, as between the cloud and ground. This can amount to millions of volts and eventually the electrical resistance in the air breaks down and lightning flash begins and thousands of amperes of current flows. The electric field is of the order of 105 VMA lightning flash is composed of a series of strokes with an average of about 4 and the duration of each flash is about 30 seconds. The average peak power per stroke is about 1012 watts. During fair weather also there is charge in the atmosphere. The fair weather electric field arises due to the existence of a surface charge density at ground and an atmospheric conductivity. As well as, due to the flow of current from the ionosphere to the Earth's surface, which is of the order of picoampere square meter. The surface charge density at ground is negative, the electric field is directed downward. Over land the average electric field is about 120 Vm, which corresponds to a surface charge density of minus 1.2 x 10-9 cm2. 
over the entire Earth's surface, the total negative charge amount to about 600 kc, an equal positive charge exists in the atmosphere. This electric field is not noticeable in daily life. The reason why it is not noticed is that virtually everything, including our bodies, is conductor compared to air. 112 Example 3.5 Example 3.5 A network of resistors is connected to a 16V battery with internal resistance of 1 Greek letter omega, as shown in Fig. 3.19 A compute the equivalent resistance of the network B obtain the current in each resistor. C obtain the voltage drops fab, VBC and VCD. Figure 3.19 Solution of the network is a simple series and parallel combination of resistors. First the two 4 Greek letter omega resistors in parallel are equivalent to a resistor 4x444 Greek letter omega 2 Greek letter omega, in the same way. The 12 Greek letter omega and 6 Greek letter omega resistors in parallel are equivalent to a resistor of 12x6126 Greek letter omega 4 Greek letter omega. The equivalent resistance R of the network is obtained by combining these resistors 2 Greek letter omega and 4 Greek letter omega with 1 Greek letter omega in series. That is, R2 Greek letter omega 4 Greek letter omega 1 Greek letter omega 7 Greek letter omega B the total current I in the circuit is 16 2A71 Greek letter epsilon V I R R consider the resistors between A and B. If I1 is the current in one of the four Greek letter omega resistors and I2 the current in the other, I1 X4 I2 X4 that is, I1 I2, which is otherwise obvious from the symmetry of the two arms. But I1 I2 I2 A thus, I1 I2 1 A that is, current in each four Greek letter omega resistor is 1 A current in one Greek letter omega resistor between B and C would be 2 A now. Consider the resistances between C and D if I3 is the current in the 12 Greek letter omega resistor, and I4 in the 6 Greek letter omega resistor. I3X12 I4X6, that is, I42 I3 but, I3 I4 I2 A thus, I3 2 3 A. I4 4 3 A that is, the current in the 12 Greek letter omega resistor is 2 3 A, while the current in the 6 Greek letter omega resistor is 4 3 A. See the voltage drop across AB is VAB I1 X4 1 A X4 Greek letter omega 4 V. This can also be obtained by multiplying the total current between A and B by the equivalent resistance between A and B. That is, 113 example 3.5 VAB 2AX2 Greek letter omega 4 V the voltage drop across BC is VBC 2AX1 Greek letter omega 2 V finally. The voltage drop across CD is VCD 12 Greek letter omega X I3 12 Greek letter omega X2 3A8 V this can alternately be obtained by multiplying total current between C and D by the equivalent resistance between C and D. That is, VCD 2AX4 Greek letter omega 8 V note that the total voltage drop across AD is 4 V2 V8 V14 V thus. The terminal voltage of the battery is 14 V, while its EMF is 16 V the loss of the voltage 2 V is accounted for by the internal resistance 1 Greek letter omega of the battery 2AX1 Greek letter omega 2 V3.12 cells in series and in parallel like resistors. Cells can be combined together in an electric circuit, and like resistors, one can, for calculating currents and voltages in a circuit, replace a combination of cells by an equivalent cell. Figure 3.202 Cells of EMFs Greek letter epsilon 1 and Greek letter epsilon 2 in the series R1, R2 are their internal resistances. For connections across A and C, the combination can be considered as one cell of EMF EC and an internal resistance REC. Consider first two cells in series figure 3.20, where one terminal of the two cells is joined together leaving the other terminal in either cell free. Greek letter epsilon 1, Greek letter epsilon 2 are the EMFs of the two cells and R1, R to their internal resistances, respectively. Let VA, VB, VC be the potentials at points A, B and C shown in fig. 3.20, then VA, VB is the potential difference between the positive and negative terminals of the first cell. We have already calculated it in EC 3.57 and hence, AB11 ABBVVI are 3.60 similarly. BC22 BCVVVI are 3.61 hence, the potential difference between the terminals A and C of the combination is ACACA, BBCVVVVVV1212 IR or Greek letter epsilon 3.62. Physics 114 If we wish to replace the combination by a single cell between A and C of EMF EC and internal resistance REC. We would have VAC EC I REC 3.63 comparing the last two equations, we get EC Greek letter epsilon 1 Greek letter epsilon to 3.64 and REC R1 R to 3.65 in figure 3.20, we had connected a negative electrode of the first to the positive electrode of the second. If instead we connect the two negatives, EC. 
3.61 would change to VBC Greek letter epsilon to IR2 and we will get at Greek letter epsilon 1 Greek letter epsilon to Greek letter epsilon 1 Greek letter epsilon to 3.66 The rule for series combination clearly can be extended to any number of cells. I the equivalent EMF of a series combination of N cells is just the sum of their individual EMFs, and to the equivalent internal resistance of a series combination of N cells is just the sum of their internal resistances. This is so, when the current leaves each cell from the positive electrode, if in the combination, the current leaves any cell from the negative electrode, the EMF of the cell enters the expression for EC with a negative sign, as in EC. 3.66. Next, consider a parallel combination of the cells figure 3.21. I1 and I2 are the currents leaving the positive electrodes of the cells. At the point B1, I1 and I2 flow in whereas the current I flows out. Since as much charge flows in as out, we have I I1 I2 3.67 let VB1 and VB2 be the potentials at B1 and B2, respectively. Then, considering the first cell, the potential difference across its terminals is VB1 VB2. Hence, from EC 3.571211 VBB VBI or 3.68 points B1 and B2 are connected exactly similarly to the second cell. Hence considering the second cell, we also have 1 2 2 2 2 VBB VBI or 3.69 combining the last three equations 1 2 I I I Greek letter epsilon Greek letter epsilon Greek letter epsilon Greek letter epsilon 1 1 2 2 1 1 2 2 1 2 1 1 VR VR R R VR R 3.70 hence V is given by 1 2 2 1 1 2 1 2 1 2 R R R R V I R R R R Greek letter epsilon Greek letter epsilon 3.71 if we want to replace the combination by a single cell between B1 and B2, of EMF EC and internal resistance REC, we would have VEC, I REC 3.72 figure 3.212 cells in parallel. For connections across A and C, the combination can be replaced by one cell of EMF EC and internal resistances REC whose values are given in EQS. 3.73 and 3.74 Current electricity 115 The last two equations should be the same and hence 1 2 2 1 1 2 EC Greek letter epsilon Greek letter epsilon Greek letter epsilon 3.731212 we can put these equations in a simpler way 12111 eqrr 3.751212 eqrr Greek letter epsilon Greek letter epsilon Greek letter epsilon 3.76 in fig 3.21 we had joined the positive terminals together and similarly the two negative ones so that the currents i1 i2 flow out of positive terminals if the negative terminal of the second is connected to positive terminal of the first, EQS 3.75 and 3.76 would still be valid with Greek letter epsilon to Greek letter epsilon to equations 3.75 and 3.76 can be extended easily. If there are n cells of EMF Greek letter epsilon 1 and of internal resistances R1, Rn respectively, connected in parallel, the combination is equivalent to a single cell of EMF EC and internal resistance REC, such that 1111RR REC N. 3.77 Greek letter epsilon Greek letter epsilon X X N N R R R 1 1 3.78 3.13 Kirchhoff's rules electric circuits generally consist of a number of resistors and cells interconnected sometimes in a complicated way. The formulae we have derived earlier for series and parallel combinations of resistors are not always sufficient to determine all the currents and potential differences in the circuit. Two rules, called Kirchhoff's rules, are very useful for analysis of electric circuits. Given a circuit, we start by labeling currents in each resistor by a symbol, say I, and a directed arrow to indicate that a current I flows along the resistor in the direction indicated. If ultimately I is determined to be positive, the actual current in the resistor is in the direction of the arrow. If I turns out to be negative, the current actually flows in a direction opposite to the arrow, similarly. For each source that is, cell or some other source of electrical power the positive and negative electrodes are labeled, as well as, a directed arrow with a symbol for the current flowing through the cell. This will tell us the potential difference. VVPV and Greek letter epsilon I R Gustav Robert Kirchhoff 1824-1887 German physicist, professor at Heidelberg and at Berlin. Mainly known for his development of spectroscopy, he also made many important contributions to mathematical physics, among them, his first and second rules for circuits. Gustav Robert Kirchhoff 1824-1887 Physics 116 Example 3.6 EC 3.57 Between the positive terminal P and the negative terminal N, I here is the current flowing from N to P through the cell. If, while labeling the current I through the cell 1 goes from P to N, then of course V Greek letter epsilon I R 3.79 having clarified labeling. We now state the rules and the proof, a junction rule, at any junction. The sum of the current centering the junction is equal to the sum of currents leaving the junction fig. 3.22.
This applies equally well if instead of a junction of several lines, we consider a point in a line. The proof of this rule follows from the fact that when currents are steady, there is no accumulation of charges at any junction or at any point in a line. Thus, the total current flowing in, which is the rate at which charge flows into the junction, must equal the total current flowing out. B loop rule. The algebraic sum of changes in potential around any closed loop involving resistors and cells in the loop is zero fig. 3.22. This rule is also obvious, since electric potential is dependent on the location of the point. Thus starting with any point if we come back to the same point, the total change must be zero. In a closed loop, we do come back to the starting point and hence the rule. Example 3.6 A battery of 10V and negligible internal resistance is connected across the diagonally opposite corners of a cubicle network consisting of 12 resistors each of resistance 1 Greek letter omega fig. 3.23 Determine the equivalent resistance of the network and the current along each edge of the cube. Figure 3.23 Figure 3.22 At junction of the current leaving is I1 I2 and current entering is I3. The junction rule says I3 I1 I2. At point H current entering is I1. There is only one current leaving H and by junction rule that will also be I1. For the loop side bend at Defka, the loop rules give minus 30 I1 41 I3 45 0 and minus 30 I1 21 I2 80 0. 117 Example 3.6 Solution The network is not reducible to a simple series and parallel combinations of resistors. There is, however, a clear symmetry in the problem which we can exploit to obtain the equivalent resistance of the network. The paths AA, AD and AB are obviously symmetrically placed in the network, thus, the current in each must be the same. Say, I further, at the corners A, B and D, the incoming current I must split equally into the two outgoing branches. In this manner, the current in all the 12 edges of the cube are easily written down in terms of I, using Kirchhoff's first rule and the symmetry in the problem. Next take a closed loop, say, A B C C E A, and apply Kirchhoff's second rule, I R 1 2 I R, I R Greek letter epsilon 0 where R is the resistance of each edge in Greek letter epsilon the EMF of battery. Thus, Greek letter epsilon 5 2 I R the equivalent resistance rec of the network is 5 3 6 E Q R R I Greek letter epsilon for R 1 Greek letter omega. Rec 5 6 Greek letter omega and for Greek letter epsilon 10 V, the total current 3 I in the network is 3 I 10 V 5 6 Greek letter omega 12 A, that is, I 4 A the current flowing in each edge can now be read off from the fig. 3.23, it should be noted that because of the symmetry of the network, the great power of Kirchhoff's rules has not been very apparent in example 3.6. In a general network, there will be no such simplification due to symmetry, and only by application of Kirchhoff's rules to junctions and closed loops as many as necessary to solve the unknowns in the network can we handle the problem. This will be illustrated in example 3.7. Example 3.7 determine the current in each branch of the network shown in fig. 3.24. Figure 3.24 Simulation for Application of Kirchhoff's Rules www.fis.hwaai.edu Teb Optics Java Kurtz 3 Example 3.7 118 Example 3.7 Solution Each branch of the network is assigned an unknown current to be determined by the application of Kirchhoff's rules. To reduce the number of unknowns at the outset, the first rule of Kirchhoff is used at every junction to assign the unknown current in each branch. We then have three unknowns I1, I2 and I3 which can be found by applying the second rule of Kirchhoff to three different closed loops. Kirchhoff's second rule for the closed loop at Ka gives 10 for I1 I2 2 I2 I3 I1 I1 0 3.80 that is 7 I1 6 I2 2 I3 10 for the closed loop ABCA. We get 10 for I2 2 I2 I3 I1 0 that is I1 6 I2 2 I3 10 3.80 B for the closed loop BCDAB. We get 5 2 I 2 I 3 2 I 2 I 3 I 1 0 that is, 2 I 1 4 I 2 4 I 3 minus 5 3.80 C equations 3.80 A, B, C are three simultaneous equations in three unknowns. These can be solved by the usual method to give I 1 2.5 A, I 2 5 8 A, I 3 7 1 8 A the currents in the various branches of the network are A B, 5 8 A, C A, 1 2 2 A, Deb, 7 1 8 A A D, 7 1 8 A, C D. 0a, bc, 122a It is easily verified that Kirchhoff's second rule applied to the remaining closed loops does not provide any additional independent equation. That is, the above values of current satisfy the second rule for every closed loop of the network. For example, the total voltage drop over the closed loop dot of 5584584 VVVXX equal to 0, as required by Kirchhoff's second rule. 3.14 Weak stone bridge is an application of Kirchhoff's rules. Consider the circuit shown in fig. 
3.25, which is called the weak stone bridge. The bridge has four resistors R1, R2, R3 and R4. Across one pair of diagonally opposite points A and C and the figure a source is connected. This that is, AC is called the battery arm. Between the other two vertices, B and D, a galvanometer G which is a device to detect currents is connected. This line, shown as BD in the figure, is called a galvanometer arm. For simplicity, we assume that the cell has no internal resistance. In general there will be currents flowing across all the resistors as well as a current dig through G of special interest. Is the case of a balanced bridge where the resistors are such that dig zero, we can easily get the balance condition. Such that there is no current through G in this case, the Kirchhoff's junction rule applied to junctions D and B C the figure. Current electricity 119 immediately gives us the relations I1 I3 and I2 I4. Next, we apply Kirchhoff's loop rule to closed loops at BA and CBDC. The first loop gives I1 R10 I2 R20 IG0 3.81 and the second loop gives. Upon using I3 I1, I4 I2 I2 R40 I1 R30 3.82 from EC 3.81, we obtain 1221 IRIR whereas from EC 3.82, we obtain 1423 IRIR hence, we obtain the condition 2413 RRR 3.83 of this last equation relating the four resistors is called the balance condition for the galvanometer to give zero or null deflection. The Wheatstone bridge and its balance condition provide a practical method for determination of an unknown resistance. Let us suppose we have an unknown resistance, which we insert in the fourth arm, R4 is thus not known. Keeping known resistances R1 and R2 in the first and second arm of the bridge, we go on varying R3 till the galvanometer shows a null deflection. The bridge then is balanced, and from the balance condition the value of the unknown resistance R4 is given by 2431RRRR 3.83B A practical device using this principle is called the meter bridge. It will be discussed in the next section. Example 3.8 The four arms of the weak stone bridge figure 3.26 have the following resistances. AB 100 Greek letter omega. BC 10 Greek letter omega. CD 5 Greek letter omega. And DA 60 Greek letter omega. Figure 3.26 Figure 3.25 Example 3.8 120 Example 3.8 A galvanometer of 15 Greek letter omega resistance is connected across BD. Calculate the current through the galvanometer when a potential difference of 10V is maintained across AC. Solution considering the mesh BADB. We have 100 I1 15 X 60 I20 or 20 I13 X12 I20 3.84 considering the mesh BCDB. We have 10 I1 X15 X5 I2 X0 10 I1 30 minus 5 I2 0 2 I1 6 I2 0 3.84 B considering the mesh at C. 60 I2 5 I2 X10 65 I2 5 X10 13 I2 X2 3.84 C multiplying X 3.84 B by 10 20 I1 60 X10 I2 0 3.84 D from EQS. 3.84 D and 3.84 we have 63 Ig 2 I 2 0 I 2 31.5 Ig 3.84 E substituting the value of I 2 into Ig. 3.84 C, we get 1331.5 Ig 2 410.5 Ig 2 Ig 4.87 ma 3.15 meter bridge the meter bridge is shown in fig. 3.27, it consists of a wire of length 1 meter and of uniform cross-sectional area stretched taut and clamped between two thick metallic strips bent at right angles, as shown. The metallic strip has two gaps across which resistors can be connected. The end points where the wire is clamped are connected to a cell through a key. One end of a galvanometer is connected to the metallic strip midway between the two gaps. The other end of the galvanometer is connected to a jockey. The jockey is essentially a metallic rod whose one end has a knife edge which can slide over the wire to make electrical connection. R is an unknown resistance whose value we want to determine. It is connected across one of the gaps. Across the other gap. We connect a figure 3.27 A meter bridge. Wire AC is 1 meters long. R is a resistance to be measured and S is a standard resistance. Current electricity 121 standard known resistance S. The jockey is connected to some point D on the wire. A distance LCM from the end of the jockey can be moved along the wire. The portion AD of the wire has a resistance RCML. Where RCM is the resistance of the wire per unit centimeter, the portion DC of the wire similarly has a resistance RCM 100 liters. The four arms AB, BC, DA and CD with resistances R, S, RCML and RCM 100 liters obviously form a weak stone bridge with AC as the battery arm and BD the galvanometer arm. If the jockey is moved along the wire, then there will be one position where the galvanometer will show no current. Let the distance of the jockey from the end A at the balance point be LL1. The four resistances of the bridge at the balance point then are R, S, RCML1 and RCM100L1. 
the balance condition, X3.83 gives 111-1100-100 cm cm rlrsrll 3.85 thus. Once we have found out L1, the unknown resistance R is known in terms of the standard known resistance S by 11100 lrsl 3.86 by choosing various values of S. We would get various values of L1, and calculate R each time. An error in measurement of L1 would naturally result in an error in R. It can be shown that the percentage error in R can be minimized by adjusting the balance point near the middle of the bridge. That is, when L1 is close to 50 centimeters, this requires a suitable choice of S. Example 3.9 in a meter bridge fig. 3.27, the null point is found at a distance of 33.7 centimeters from A. If now a resistance of 12 Greek letter omega is connected in parallel with S. The null point occurs at 51.9 cm, determine the values of R and S solution from the first balance point. We get 33.766.3 RS 3.87 after S is connected in parallel with a resistance of 12 Greek letter omega. The resistance across the gap changes from S to the following. Where 12 12 X S S S and hence the new balance condition now gives 1251.948.1 12 X R S R S S 3.88 substituting the value of R S from X. 3.87, we get 51.9-12-33.748.1-1266.3, S which gives S 13.5 Greek letter omega, using the value of RS above. We get R 6.86 Greek letter omega, example 3.9. Physics 122 3.16 Prudentiometer This is a versatile instrument, it is basically a long piece of uniform wire, sometimes a few meters in length across which a standard cell B is connected. In actual design, the wire is sometimes cut in several pieces placed side by side and connected at the end by thick metal strip. Figure 3.28 In the figure, the wires run from A to C. The small vertical portions are the thick metal strips connecting the various sections of the wire. A current I flows through the wire which can be varied by a variable resistance rheostat, R in the circuit. Since the wire is uniform, the potential difference between A and any point at a distance L from A is Greek letter epsilon Greek letter phi LL 3.89 where Greek letter phi is the potential drop per unit length. Figure 3.28 shows an application of the potentiometer to compare the EMF of two cells of EMF Greek letter epsilon 1 and Greek letter epsilon 2. The points marked 1, 2, 3 form a two-way key. Consider first a position of the key where 1 and 3 are connected so that the galvanometer is connected to Greek letter epsilon 1. The jockey is moved along the wire till at a point N1, at a distance L1 from A, there is no deflection in the galvanometer. We can apply Kirchhoff's loop rule to the closed loop in 1 G31A and get, Greek letter phi L10 Greek letter epsilon 103.90 similarly. If another EMF Greek letter epsilon 2 is balanced against L2 and 2 Greek letter phi L20 Greek letter epsilon 203.91 from the last two equations 1122 1, liters L Greek letter epsilon Greek letter epsilon 3.92 This simple mechanism thus allows one to compare the EMFs of any two sources Greek letter epsilon 1, Greek letter epsilon 2. In practice one of the cells is chosen as a standard cell whose EMF is known to a high degree of accuracy. The EMF of the other cell is then easily calculated from X3.92. We can also use the potentiometer to measure internal resistance of a cell fig. 3.28b. For this the cell EMF Greek letter epsilon whose internal resistance R is to be determined is connected across a resistance box through a key K2, as shown in the figure. With key K2 open, balance is obtained at length L1 and 1, then, Greek letter epsilon Greek letter phi L1 3.93 or when key K2 is closed, the cell sends a current I through the resistance box R. If V is the terminal potential difference of the cell and balance is obtained at length L2 and 2, V Greek letter phi L2 3.93 B figure 3.28 A potentiometer. G is a galvanometer and our variable resistance re is that 1, 2, 3 are terminals of a two-way key a circuit for comparing EMFs of two cells, B circuit for determining internal resistance of a cell. Current electricity 123 so, we have Greek letter epsilon V L1 L2 3.94 but. Greek letter epsilon IRR and VIR. This gives Greek letter epsilon VRRR 3.94B from EC. 3.94 and 3.94B we have RRRL1 L2 RRL L1 213.95 using EC. 3.95 we can find the internal resistance of a given cell. The potentiometer has the advantage that it draws no current from the voltage source being measured. As such it is unaffected by the internal resistance of the source. Example 3.10A resistance of R Greek letter omega draws current from a potentiometer. The potentiometer has a total resistance R0 Greek letter omega figure 3.29. A voltage V is supplied to the potentiometer. 
Derive an expression for the voltage across R when the sliding contact is in the middle of the potentiometer. Figure 3.29 Solution While the slide is in the middle of the potentiometer only half of its resistance R02 will be between the points A and B hence. The total resistance between A and B, say, R1, will be given by the following expression, 10111-2RRR0102RRRRR The total resistance between A and C will be sum of resistance between A and B and B and C. That is, R1 R0 to the current flowing through the potentiometer will be 1010222 V V I R R R R. The voltage V1 taken from the potentiometer will be the product of current I and resistance R1. V1 I R1 22101 volt R R R X example 3.10 124 example 3.10 substituting for R1 we have a V V R R R R R R R R R 1000000222 X X X 1022 V R V R R R V 1024 V R R R Summary 1 Current through a given area of a conductor is the net charge passing per unit time through the area 2 To maintain a steady current we must have a closed circuit in which an external agency moves electric charge from lower to higher potential energy the work done per unit charge by the source in taking the charge from lower to higher potential energy that is from one terminal of the source to the other is called the electromotive force, or EMF, of the source. Note that the EMF is not a force, it is the voltage difference between the two terminals of a source in open circuit. 3. Ohm's law. The electric current I flowing through a substance is proportional to the voltage V across its ends, that is, VI or VRI, where R is called the resistance of the substance. The unit of resistance is ohm, 1 Greek letter omega 1 VA 1, 4. The resistance R of a conductor depends on its length L and cross-sectional area A through the relation. L R a Greek letter rho where Greek letter rho, called resistivity is a property of the material and depends on temperature and pressure. 5. Electrical resistivity of substances varies over a very wide range. Metals have low resistivity, in the range of 10-8 Greek letter omega M to 10-6 Greek letter omega M. Insulators like glass and rubber have 1022 to 1024 times greater resistivity. Semiconductors like C and gel are roughly in the middle range of resistivity on a logarithmic scale. 6. In most substances, the carriers of current are electrons. In some cases, for example, ionic crystals and electrolytic liquids, positive and negative ions carry the electric current. 7. Current density J gives the amount of charge flowing per second per unit area normal to the flow. J and Q VD where N is the number density number per unit volume of charge carriers each of charge Q, and VD is the drift velocity of the charge carriers. For electrons Q E of J is normal to a cross-sectional area A and is constant over the area, the magnitude of the current I through the area is nev day. 125.8, using EBL, I nev day, and Ohm's law. One obtains 2 DE in EMM Greek letter rho the proportionality between the force E on the electrons in a metal due to the external field E and the drift velocity V D not acceleration can be understood, if we assume that the electrons suffer collisions with ions in the metal, which deflect them randomly. If such collisions occur on an average at a time interval Greek letter tau, V D I E M where is the acceleration of the electron. This gives 2 meters ne Greek letter rho Greek letter tau 9, in the temperature range in which resistivity increases linearly with temperature. The temperature coefficient of resistivity Greek letter alpha is defined as the fractional increase in resistivity per unit increase in temperature. 10. Ohm's law is obeyed by many substances, but it is not a fundamental law of nature. It fails if a V depends on I nonlinearly. B. The relation between V and I depends on the sign of V for the same absolute value of V. C. The relation between V and I is non-unique. An example of I is when Greek letter O increases with I even if temperature is kept fixed. A rectifier combines features A and B. Gaius shows the feature C11, when a source of EMF Greek letter epsilon is connected to an external resistance R, the voltage vexed across R is given by vexed IRRRR Greek letter epsilon where R is the internal resistance of the source. 12 A total resistance R of N resistors connected in series is given by RR1 R2, RNB total resistance R of N resistors connected in parallel is given by 121111. NRRRR13 Kirchhoff's rule is a junction rule. At any junction of circuit elements, the sum of currents entering the junction must equal the sum of currents leaving it. B loop rule. The algebraic sum of changes in potential around any closed loop must be 0 14. The Wheatstone bridge is an arrangement of four resistances, R1, R2, R3, R4 as shown in the text. The null point condition is given by 3124RRRR using which the value of one resistance can be determined, knowing the other three resistances. 15. The potentiometer is a device to compare potential differences, 
Since the method involves a condition of no current flow, the device can be used to measure potential difference, internal resistance of a cell and compare EMFs of two sources. 126 points to ponder 1. Current is a scalar although we represent current with an arrow, currents do not obey the law of vector addition. That current is a scalar also follows from its definition. The current I through an area of cross section is given by the scalar product of two vectors, Ij. S where J and S are vectors too, refer to VI curves of a resistor and a diode as drawn in the text. A resistor obeys Ohm's law while a diode does not. The assertion that VIR is a statement of Ohm's law is not true. This equation defines resistance and it may be applied to all conducting devices whether they obey Ohm's law or not. The Ohm's law asserts that the plot of I versus V is linear that is, R is independent of V equation E Greek letter Rho J leads to another statement of Ohm's law. That is, a conducting material obeys Ohm's law when the resistivity of the material does not depend on the magnitude and direction of applied electric field. 3. Homogeneous conductors like silver or semiconductors like pure germanium or germanium containing impurities obey Ohm's law within some range of electric field values. If the field becomes too strong, there are departures from Ohm's law in all cases for motion of conduction electrons in electric field E is the sum of I motion due to random collisions and 2 that due to E. The motion physical quantity symbol dimensions unit remark electric current IAASI base unit charge Q. QTAC voltage. Electric VML2T3A1 V work charge potential difference electromotive force Greek letter epsilon ML2T3A1 V work charge resistance R ML2T3A2 Greek letter omega R V I resistivity Greek letter O ML3T3A2 Greek letter omega M R electrical Greek letter sigma M1 L3T3A2 S Greek letter sigma 1 Greek letter O conductivity electric field EMLT3A1 VM1 electric force charge drift speed VDLT1 MS1 VDEM Greek letter tau relaxation time Greek letter tau TS current density JL L2 AAM2 current area mobility micro ML3 T4A1 M2 V1 S1 DVE 127 exercises 3.1 The storage battery of a car has an EMF of 12 V if the internal resistance of the battery is 0.4 Greek letter Omega. What is the maximum current that can be drawn from the battery 3.2 A battery of EMF 10 V and internal resistance 3 Greek letter Omega is connected to a resistor. If the current in the circuit is 0.5 A, what is the resistance of the resistor? What is the terminal voltage of the battery when the circuit is closed? 3.3 A 3 resistors 1 Greek letter Omega, 2 Greek letter Omega, and 3 Greek letter Omega are combined in series. What is the total resistance of the combination B if the combination is connected to a battery of EMF 12 V and negligible internal resistance? Obtain the potential drop across each resistor. 3.4 A 3 resistors 2 Greek letter Omega, 4 Greek letter Omega and 5 Greek letter Omega are combined in parallel. What is the total resistance of the combination B if the combination is connected to a battery of EMF 20 V and negligible internal resistance? Determine the current through each resistor, and the total current drawn from the battery 3.5 at room temperature 27.0 degrees Celsius The resistance of a heating element is 100 Greek letter Omega. What is the temperature of the element if the resistance is found to be 117 Greek letter Omega? Given that the temperature coefficient of the material of the resistor is 1.70 x 10-4 degrees Celsius 1, 3.6 A negligibly small current is passed through a wire of length 15 meters and uniform cross section 6.0 x 10-7 M2. And its resistance is measured to be 5.0 Greek letter omega. What is the resistivity of the material at the temperature of the experiment? 3.7 A silver wire has a resistance of 2.1 Greek letter omega at 27.5 degrees Celsius and a resistance of 2.7 Greek letter omega at 100 degrees Celsius determine the temperature coefficient of resistivity of silver. 3.8 A heating element using nichrome connected to a 230 V supply draws an initial current of 3.2 A which settles after a few seconds to due to random collisions averages to zero and does not contribute to VD Chapter 11, Textbook of Class I. VD, thus is only due to applied electric field on the electron 5. The relation J Greek letter rho V should be applied to each type of charge carriers separately. In a conducting wire, the total current and charge density arises from both positive and negative charges. J Greek letter rho V Greek letter rho V Greek letter rho 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 now in a neutral wire carrying electric current. Greek letter rho 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 further. V0 which gives Greek letter rho 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 0 joules Greek letter rho V thus, the relation J Greek letter rho V does not apply to the total current charge density. 6. Kirchhoff's junction rule is based on conservation of charge and the outgoing currents add up and are equal to incoming current at a junction. Bending or reorienting the wire does not change the validity of Kirchhoff's junction rule.
Physics 128 A steady value of 2.8 A What is the steady temperature of the heating element if the room temperature is 27.0 degrees Celsius? Temperature coefficient of resistance of nichrome averaged over the temperature range involved is 1.70 x 10-4 degrees Celsius 1. 3.9 Determine the current in each branch of the network shown in figure 3.30, figure 3.33.10 in a meter bridge fig. 3.27, the balance point is found to be at 39.5 cm from the end A, when the resistor Y is of 12.5 Greek letter omega, determine the resistance of XY are the connections between resistors in a wheatstone or meter bridge made of thick copper strips. B, determine the balance point of the bridge above if X and Y are interchanged C, what happens if the galvanometer and cell are interchanged at the balance point of the bridge. Would the galvanometer show any current 3.11 A storage battery of EMF 8.0 V and internal resistance 0.5 Greek letter Omega is being charged by a 120 V DC supply using a series resistor of 15.5 Greek letter Omega. What is the terminal voltage of the battery during charging? What is the purpose of having a series resistor in the charging circuit 3.1 to in a potentiometer arrangement? A cell of EMF 1.25 V gives a balance point at 35.0 cm length of the wire. If the cell is replaced by another cell and the balance point shifts to 63.0 cm, what is the EMF of the second cell 3? 13 The number density of free electrons in a copper conductor estimated in example 3.1 is 8.5 x 1028 m3. How long does an electron take to drift from one end of a wire 3.0 meters long to its other end? The area of cross-section of the wire is 2.0 x 10-6 m2 and it is carrying a current of 3.0 a. Additional exercises 3, 14 The Earth's surface has a negative surface charge density of 10-9 cm2. The potential difference of 400 kV between the top of the atmosphere and the surface results due to the low conductivity of the lower atmosphere in a current of only 1,800 a over the entire globe. If there were no mechanism of sustaining atmospheric electric current electricity 129 field, how much time roughly would be required to neutralize the Earth's surface? This never happens in practice because there is a mechanism to replenish electric charges. Namely the continual thunderstorms and lightning in different parts of the globe. Radius of Earth 6.37 x 106 meters 3.15 A 6 lead acid type of secondary cells each of EMF 2.0 V and internal resistance 0.015 Greek letter Omega are joined in series to provide a supply to a resistance of 8.5 Greek letter Omega. What are the current drawn from the supply and its terminal voltage? BA secondary cell after long use has an EMF of 1.9 V and a large internal resistance of 380 Greek letter Omega. What maximum current can be drawn from the cell? Could the cell drive the starting motor of a car 3.162 wires of equal length, one of aluminium and the other of copper have the same resistance? Which of the two wires is lighter hence explain why aluminium wires are preferred for overhead power cables? Al 2.63 x 10-8 Greek letter Omega M, Ku 1.72 x 10-8 Greek letter Omega M, relative density of Al 2.7, of Ku 8.9. 3.17 What conclusion can you draw from the following observations on a resistor made of alloy manganin? Current voltage current voltage AVAV 0.23.94.3.0.59.2.0.47.88.88.88.88.88.88.88.88.88.88.88.88.88.88.88.88.88.88.88.88.88.88.88.88.88.88.88.88.88.88.88.88.88.88.88.88.88.88.88.88.88.
2 Greek letter Omega, 3 Greek letter Omega. How will we combine them to get an equivalent resistance of I11 3 Greek letter Omega to 11 5 Greek letter Omega, 3 6 Greek letter Omega, I6 11 Greek letter Omega C determine the equivalent resistance of networks shown in Fig. 3.31 Physics 130 Figure 3.31 3.21 Determine the current drawn from a 12V supply with internal resistance 0.5 Greek letter Omega by the infinite network shown in Fig. 3.32 Each resistor has one Greek letter Omega resistance. Figure 3.32 3.22 Figure 3.33 shows a potentiometer with a cell of 2.0 V and internal resistance 0.40 Greek letter Omega maintaining a potential drop across the resistor wire AB. A standard cell which maintains a constant EMF of 1.02 V for very moderate currents up to a few ma gives a balance point at 67.3 cm length of the wire. To ensure very low currents drawn from the standard cell, a very high resistance of 600 K is put in series with it, which is shorted close to the balance point. The standard cell is then replaced by a cell of a known EMF Greek letter epsilon and the balance point found similarly, turns out to be at 82.3 cm length of the wire. Figure 3.33 or what is the value Greek letter epsilon B what purpose does the high resistance of 600 K have? Current electricity 131C is the balance point affected by this high resistance D with the method work in the above situation if the driver cell of the potentiometer had an EMF of 1.0V instead of 2.0V. E would the circuit work well for determining an extremely small EMF, say of the order of a few MV such as the typical EMF of a thermocouple if not? How will you modify the circuit 3.23 figure 3.34 shows a 2.0V potentiometer used for the determination of internal resistance of a 1.5V cell. The balance point of the cell in open circuit is 76.3 cm. When a resistor of 9.5 Greek letter omega is used in the external circuit of the cell, the balance point shifts to 64.8 cm length of the potentiometer wire. Determine the internal resistance of the cell. Figure 3.34 132 4.1 Introduction Both electricity and magnetism have been known for more than 2,000 years. However, it was only about 200 years ago, in 1820, that it was realized that they were intimately related. During a lecture demonstration in the summer of 1820, Danish physicist Hans Christian Ørsted noticed that a current in a straight wire caused a noticeable deflection in a nearby magnetic compass needle. He investigated this phenomenon, he found that the alignment of the needle is tangential to an imaginary circle which has the straight wire as its center and has its plane perpendicular to the wire. This situation is depicted in figure 4.1. It is noticeable when the current is large and the needle sufficiently close to the wire so that the Earth's magnetic field may be ignored. Reversing the direction of the current reverses the orientation of the needle figure 4.1b. The deflection increases on increasing the current or bringing the needle closer to the wire. Iron filings sprinkled around the wire arrange themselves in concentric circles with the wire as the center fig. 4.1c. Ersted concluded that moving charges or currents produced a magnetic field in the surrounding space. Following this, there was intense experimentation. In 1864, the laws obeyed by electricity and magnetism were unified and formulated by Chapter 4 Moving Charges and Magnetism See the box in Chapter 1, Page 3. Moving Charges and Magnetism 133 James Maxwell who then realized that light was electromagnetic waves. Radio waves were discovered by Hertz, and produced by J.C. Bose and G. Marconi by the end of the 19th century. A remarkable scientific and technological progress took place in the 20th century. This was due to our increased understanding of electromagnetism and the invention of devices for production, amplification, transmission and detection of electromagnetic waves. In this chapter, we will see how magnetic field exerts forces on moving charged particles, like electrons, protons, and current carrying wires. We shall also learn how currents produce magnetic fields. We shall see how particles can be accelerated to very high energies in a cyclotron. We shall study how currents and voltages are detected by a galvanometer. In this and subsequent chapter on magnetism, we adopt the following convention. A current or a field electric or magnetic emerging out of the plane of the paper is depicted by a dot. A current or a field going into the plane of the paper is depicted by a cross. Figures 4.1 and 4.1b correspond to these two situations, respectively. 4.2 Magnetic Force 4, 2, 1 Sources and Fields Before we introduce the concept of a magnetic field B. We shall recapitulate what we have learned in Chapter 1 about the electric field E. We have seen that the interaction between two charges can be considered in two stages. The charge Q, the source of the field, produces an electric field E, where figure 4.1 the magnetic field due to a straight long current carrying wire. The wire is perpendicular to the plane of the paper. A ring of compass needles surrounds the wire. 
The orientation of the needles is shown when the current emerges out of the plane of the paper, B the current moves into the plane of the paper. See the arrangement of iron filings around the wire, the darkened ends of the needle represent north poles. The effect of the Earth's magnetic field is neglected. Hans Christian Ersted 1777-1851, Danish physicist and chemist, professor at Copenhagen. He observed that a compass needle suffers a deflection when placed near a wire carrying an electric current. This discovery gave the first empirical evidence of a connection between electric and magnetic phenomena. Hans Christian Ersted 1777-1851, a dot appears like the tip of an arrow pointed at you, a cross is like the feathered tail of an arrow moving away from you. Physics 134 EQ 40 to 4.1 where R is unit vector along R, and the field E is a vector field. A charge Q interacts with this field and experiences a force F given by F Q E Q Q R 40 R 2 4.2 as pointed out in the chapter 1. The field E is not just an artifact but has a physical role, it can convey energy and momentum and is not established instantaneously but takes finite time to propagate. The concept of a field was specially stressed by Faraday and was incorporated by Maxwell in his unification of electricity and magnetism. In addition to depending on each point in space, it can also vary with time, that is, be a function of time. In our discussions in this chapter, we'll assume that the fields do not change with time, the field at a particular point can be due to one or more charges. If there are more charges the fields add vectorially, you have already learned in Chapter 1 that this is called the principle of superposition. Once the field is known, the force on a test charge is given by EK 4.2, just as static charges produce an electric field, the currents or moving charges produce an addition of magnetic field, denoted by BR, again a vector field. It has several basic properties identical to the electric field, it is defined at each point in space and can in addition depend on time. Experimentally, it is found to obey the principle of superposition, the magnetic field of several sources is the vector addition of magnetic field of each individual source. 4, 2, 2 magnetic field, Lorentz force let us suppose that there is a point charge Q moving with a velocity Vn. Located at R at a given time T in presence of both the electric field ER and the magnetic field BR. The force on an electric charge Q due to both of them can be written as FQERVXBR for electric magnetic 4.3 this force was given first by HA. Lorentz based on the extensive experiments of Ampere and others, it is called the Lorentz force, you have already studied in detail the force due to the electric field. If we look at the interaction with the magnetic field, we find the following features I it depends on Q, B and B charge of the particle, the velocity and the magnetic field. Force on a negative charge is opposite to that on a positive charge to the magnetic force Q VXB includes a vector product of velocity and magnetic field. The vector product makes the force due to magnetic Hendrick and Toon Lorentz 1853-1928 Hendrick and Toon Lorentz 1853-1928 Dutch theoretical physicist, professor at Leiden. He investigated the relationship between electricity, magnetism, and mechanics, in order to explain the observed effect of magnetic fields on emitters of light same on effect. He postulated the existence of electric charges in the atom, for which he was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1902. He derived a set of transformation equations known after him, as Lorentz transformation equations by some tangled mathematical arguments, but he was not aware that these equations hinge on a new concept of space and time. Moving charges and magnetism 135 field vanish become zero if velocity and magnetic field are parallel or anti-parallel. The force acts in a sideways direction perpendicular to both the velocity and the magnetic field. Its direction is given by the screw rule or right-hand rule for vector or cross product as illustrated in Fig. 4.2, 3 The magnetic force is zero if charge is not moving as then V0, only a moving charge feels the magnetic force. The expression for the magnetic force helps us to define the unit of the magnetic field, if one takes Q, F and V, all to be unity in the force equation F Q V X B Q V B sin Greek letter theta N, where Greek letter theta is the angle between V and B C fig. 4.2 up, the magnitude of magnetic field B is 1 SI unit, when the force acting on a unit charge 1 C, moving perpendicular to B with a speed 1 meter S, is 1 Newton. Dimensionally, we have BFQV and the unit of BR Newton second coulomb meter. This unit is called Tesla T named after Nikola Tesla 1856-1943. Tesla is a rather large unit, a smaller unit non-SI called Gauss 10-4 Tesla is also often used. The Earth's magnetic field is about 3.6 x 10-5 T table 4.1 lists magnetic fields over a wide range in the universe. 
Figure 4.2 The direction of the magnetic force acting on a charged particle or the force on a positively charged particle with velocity V and making an angle Greek letter theta with the magnetic field B is given by the right hand rule. B A moving charged particle Q is deflected in an opposite sense to Q in the presence of magnetic field. Table 4.1 Order of magnitudes of magnetic fields in a variety of physical situations Physical situation magnitude of B in Tesla surface of a neutron star 108 Typical large field in a laboratory 1 near a small bar magnet 10-2 on the Earth's surface 10-5 human nerve fiber 10-10 interstellar space 10-12 4 2 3 Magnetic force on a current carrying conductor We can extend the analysis for force due to magnetic field on a single moving charge to a straight rod carrying current Consider a rod of a uniform cross-sectional area A and length L. We shall assume one kind of mobile carriers as in a conductor here electrons. Let the number density of these mobile charge carriers in it be N then the total number of mobile charge carriers in it is NLA, for a steady current I in this conducting rod. We may assume that each mobile carrier has an average. Physics 136 Example 4.1 Drift Velocity VDC Chapter 3 In the presence of an external magnetic field B, the force on these carriers is FNLAQVDXXXXXXB where Q is the value of the charge on a carrier. Now NQVD is the current density J and NQVDA is the current IC Chapter 3 for the discussion of current and current density. Thus, F and Q V D L X B J L X X X X X B E L X X X X X B 4.4 where L is a vector of magnitude L. The length of the rod, and with a direction identical to the current I note that the current I is not a vector, in the last step leading to ec 4.4. We have transferred the vector sign from J to L equation 4.4 holes for a straight rod, in this equation, B is the external magnetic field. It is not the field produced by the current carrying rod. If the wire has an arbitrary shape we can calculate the Lorentz force on it by considering it as a collection of linear strips DLJ and summing JJ I'd XFBL this summation can be converted to an integral in most cases. On permittivity and permeability in the universal law of gravitation, we say that any two point masses exert a force on each other which is proportional to the product of the masses M1, M2 and inversely proportional to the square of the distance R between them. We write it as Fg M1 M2 R2 where G is the universal constant of gravitation. Similarly, in Coulomb's law of electrostatics we write the force between two point charges Q1, Q2, separated by a distance R as Fk Q1 Q2 R2 where K is a constant of proportionality. In SI units, K is taken as 1 4 where Greek letter epsilon is the permittivity of the medium. Also in magnetism, we get another constant, which in SI units, is taken as micro 4 Greek letter pi where micro is the permeability of the medium. Although G, Greek letter epsilon and micro arise as proportionality constants, there is a difference between gravitational force and electromagnetic force. While the gravitational force does not depend on the intervening medium, the electromagnetic force depends on the medium between the two charges or magnets. Hence, while G is a universal constant, Greek letter epsilon and micro depend on the medium, they have different values for different media. The product micro turns out to be related to the speed V of electromagnetic radiation in the medium through micro 1 volt 2. Electric permittivity Greek letter epsilon is a physical quantity that describes how an electric field affects and is affected by a medium. It is determined by the ability of a material to polarize in response to an applied field, and thereby to cancel, partially, the field inside the material. Similarly, magnetic permeability micro is the ability of a substance to acquire magnetization in magnetic fields. It is a measure of the extent to which magnetic field can penetrate matter. Example 4.1 A straight wire of mass 200 grams and length 1.5 meters carries a current of 2 A. It is suspended in midair by a uniform horizontal magnetic field B figure 4.3. What is the magnitude of the magnetic field? Moving charges and magnetism 137 example 4.1 figure 4.3 solution from EG 4.4. We find that there is an upward force F of magnitude ILB. For mid-air suspension, this must be balanced by the force due to gravity, MGILB MGBIL 0.29.80.65 T2 1.5 XX Note that it would have been sufficient to specify ML. The mass per unit length of the wire, the Earth's magnetic field is approximately 4X 10-5 T and we have ignored it. Example 4.2 If the magnetic field is parallel to the positive Y axis and the charged particle is moving along the positive X axis fig. 4.4, which way would the Lorentz force be for an electron negative charge, be a proton positive charge? Figure 4.4 solution The velocity V of particle is along the x-axis, while B, the magnetic field is along the y-axis, so Vxb is along the z-axis screw rule or right-hand thumb rule. 
So, A for electron it will be along z-axis B for a positive charge proton the force is along z-axis. 4.3 motion in a magnetic field we will now consider, in greater detail, the motion of a charge moving in a magnetic field. We have learned in Mechanics C Class Sci Book, Chapter 6 that a force on a particle does work if the force has a component along or opposed to the direction of motion of the particle. In the case of motion example 4.2 charged particles moving in a magnetic field, interactive demonstration, www.phys.hua.ai.edu Teb Optics Java Apartment Index HTML. Physics 138 of a charge in a magnetic field, the magnetic force is perpendicular to the velocity of the particle. So no work is done and no change in the magnitude of the velocity is produced though the direction of momentum may be changed. Notice that this is unlike the force due to an electric field, QE which can have a component parallel or anti-parallel to motion and thus can transfer energy in addition to momentum, we shall consider motion of a charged particle in a uniform magnetic field. First consider the case of V perpendicular to be the perpendicular force, QVXB, acts as a centripetal force and produces a circular motion perpendicular to the magnetic field. The particle will describe a circle if V and B are perpendicular to each other figure 4.5. If velocity has a component along B, this component remains unchanged as the motion along the magnetic field will not be affected by the magnetic field. The motion in a plane perpendicular to B is as before a circular one, thereby producing a helical motion fig. 4.6 You have already learned in earlier classes C class Xi, Chapter 4 that if R is the radius of the circular path of a particle, then a force of mv2r, acts perpendicular to the path towards the center of the circle, and is called the centripetal force. If the velocity v is perpendicular to the magnetic field b, the magnetic force is perpendicular to both v and b and acts like a centripetal force. It has a magnitude qvb equating the two expressions for centripetal force, mv2r qvb, which gives our mvqb 4.5 for the radius of the circle described by the charged particle. The larger the momentum, the larger is the radius and bigger the circle described. If Greek letter omega is the angular frequency, then V Greek letter omega R. So, Greek letter omega 2 Greek letter pi Greek letter nu QBM 4.6 of which is independent of the velocity or energy. Here Greek letter nu is the frequency of rotation. The independence of Greek letter nu from energy has important application in the design of a cyclotron C section 4, 4, 2. The time taken for one revolution is t2 Greek letter pi Greek letter omega 1 Greek letter nu. If there is a component of the velocity parallel to the magnetic field denoted by v, it will make the particle move along the field and the path of the particle would be a helical one fig. 4.6 The distance moved along the magnetic field in one rotation is called pitch p using ek 4.6a. We have pvt term vqb 4.6b the radius of the circular component of motion is called the radius of the helix. Figure 4.5 Circular Motion Figure 4.6 Helical Motion 139 Example 4.3 Example 4.3 What is the radius of the path of an electron mass 9x 10 31 kg and charge 1.6x 10-19c moving at a speed of 3x 107 meters as in a magnetic field of 6x 10-4t perpendicular to it what is its frequency calculate its energy and kev 1 of 1.6x 10-19j Solution using ek 4.5 we find rmvqb 9x 10-31 kg x 3x 107 meters s1 1.6x 10-19 cx 6x 10-4 t 26x 10-2 meters 26 centimeters greek letter nu v2 2x 106 s1 2x 106 hertz 2 megahertz e1 half mv2 1 half 9x 10-31 kg x 9x 1014 square meters s2 40.5 x 10-17 j 4 x 10-16 j 2.5 kev helical motion of charged particles and aurora borealis in polar regions like alaska and northern canada a splendid display of colors is seen in the sky the appearance of dancing green pink lights is fascinating and equally puzzling an explanation of this natural phenomenon is now found in physics in terms of what we have studied here Consider a charged particle of mass m and charge q, entering a region of magnetic field b with an initial velocity v. Let this velocity have a component vp parallel to the magnetic field and a component vn normal to it. There is no force on a charged particle in the direction of the field, hence the particle continues to travel with the velocity vp parallel to the field. The normal component vn of the particle results in a Lorentz force vnxb which is perpendicular to both vn and b. As seen in section 4, 3, 1 the particle thus has a tendency to perform a circular motion in a plane perpendicular to the magnetic field. When this is coupled with the velocity parallel to the field, the resulting trajectory will be a helix along the magnetic field line, as shown in figure here. 
Even if the field line bends, the helically moving particle is trapped and guided to move around the field line. Since the Lorentz force is normal to the velocity of each point, the field does no work on the particle and the magnitude of velocity remains the same. During a solar flare, a large number of electrons and protons are ejected from the Sun. Some of them get trapped in the Earth's magnetic field and move in helical paths along the field lines. The field lines come closer to each other near the magnetic poles, see figure B, hence the density of charges increases near the poles. These particles collide with atoms and molecules of the atmosphere. Excited oxygen atoms emit green light and excited nitrogen atoms emits pink light. This phenomenon is called aurora borealis in physics. Physics 144.4 Motion in combined electric and magnetic fields 4, 4, 1 Velocity selector You know that a charge Q moving with velocity V in presence of both electric and magnetic fields experiences a force given by EC. 4.3, that is, FQE BX BFA FB We shall consider the simple case in which electric and magnetic fields are perpendicular to each other and also perpendicular to the velocity of the particle. As shown in figure 4.7, we have EJBKVIEBV, EBQQEQQVBQBFEJFBXBIXKJ therefore, QEVBFJ. Thus, electric and magnetic forces are in opposite directions as shown in the figure. Suppose, we adjust the value of E and B such that magnitudes of the two forces are equal. Then, total force on the charge is zero and the charge will move in the fields undeflected. This happens when or EQEQVBVB 4.7 This condition can be used to select charged particles of a particular velocity out of a beam containing charges moving with different speeds irrespective of their charge and mass. The cross E and B fields, therefore, serve as a velocity selector. Only particles with speed EB pass undeflected through the region of crossed fields. This method was employed by J.J. Thomson in 1897 to measure the charge-to-mass ratio EM of an electron. The principle is also employed in mass spectrometer, a device that separates charged particles, usually ions, according to their charge-to-mass ratio 4, 4, 2 cyclotron. The cyclotron is a machine to accelerate charged particles or ions to high energies. It was invented by E. O. Lawrence and M. S. Livingston in 1934 to investigate nuclear structure. The cyclotron uses both electric and magnetic fields in combination to increase the energy of charged particles. As the fields are perpendicular to each other they are called crossed fields. Cyclotron uses the fact that the frequency of revolution of the charged particle in a magnetic field is independent of its energy. The particles move most of the time inside two semicircular disc-like metal containers, D1 and D2 which are called E's as they look like the letter D figure 4.8 shows a schematic view of the cyclotron. Inside the metal boxes the particle is shielded and is not acted on by the electric field. The magnetic field, however, acts on the particle and makes it go round in a circular path inside a D. Every time the particle moves from one D to another it is acted upon by the electric field. The sign of the electric field is changed alternately in tune with the circular motion of the particle. This ensures that the particle is always accelerated by the electric field. Each time the acceleration increases the energy of the particle. As energy figure 4.7 cyclotron interactive demonstration, index php. Topic 33.0 Moving charges and magnetism 141 increases. The radius of the circular path increases, so the path is a spiral one. The whole assembly is evacuated to minimize collisions between the ions and the air molecules. A high-frequency alternating voltage is applied to the Ds. In the sketch shown in figure 4.8, positive ions or positively charged particles e.g., protons are released at the center P. They move in a semicircular path in one of the Ds and arrive in the gap between the Ds in a time interval T2, where T. The period of revolution is given by EC 4.6, 1 2 CMT Greek letter pi or 2 CQBM Greek letter new Greek letter pi 4.8. This frequency is called the cyclotron frequency for obvious reasons and is denoted by. The frequency I of the applied voltage is adjusted so that the polarity of the Ds is reversed in the same time that it takes the ions to complete one half of the revolution. The requirement arc is called the resonance condition. The phase of the supply is adjusted so that when the positive ions arrive at the edge of D1, D2 is at a lower potential and the ions are accelerated across the gap. Inside the Ds the particles travel in a region free of the electric field. The increase in their kinetic energy is QV each time they cross from one D to another V refers to the voltage across the Ds at the time. From EC 4.5, it is clear that the radius of their path goes on increasing each time their kinetic energy increases. The ions are repeatedly accelerated across the Ds until they have the required energy to have a radius approximately that of the Ds. 
They are then deflected by a magnetic field and leave the system via an exit slit. From X4.5 we have QBRV and 4.9 where R is the radius of the trajectory at exit, and equals the radius of a D. Hence, the kinetic energy of the ions is 2222122 QBR MMV 4.10 The operation of the cyclotron is based on the fact that the time for one revolution of an ion is independent of its speed or radius of its orbit. The cyclotron is used to bombard nuclei with energetic particles, so accelerated by it, and study figure 4.8 A schematic sketch of the cyclotron. There is a source of charged particles or ions at P which move in a circular fashion in the Ds, D1 and D2. On account of a uniform perpendicular magnetic field B an alternating voltage source accelerates these ions to high speeds. The ions are eventually extracted at the exit port. Physics 142 Example 4.4 4. The resulting nuclear reactions, it is also used to implant ions into solids and modify their properties or even synthesize new materials. It is used in hospitals to produce radioactive substances which can be used in diagnosis and treatment. Example 4.4 A cyclotron's oscillator frequency is 10 MHz. What should be the operating magnetic field for accelerating protons if the radius of its Ds is 60 cm? What is the kinetic energy in meta the proton beam produced by the accelerator? E 1.60 x 10-19 C, MP 1.67 x 10-27 kg, 1 MeV 1.6 x 10-13 J, solution the oscillator frequency should be same as proton cyclotron frequency. Using EQS 4.5 and 4.6 and we have B2 Greek letter pi M Greek letter nu Q 6.3 x 1.67 x 10-27 x 107 1.6 x 10-19 0.66 t final velocity of protons is VRX2 Greek letter pi Greek letter nu 0.6 meters x 6.3 x 107 3.78 x 107 meters s. E1 half MV2 1.67 x 10-27 x 14.3 x 1014 2 x 1.6 x 10-13 7 MEV. Accelerators in India India has been an early entrant in the area of accelerator-based research. The vision of Dr. Magnet Saha created a 37 cyclotron in the Saha Institute of Nuclear Physics in Kolkata in 1953. This was soon followed by a series of Cockroft Walton type of accelerators established in Tata Institute of Fundamental Research TIFR. Mumbai, Aligarh Muslim University AMU, Aligarh, Bose Institute, Kolkata and Andhra University, Walter. The 60s saw the commissioning of a number of Van de Graaff accelerators, a 5.5 MV terminal machine in Babha Atomic Research Center Bark. Mumbai 1963, a 2 MV terminal machine in Indian Institute of Technology IIT, Kanpur, a 400 kV terminal machine in Banaras Hindu University BHU, Varanasi, and Punjabi University, Patiala. 166 cm cyclotron donated by the Rochester University of USA was commissioned in Punjab University, Chandigarh. A small electron accelerator was also established in University of Pune, Pune, in a major initiative taken in the 70s and 80s. A variable energy cyclotron was built indigenously in Variable Energy Cyclotron Center VECC, Kolkata. 2 MV tandem Van de Graaff accelerator was developed and built in Bark and a 14 MV tandem Pelotron accelerator was installed in TIFR. This was soon followed by a 15 MV tandem pelotron established by University Grants Commission UGC. As an inter-university facility and inter-university accelerator center IUAC, New Delhi, a 3 MV tandem pelotron and Institute of Physics. Bhubaneswar, and two 1.7 MV tandatrons and Atomic Minerals Directorate for Exploration and Research, Hyderabad and Indira Gandhi Center for Atomic Research, Kalpakam. Both TIFR and IUAC are augmenting their facilities with the addition of superconducting LINAC modules to accelerate the ions to higher energies. Besides these ion accelerators, the Department of Atomic Energy Day has developed many electron accelerators. A 2 gev synchrotron radiation source is being built in Rajaramana Center for Advanced Technologies, Indore. The Department of Atomic Energy is considering accelerator-driven systems ADS for power production and fissile material breeding as future options. Moving charges and magnetism 143 4.5 magnetic field due to a current element. By Otsavert law all magnetic fields that we know are due to currents or moving charges and due to intrinsic magnetic moments of particles. Here, we shall study the relation between current and the magnetic field it produces. It is given by the By Otsavert's law. Figure 4.9 shows a finite conductor XY carrying current I consider an infinitesimal element DL of the conductor. The magnetic field EB due to this element is to be determined at a point P which is at a distance R from it. 
Let creek letter theta be the angle between dl and the displacement vector r according to biot savarts law. The magnitude of the magnetic field EB is proportional to the current I, the element length dl, and inversely proportional to the square of the distance r. Its direction is perpendicular to the plane containing dl and r. Thus, in vector notation, 3 id dr x r b l 0 34 id r micro x greek letter pi r l 4.11 aware micro 0 4 greek letter pi is a constant of proportionality. The above expression holds when the medium is vacuum. The magnitude of this field is 0 2 d sin d 4 i l r micro greek letter theta greek letter pi b 4.11 b where we have used the property of cross product. Equation 4.11 constitutes our basic equation for the magnetic field. The proportionality constant in SI units has the exact value. 70 10 TMA 4 micro Greek letter pi 4.11 C we call micro zero the permeability of free space or vacuum. The biot savard law for the magnetic field has certain similarities, as well as, differences with the Coulomb's law for the electrostatic field. Some of these are, I both are long range, since both depend inversely on the square of distance from the source to the point of interest. The principle of superposition applies to both fields, in this connection. Note that the magnetic field is linear in the source IDL just as the electrostatic field is linear in its source. The electric charge to the electrostatic field is produced by a scalar source, namely, the electric charge. The magnetic field is produced by a vector source IDL. The sense of DLXR is also given by the right-hand screw rule. Look at the plane containing vectors DL and R. Imagine moving from the first vector towards second vector. If the movement is anti-clockwise, the resultant is toward you. If it is clockwise, the resultant is away from you. Figure 4.9 illustration of the biot savart law. The current element IDL produces a field EB at a distance R. The sign indicates that the field is perpendicular to the plane of this page and directed into it. Physics 144 example 4.53 The electrostatic field is along the displacement vector joining the source and the field point. The magnetic field is perpendicular to the plane containing the displacement vector R and the current element IDL. I there is an angle dependence in the biot savart law which is not present in the electrostatic case. In figure 4.9, the magnetic field at any point in the direction of DL the dashed line is zero, along this line, Greek letter theta zero, sin Greek letter theta zero and from ek. 4.11a, db zero, there is an interesting relation between Greek letter epsilon zero, the permittivity of free space, micro zero, the permeability of free space, and c. The speed of light in vacuum, 0, 0, 0, 0, 4, 4, micro Greek letter epsilon micro Greek letter epsilon Greek letter pi Greek letter pi 7 9 1 10 9 10 x 8 2 2 1 1 3 10 cx we will discuss this connection further in chapter 8 on the electromagnetic waves. Since the speed of light in vacuum is constant, the product micro 0 Greek letter epsilon 0 is fixed in magnitude, choosing the value of either Greek letter epsilon 0 or micro 0, fixes the value of the other. In SI units, micro zero is fixed to be equal to 4 Greek letter pi x 10-7 in magnitude. Example 4.5 An element exile is placed at the origin and carries a large current I 10A fig. 4.10 What is the magnetic field on the y-axis at a distance of 0.5 meters x 1 centimeters? Figure 4.10 Solution 0 2 d sin d 4 i l r micro Greek letter theta Greek letter pi b using ek. 4.112 d 10 milliliters x i 10A r 0.5 meters y. 70 TM 410A micro Greek letter pi Greek letter theta 90 degrees, sin Greek letter theta 1722 10 10 10 D 25 10 X X X B 4 X 10 dash 8 T the direction of the field is in the Z direction. This is so since, D X I X J X 0 Y X I X J Y X K we remind you of the following cyclic property of cross products. Semicolon X X X I J K J K I K I J note that the field is small in magnitude. 145 in the next section, we shall use the biot savart law to calculate the magnetic field due to a circular loop. 4.6 Magnetic field on the axis of a circular current loop in this section, we shall evaluate the magnetic field due to a circular coil along its axis. The evaluation entails summing up the effect of infinitesimal current elements IDL mentioned in the previous section. We assume that the current I is steady and that the evaluation is carried out in free space that is, vacuum. Figure 4.11 depicts a circular loop carrying a steady current I. The loop is placed in the YZ plane with its center at the origin O and has a radius R. The x-axis is the axis of the loop. We wish to calculate the magnetic field at the point P on this axis. Let X be the distance of P from the center O of the loop. Consider a conducting element DL of the loop. This is shown in figure 4.11. The magnitude dB of the magnetic field U to DL is given by the biot savart law X. 
4.11a, 034x redddbr micro Greek letter pi l 4.12 now r2x 2r2. Further, any element of the loop will be perpendicular to the displacement vector from the element to the axial point. For example, the element dl in figure 4.11 is in the yz plane, whereas, the displacement vector r from dl to the axial point p is in the xy plane. Hence dl xr r dl, thus, Greek letter pi 0 2 2 dd 4 ilb xr micro 4.13 the direction of db is shown in fig. 4.11, it is perpendicular to the plane formed by dl and r it has an x component dbx and a component perpendicular to x axis, db. When the components perpendicular to the x axis are summed over, they cancel out and we obtain a null result. For example, the db component due to dl is cancelled by the contribution due to the diametrically opposite dl element, shown in fig. 4.11, thus, only the x component survives, the net contribution along x direction can be obtained by integrating dbx db cos greek letter theta over the loop. For figure 4.11, 2212 cos rx r greek letter theta 4.14 from eqs 4.13 and 4.14, greek letter pi 03222 dd4 times ilr bxr micro figure 4.11 magnetic field on the axis of a current carrying circular loop of radius r. Shown are the magnetic field EB due to a line element DL and its components along and perpendicular to the axis. Physics 146 Example 4.6 The summation of elements DL over the loop yields to the circumference of the loop. Thus, the magnetic field at P due to entire circular loop is 2032222XIRBXR micro BII 4.15 as a special case of the above result. We may obtain the field at the center of the loop, here x0, and we obtain 002 IR micro BI 4.16 The magnetic field lines due to a circular wire form closed loops and are shown in fig. 4.12 The direction of the magnetic field is given by another right-hand thumb rule stated below. Curl the palm of your right hand around the circular wire with the fingers pointing in the direction of the current. The right hand thumb gives the direction of the magnetic field. Example 4.6 A straight wire carrying a current of 12 A is bent into a semicircular arc of radius 2.0 cm as shown in fig. 4.13 A. Consider the magnetic field B at the center of the arc of what is the magnetic field due to the straight segments. B in what way the contribution to B from the semicircle differs from that of a circular loop and in what way does it resemble? C. Would your answer be different if the wire were bent into a semicircular arc of the same radius but in the opposite way as shown in fig? 4.13 B figure 4.13 figure 4.12 The magnetic field lines for a current loop. The direction of the field is given by the right-hand thumb rule described in the text. The upper side of the loop may be thought of as the north pole and the lower side as the south pole of a magnet. 147 Example 4.6 Solution A DL and R for each element of the straight segments are parallel. Therefore, DLX R0. Straight segments do not contribute to BB for all segments of the semicircular arc. DLXR are all parallel to each other into the plane of the paper. All such contributions add up in magnitude, hence direction of B for a semicircular arc is given by the right-hand rule and magnitude is half that of a circular loop. Thus B is 1.9 x 10-14 normal to the plane of the paper going into its C same magnitude of B but opposite in direction to that in B. Example 4.7 Consider a tightly wound 100 turn coil of radius 10 cm, carrying a current of 1A. What is the magnitude of the magnetic field at the center of the coil solution since the coil is tightly wound? We may take each circular element to have the same radius R 10 cm 0.1 meters, the number of turns N 100. The magnitude of the magnetic field is, minus 720 minus 1410 10 1 2 2 10 and IBR micros XXX 42 10 Greek letter pi X 46 28 10 tons. X 4.7 Ampere's circuital law There is an alternative and appealing way in which the biot savart law may be expressed. Ampere's circuital law considers an open surface with a boundary figure 4.14. The surface has current passing through it. We consider the boundary to be made up of a number of small line elements. Consider one such element of length dl. We take the value of the tangential component of the magnetic field, bt, at this element and multiply it by the length of that element dl node, bt dl bdl. All such products are added together. We consider the limit as the lengths of elements get smaller and their number gets larger. The sum then tends to an integral. Ampere's law states that this integral is equal to micro zero times the total current passing through the surface, that is, VDL. DL micro zero 4.17 aware I is the total current through the surface. The integral is taken over the closed loop coinciding with the boundary C of the surface. 
The relation above involves a sign convention, given by the right hand rule. Let the fingers of the right hand be curled in the sense the boundary is traversed in the loop integral BDL. Then the direction of the thumb gives the sense in which the current eye is regarded as positive. For several applications, a much simplified version of EC. 4.17 approves sufficient. We shall assume that, in such cases, it is possible to choose the loop called an Ampurian loop such that at each point of the loop, either figure 4.14 example 4.7, Physics 148 IB is tangential to the loop and is a non-zero constant B, or 2B is normal to the loop, or 3B vanishes. Now, let L be the length part of the loop for which B is tangential, let IE be the current enclosed by the loop. Then, EC 4.17 reduces to, BL micro 0 IE 4.17 B when there is a system with a symmetry such as for a straight infinite current carrying wire in fig. 4.15 the Ampere's law enables an easy evaluation of the magnetic field, much the same way Gauss' law helps in determination of the electric field. This is exhibited in the example 4.9 below. The boundary of the loop chosen is a circle and magnetic field is tangential to the circumference of the circle. The law gives, for the left-hand side of EC 4.17b, B tour, we find that the magnetic field at a distance r outside the wire is tangential and given by Bx tour micro 0i. B micro 0 I tour 4.18 The above result for the infinite wire is interesting from several points of view. I it implies that the field at every point on the circle of radius R, with the wire along the axis, is same in magnitude. In other words, the magnetic field possesses what is called a cylindrical symmetry, the field that normally can depend on three coordinates depends only on one, R. Whenever there is symmetry, the solution simplified to the field direction at any point on this circle is tangential to it. Thus, the lines of constant magnitude of magnetic field form concentric circles. Notice now, in Fig. 4.1c, the iron filings form concentric circles. These lines called magnetic field lines form closed loops. This is unlike the electrostatic field lines which originate from positive charges and end at negative charges. The expression for the magnetic field of a straight wire provides a theoretical justification to Ersted's experiments. 3. Another interesting point to note is that even though the wire is infinite, the field due to it at a non-zero distance is not infinite. It tends to blow up only when we come very close to the wire. The field is directly proportional to the current and inversely proportional to the distance from the infinitely long current source. Andre Ampere 1775 minus 1836 Andre Ampere 1775 1836 Andre Marie Ampere was a French physicist, mathematician and chemist who founded the science of electrodynamics. Ampere was a child prodigy who mastered advanced mathematics by the age of 12. Ampere grasped the significance of Ersted's discovery. He carried out a large series of experiments to explore the relationship between current electricity and magnetism. These investigations culminated in 1827 with the publication of the mathematical theory of electrodynamic phenomena deduced solely from experiments. He hypothesized that all magnetic phenomena are due to circulating electric currents. Ampere was humble and absent-minded. He once forgot an invitation to dine with the Emperor Napoleon. He died of pneumonia at the age of 61. His gravestone bears the epitaph, Tandem Felix happy at last. Moving charges and magnetism 149 example 4.85 There exists a simple rule to determine the direction of the magnetic field due to a long wire. This rule, called the right hand rule, is, grasp the wire in your right hand with your extended thumb pointing in the direction of the current. Your fingers will curl around in the direction of the magnetic field. Ampere's circuital law is not new in content from Biot's Savart law. Both relate the magnetic field and the current, and both express the same physical consequences of a steady electrical current. Ampere's law is to Biot's Savart law, what Gauss's law is to Coulomb's law, both. Ampere's and Gauss's law relate a physical quantity on the periphery or boundary magnetic or electric field to another physical quantity, namely, the source, in the interior current or charge. We also note that Ampere's circuital law holds for steady currents which do not fluctuate with time. The following example will help us understand what is meant by the term enclosed current. Example 4.8 figure 4.15 shows a long straight wire of a circular cross-section radius a carrying steady current I. The current I is uniformly distributed across this cross-section. Calculate the magnetic field in the region R, A and R, A. Figure 4.15 solution A consider the case R, A the Ampereian loop. Label 2, is a circle concentric with the cross-section. For this loop, 
L2 Greek letter pi R I E current enclosed by the loop I. The result is the familiar expression for a long straight wire B2 Greek letter pi R micro 0 I Greek letter pi 0 2 I B R micro 4.1901 B R R R B consider the case R A. The Amperian loop is a circle labeled 1. For this loop, taking the radius of the circle to be R. L2 Greek letter pi R note that there are two distinct right hand rules, one which gives the direction of B on the axis of current loop and the other which gives direction of B for a straight conducting wire. Fingers and thumb play different roles in the two. 150 example 4.8 Now the current enclosed IE is not I, but is less than this value, since the current distribution is uniform. The current enclosed is 2 2 Greek letter pi Greek letter pi ERI 2 2 I are using up here's law. Greek letter pi 2 0 2 2 I R B R A micro Greek letter pi 0 22 micro I B R A 4.19 B B R R A figure 4.16 figure 4.16 shows a plot of the magnitude of B with distance R from the center of the wire. The direction of the field is tangential to the respective circular loop 1 or 2 and given by the right hand rule described earlier in the section. This example possesses the required symmetry so that Ampere's law can be applied readily. It should be noted that while Ampere's circuital law holds for any loop, it may not always facilitate an evaluation of the magnetic field in every case. For example, for the case of the circular loop discussed in section 4.6, it cannot be applied to extract the simple expression B micro 0 I 2 R X. 4.16 for the field at the center of the loop. However, there exists a large number of situations of high symmetry where the law can be conveniently applied. We shall use it in the next section to calculate the magnetic field produced by two commonly used and very useful magnetic systems, the solenoid and the toroid. 4.8 The solenoid and the toroid The solenoid and the toroid are two pieces of equipment which generate magnetic fields. The television uses the solenoid to generate magnetic fields needed. The synchrotron uses a combination of both to generate the high magnetic fields required. In both solenoid and toroid, we come across a situation of high symmetry where Ampere's law can be conveniently applied. Moving charges and magnetism 151 4, 8, 1 The solenoid we shall discuss a long solenoid. By long solenoid we mean that the solenoid's length is large compared to its radius. It consists of a long wire wound in the form of a helix where the neighboring turns are closely spaced. So each turn can be regarded as a circular loop. The net magnetic field is the vector sum of the fields due to all the turns. Enameled wires are used for winding so that turns are insulated from each other. Figure 4.17 displays the magnetic field lines for a finite solenoid. We show a section of this solenoid in an enlarged manner in Figure 4.17a. Figure 4.17b shows the entire finite solenoid with its magnetic field. In Figure 4.17a, it is clear from the circular loops that the field between two neighboring turns vanishes. In Figure 4.17b, we see that the field at the interior midpoint P is uniform, strong and along the axis of the solenoid. The field at the exterior midpoint Q is weak and moreover is along the axis of the solenoid with no perpendicular or normal component. As the solenoid is made longer it appears like a long cylindrical metal sheet. Figure 4.18 represents this idealized picture. The field outside the solenoid approaches zero. We shall assume that the field outside is zero. The field inside becomes everywhere parallel to the axis. Figure 4.17 of the magnetic field due to a section of the solenoid which has been stretched out for clarity. Only the exterior semicircular part is shown. Notice how the circular loops between neighboring turns tend to cancel. B. The magnetic field of a finite solenoid. Figure 4.18 The magnetic field of a very long solenoid. We consider a rectangular Ampérian loop ab to determine the field. Physics 152 Consider a rectangular Ampérian loop ab. Along CD the field is zero as argued above. Along transverse sections BC and ad, the field component is zero. Thus, these two sections make no contribution. Let the field along OB be thus, the relevant length of the Ampérian loop is, LH let N be the number of turns per unit length, then the total number of turns is NH. The enclosed current is, IE INH, where I is the current in the solenoid, from Ampere's circuital law EC. 4.17 BBL micro 0 IE, BH micro 0 INH B micro 0 NI 4.20 The direction of the field is given by the right hand rule. The solenoid is commonly used to obtain a uniform magnetic field. We shall see in the next chapter that a large field is possible by inserting a soft iron core inside the solenoid. 4. 8. 2. The toroid. The toroid is a hollow circular ring on which a large number of turns of a wire are closely wound. It can be viewed as a solenoid which has been bent into a circular shape to close on itself. It is shown in fig. 
4.19 a carrying a current I we shall see that the magnetic field in the open space inside point P and exterior to the toroid point Q is zero. The field B inside the toroid is constant in magnitude for the ideal toroid of closely wound turns. Figure 4.19b shows a sectional view of the toroid. The direction of the magnetic field inside is clockwise as per the right-hand thumb rule for circular loops. Three circular Empyrean loops 1, 2 and 3 are shown by dashed lines. By symmetry, the magnetic field should be tangential to each of them and constant in magnitude for a given loop. The circular areas bounded by loops 2 and 3 both cut the toroid, so that each turn of current carrying wire is cut once by the loop 2 and twice by the loop 3. Let the magnetic field along loop 1 be B1 in magnitude, then in Ampere's circuit arc 4.17 up, L2 Greek letter pi R1. However, the loop encloses no current, so I is 0, thus, B12 Greek letter pi R1 micro 0 0, B10 thus, the magnetic field at any point P in the open space inside the toroid is 0. We shall now show that magnetic field at Q is likewise 0, let the magnetic field along loop 3 be B3. Once again from Ampere's law L2 Greek letter pi R3, however, from the sectional cut, we see that the current coming out of the plane of the paper is cancelled exactly by the current going into it. Thus, IE0, and B30, let the magnetic field inside the solenoid be B. We shall now consider the magnetic field at S. Once again we employ Ampere's law in the form of EC 4.17A, we find. L2 Greek letter pi R the current enclosed IE is for an turns of toroidal coil and IB tor micro zero and I figure 4.19 a toroid carrying a current I. B a sectional view of the toroid. The magnetic field can be obtained at an arbitrary distance R from the center O of the toroid by Ampere's circuital law. The dashed lines labeled 1, 2 and 3 are three circular Ampereian loops. Moving charges and magnetism 153.02 and IBR micro Greek letter pi 4.21 We shall now compare the two results, for a toroid and solenoid. We re-express EC 4.21 to make the comparison easier with the solenoid result given in EC 4.20. Let R be the average radius of the toroid and N be the number of turns per unit length, then N tor an average parameter of the toroid X number of turns per unit length and thus. B micro 0 and I. 4.22 that is, the result for the solenoid, in an ideal toroid the coils are circular. In reality the turns of the toroidal coil form a helix and there is always a small magnetic field external to the toroid. Magnetic confinement we have seen in section 4.3 see also the box on helical motion of charged particles earlier in this chapter that orbits of charged particles are helical. If the magnetic field is non-uniform, but does not change much during one circular orbit, then the radius of the helix will decrease as it enters stronger magnetic field and the radius will increase when it enters weaker magnetic fields. We consider two solenoids at a distance from each other, enclosed in an evacuated container C figure below where we have not shown the container. Charged particles moving in the region between the two solenoids will start with a small radius, the radius will increase as field decreases and the radius will decrease again as field due to the second solenoid takes over. The solenoids act as a mirror or reflector, see the direction of F as the particle approaches coil 2 in the figure. It has a horizontal component against the forward motion, this makes the particles turn back when they approach the solenoid. Such an arrangement will act like magnetic bottle or magnetic container, the particles will never touch the sides of the container. Such magnetic bottles are of great use in confining the high-energy plasma in fusion experiments, the plasma will destroy any other form of material container because of its high temperature. Another useful container is a toroid. Toroids are expected to play a key role in the tokamak, an equipment for plasma confinement and fusion power reactors. There is an international collaboration called the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor ADAIR. Being set up in France, for achieving control fusion, of which India is a collaborating nation. For details of ADAIR collaboration and the project, you may visit www.idair.org. 154 example 4.9 example 4.9 a solenoid of length 0.5 meters has a radius of 1 centimeters and is made up of 500 turns. It carries a current of 5 a what is the magnitude of the magnetic field inside the solenoid solution the number of turns per unit length is 500 1000 0.5 n turns m the length l 0.5 meters and radius r 0.01 meters thus l a 50 that is l a. Hence, we can use the long solenoid formula, namely, EC 4.20 B micro 0 N I 4 Greek letter pi X 10-7 X 103 X 56.28 X 10-3 T 4.9 force between two parallel currents. The app here we have learnt that there exists a magnetic field due to a conductor carrying a current which obeys the Biot-Savart law. Further, 
we have learned that an external magnetic field will exert a force on a current carrying conductor. This follows from the Lorentz force formula. Thus, it is logical to expect that two current carrying conductors placed near each other will exert magnetic forces on each other. In the period 1820-25, Ampere studied the nature of this magnetic force and its dependence on the magnitude of the current, on the shape and size of the conductors, as well as, the distances between the conductors. In this section, we shall take the simple example of two parallel current carrying conductors, which will perhaps help us to appreciate Ampere's painstaking work. Figure 4.20 shows two long parallel conductors A and B separated by a distance D and carrying parallel currents IA and IB, respectively. The conductor A produces the same magnetic field by at all points along the conductor B. The right-hand rule tells us that the direction of this field is downwards when the conductors are placed horizontally. Its magnitude is given by EC 4.19 or from Ampere's circuital law, 02 IBD micro Greek letter pi. The conductor B carrying a current it will experience a sideways force due to the field pi. The direction of this force is towards the conductor A. Verify this. We label this force as FPA, the force on a segment L of B due to A. The magnitude of this force is given by EC 4.4, figure 4.202 long straight parallel conductors carrying steady currents IA and have been separated by a distance D. FPA is the magnetic field set up by conductor A at conductor B. Moving charges and magnetism 155 5 alba 0 2 a b i l d micro greek letter pi 4.23 it is of course possible to compute the force on a due to b. From considerations similar to above we can find the force fab on a segment of length l of a due to the current in b. It is equal in magnitude to fba and directed towards b. Thus, fba fab 4.24 note that this is consistent with Newton's third law. Thus, at least for parallel conductors and steady currents, we have shown that the biot savard law and the Lorentz force yield results in accordance with Newton's third law. We have seen from above that currents flowing in the same direction attract each other, one can show that oppositely directed currents repel each other. Thus, parallel currents attract, and anti-parallel currents repel, this rule is the opposite of what we find in electrostatics. Like same sign charges repel each other, but like parallel currents attract each other, let FBA represent the magnitude of the force FBA per unit length. Then, from EC 4.23, Greek letter pi 0 to a B by IFD micro 4.25 The above expression is used to define the ampere A, which is one of the seven SI base units. The ampere is the value of that steady current which, when maintained in each of the two very long, straight, parallel conductors of negligible cross-section, and placed one meter apart in vacuum, would produce on each of these conductors a force equal to 2x10-7 newtons per meter of length. This definition of the ampere was adopted in 1946. It is a theoretical definition. In practice, one must eliminate the effect of the Earth's magnetic field and substitute very long wires by multi-turn coils of appropriate geometries. An instrument called the current balance is used to measure this mechanical force. The SI unit of charge, namely, the coulomb, can now be defined in terms of the ampere. When a steady current of 1A is set up in a conductor, the quantity of charge that flows through its cross-section in 1S is 1 coulomb 1C. It turns out that when we have time-dependent currents and or charges in motion, Newton's third law may not hold for forces between charges and or conductors. An essential consequence of the Newton's third law in mechanics is conservation of momentum of an isolated system. This, however, holds even for the case of time-dependent situations with electromagnetic fields, provided the momentum carried by fields is also taken into account. 156 Example 4.10 Example 4.10 The horizontal component of the Earth's magnetic field at a certain place is 3.0 x 10-5 t and the direction of the field is from the geographic south to the geographic north. A very long straight conductor is carrying a steady current of 1A. What is the force per unit length on it when it is placed on a horizontal table and the direction of the current is A east to west, B south to north? Solution FL X B F I L B sin the force per unit length is FFLIB sin when the current is flowing from east to west. Greek letter theta 90 degrees hence, FIB 1 X 3 X 10 5 3 X 10 5 NM 1 Roget spiral for attraction between parallel currents magnetic effects are generally smaller than electric effects. As a consequence, the force between currents is rather small, because of the smallness of the factor micro. Hence it is difficult to demonstrate attraction or repulsion between currents. Thus, for 5A current in each wire at a separation of 1 cm, the force per meter would be 5x 10-4n, which is about 50 mg weight. It would be like pulling a wire by a string going over a pulley to which a 50 mg weight is attached. The displacement of the wire would be quite unnoticeable, with the use of a soft spring, 
we can increase the effective length of the parallel current and by using mercury, we can make the displacement of even a few mm observable very dramatically. You will also need a constant current supply giving a constant current of about 5 A. Take a soft spring whose natural period of oscillations is about 0.5 to 1 S. Hang it vertically and attach a pointed tip to its lower end, as shown in the figure here. Take some mercury in addition to just the spring such that the tip is just above the mercury surface. Take the DC current source, connect one of its terminals to the upper end of the spring, and dip the other terminal in mercury. If the tip of the spring touches mercury, the circuit is completed through mercury. Let the DC source be put off to begin with. Let the tip be adjusted so that it just touches the mercury surface. Switch on the constant current supply, and watch the fascinating outcome. The spring shrinks with a jerk. The tip comes out of mercury just by a mm or so. The circuit is broken. The current stops. The spring relaxes and tries to come back to its original position. The tip again touches mercury establishing a current in the circuit, and the cycle continues with tick, tick, tick. In the beginning, you may require some small adjustments to get a good effect. Keep your face away from mercury vapor as it is poisonous. Do not inhale mercury vapor for long. Moving charges and magnetism 157 example 4.10 This is larger than the value 2x 10-7 nm1 quoted in the definition of the ampere. Hence it is important to eliminate the effect of the Earth's magnetic field and other stray fields while standardizing the ampere. The direction of the force is downwards. This direction may be obtained by the directional property of cross product of vectors. B when the current is flowing from south to north, Greek letter theta 0 o f 0 hence there is no force on the conductor. 4.10 torque on current loop. Magnetic dipole 4, 1, 0, 1 torque on a rectangular current loop in a uniform magnetic field. We now show that a rectangular loop carrying a steady current I and placed in a uniform magnetic field experiences a torque. It does not experience a net force. This behavior is analogous to that of electric dipole in a uniform electric field section 1.12. We first consider the simple case when the rectangular loop is placed such that the uniform magnetic field B is in the plane of the loop. This is illustrated in figure 4.21A. The field exerts no force on the two arms AD and BC of the loop. It is perpendicular to the arm AB of the loop and exerts a force F1 on it which is directed into the plane of the loop. Its magnitude is F1 IBB. Similarly, it exerts a force F2 on the arm CD and F2 is directed out of the plane of the paper. F2 IBB F1 thus. The net force on the loop is zero. There is a torque on the loop due to the pair of forces F1 and F2. Figure 4.21b shows a view of the loop from the AD end. It shows that the torque on the loop tends to rotate it anti-clockwise. This torque is in magnitude. 122-2-I-F-A-2-2-I-E-B-I-O-B-I-A-B 4.26 where a is the area of the rectangle. We next consider the case when the plane of the loop is not along the magnetic field, but makes an angle with it. We take the angle between the field and the normal to figure 4.21 a rectangular current carrying coil in uniform magnetic field. The magnetic moment m points downwards. The torque Greek letter tau 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 is along the axis and tends to rotate the coil anti-clockwise. Be the couple acting on the coil. Physics 158 The coil to be angle Greek letter theta the previous case corresponds to Greek letter theta Greek letter pi 2. Figure 4.22 illustrates this general case. The forces on the arms BC and DA are equal, opposite, and act along the axis of the coil, which connects the centers of mass of BC and DA, being collinear along the axis they cancel each other. Resulting in no net force or torque, the forces on arms AB and CD are F1 and F2, they too are equal and opposite, with magnitude, F1 F2 IBB but they are not collinear, this results in a couple as before. The torque is, however, less than the earlier case when plane of loop was along the magnetic field. This is because the perpendicular distance between the forces of the couple has decreased. Figure 4.22b is a view of the arrangement from the AD end and it illustrates these two forces constituting a couple. The magnitude of the torque on the loop is 1 2 sin sin 2 2 i f a greek letter theta greek letter theta i ab sin greek letter theta i a b sin greek letter theta 4.27 is greek letter theta 0. The perpendicular distance between the forces of the couple also approaches 0. This makes the forces collinear and the net force and torque zero. The torques in EQS 4.26 and 4.27 can be expressed as vector product of the magnetic moment of the coil and the magnetic field. We define the magnetic moment of the current loop as MIA 4.28 where the direction of the area vector A is given by the right-hand thumb rule and is directed into the plane of the paper in fig. 
4.21, then as the angle between M and B is Greek letter theta, EQS 4.26 and 4.27 can be expressed by one expression Greek letter tau MBXX 4.29 This is analogous to the electrostatic case electric dipole of dipole moment P in an electric field E. Greek letter tau Greek letter tau XXP E is as clear from EG 4.28, the dimensions of the magnetic moment are AL2 and its unit is M2. From EG 4.29 we see that the torque Greek letter tau 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 vanishes when M is either parallel or anti-parallel to the magnetic field B. This indicates a state of equilibrium as there is no torque on the coil. This also applies to any object with a magnetic moment M. When M and B are parallel the figure 4.22 of the area vector of the loop ABCD makes an arbitrary angle Greek letter theta with the magnetic field. B top view of the loop, the forces F1 and F2 acting on the arms AB and CD are indicated. Moving charges and magnetism 159 example 4.11 equilibrium is a stable one. Any small rotation of the coil produces a torque which brings it back to its original position. When they are anti-parallel, the equilibrium is unstable as any rotation produces a torque which increases with the amount of rotation. The presence of this torque is also the reason why a small magnet or any magnetic dipole aligns itself with the external magnetic field. If the loop has n closely wound turns, the expression for torque, EK 4.29, still holds, with MNIA 4.30 example 4.11 A100 turn closely wound circular coil of radius 10 cm carries a current of 3.2 A and what is the field at the center of the coil? B What is the magnetic moment of this coil? The coil is placed in a vertical plane and is free to rotate about a horizontal axis which coincides with its diameter. A uniform magnetic field of 2T in the horizontal direction exists such that initially the axis of the coil is in the direction of the field. The coil rotates through an angle of 90 degrees under the influence of the magnetic field C. What are the magnitudes of the torques on the coil in the initial and final position? D. What is the angular speed acquired by the coil when it has rotated by 90 degrees? The moment of inertia of the coil is 0.1 kg M2. Solution if from EK 4.16 BNIR micro 0 2 here, N100. I 3.2 A, and R 0.1 meters, hence, BXXXX4 10 10 3 2 2 10 7 2 1 Greek letter pi. XXX4 10 10 2 10 5 1 using Greek letter pi X 3.2 10 2 X 10 dash 3 T the direction is given by the right hand thumb rule. B the magnetic moment is given by X 4.30, MNIANI Greek letter pi R 2 100 X 3.2 X 3.14 X 10 dash 2 10 AM 2 the direction is once again given by the right hand thumb rule. C Greek letter tau MBX from EK 4.29 sin B Greek letter theta initially, Greek letter theta 0, thus, initial torque I 0, finally, Greek letter theta Greek letter pi 2 R 90 masculine ordinal. Thus, final torque fem B 10 X 2 20 NMD from Newton's second law, I where I is the moment of inertia of the coil. From chain rule, using this, I. 160 example 4.1 to example 4.11 example 4.12 a current carrying circular loop lies on a smooth horizontal plane. Can a uniform magnetic field be set up in such a manner that the loop turns around itself that is, turns about the vertical axis? B a current carrying circular loop is located in a uniform external magnetic field. If the loop is free to turn, what is its orientation of stable equilibrium show that in this orientation, the flux of the total field external field field produced by the loop is maximum. C. A loop of the regular shape carrying current is located in an external magnetic field. If the wire is flexible, why does it change to a circular shape solution? And no, because that would require Greek letter tau 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 to be in the vertical direction. But Greek letter tau 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 I A X B, and since A of the horizontal loop is in the vertical direction, Greek letter tau would be in the plane of the loop for any BB orientation of stable equilibrium is one where the area vector A of the loop is in the direction of external magnetic field, in this orientation. The magnetic field produced by the loop is in the same direction as external field, both normal to the plane of the loop, thus giving rise to maximum flux of the total field. See it assumes circular shape with its plane normal to the field to maximize flux, since for a given perimeter, a circle encloses greater area than any other shape. 4. 1 0 2 circular current loop is a magnetic dipole in this section, we shall consider the elementary magnetic element, the current loop. We shall show that the magnetic field at large distances due to current in a circular current loop is very similar in behavior to the electric field of an electric dipole. In section 4.6, we have evaluated the magnetic field on the axis of a circular loop, of a radius r. Carrying a steady current I the magnitude of this field is ek 4.15. 
2032-22 micro IRBXR and its direction is along the axis and given by the right hand thumb rule fig. 4.12. Here, x is the distance along the axis from the center of the loop. For x, r, we may drop the r to term in the denominator. Thus, integrating from Greek letter theta 0 to Greek letter theta Greek letter pi 2. Moving charges and magnetism 161-2032 IRBX micro note that the area of the loop A2. Thus, 032 IABX micro Greek letter pi is earlier. We define the magnetic moment M to have a magnitude IA. MIA hence, BM, micro 032 Greek letter pi 0324X micro M 4.31 of the expression of EC. 4.31A is very similar to an expression obtained earlier for the electric field of a dipole. The similarity may be seen if we substitute. 001 micro Greek letter epsilon MP electrostatic dipole PE electrostatic field we then obtain. 3024 E's Greek letter pi PE which is precisely the field for an electric dipole at a point on its axis. Considered in Chapter 1, Section 1.10 EC 1.20, it can be shown that the above analogy can be carried further. We had found in Chapter 1 that the electric field on the perpendicular bisector of the dipole is given by C EC 1.21 E, pay X 403 P where X is the distance from the dipole. If we replace PIM in 001 micro Greek letter epsilon in the above expression, we obtain the result for B for a point in the plane of the loop at a distance X from the center. For X, R, BM, micro 034 Greek letter pi X X R, 4.31 B the results given by EQS 4.31 A and 4.31 B become exact for a point magnetic dipole. The results obtained above can be shown to apply to any planar loop. A planar current loop is equivalent to a magnetic dipole of dipole moment MIA which is the analog of electric dipole moment P note. However, a fundamental difference, an electric dipole is built up of two elementary units the charges are electric monopoles. In magnetism, a magnetic dipole or a current loop is the most elementary element, the equivalent of electric charges, that is, magnetic monopoles, are not known to exist. We have shown that a current loop I produces a magnetic field C figure 4.12 and behaves like a magnetic dipole at large distances. And, Physics 162.2 is subject to torque like a magnetic needle. This led Ampere to suggest that all magnetism is due to circulating currents. This seems to be partly true and no magnetic monopoles have been seen so far. However, elementary particles such as an electron or a proton also carry an intrinsic magnetic moment, not accounted by circulating currents. 4. 10. 3. The magnetic dipole moment of a revolving electron In Chapter 12 we shall read about the Bohr model of the hydrogen atom. You may perhaps have heard of this model which was proposed by the Danish physicist Niels Bohr in 1911 and was a stepping stone to a new kind of mechanics, namely, quantum mechanics. In the Bohr model, the electron a negatively charged particle revolves around a positively charged nucleus much as a planet revolves around the Sun. The force in the former case is electrostatic Coulomb force while it is gravitational for the planet Sun case. We show this Bohr picture of the electron in figure 4.23. The electron of charge EE 1.6 X 10-19 C performs uniform circular motion around a stationary heavy nucleus of charge A. This constitutes a current I, where, EIT 4.3 to ND is the time period of revolution, let R be the orbital radius of the electron, and V the orbital speed. Then, Greek letter pi to R T V 4.33 substituting in EC 4.32, we have IF tour, there will be a magnetic moment, usually denoted by mikrel, associated with this circulating current. From EC 4.28 its magnitude is, Michel R2 EVR2, the direction of this magnetic moment is into the plane of the paper and fig. 4.23, this follows from the right-hand rule discussed earlier and the fact that the negatively charged electron is moving anti-clockwise. Leading to a clockwise current, multiplying and dividing the right-hand side of the above expression by the electron mass me. We have, 2 liters EEMVRM micro 2 EELM 4.34A here. L is the magnitude of the angular momentum of the electron about the central nucleus orbital angular momentum. Vectorially, micro 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 2 liters EEML 4.34B the negative sign indicates that the angular momentum of the electron is opposite in direction to the magnetic moment. Instead of electron with figure 4.23 in the Bohr model of hydrogen-like atoms, the negatively charged electron is revolving with uniform speed around a centrally placed positively charged ZE nucleus. The uniform circular motion of the electron constitutes a current. The direction of the magnetic moment is into the plane of the paper and is indicated separately by 
moving charges and magnetism 163 charge E. If we had taken a particle with charge Q, the angular momentum and magnetic moment would be in the same direction. The ratio L to E ELM micro 4.35 is called the gyromagnetic ratio and is a constant. Its value is 8.8x1010 ckg for an electron, which has been verified by experiments. The fact that even at an atomic level there is a magnetic moment, confirms Ampere's bold hypothesis of atomic magnetic moments. This according to Ampere, would help one to explain the magnetic properties of materials. Can one assign a value to this atomic dipole moment? The answer is yes. One can do so within the Bohr model, Bohr hypothesized that the angular momentum assumes a discrete set of values, namely, 2 NHL Greek letter pi 4.36 where n is a natural number, n 1, 2, 3. And h is a constant named after Max Planck Planck's constant with a value h 6.626 x 10-34 js. This condition of discreteness is called the Bohr quantization condition. We shall discuss it in detail in Chapter 12. Our aim here is merely to use it to calculate the elementary dipole moment. Take the value n1, we have from ek. 4.34 that, min 4 liters eehm micro Greek letter pi 1934 31.1.6010 6.6310 43.14 9.11 10 xxxxxx 9.27 x 10 to 24 am to 4.37 where the subscript min stands for minimum. This value is called the Bohr magneton. Any charge in uniform circular motion would have an associated magnetic moment given by an expression similar to ek. 4.34. This dipole moment is labeled as the orbital magnetic moment, hence, the subscript L and micral. Besides the orbital moment, the electron has an intrinsic magnetic moment, which has the same numerical value as given in ek. 4.37. It is called the spin magnetic moment, but we hasten to add that it is not as though the electron is spinning. The electron is an elementary particle and it does not have an axis to spin around like a top or a earth. Nevertheless, it does possess this intrinsic magnetic moment. The microscopic roots of magnetism in iron and other materials can be traced back to this intrinsic spin magnetic moment. 4.11 The moving coil galvanometer currents and voltages in circuits have been discussed extensively in chapters 3. But how do we measure them? How do we claim the current in a circuit is 1.5 A or the voltage drop across a resistor is 1.2 V? Figure 4.24 exhibits a very useful instrument for this purpose, the moving conversion of galvanometer into ammeter and voltmeter, www.citocollegiate.com galvanometer xiaHTM. Physics 164 Coil Galvanometer MCG, it is a device whose principle can be understood on the basis of our discussion in section 4.10. The galvanometer consists of a coil, with many turns, free to rotate about a fixed axis figure 4.24, in a uniform radiomagnetic field. There is a cylindrical soft iron core which not only makes the field radial but also increases the strength of the magnetic field. When a current flows through the coil, a torque acts on it. This torque is given by ek 4.26 to be Greek letter tau and iab where the symbols have their usual meaning. Since the field is radial by design, we have taken sin Greek letter theta 1 in the above expression for the torque. The magnetic torque niab tends to rotate the coil. A spring SP provides a counter torque that balances the magnetic torque niab, resulting in a steady angular deflection Greek letter phi. In equilibrium can I A B where K is the torsional constant of the spring, that is the restoring torque per unit twist. The deflection Greek letter phi is indicated on the scale by a pointer attached to the spring. We have Greek letter phi nab ki 4.38. The quantity in brackets is a constant for a given galvanometer. The galvanometer can be used in a number of ways. It can be used as a detector to check if a current is flowing in the circuit. We have come across this usage in the Wheatstone's bridge arrangement. In this usage the neutral position of the pointer when no current is flowing through the galvanometer is in the middle of the scale and not at the left end as shown in figure 4.24. Depending on the direction of the current, the pointer's deflection is either to the right or the left. The galvanometer cannot as such be used as an ammeter to measure the value of the current in a given circuit. This is for two reasons. A galvanometer is a very sensitive device. It gives a full-scale deflection for a current of the order of micro or two for measuring currents. The galvanometer has to be connected in series, and as it has a large resistance, this will change the value of the current in the circuit. To overcome these difficulties, one attaches a small resistance RS, called shunt resistance, in parallel with the galvanometer coil, so that most of the current passes through the shunt. The resistance of this arrangement is, RG RS RG RS, RS if RG, RS if RS has small value. In relation to the resistance of the rest of the circuit RC, the effect of introducing the measuring instrument is also small and negligible. 
This figure 4.2 for the moving coil galvanometer, its elements are described in the text. Depending on the requirement, this device can be used as a current detector or for measuring the value of the current ammeter or voltage voltmeter. Moving charges and magnetism 165 arrangement is schematically shown in figure 4.25. The scale of this ammeter is calibrated and then graduated to read off the current value with ease. We define the current sensitivity of the galvanometer as the deflection per unit current, from EC. 4.38 This current sensitivity is, now by K Greek letter 5 4.39 A convenient way for the manufacturer to increase the sensitivity is to increase the number of turns and we choose galvanometers having sensitivities of value. Required by our experiment, the galvanometer can also be used as a voltmeter to measure the voltage across a given section of the circuit. For this it must be connected in parallel with that section of the circuit. Further, it must draw a very small current, otherwise the voltage measurement will disturb the original setup by an amount which is very large. Usually we like to keep the disturbance due to the measuring device below 1%. To ensure this, a large resistance R is connected in series with the galvanometer. This arrangement is schematically depicted in figure 4.26. Note that the resistance of the voltmeter is now, RGR, R. Large the scale of the voltmeter is calibrated to read off the voltage value with ease. We define the voltage sensitivity as the deflection per unit voltage, from EC 4.38. Greek letter 5 V nab K I V nab K R 1 4.40 An interesting point to note is that increasing the current sensitivity may not necessarily increase the voltage sensitivity. Let us take EC 4.39 which provides a measure of current sensitivity, if N to N, that is, we double the number of turns, then to I I Greek letter Phi Greek letter Phi thus, the current sensitivity doubles. However, the resistance of the galvanometer is also likely to double, since it is proportional to the length of the wire. In EC 4.40, N to N, and R to R, thus the voltage sensitivity, V V Greek letter Phi Greek letter Phi remains unchanged, so in general, the modification needed for conversion of a galvanometer to an ammeter will be different from what is needed for converting it into a voltmeter. Example 4.13 in the circuit figure 4.27 the current is to be measured. What is the value of the current if the ammeter shown is a galvanometer with a resistance RG 60.00 Greek letter omega, B is a galvanometer described in a but converted to an ammeter by a shunt resistance RS 0.02 Greek letter omega. C is an ideal ammeter with zero resistance figure 4.25 conversion of a galvanometer G to an ammeter by the introduction of a shunt resistance R as a very small value in parallel. Figure 4.26 conversion of a galvanometer G to a voltmeter by the introduction of a resistance R of large value in series. Example 4.13 Physics 166 figure 4.27 solution a total resistance in the circuit is 363 grams Greek letter omega, hence, I 363 0.048 AB resistance of the galvanometer converted to an ammeter is RRRRGSGSX 60002600002 Greek letter omega Greek letter omega Greek letter omega, 0.02 Greek letter omega total resistance in the circuit is 0.0233.02 Greek letter omega Greek letter omega Greek letter omega, hence, I33.020.99 AC for the ideal ammeter with zero resistance. I331.00 A Summary 1, the total force on a charge Q moving with velocity V and the presence of magnetic and electric fields B and E, respectively is called the Lorentz force. It is given by the expression, FQVXB the magnetic force QVXB is normal to V and work done by it is zero. 2. A straight conductor of length L and carrying a steady current I experiences a force F in a uniform external magnetic field B. FILXB where LL and the direction of L is given by the direction of the current 3, in a uniform magnetic field B. A charge Q executes a circular orbit in a plane normal to be its frequency of uniform circular motion is called the cyclotron frequency and is given by 2 CQBM Greek letter new Greek letter pi this frequency is independent of the particle's speed and radius. This fact is exploited in a machine, the cyclotron, which is used to accelerate charged particles. 4. The biot savard law asserts that the magnetic field E be due to an element DL carrying a steady current I at a point P at a distance R from the current element is 0 3 dd 4 ir micro x Greek letter pi LRB example 4.13. 167 To obtain the total field at P, we must integrate this vector expression over the entire length of the conductor. 5. The magnitude of the magnetic field due to a circular coil of radius R carrying a current I at an axial distance X from the center is 2022322 IRB XR micro at the center this reduces to 02 IBR micro 6. Ampere's circuital law, 
but an open surface SB bounded by a loop C. Then the Ampere's law states the BLDI micro 0 C and tilde where I refers to the current passing through S. The sine of I is determined from the right-hand rule. We have discussed a simplified form of this law. If B is directed along the tangent to every point on the perimeter L of a closed curve and is constant in magnitude along perimeter then. The L micro 0 IE where IE is the net current enclosed by the closed circuit 7. The magnitude of the magnetic field at a distance R from a long, straight wire carrying a current I is given by Greek letter pi 0 2 I B R micro the field lines are circles concentric with the wire. 8. The magnitude of the field B inside a long solenoid carrying a current I is B micro 0 nu where N is the number of turns per unit length. For a toroid one obtains, 0 2 N I B R micro Greek letter pi where N is the total number of turns and R is the average radius. 9. Parallel currents attract and anti-parallel currents repel 10. A planar loop carrying a current I. Having n closely wound turns, and an area A possesses a magnetic moment M where, M N I A and the direction of M is given by the right hand thumb rule, curl the palm of your right hand along the loop with the fingers pointing in the direction of the current. The thumb sticking out gives the direction of M and A when this loop is placed in a uniform magnetic field B. The force F on it is, F0 and the torque on it is, Greek letter tau MXB in a moving coil galvanometer, this torque is balanced by a counter torque due to a spring. Yielding an IAB. 168 where Greek letter phi is the equilibrium deflection and K the torsion constant of the spring 11. An electron moving around the central nucleus has a magnetic moment micral given by, 2 liters ELM micro where L is the magnitude of the angular momentum of the circulating electron about the central nucleus. The smallest value of micral is called the Bohr magnet on microb and it is microb 9.27 x 10-24 JT12. A moving coil galvanometer can be converted into a meter by introducing a shunt resistance RS, of small value in parallel. It can be converted into a voltmeter by introducing a resistance of a large value in series. Physical quantity symbol nature dimensions units remarks permeability of free micro zero scalar MLT, 2A. 2 TMA14 Greek letter pi x 10 7 TMA1 space magnetic field B vector MT 2A 1 T Telsa magnetic moment M vector L2 A A M2 R J T torsion constant K scalar M L2 T2 N M rad 1 appears in MCG points to ponder 1. Electrostatic field lines originate at a positive charge and terminate at a negative charge or fade at infinity. Magnetic field lines always form closed loops too. The discussion in this chapter holds only for steady currents which do not vary with time. When currents vary with time Newton's third law is valid only if momentum carried by the electromagnetic field is taken into account. 3. Recall the expression for the Lorentz force, FQVXBE This velocity-dependent force has occupied the attention of some of the greatest scientific thinkers. If one switches to a frame with instantaneous velocity V, the magnetic part of the force vanishes. The motion of the charged particle is then explained by arguing that there exists an appropriate electric field in the new frame. We shall not discuss the details of this mechanism, however. We stress that the resolution of this paradox implies that electricity and magnetism are linked phenomena electromagnetism and that the Lorentz force expression does not imply a universal preferred frame of reference in nature. 4. Ampere's circuital law is not independent of the biot savart law, it can be derived from the biot savart law. Its relationship to the biot savart law is similar to the relationship between Gauss's law and Coulomb's law. Moving charges and magnetism 169 exercises 4.1 A circular coil of wire consisting of 100 turns, each of radius 8.0 cm carries a current of 0.40 A. What is the magnitude of the magnetic field B at the center of the coil? 4.2 A long straight wire carries a current of 35 A. What is the magnitude of the field B at a point 20 cm from the wire? 4.3 A long straight wire in the horizontal plane carries a current of 50 A in north to south direction. Give the magnitude and direction of B at a point 2.5 meters east of the wire 4.4 A horizontal overhead power line carries a current of 90 A in east to west direction. What is the magnitude and direction of the magnetic field due to the current 1.5 meters below the line 4.5 What is the magnitude of magnetic force per unit length on a wire carrying a current of 8 A and making an angle of 30 mass kilon ordinal with the direction of a uniform magnetic field of 0.15 T. 4.6 A 3.0 cm wire carrying a current of 10 A is placed inside a solenoid perpendicular to its axis. The magnetic field inside the solenoid is given to be 0.27 tons. What is the magnetic force on the wire? 4.72 long and parallel straight wires A and B carrying currents of 8.0 A and 5.0 A in the same direction are separated by a distance of 4.0 cm. 
Estimate the force on a 10 cm section of wire A 4.8 A closely wound solenoid 80 cm long has 5 layers of windings of 400 turns each. The diameter of the solenoid is 1.8 cm. If the current carried is 8.0 A, estimate the magnitude of B inside the solenoid near its center. 4.9 A square coil of side 10 cm consists of 20 turns and carries a current of 12 A. The coil is suspended vertically and the normal to the plane of the coil makes an angle of 30 masculine ordinal with the direction of a uniform horizontal magnetic field of magnitude 0.80 tons. What is the magnitude of torque experienced by the coil 4.102 moving coil meters? M1 and M2 have the following particulars, R110 Greek letter omega. N130, A13.6 X10-3 M2. B10.25 dr to 14 Greek letter omega, N242, A21.8 x 10 3 M2, B20.50 t. The spring constants are identical for the 2 meters. Determine the ratio of the current sensitivity and B voltage sensitivity of M2 and M1, 4.11 in a chamber, a uniform magnetic field of 6.5 G1 G10 4 t is maintained. An electron is shot into the field with a speed of 4.8 x 106 meters s1 normal to the field. Explain why the path of the electron is a circle. Determine the radius of the circular orbit E1.5x 10-19c, me 9.1x 10-31kg 4.12 and exercise 4.11 obtain the frequency of revolution of the electron in its circular orbit. Does the answer depend on the speed of the electron? Explain 4.13a circular coil of 30 turns and radius 8.0 cm carrying a current of 6.0a is suspended vertically in a uniform horizontal magnetic field of magnitude 1.0 tons. The field lines make an angle of 60 degrees. Physics 170 with the normal of the coil. Calculate the magnitude of the counter torque that must be applied to prevent the coil from turning. B would your answer change, if the circular coil in a were replaced by a planar coil of some irregular shape that encloses the same area. All other particulars are also unaltered. Additional exercises 4.142 concentric circular coils X and Y of radii 16 cm and 10 cm. Respectively, lie in the same vertical plane containing the north to south direction. Coil X has 20 turns and carries a current of 16A. Coil Y has 25 turns and carries a current of 18A. The sense of the current in X is anti-clockwise and clockwise in Y, for an observer looking at the coil spacing west, give the magnitude and direction of the net magnetic field due to the coils at their center. 4.15A magnetic field of 100G1 G10-4 T is required which is uniform in a region of linear dimension about 10 cm and area of cross section about 10-3 M2. The maximum current carrying capacity of a given coil of wire is 15A and the number of turns per unit length that can be wound round a core is at most 1000 turns M1. Suggest some appropriate design particulars of a solenoid for the required purpose. Assume the core is not ferromagnetic. 4.16 for a circular coil of radius R and N turns carrying current I. The magnitude of the magnetic field at a point on its axis at a distance X from its center is given by 2032222 IRNBXR micro a show that this reduces to the familiar result for field at the center of the coil. B. Consider two parallel coaxial circular coils of equal radius R, and number of turns N, carrying equal currents in the same direction. And separated by a distance R show that the field on the axis around the midpoint between the coils is uniform over a distance that is small as compared to R. And is given by, 0.72 NIBR micro, approximately. Such an arrangement to produce a nearly uniform magnetic field over a small region is known as Helmholtz coils 4.17A toroid has a core non-ferromagnetic of inner radius 25 cm and outer radius 26 cm, around which 3500 turns of a wire are wound. If the current in the wire is 11A, what is the magnetic field outside the toroid, B inside the core of the toroid, and C in the empty space surrounded by the toroid? 4.18 Answer the following questions. A magnetic field that varies in magnitude from point to point but has a constant direction east to west is set up in a chamber. A charged particle enters the chamber and travels undeflected. Moving charges and magnetism 171 along a straight path with constant speed. What can you say about the initial velocity of the particle? B. A charged particle enters an environment of a strong and non-uniform magnetic field varying from point to point both in magnitude and direction and comes out of it following a complicated trajectory, would its final speed equal the initial speed if it suffered no collisions with the environment? C. An electron traveling west to east enters a chamber having a uniform electrostatic field in north to south direction. Specify the direction in which a uniform magnetic field should be set up to prevent the electron from deflecting from its straight line path. 
4.19 an electron emitted by a heated cathode and accelerated through a potential difference of 2.0 kV. Enters a region with uniform magnetic field of 0.15 tons determine the trajectory of the electron if the field A is transverse to its initial velocity. B makes an angle of 30 mass kilon ordinal with the initial velocity 4.20 A magnetic field setup using Helmholtz coils described in exercise 4.16 is uniform in a small region and has a magnitude of 0.75 tons in the same region. A uniform electrostatic field is maintained in a direction normal to the common axis of the coils. A narrow beam of single species charged particles all accelerated through 15 kV enters this region in a direction perpendicular to both the axis of the coils and the electrostatic field. If the beam remains undeflected when the electrostatic field is 9.0 x 10-5 vm1, make a simple guess as to what the beam contains. Why is the answer not unique? 4.21 a straight horizontal conducting rod of length 0.45 meters and mass 60 grams is suspended by two vertical wires at its ends. A current of 5.0 a is set up in the rod through the wires of what magnetic field should be set up normal to the conductor in order that the tension in the wires is zero. B. What will be the total tension in the wires if the direction of current is reversed keeping the magnetic field same as before ignore the mass of the wires G9.8 meters S2. 4.2 to the wires which connect the battery of an automobile to its starting motor carry a current of 300 a for a short time. What is the force per unit length between the wires if they are 70 cm long and 1.5 cm apart is the force attractive or repulsive 4.23 a uniform magnetic field of 1.5 t exists in a cylindrical region of radius 10.0 cm, its direction parallel to the axis along east to west. A wire carrying current of 7.0 a in the north to south direction passes through this region, what is the magnitude and direction of the force on the wire if? A the wire intersects the axis, B the wire is turned from NS to northeast northwest direction. C the wire in the NS direction is lowered from the axis by a distance of 6.0 cm 4.24 a uniform magnetic field of 3000 g is established along the positive Z direction. A rectangular loop of sides 10 cm and 5 cm carries a current of 12 a what is the torque on the loop in the different cases shown in figure 4.28. What is the force on each case which case corresponds to stable equilibrium? Physics 172 Figure 4.28 4.25 A circular coil of 20 turns and radius 10 cm is placed in a uniform magnetic field of 0.10 T normal to the plane of the coil. If the current in the coil is 5.0 A, what is the a total torque on the coil, B total force on the coil? C average force on each electron in the coil due to the magnetic field the coil is made of copper wire of cross-sectional area 10-5 M2. And the free electron density in copper is given to be about 1029 M3, 4.26 A solenoid 60 cm long and of radius 4.0 cm has three layers of windings of 300 turns each. A 2.0 cm long wire of mass 2.5 grams lies inside the solenoid near its center normal to its axis, both the wire and the axis of the solenoid are in the horizontal plane. The wire is connected through two leads parallel to the axis of the solenoid to an external battery which supplies a current of 6.0 A in the wire. What value of current with appropriate sense of circulation in the windings of the solenoid can support the weight of the wire G9.8 m S2? 4.27 A galvanometer coil has a resistance of 12 Greek letter omega and the meter shows full-scale deflection for a current of 3 ma. How will you convert the meter into a voltmeter of range 0 to 18 V? 4.28 A galvanometer coil has a resistance of 15 Greek letter omega and the meter shows full-scale deflection for a current of 4 ma. How will you convert the meter into an ammeter of range 0 to 6 A? 5.1 Introduction Magnetic phenomena are universal in nature, vast, distant galaxies, the tiny invisible atoms, humans and beasts all are permeated through and through with a host of magnetic fields from a variety of sources. The Earth's magnetism predates human evolution, the word magnet is derived from the name of an island in Greece called Magnesia where magnetic ore deposits were found. As early as 600 BC shepherds on this island complained that their wooden shoes which had nails at times stayed struck to the ground. Their iron tip rods were similarly affected. This attractive property of magnets made it difficult for them to move around. The directional property of magnets was also known since ancient times. A thin long piece of a magnet, when suspended freely, pointed in the north-south direction. A similar effect was observed when it was placed on a piece of cork which was then allowed to float in still water. The name lodestone or lodestone given to a naturally occurring ore of iron magnetite means leading stone. The technological exploitation of this property is generally credited to the Chinese. Chinese texts dating 400 BC mention the use of magnetic needles for navigation on ships. 
Caravans crossing the Gobi Desert also employed magnetic needles. A Chinese legend narrates the tale of the victory of the Emperor Huangti about 4,000 years ago, which he owed to his craftsman whom Chapter 5 Magnetism and Matter. Physics 174 Nowadays you would call engineers. These engineers built a chariot on which they placed a magnetic figure with arms outstretched. Figure 5.1 is an artist's description of this chariot. The figure swiveled around so that the finger of the statuette on it always pointed south. With this chariot, Wang Ti's troops were able to attack the enemy from the rear in thick fog, and to defeat Yurang them. In the previous chapter we have learned that moving charges or electric currents produce magnetic fields. This discovery, which was made in the early part of the 19th century is credited to Ersted, Ampere, Bayot and Savart, among others. In the present chapter, we take a look at magnetism as a subject in its own right. Some of the commonly known ideas regarding magnetism are, I the Earth behaves as a magnet with a magnetic field pointing approximately from the geographic south to the north. 2. When a bar magnet is freely suspended, it points in the north-south direction. The tip which points to the geographic north is called the north pole and the tip which points to the geographic south is called the south pole of the magnet. 3. There is a repulsive force when north poles or south poles of two magnets are brought close together. Conversely, there is an attractive force between the north pole of one magnet and the south pole of the other. I. We cannot isolate the north or south pole of a magnet. If a bar magnet is broken into two halves, we get two similar bar magnets with somewhat weaker properties. Unlike electric charges, isolated magnetic north and south poles known as magnetic monopoles do not exist. V. It is possible to make magnets out of iron and its alloys. We begin with a description of a bar magnet and its behavior in an external magnetic field. We describe Gauss's law of magnetism. We then follow it up with an account of the Earth's magnetic field. We next describe how materials can be classified on the basis of their magnetic properties. We describe Pada, Dia, and Ferromagnetism. We conclude with a section on electromagnets and permanent magnets 5.2 The bar magnet One of the earliest childhood memories of the famous physicist Albert Einstein was that of a magnet gifted to him by a relative. Einstein was fascinated and played endlessly with it. He wondered how the magnet could affect objects such as nails or pins placed away from it and not in any way connected to it by a spring or string. Figure 5.1 The arm of the statuette mounted on the chariot always points south. This is an artist's sketch of one of the earliest known compasses, thousands of years old. Magnetism and Matter 175 We begin our study by examining iron filing sprinkled on a sheet of glass placed over a short bar magnet. The arrangement of iron filings is shown in figure 5.2. The pattern of iron filings suggests that the magnet has two poles similar to the positive and negative charge of an electric dipole. As mentioned in the introductory section, one pole is designated the North Pole and the other, the South Pole. When suspended freely, these poles point approximately towards the geographic North and South Poles, respectively. A similar pattern of iron filings is observed around a current carrying solenoid 5. 2. 1. The magnetic field lines The pattern of iron filings permits us to plot the magnetic field lines. This is shown both for the bar magnet and the current carrying solenoid in figure 5.3. For comparison refer to the chapter 1, figure 1.17d. Electric field lines of an electric dipole are also displayed in figure 5.3c. The magnetic field lines are a visual and intuitive realization of the magnetic field. Their properties are, I the magnetic field lines of a magnet or a solenoid form continuous closed loops. This is unlike the electric dipole where these field lines begin from a positive charge and end on the negative charge or escape to infinity. 2. The tangent to the field line at a given point represents the direction of the net magnetic field B at that point. Figure 5.2 The arrangement of iron filings surrounding a bar magnet. The pattern mimics magnetic field lines. The pattern suggests that the bar magnet is a magnetic dipole. In some textbooks the magnetic field lines are called magnetic lines of force. This nomenclature is avoided since it can be confusing. Unlike electrostatics the field lines in magnetism do not indicate the direction of the force on a moving charge. Figure 5.3 The field lines of a bar magnet, the a current carrying finite solenoid and C electric dipole. At large distances, the field lines are very similar. The curves labeled I and 2 are closed Gaussian surfaces. Physics 176.3 The larger the number of field lines crossing per unit area, the stronger is the magnitude of the magnetic field B in figure 5.3A. B is larger around region 2 than in region I. If the magnetic field lines do not intersect, for if they did, the direction of the magnetic field would not be unique at the point of intersection. One can plot the magnetic field lines in a variety of ways. 
One way is to place a small magnetic compass needle at various positions and note its orientation. This gives us an idea of the magnetic field direction at various points in space 5, 2. 2 bar magnet is an equivalent solenoid in the previous chapter. We have explained how a current loop acts as a magnetic dipole section 4.10. We mention up here's hypothesis that all magnetic phenomena can be explained in terms of circulating currents. Recall that the magnetic dipole moment m associated with a current loop was defined to be m near where n is the number of turns in the loop, i the current and a the area vector ek. 4.30 The resemblance of magnetic field lines for a bar magnet and a solenoid suggest that a bar magnet may be thought of as a large number of circulating currents in analogy with a solenoid. Cutting a bar magnet in half is like cutting a solenoid. We get two smaller solenoids with weaker magnetic properties. The field lines remain continuous, emerging from one face of the solenoid and entering into the other face. One can test this analogy by moving a small compass needle in the neighborhood of a bar magnet and a current carrying finite solenoid and noting that the deflections of the needle are similar in both cases. To make this analogy more firm we calculate the axial field of a finite solenoid depicted in Fig. 5.4a. We shall demonstrate that at large distances this axial field resembles that of a bar magnet. Let the solenoid of figure 5.4 consists of n turns per unit length. Let its length be 2 liters and radius a. We can evaluate the axial field at a point P, at a distance r from the center O of the solenoid. To do this, consider a circular element of thickness dx of the solenoid at a distance x from its center. It consists of n dx turns. Let i be the current in the solenoid. In section 4.6 of the previous chapter we have calculated the magnetic field on the axis of a circular current loop. From x 4.13. The magnitude of the field at point P due to the circular element is figure 5.4 calculation of a the axial field of a finite solenoid in order to demonstrate its similarity to that of a bar magnet. B a magnetic needle in a uniform magnetic field B the arrangement may be used to determine either B or the magnetic moment M of the needle. Magnetism in matter 177 decibels N D X I A R X a micro 0 2 2 22 3 2 the magnitude of the total field is obtained by summing over all the elements in other words by integrating from XL to XL. Thus, 202 NIAB micro DXRX LL2232 This integration can be done by trigonometric substitutions. This exercise, however, is not necessary for our purpose. Note that the range of X is from L to L. Consider the far axial field of the solenoid, that is, R, A and R, L. Then the denominator is approximated by 32232RXR and BNIR DXLL micro 0232203222 NILR micro 5.1 Note that the magnitude of the magnetic moment of the solenoid is MN2 liters IA2 total number of turns X current X cross sectional area. Thus, 0324 meters BR micro Greek letter pi 5.2 This is also the far axial magnetic field of a bar magnet which one may obtain experimentally. Thus, a bar magnet and a solenoid produce similar magnetic fields. The magnetic moment of the bar magnet is thus equal to the magnetic moment of an equivalent solenoid that produces the same magnetic field. Some textbooks assign a magnetic charge also called pole strength can tow the north pole and QM to the south pole of a bar magnet of length 2 liters, and magnetic moment QM 2 liters. The field strength due to QM at a distance R from it is given by micro 0 QM for 2. The magnetic field due to the bar magnet is then obtained both for the axial and the equatorial case, in a manner analogous to that of an electric dipole chapter 1. The method is simple and appealing, however, magnetic monopoles do not exist, and we have avoided this approach for that reason. 5, 2, 3 The dipole in a uniform magnetic field the pattern of iron filings, that is, the magnetic field lines gives us an approximate idea of the magnetic field B. We may at times be required to determine the magnitude of B accurately. This is done by placing a small compass needle of known magnetic moment M in moment of inertia I22 and allowing it to oscillate in the magnetic field. This arrangement is shown in figure 5.4b. The torque on the needle is CX 4.29. Greek letter tau 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 MXB 5.3. Physics 178 example 5.1 in magnitude Greek letter tau MB sin here Greek letter tau 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 is restoring torque and Greek letter theta is the angle between M and B therefore. In equilibrium 2 2 sin Greek letter theta Greek letter theta DMB DTI negative sign with MB sin implies that restoring torque is in opposition to deflecting torque. For small values of Greek letter theta and radians, we approximate sin Greek letter theta Greek letter theta and get 2 2 Greek letter theta Greek letter theta DMB DTI or 2 2 Greek letter theta Greek letter theta DMB DTI. This represents a simple harmonic motion. 
the square of the angular frequency is Greek letter omega 2 MBI and the time period is 2 Greek letter pi T MBI 5.4 or 4 to 2 Greek letter pi BMTI 5.5 An expression for magnetic potential energy can also be obtained on lines similar to electrostatic potential energy. The magnetic potential energy M is given by UDM Greek letter tau Greek letter theta Greek letter theta MB DM sin cos Greek letter theta Greek letter theta MB. 5.6 We have emphasized in Chapter 2 that the zero of potential energy can be fixed at one's convenience. Taking the constant of integration to be zero means fixing the zero of potential energy at Greek letter theta 90 degrees, that is, when the needle is perpendicular to the field. Equation 5.6 shows that potential energy is minimum MB at Greek letter theta 0 degrees most stable position and maximum MB at Greek letter theta 180 degrees most unstable position. Example 5.1 in figure 5.4b, the magnetic needle has magnetic moment 6.7 x 10 to 2 am 2 and moment of inertia I 7.5 x 10-6 kgm 2. It performs 10 complete oscillations in 6.70 s. What is the magnitude of the magnetic field solution? The time period of oscillation is 6.70.6710 ts from ec. 5.5 to 24 Greek letter pi BMTI 26 minus 224.3.147.5106.710.67 xxxxx 0.01 t. 179 example 5.2 example 5.2 a short bar magnet placed with its axis at 30 degrees with an external field of 800 g experiences a torque of 0.016 nm. A what is the magnetic moment of the magnet B? What is the work done in moving it from its most stable to most unstable position? C. The bar magnet is replaced by a solenoid of cross-sectional area 2x 10-4m2 and 1000 turns. But at the same magnetic moment, determine the current flowing through the solenoid. Solution if from ec. 5.3, Greek letter tau mb sin Greek letter theta, Greek letter theta 30 degrees, hence sin 1 2, thus, 0.016 mx 800x 10-4 tx 12 meters 160 x 2 800 0.40 am 2 b from ec. 5.6, the most stable position is Greek letter theta 0 degrees and the most unstable position is Greek letter theta 180 degrees. Work done is given by 180 meters MWU or Greek letter theta degrees degrees 2 meters B2 X 0.40 X 800 X 10-4 0.064 JC from EC. 4.30, MS NIA, from Parta. MS 0.40 AM 2 0.40 1000 X I X 2 X 10 4 I 0.40 X 104 1000 X 2 2 A Example 5.3 Of what happens if a bar magnet is cut into two pieces, I transverse to its length. 2 Along its length B A magnetized needle in a uniform magnetic field experiences a torque but no net force. An iron nail near a bar magnet, however, experiences a force of attraction in addition to a torque. Why see must every magnetic configuration have a north pole and a south pole? What about the field U to a Tilroy D2 identical looking iron bars A and B are given? One of which is definitely known to be magnetized. We do not know which one. How would one ascertain whether or not both are magnetized if only one is magnetized? How does one ascertain which one use nothing else but the bars A and B solution? In either case, one gets two magnets, each with a north and south pole. Be no force if the field is uniform. The iron nail experiences a non-uniform field due to the bar magnet. There is induced magnetic moment in the nail, therefore, it experiences both force and torque. The net force is attractive because the induced south pole say in the nail is closer to the north pole of magnet than induced north pole. See not necessarily, true only if the source of the field has a net non-zero magnetic moment. This is not so for a toroid or even for a straight infinite conductor. D try to bring different ends of the bars closer. A repulsive force in some situation establishes that both are magnetized. If it is always attractive, then one of them is not magnetized. In a bar magnet the intensity of the magnetic field is the strongest at the two ends poles and weakest at the central region. This fact may be used to determine whether A or B is the magnet. In this case, to see which example 5.3. Physics 180 Example 5.4 Example 5.3 One of the two bars is a magnet. Pick up one, say, A and lower one of its ends, first on one of the ends of the other say, B, and then on the middle of B. If you notice that in the middle of B, A experiences no force, then B is magnetized. If you do not notice any change from the end to the middle of B, then A is magnetized 5, 2, for the electrostatic analog comparison of EQS. 5.2 5.3 and 5.6 with the corresponding equations for electric dipole chapter 1, suggests that magnetic field at large distances due to a bar magnet of magnetic moment M can be obtained from the equation for electric field due to an electric dipole of dipole moment P. By making the following replacements, EB, 
p.m. 00144 micro Greek letter epsilon Greek letter pi Greek letter pi in particular. We can write down the equatorial field B of the bar magnet at a distance R, for R, L, where L is the size of the magnet, 034 ER micro Greek letter pi MB 5.7 likewise, the axial field B A of a bar magnet for R, L is, 0324 AR micro Greek letter pi MB 5.8 equation 5.8 is just ek. 5.2 inches the vector form, table 5.1 summarizes the analogy between electric and magnetic dipoles. Electrostatics magnetism 1 Greek letter epsilon 0 micro 0 dipole a moment pm equatorial field for a short dipole page 40 r3 micro 0 meters 4 Greek letter pi r3 axial field for a short dipole 2 page 40 r3 micro 0 2 meters 4 Greek letter pi r3 external field torque pxemxb external field energy pemb table 5.1 the dipole analogy example 5.4 what is the magnitude of the equatorial and axial fields due to a bar magnet of length 5.0 centimeters at a distance of 50 centimeters from its midpoint the magnetic moment of the bar magnet is 0.40 am2 the same as in example 5.2 Solution from EC 5.7034 EMBR micro Greek letter pi 773 10.4 10.40 XX 73.210 TX from EC 5.80324 AMBR micro Greek letter pi 76.410 TX 181 example 5.5 example 5.5 figure 5.5 shows a small magnetized needle P placed at a point O the arrow shows the direction of its magnetic moment. The other arrows show different positions and orientations of the magnetic moment of another identical magnetized needle Q in which configuration the system is not in equilibrium. B in which configuration is the system in I stable, and two unstable equilibrium C which configuration corresponds to the lowest potential energy among all the configurations shown. Figure 5.5 Solution Potential energy of the configuration arises due to the potential energy of one dipole say, Q in the magnetic field due to other P. Use the result that the field U to P is given by the expression EQS 5.7 and 5.8, 0 pp 34 R micro Greek letter pi MB on the normal bisector 0 pp 324 R micro Greek letter pi MB on the axis where MP is the magnetic moment of the dipole P. Equilibrium is stable when MQ is parallel to BP, and unstable when it is anti-parallel to BP for instance for the configuration Q3 for which Q is along the perpendicular bisector of the dipole P. The magnetic moment of Q is parallel to the magnetic field at the position 3, hence Q3 is stable. Thus, a PQ1 and PQ2 bi PQ3, PQ6 stable, 2 PQ5, PQ4 unstable C PQ6 5.3 magnetism and Gauss law in chapter 1, we study Gauss's law for electrostatics. In figure 5.3c, we see that for a closed surface represented by I, the number of lines leaving the surface is equal to the number of lines entering it. This is consistent with the fact that no net charge is enclosed by the surface, however, in the same figure, for the closed surface too, there is a net outward flux, since it does include a net positive charge. Physics 180 to example 5.6 The situation is radically different for magnetic fields which are continuous and form closed loops. Examine the Gaussian surfaces represented by I or 2 in figure 5.3A or figure 5.3B. Both cases visually demonstrate that the number of magnetic field lines leaving the surface is balanced by the number of lines entering it. The net magnetic flux is zero for both the surfaces. This is true for any closed surface. Figure 5.6 Consider a small vector area element S of a closed surface S as in fig. 5.6 The magnetic flux through S is defined as Greek letter phi BBS, where B is the field at S. We divide S into many small area elements and calculate the individual flux through each, then, the net flux Greek letter phi B is, Greek letter phi or B all all B S 0 5.9 where all stands for all area elements S. Compare this with the Gauss's law of electrostatics, the flux through a closed surface in the case is given by ESQ Greek letter epsilon 0 where Q is the electric charge enclosed by the surface. The difference between the Gauss's law of magnetism and that for electrostatics is a reflection of the fact that isolated magnetic poles also called monopoles are not known to exist. There are no sources or sinks of B, the simplest magnetic element is a dipole or a current loop. All magnetic phenomena can be explained in terms of an arrangement of dipoles and or current loops. Thus, Gauss's law for magnetism is, the net magnetic flux through any closed surface is zero. Example 5.6 Many of the diagrams given in Fig. 5.7 show magnetic field lines thick lines in the figure only. Point out what is wrong with them. Some of them may describe electrostatic field lines correctly. 
Point out which ones. Carl Friedrich Gauss 1777 1855 Carl Friedrich Gauss 1777 1855 He was a child prodigy and was gifted in mathematics, physics, engineering, astronomy and even land surveying. The properties of numbers fascinated him, and in his work he anticipated major mathematical development of later times. Along with Wilhelm Welser, he built the first electric telegraph in 1833. His mathematical theory of curved surface laid the foundation for the later work of Riemann. Magnetism and matter 183 example 5.6 figure 5.7 solution are wrong. Magnetic field lines can never emanate from a point, as shown in figure. Over any closed surface, the net flux of B must always be zero, that is, pictorially as many field lines should seem to enter the surface as the number of lines leaving it. The field lines shown, in fact, represent electric field of a long positively charged wire. The correct magnetic field lines are circling the straight conductor, as described in Chapter 4. 184 Example 5.7 Example 5.6 B Wrong Magnetic field lines like electric field lines can never cross each other, because otherwise the direction of field at the point of intersection is ambiguous. There is further error in the figure. Magnetostatic field lines can never form closed loops around empty space. A closed loop of static magnetic field line must enclose a region across which a current is passing. By contrast, electrostatic field lines can never form closed loops, neither in empty space, nor when the loop encloses charges. See right, magnetic lines are completely confined within a toroid, nothing wrong here in field lines forming closed loops, since each loop encloses a region across which a current passes. Note, for clarity of figure, only a few field lines within the toroid have been shown, actually, the entire region enclosed by the windings contains magnetic field. Dear wrong. Field lines due to a solenoid at its ends and outside cannot be so completely straight and confined, such a thing violates Ampere's law. The lines should curve out at both ends, and meet eventually to form closed loops. See right, these are field lines outside and inside a bar magnet. Note carefully the direction of field lines inside, not all field lines emanate out of a north pole or converge into a south pole. Around both the end pole, and the S pole, the net flux of the field is zero F wrong, these field lines cannot possibly represent a magnetic field. Look at the upper region, all the field lines seem to emanate out of the shaded plate, the net flux through a surface surrounding the shaded plate is not zero. This is impossible for a magnetic field, the given field lines, in fact, show the electrostatic field lines around a positively charged upper plate and a negatively charged lower plate. The difference between Fig 5.7e and F should be carefully grasped G wrong, magnetic field lines between two pole pieces cannot be precisely straight at the ends. Some fringing of lines is inevitable, otherwise, Ampere's law is violated. This is also true for electric field lines. Example 5.7 A magnetic field lines show the direction at every point along which a small magnetized needle aligns at the point. Do the magnetic field lines also represent the lines of force on a moving charged particle at every point? The magnetic field lines can be entirely confined within the core of a toroid. But not within a straight solenoid. Why see if magnetic monopoles existed? How would the Gauss's law of magnetism be modified? D. Does a bar magnet exert a torque on itself due to its own field as one element of a current carrying wire exert a force on another element of the same wire? E. Magnetic field arises due to charges in motion. Can a system have magnetic moments even though its net charge is zero? Solution and O. The magnetic force is always normal to be. Remember magnetic force Q V X B. It is misleading to call magnetic field lines as lines of force. 185 Example 5.7b If field lines were entirely confined between two ends of a straight solenoid, the flux through the cross section at each end would be non-zero. But the flux of field B through any closed surface must always be zero. For a toroid, this difficulty is absent because it has no ends. C. Gauss's law of magnetism states that the flux of B through any closed surface is always zero bs zero s. If monopoles existed, the right-hand side would be equal to the monopole magnetic charge Qm enclosed by S analogous to Gauss's law of electrostatics. Bs micro zero Qms where Qm is the monopole magnetic charge enclosed by S D no, there is no force or torque on an element due to the field produced by that element itself. But there is a force or torque on an element of the same wire, for the special case of a straight wire, this force is zero e yes. The average of the charge in the system may be zero, yet, the mean of the magnetic moments due to various current loops may not be zero. We will come across such examples in connection with paramagnetic material where atoms have net dipole moment through their net charges zero. 
5.4 The Earth's magnetism Earlier we have referred to the magnetic field of the Earth. The strength of the Earth's magnetic field varies from place to place on the Earth's surface, its value being of the order of 10-5 T. What causes the Earth to have a magnetic field is not clear. Originally the magnetic field was thought of as arising from a giant bar magnet placed approximately along the axis of rotation of the Earth and deep in the interior. However, this simplistic picture is certainly not correct. The magnetic field is now thought to arise due to electrical currents produced by conductive motion of metallic fluids consisting mostly of molten iron and nickel in the outer core of the Earth. This is known as the dynamo effect. The magnetic field lines of the Earth resemble that of a hypothetical magnetic dipole located at the center of the Earth. The axis of the dipole does not coincide with the axis of rotation of the Earth but is presently titled by approximately 11.3 degrees with respect to the later. In this way of looking at it, the magnetic poles are located where the magnetic field lines due to the dipole enter or leave the Earth. The location of the north magnetic pole is at a latitude of 79.74 degrees N and a longitude of 71.8 degrees W, a place somewhere in North Canada. The magnetic south pole is at 79.74 degrees S, 108.22 degrees E in the Antarctica. The pole near the geographic north pole of the Earth is called the north magnetic pole. Likewise, the pole near the geographic south pole is called geomagnetic field frequently asked questions www.ngdc.noaa.gov geomag. Physics 186 Example 5.8 The South Magnetic Pole There is some confusion in the nomenclature of the poles. If one looks at the magnetic field lines of the Earth figure 5.8, one sees that unlike in the case of a bar magnet, the field lines go into the Earth at the North Magnetic Pole NM and come out from the South Magnetic Pole SM. The convention arose because the magnetic north was the direction to which the north pole of a magnetic needle pointed. The north pole of a magnet was so named as it was the north-seeking pole. Thus, in reality, the north magnetic pole behaves like the south pole of a bar magnet inside the Earth and vice versa. Example 5.8 The Earth's magnetic field at the equator is approximately 0.4 g estimate the Earth's dipole moment. Solution from EC 5.7 the equatorial magnetic field is 034 EMBR micro Greek letter pi. We are given that B 0.4 G 4 X 10 5 T for R. We take the radius of the Earth 6.4 X 106 meters. Hence, 5630410610 meters micro X X X Greek letter pi 4 X 102 X 6.4 X 106 3 micro 0 4 Greek letter pi 10 7 1.05 X 1023 AM 2 This is close to the value 8 X 1022 AM 2 quoted in geomagnetic texts. 5, 4, 1 Magnetic declination and dip Consider a point on the Earth's surface. At such a point, the direction of the longitude circle determines the geographic north-south direction the line of longitude towards the North Pole being the direction of true north. The vertical plane containing the longitude circle and the axis of rotation of the Earth is called the geographic meridian. In a similar way, one can define magnetic meridian of a place as the vertical plane which passes through the imaginary line joining the magnetic north and the south poles. This plane would intersect the surface of the Earth in a longitude-like circle. A magnetic needle, which is free to swing horizontally, would then lie in the magnetic meridian and the north pole of the needle would point towards the magnetic north pole. Since the line joining the magnetic poles is titled with respect to the geographic axis of the Earth, the magnetic meridian at a point makes angle with the geographic meridian. This, then, is the angle between the true geographic north and the north shown by a compass needle. This angle is called the magnetic declination or simply declination figure 5.9. The declination is greater at higher latitudes and smaller near the equator. The declination in India is small, it being figure 5.8 the Earth is a giant magnetic dipole. Figure 5.9 a magnetic needle free to move in horizontal plane, points toward the magnetic north-south direction. Magnetism in matter 187 0 degrees 41 E at Delhi and 0 degrees 58 W at Mumbai. Thus, at both these places a magnetic needle shows the true north quite accurately. There is one more quantity of interest. If a magnetic needle is perfectly balanced about a horizontal axis so that it can swing in a plane of the magnetic meridian, the needle would make an angle with the horizontal fig. 5.10. This is known as the angle of dip also known as inclination. Thus, dip is the angle that the total magnetic field B of the Earth makes with the surface of the Earth. Figure 5.11 shows the magnetic meridian plane at a point P on the surface of the Earth. The plane is a section through the Earth. The total magnetic field at P can be resolved into a horizontal component E and a vertical component Z. The angle that B makes with E is the angle of dip. I in most of the northern hemisphere, the north pole of the dip needle tilts downwards. Likewise in most of the southern hemisphere, the south pole of the dip needle tilts downwards. 
To describe the magnetic field of the Earth at a point on its surface, we need to specify three quantities. This, the declination d. The angle of dip or the inclination i and the horizontal component of the Earth's field t. These are known as the element of the Earth's magnetic field, representing a vertical component by z. We have ZBC 5.10 or Hibiko C 5.10 B which gives 10 E C I H 5.10 C figure 5.10 The circle is a section through the Earth containing the magnetic meridian. The angle between B and the horizontal component E is the angle of dip. Figure 5.11 The Earth's magnetic field. B, its horizontal and vertical components, E and Z, also shown are the declination, D and the inclination or angle of dip. I. 188 Example 5.9 What happens to my compass needles at the pose? A compass needle consists of a magnetic needle which floats on a pivotal point. When the compass is held level, it points along the direction of the horizontal component of the Earth's magnetic field at the location. Thus, the compass needle would stay along the magnetic meridian of the place. In some places on the Earth there are deposits of magnetic minerals which cause the compass needle to deviate from the magnetic meridian. Knowing the magnetic declination at a place allows us to correct the compass to determine the direction of true north. So what happens if we take our compass to the magnetic pole at the poles? The magnetic field lines are converging or diverging vertically so that the horizontal component is negligible. If the needle is only capable of moving in a horizontal plane, it can point along any direction, rendering it useless as a direction finder. What one needs in such a case is a dip needle which is a compass pivoted to move in a vertical plane containing the magnetic field of the Earth. The needle of the compass then shows the angle which the magnetic field makes with the vertical. At the magnetic pole such a needle will point straight down. Example 5.9 In the magnetic meridian of a certain place, the horizontal component of the Earth's magnetic field is 0.26 g and the dip angle is 60 degrees. What is the magnetic field of the Earth at this location solution? It is given at E 0.26 g from figure 5.11. We have 0 cos 60 EEHB 0 cos 60 EEHB 0.26 0 0.52 G12. 189 5.5 Magnetization and magnetic intensity The Earth abounds with a bewildering variety of elements and compounds. In addition, we have been synthesizing new alloys, compounds and even elements. One would like to classify the magnetic properties of these substances. In the present section, we define and explain certain terms which will help us to carry out this exercise. We have seen that a circulating electron in an atom has a magnetic moment. In a bulk material, these moments add up vectorially and they can give a net magnetic moment which is non-zero. We define magnetization M of a sample to be equal to its net magnetic moment per unit volume. Net VMM 5.11 M is a vector with dimensions L1A and is measured in a units of AM1. Consider a long solenoid of N turns per unit length and carrying a current I. The magnetic field in the interior of the solenoid was shown to be given by Earth's magnetic field. It must not be assumed that there is a giant bar magnet deep inside the Earth which is causing the Earth's magnetic field. Although there are large deposits of iron inside the Earth, it is highly unlikely that a large solid block of iron stretches from the magnetic North Pole to the magnetic South Pole. The Earth's core is very hot and molten, and the ions of iron and nickel are responsible for Earth's magnetism. This hypothesis seems very probable. Moon, which has no molten core, has no magnetic field, Venus has a slower rate of rotation, and a weaker magnetic field, while Jupiter, which has the fastest rotation rate among planets, has a fairly strong magnetic field. However, the precise mode of these circulating currents and the energy needed to sustain them are not very well understood. These are several open questions which form an important area of continuing research. The variation of the Earth's magnetic field with position is also an interesting area of study. Charged particles emitted by the sun flow towards the Earth and beyond, in a stream called the solar wind. Their motion is affected by the Earth's magnetic field, and in turn, they affect the pattern of the Earth's magnetic field. The pattern of magnetic field near the poles is quite different from that in other regions of the Earth. The variation of Earth's magnetic field with time is no less fascinating. There are short-term variations taking place over centuries and long-term variations taking place over a period of a million years. In a span of 240 years from 1580 to 1820 AD, over which records are available, the magnetic declination at London has been found to change by 3.5 degrees, suggesting that the magnetic poles inside the Earth change position with time. On the scale of a million years, the Earth's magnetic fields has been found to reverse its direction. Basalt contains iron, and basalt is emitted during volcanic activity. The little iron magnets inside it align themselves parallel to the magnetic field at that place as the basalt cools and solidifies. Geological studies of basalt containing such pieces of magnetized region have provided evidence for the change of direction of Earth's magnetic field, 
several times in the past. Physics 190B0 micro 0 Ne 5.12 If the interior of the solenoid is filled with a material with non-zero magnetization, the field inside the solenoid will be greater than B0. The net B field in the interior of the solenoid may be expressed as BB0 BM 5.13 where BM is the field contributed by the material core. It turns out that this additional field BM is proportional to the magnetization M of the material and is expressed as BM micro 0 M 5.14 where micro 0 is the same constant permittivity of vacuum that appears in biot savarts law. It is convenient to introduce another vector field H, called the magnetic intensity, which is defined by 0 micro BH M 5.15 where H has the same dimensions as M and is measured in units of AM1. Thus, the total magnetic field B is written as B micro 0 HM 5.16 We repeat our defining procedure. We have partitioned the contribution to the total magnetic field inside the sample into two parts, one, due to external factors such as the current in the solenoid. This is represented by H the other is due to the specific nature of the magnetic material, namely M the latter quantity can be influenced by external factors. This influence is mathematically expressed as Greek letter chi M H 5.17 where Greek letter chi a dimensionless quantity, is appropriately called the magnetic susceptibility, it is a measure of how a magnetic material responds to an external field. Table 5.2 lists Greek letter chi for some elements, it is small and positive for materials, which are called paramagnetic. It is small and negative for materials, which are termed diamagnetic, in the latter case M and H are opposite in direction. From EQS 5.16 and 5.17 we obtain, 0 1 micro Greek letter chi BH 5.18 micro 0 micro RH micro H 5.19 where micro R1 Greek letter chi, is a dimensionless quantity called the relative magnetic permeability of the substance. It is the analog of the dielectric constant in electrostatics, the magnetic permeability of the substance is micro and it has the same dimensions and units as micro 0, micro micro 0 micro R micro 0 1 Greek letter chi. The three quantities Greek letter chi, micro R and micro O are interrelated and only one of them is independent. Given one, the other two may be easily determined. 191 Example 5.10 Example 5.10 A solenoid has a core of a material with relative permeability 400. The windings of the solenoid are insulated from the core and carry a current of 2A, if the number of turns is 1000 per meter. Calculate H, BM, CB and D the magnetizing current M. Solution of the field H is dependent of the material of the core, and is H new 1000 x 2.02 x 103 am. B the magnetic field B is given by B micro R micro 0 H 400 x 4 Greek letter pi x 10 7 and A 2 x 2 x 103 am 1 1.0 TC magnetization is given by MB micro 0 H micro 0 micro R micro 0 H micro 0 H micro 0 micro R 1 H 399 x H 8 x 105 am D the magnetizing current I am is the additional current that needs to be passed through the windings of the solenoid in the absence of the core which would give a B value as in the presence of the core. Thus B micro R N 0 I I am. Using I2A, B1T, we get IM 794A 5.6 magnetic properties of materials. The discussion in the previous section helps us to classify materials as diamagnetic, paramagnetic, or ferromagnetic. In terms of the susceptibility Greek letter chi, a material is diamagnetic if Greek letter chi is negative, pada if Greek letter chi is positive and small, and ferro if Greek letter chi is large and positive. A glance at table 5.3 gives one a better feeling for these materials. Here Greek letter epsilon is a small positive number introduced to quantify paramagnetic materials. Next, we describe these materials in some detail. Table 5.2 Magnetic susceptibility of some elements at 300 K diamagnetic substance Greek letter chi 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 paramagnetic substance Greek letter chi 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 bismuth minus 1.66 x 10-5 aluminium 2.3 x 10-5 copper minus 9.8 x 10-6 calcium 1.9 x 10-5 diamond minus 2.2 x 10-5 chromium 2.7 x 10-4 gold minus 3.6 x 10-5 lithium 2.1 x 10-5 5 lead minus 1.7 x 10-5 magnesium 1.2 x 10-5 mercury minus 2.9 x 10-5 niobium 2.6 x 10-5 nitrogen stp minus 5.0 x 10-9 oxygen stp 2.1 x 10-6 silver minus 2.6 x 10-5 platinum 2.9 x 10-4 silicon minus 4.2 x 10-6 tungsten 6.8 x 10-5 192.5 6. 1. Diamagnetism Diamagnetic substances are those which have tendency to move from stronger to the weaker part of the external magnetic field. In other words, unlike the way a magnet attracts metals like iron, it would repel a diamagnetic substance. 
Figure 5.12 shows a bar of diamagnetic material placed in an external magnetic field. The field lines are repelled or expelled and the field inside the material is reduced. In most cases, as is evident from Table 5.2, this reduction is slight, being one part in 105. When placed in a non-uniform magnetic field, the bar will tend to move from high to low field. The simplest explanation for diamagnetism is as follows. Electrons in an atom orbiting around nucleus possess orbital angular momentum. These orbiting electrons are equivalent to current carrying loop and thus possess orbital magnetic moment. Diamagnetic substances are the ones in which resultant magnetic moment in an atom is zero. When magnetic field is applied, those electrons having orbital magnetic moment in the same direction slow down and those in the opposite direction speed up. This happens due to induced current in accordance with Lenz's law which you will study in Chapter 6. Thus, the substance develops a net magnetic moment in direction opposite to that of the applied field and hence repulsion. Some diamagnetic materials are bismuth, copper, lead, silicon, nitrogen at STP, water and sodium chloride. Diamagnetism is present in all the substances, however, the effect is so weak in most cases that it gets shifted by other effects like paramagnetism, ferromagnetism, etc. The most exotic diamagnetic materials are superconductors. These are metals, cooled to very low temperatures which exhibits both perfect conductivity and perfect diamagnetism. Here the field lines are completely expelled Greek letter chi minus 1 and micro R0. A superconductor repels a magnet and by Newton's third law is repelled by the magnet. The phenomenon of perfect diamagnetism in superconductors is called the Meissner effect, after the name of its discoverer. Superconducting magnets can be gainfully exploited in variety of situations, for example, for running magnetically levitated superfast trains. 5, 6, 2 Paramagnetism Paramagnetic substances are those which get weakly magnetized when placed in an external magnetic field. They have tendency to move from a region of weak magnetic field to strong magnetic field, that is, they get weakly attracted to a magnet. Table 5.3 Diamagnetic Paramagnetic Ferromagnetic Minus 1 Greek letter chi, 0 0, Greek letter chi, Greek letter epsilon Greek letter chi, 1 0 micro r, 1 1, micro r, 1 Greek letter epsilon micro r, 1 micro, micro 0 micro, micro 0 micro, micro 0 figure 5.12 Behavior of magnetic field lines near a diamagnetic, b paramagnetic substance. Magnetism in matter 193 The individual atoms or ions or molecules of a paramagnetic material possess a permanent magnetic dipole moment of their own. On account of the ceaseless random thermal motion of the atoms, no net magnetization is seen. In the presence of an external field B0, which is strong enough, and at low temperatures, the individual atomic dipole moment can be made to align and point in the same direction as B0. Figure 5.12b shows a bar of paramagnetic material placed in an external field. The field lines gets concentrated inside the material, and the field inside is enhanced. In most cases, as is evident from Table 5.2, this enhancement is slight, being one part in 105. When placed in a non-uniform magnetic field, the bar will tend to move from weak field to strong. Some paramagnetic materials are aluminium, sodium, calcium, oxygen at STP and copper chloride. Experimentally, one finds that the magnetization of a paramagnetic material is inversely proportional to the absolute temperature T, 0 BMC T 5.20 or equivalently, using EQS. 5.12 and 5.170 CT micro Greek letter chi 5.20 B. This is known as Curie's law, after its discoverer P. Re Curie 1859-1906. The constancy is called Curie's constant. Thus, for a paramagnetic material both Greek letter chi and micro R depend not only on the material, but also in a simple fashion on the sample temperature. As the field is increased or the temperature is lowered, the magnetization increases until it reaches the saturation value M's, at which point all the dipoles are perfectly aligned with the field. Beyond this, Curie's law 5.20 is no longer valid 5, 6. 3. Ferromagnetism Ferromagnetic substances are those which get strongly magnetized when placed in an external magnetic field. They have strong tendency to move from a region of weak magnetic field to strong magnetic field, that is, they get strongly attracted to a magnet. The individual atoms or ions or molecules in a ferromagnetic material possess a dipole moment as in a paramagnetic material. However, they interact with one another in such a way that they spontaneously align themselves in a common direction over a macroscopic volume called domain. The explanation of this cooperative effect requires quantum mechanics and is beyond the scope of this textbook. Each domain has a net magnetization. Typical domain size is 1 mm and the domain contains about 1011 atoms. 
In the first instant, the magnetization varies randomly from domain to domain and there is no bulk magnetization. This is shown in figure 5.13 up. When we apply an external magnetic field B0, the domains orient themselves in the direction of B0 and simultaneously the domain oriented in the direction of B0 grow in size. This existence of domains and their motion in B0 are not speculations. One may observe this under a microscope after sprinkling a liquid suspension of powdered figure 5.13 or randomly oriented domains, B aligned domains. Magnetic materials, domain, etc. www .ndeed.org Education Resources Community College Mag Particle Physics Magnetic Mathless HTM Physics 194 Example 5.11 Ferromagnetic Substance of Samples This motion of suspension can be observed. Figure 5.12b shows the situation when the domains have aligned and amalgamated to form a single giant domain. Thus, in a ferromagnetic material the field lines are highly concentrated. In non-uniform magnetic field, the sample tends to move towards the region of high field. We may wonder as to what happens when the external field is removed. In some ferromagnetic materials the magnetization persists. Such materials are called hard magnetic materials or hard ferromagnets. Alnico, an alloy of iron, aluminium, nickel, cobalt and copper, is one such material. The naturally occurring lodestone is another. Such materials form permanent magnets to be used among other things as a compass needle. On the other hand, there is a class of ferromagnetic materials in which the magnetization disappears on removal of the external field. Soft iron is one such material. Appropriately enough, such materials are called soft ferromagnetic materials. There are a number of elements, which are ferromagnetic, iron, cobalt, nickel, gadolinium, etc. The relative magnetic permeability is more than 1000. The ferromagnetic property depends on temperature. At high enough temperature, a ferromagnet becomes a paramagnet. The domain structure disintegrates with temperature. This disappearance of magnetization with temperature is gradual. It is a phase transition reminding us of the melting of a solid crystal. The temperature of transition from ferromagnetic to paramagnetism is called the Curie temperature TC. Table 5.4 lists the Curie temperature of certain ferromagnets, the susceptibility above the Curie temperature. That is, in the paramagnetic phase as described by CCCTTTT Greek letter Chi, 5.21 Table 5.4 Curie Temperature TC of some ferromagnetic materials Material TCK Cobalt 1394 Iron 1043 Fe 203 893 Nickel 631 Gadolinium 317 Example 5.11 A domain in ferromagnetic iron is in the form of a cube of side length, 1 micrim. Estimate the number of iron atoms in the domain and the maximum possible dipole moment in magnetization of the domain. The molecular mass of iron is 55 grams mol and its density is 7.9 grams cm3. Assume that each iron atom has a dipole moment of 9.27 x 10-24 am2. Hysteresis in magnetic materials, HTDP, hyperphysics by asterxu.edu base solids host HTML. 195 Example 5.11 Solution The volume of the cubic domain is V10-6 m3 10-18 m3 10-12 cm3 Its mass is volume x density 7.9 g cm3 x 10-12 cm3 7.9 x 10-12 g It is given that Avogadro number 6.023 x 1023 of iron atoms have a mass of 55 g. Hence, the number of atoms in the domain is 1 2 2 3 7 9 1 0 6 0 2 3 1 0 5 5 n x x x 8.65 x 1010 atoms the maximum possible dipole moment max is achieved for the unrealistic case when all the atomic moments are perfectly aligned thus max 8.65 x 1010 x 9.27 x 10-24 8.0 x 10-13 am to the consequent magnetization is max max domain volume 8.0 x 10 to 13 am to 10-18 m3 8.0 x 105 am minus 1 the relation between b and h and ferromagnetic materials is complex it is often not linear and it depends on the magnetic history of the sample figure 5.14 depicts the behavior of the material as we take it through one cycle of magnetization let the material be unmagnetized initially. We place it in a solenoid and increase the current through the solenoid. The magnetic field B in the material rises and saturates as depicted in the curve OA. This behavior represents the alignment and merger of domains until no further enhancement is possible. It is pointless to increase the current and hence the magnetic intensity H beyond this. Next, we decrease H and reduce it to zero. At H0, B0, this is represented by the curve of, the value of B at H0 is called redentivity or eminence. In figure 5.14,
BR 1.2T, where the subscript R denotes redentivity, the domains are not completely randomized even though the external driving field has been removed. Next, the current in the solenoid is reversed and slowly increased. Certain domains are flipped until the net field inside stands nullified. This is represented by the curve BC. The value of H at C is called coercivity. In figure 5.14 HC minus 90 AM1. As the reversed current is increased in magnitude, we once again obtain saturation. The curve CD depicts this. The saturated magnetic field B is 1.5 tons. Next, the current is reduced curved A and reversed curve A. The cycle repeats itself. Note that the curve OA does not retrace itself as H is reduced. For a given value of H, B is not unique but depends on previous history of the sample. This phenomenon is called hysteresis. The word hysteresis means lagging behind and not history. 5.7 permanent magnets and electromagnets substances which at room temperature retain their ferromagnetic property for a long period of time are called permanent magnets. Permanent figure 5.14 The magnetic hysteresis loop is the BH curve for ferromagnetic materials. Physics 196 magnets can be made in a variety of ways. One can hold an iron rod in the north-south direction and hammer it repeatedly. The method is illustrated in figure 5.15. The illustration is from a 400-year-old book to emphasize that the making of permanent magnets is an old art. One can also hold a steel rod and stroke it with one end of a bar magnet a large number of times, always in the same sense to make a permanent magnet. An efficient way to make a permanent magnet is to place a ferromagnetic rod in a solenoid and pass a current. The magnetic field of the solenoid magnetizes the rod. The hysteresis curve figure 5.14 allows us to select suitable materials for permanent magnets. The material should have high redentivity so that the magnet is strong and high coercivity so that the magnetization is not erased by stray magnetic fields. Temperature fluctuations or minor mechanical damage. Further, the material should have a high permeability. Steel is one favored choice. It has a slightly smaller redentivity than soft iron but this is outweighed by the much smaller coercivity of soft iron. Other suitable materials for permanent magnets are alnico, cobalt steel and ticonol. Core of electromagnets are made of ferromagnetic materials which have high permeability and low redentivity. Soft iron is a suitable material for electromagnets. On placing a soft iron rod in a solenoid and passing a current, we increase the magnetism of the solenoid by a thousandfold. When we switch off the solenoid current, the magnetism is effectively switched off since the soft iron core has a low redentivity. The arrangement is shown in Figure 5.16. Figure 5.15 A blacksmith forging a permanent magnet by striking a red-hot rod of iron kept in the north-south direction with a hammer. The sketch is recreated from an illustration and a magnet, a work published in 1600 and authored by William Gilbert, the court physician to Queen Elizabeth of England. Figure 5.16 A soft iron core and solenoid acts as an electromagnet. In certain applications, the material goes through an AC cycle of magnetization for a long period. This is the case in transformer cores and telephone diaphragms. The hysteresis curve of such materials must be narrow. The energy dissipated and the heating will consequently be small. The material must have a high resistivity to lower eddy current losses. You will study about eddy currents in Chapter 6. Electromagnets are used in electric bells, loudspeakers and telephone diaphragms. Giant electromagnets are used in cranes to lift machinery, and bulk quantities of iron and steel. India's magnetic field, www. Dot .iagam. Dot res. Dot in. 197 Summary 1. The science of magnetism is old. It has been known since ancient times that magnetic materials tend to point in the north-south direction, like magnetic poles repel and unlike ones attract, and cutting a bar magnet in two leads to two smaller magnets. Magnetic poles cannot be isolated too, when a bar magnet of dipole a moment m is placed in a uniform magnetic field B. A de force on it is zero. B the torque on it is mxb, c its potential energy is mb. Where we choose the zero of energy at the orientation when m is perpendicular to b3, consider a bar magnet of size l and magnetic moment m. At a distance r from its midpoint, where r, l, the magnetic field b due to this bar is, 032 r micro Greek letter pi mb along axis 034 r micro Greek letter pi m along equator 4. Gauss's law for magnetism states that the net magnetic flux through any closed surface is 0 0 Greek letter phi sp sib all area elements 5. The Earth's magnetic field resembles that of a hypothetical magnetic dipole located at the center of the Earth. The pole near the geographic north pole of the Earth is called the north magnetic pole. Similarly, the pole near the geographic south pole is called the south magnetic pole. 
This dipole is aligned making a small angle with the rotation axis of the Earth. The magnitude of the field on the Earth's surface 4x10-5 demapping India's magnetic field because of its practical application and prospecting. Communication and navigation. The magnetic field of the Earth is mapped by most nations with an accuracy comparable to geographical mapping. In India over a dozen observatories exist, extending from Trivandrum now through Bhuvan and Thapurim in the south to Gulmarg in the north. These observatories work under the aegis of the Indian Institute of Geomagnetism IIG, in Kalaba, Mumbai. The IIG grew out of the Kalaba and Alabag observatories and was formally established in 1971. The IIG monitors via its nationwide observatories, the geomagnetic fields and fluctuations on land, and under the ocean and in space. Its services are used by the Oil and Natural Gas Corporation Limited, ONGC, the National Institute of Oceanography NIO and the Indian Space Research Organization ISRO. It is a part of the worldwide network which ceaselessly updates the geomagnetic data. Now India has a permanent station called Ganga Tree. 198.6. Three quantities are needed to specify the magnetic field of the Earth on its surface, the horizontal component, the magnetic declination, and the magnetic dip. These are known as the elements of the Earth's magnetic field 7. Consider a material placed in an external magnetic field B0. The magnetic intensity is defined as 00, 0 micro bh. The magnetization m of the material is its dipole moment per unit volume. The magnetic field B in the material is B micro 0 h m 8. For a linear material m Greek letter chi h so that B micro h and Greek letter chi is called the magnetic susceptibility of the material. The three quantities. Greek letter chi, the relative magnetic permeability micro r, and the magnetic permeability micro r related as follows, micro micro 0 micro r micro r 1 Greek letter chi 9. Magnetic materials are broadly classified as, diamagnetic, paramagnetic, and ferromagnetic. For diamagnetic materials Greek letter chi is negative and small and for paramagnetic materials it is positive and small. Ferromagnetic materials have large Greek letter chi and are characterized by nonlinear relation between B and H. They show the property of hysteresis 10, substances, which at room temperature, retain their ferromagnetic property for a long period of time are called permanent magnets. Physical quantity symbol nature dimensions units remarks permeability of micro zero scalar MLT 2A2 TMA1 micro zero 4 Greek letter pi 10-7 free space magnetic field. B vector MT 2A1 T Tesla 104 G Gauss 1 D magnetic induction. Magnetic flux density magnetic moment M vector L2 A A M2 magnetic flux Greek letter phi B scalar M L2 T2 A1 W Weber W T M2 magnetization M vector L1 A A M1 magnetic moment volume magnetic intensity H vector L1 A A M1 B micro 0 H M magnetic field. Strength magnetic Greek letter chi scalar mu susceptibility relative magnetic micro r scalar b micro zero micro r h permeability magnetic permeability micro scalar mlt 2 a 2 tma 1 micro micro zero micro r n a 2 b micro h magnetism and matter 199 points to ponder one a satisfactory understanding of magnetic phenomenon in terms of moving charges currents was arrived at after 1800 a.d. But technological exploitation of the directional properties of magnets predates this scientific understanding by 2,000 years. Thus, scientific understanding is not a necessary condition for engineering applications. Ideally, science and engineering go hand in hand, one leading and assisting the other in tandem. 2. Magnetic monopoles do not exist. If you slice a magnet in half, you get two smaller magnets. On the other hand, isolated positive and negative charges exist. There exists the smallest unit of charge, for example, the electronic charge with value E 1.6 x 10-19 C all other charges are integral multiples of this smallest unit charge, in other words. Charge is quantized, we do not know why magnetic monopoles do not exist or why electric charge is quantized. 3. A consequence of the fact that magnetic monopoles do not exist is that the magnetic field lines are continuous and form closed loops. In contrast, the electrostatic lines of force begin on a positive charge and terminate on the negative charge or fade out at infinity. 4. The Earth's magnetic field is not due to a huge bar magnet inside it. The Earth's core is hot and molten. Perhaps convective currents in this core are responsible for the Earth's magnetic field, as to what dynamo effect sustains this current, and why the Earth's field reverses polarity every million years or so, we do not know. 5. A minuscule difference in the value of Greek letter chi, the magnetic susceptibility, yields radically different behavior, diamagnetic versus paramagnetic. For diamagnetic materials Greek letter chi minus 10-5 whereas Greek letter chi 10-5 for paramagnetic materials 6, there exists a perfect diamagnet, namely, a superconductor.
This is a metal at very low temperatures. In this case Greek letter chi minus 1, micro R0, micro 0, the external magnetic field is totally expelled. Interestingly, this material is also a perfect conductor. However, there exists no classical theory which ties these two properties together. A quantum mechanical theory by Bardeen, Cooper, and Shree for BCS theory explains these effects. The BCS theory was proposed in 1957 and was eventually recognized by a Nobel Prize in Physics in 1970. 7. The phenomenon of magnetic hysteresis is reminiscent of similar behavior concerning the elastic properties of materials. Strain may not be proportional to stress. Here H and BRM are not linearly related. The stress-strain curve exhibits hysteresis and area enclosed by it represents the energy dissipated per unit volume. A similar interpretation can be given to the BH magnetic hysteresis curve 8. Diamagnetism is universal. It is present in all materials, but it is weak and hard to detect if the substance is pi or ferromagnetic. 9. We have classified materials as diamagnetic, paramagnetic, and ferromagnetic. However, there exist additional types of magnetic material such as ferromagnetic, antiferromagnetic, spin glass, etc. With properties which are exotic and mysterious. Physics 200 Exercises 5.1 Answer the following questions regarding Earth's magnetism. A, a vector needs three quantities for its specification. Name the three independent quantities conventionally used to specify the Earth's magnetic field be the angle of dip at a location in southern India is about 18 degrees. Would you expect a greater or smaller dip angle in Britain see if you made a map of magnetic field lines at Melbourne in Australia? Would the line seem to go into the ground or come out of the ground e in which direction would a compass free to move in the vertical plane point two? If located right on the geomagnetic north or south pole e the Earth's field, it is claimed, roughly approximates the field due to a dipole of magnetic moment 8x 1022 JT1 located at its center. Check the order of magnitude of this number in some way as geologists claim that besides the main magnetic NS poles, there are several local poles on the Earth's surface oriented in different directions. How is such a thing possible at all? 5.2 Answer the following questions. Uh, the Earth's magnetic field varies from point to point in space. Does it also change with time? If so, on what time scale does it change appreciably? B. The Earth's core is known to contain iron. Yet geologists do not regard this as a source of the Earth's magnetism. Why see the charged currents in the outer conducting regions of the Earth's core are thought to be responsible for Earth's magnetism. What might be the battery that is, the source of energy to sustain these currents? D. The Earth may have even reversed the direction of its field several times during its history of 4 to 5 billion years. How can geologists know about the Earth's field in such distant past? E. The Earth's field departs from its dipole shape substantially at large distances greater than about 30, 000 kilometers. What agencies may be responsible for this distortion f interstellar space has an extremely weak magnetic field of the order of 10-12t can such a weak field be of any significant consequence? Explain. Note. Exercise 5.2 is meant mainly to arouse your curiosity. Answers to some questions above are tentative or unknown. Brief answers wherever possible are given at the end, for details. You should consult a good text on geomagnetism 5.3 A short bar magnet placed with its axis at 30 degrees with a uniform external magnetic field of 0.25 T experiences a torque of magnitude equal to 4.5 X 10-2 J. What is the magnitude of magnetic moment of the magnet 5.4 A short bar magnet of magnetic moment M 0.32 J T1 is placed in a uniform magnetic field of 0.15 tons if the bar is free to rotate in the plane of the field. Which orientation would correspond to its unstable and be unstable equilibrium? What is the potential energy of the magnet in each case? Magnetism in matter 2015.5 A closely wound solenoid of 800 turns and area of cross section 2.5 X 10-4 M2 carries a current of 3.0 A. Explain the sense in which the solenoid acts like a bar magnet. What is its associated magnetic moment 5.6 if the solenoid in exercise 5.5 is free to turn about the vertical direction and a uniform horizontal magnetic field of 0.25 D is applied? What is the magnitude of torque on the solenoid when its axis makes an angle of 30 degrees with the direction of applied field? 5.7 A bar magnet of magnetic moment 1.5 JT1 lies aligned with the direction of a uniform magnetic field of 0.22 tons. A what is the amount of work required by an external torque to turn the magnet so as to align its magnetic moment, I normal to the field direction? 2 opposite to the field direction B what is the torque on the magnet in cases I and 2 5.8 A closely wound solenoid of 2000 turns and area of cross section 1.6 X 10-4 M2. Carrying a current of 4.0 A, is suspended through its center allowing it to turn in a horizontal plane. 
A what is the magnetic moment associated with the solenoid? E what is the force and torque on the solenoid if a uniform horizontal magnetic field of 7.5 x 10-2 t is set up at an angle of 30 degrees with the axis of the solenoid? 5.9 A circular coil of 16 turns and radius 10 cm carrying a current of 0.75 A rests with its plane normal to an external field of magnitude 5.0 x 10-2 t. The coil is free to turn about an axis in its plane perpendicular to the field direction. When the coil is turned slightly and released, it oscillates about its stable equilibrium with a frequency of 2.0 s1. What is the moment of inertia of the coil about its axis of rotation 5.10 a magnetic needle free to rotate in a vertical plane parallel to the magnetic meridian has its north tip pointing down at 22 degrees with the horizontal. The horizontal component of the Earth's magnetic field at the place is known to be 0.35 g. Determine the magnitude of the Earth's magnetic field at the place 5.11 at a certain location in Africa. A compass points 12 degrees west of the geographic north. The north tip of the magnetic needle of a dip circle placed in the plane of magnetic meridian points 60 degrees above the horizontal. The horizontal component of the Earth's field is measured to be 0.16 g. Specify the direction and magnitude of the Earth's field at the location. 5.12 A short bar magnet has a magnetic moment of 0.48 JT1. Give the direction and magnitude of the magnetic field produced by the magnet at a distance of 10 cm from the center of the magnet onto the axis. B The equatorial line's normal bisector of the magnet 5.13 A short bar magnet placed in a horizontal plane has its axis aligned along the magnetic north-south direction. Null points are found on the axis of the magnet at 14 cm from the center of the magnet. The Earth's magnetic field at the place is 0.36 g and the angle of dip is zero. What is the total magnetic field on the normal bisector of the magnet at the same distance as the null point that is? 14 cm from the center of the magnet at null points. Field due to a magnet is equal and opposite to the horizontal component of Earth's magnetic field 5.14 if the bar magnet in exercise 5.13 is turned around by 180 degrees. Where will the new null points be located? Physics 202 5.15 A short bar magnet of magnetic movement 5.25 x 10-2 JT1 is placed with its axis perpendicular to the Earth's field direction. At what distance from the center of the magnet, the resultant field is inclined at 45 degrees with Earth's field on a its normal bisector and B its axis. Magnitude of the Earth's field at the place is given to be 0.42 G. Ignore the length of the magnet in comparison to the distances involved. Additional exercises 5.16 answer the following questions. A why does a paramagnetic sample display greater magnetization for the same magnetizing field when cool by is diamagnetism? In contrast, almost independent of temperature see if a toroid uses bismuth for its core, will the field in the core be slightly greater or slightly less than when the core is empty? D is the permeability of a ferromagnetic material independent of the magnetic field if not. Is it more for lower or higher field Z magnetic field lines are always nearly normal to the surface of a ferromagnet at every point. This fact is analogous to the static electric field lines being normal to the surface of a conductor at every point. Why? F would the maximum possible magnetization of a paramagnetic sample be of the same order of magnitude as the magnetization of a ferromagnet? 5.17 Answer the following questions. I explain qualitatively on the basis of domain picture the irreversibility in the magnetization curve of a ferromagnet. B. The hysteresis loop of a soft iron piece has a much smaller area than that of a carbon steel piece. If the material is to go through repeated cycles of magnetization, which piece will dissipate greater heat energy? C. A system displaying a hysteresis loop such as a ferromagnet is a device for storing memory. Explain the meaning of this statement. D. What kind of ferromagnetic material is used for coating magnetic tapes in a cassette player, or for building memory stores in a modern computer? E. A certain region of space is to be shielded from magnetic fields. Suggest a method 5.18 A long straight horizontal cable carries a current of 2.5 A in the direction 10 degrees south of west to 10 degrees north of east. The magnetic meridian of the place happens to be 10 degrees west of the geographic meridian. The Earth's magnetic field at the location is 0.33 G, and the angle of dip is zero. Locate the line of neutral points ignore the thickness of the cable at neutral points. Magnetic field due to a current carrying cable is equal and opposite to the horizontal component of Earth's magnetic field 5.19 A telephone cable at a place has four long straight horizontal wires carrying a current of 1.0 A in the same direction, east to west. The Magnetism in matter 203 Earth's magnetic field at the place is 0.39 G, and the angle of dip is 35 degrees. The magnetic declination is nearly zero. What are the resultant magnetic fields at points 4.0 centimeters below the cable? 
5.20A compass needle free to turn in a horizontal plane is placed at the center of circular coil of 30 turns and radius 12 centimeters. The coil is in a vertical plane making an angle of 45 degrees with the magnetic meridian. When the current in the coil is 0.35A, the needle points west to east. A determine the horizontal component of the Earth's magnetic field at the location B. The current in the coil is reversed, and the coil is rotated about its vertical axis by an angle of 90 degrees in the anti-clockwise sense looking from above. Predict the direction of the needle. Take the magnetic declination at the places to be 0 05.21 A magnetic dipole is under the influence of two magnetic fields. The angle between the field directions is 60 degrees, and one of the fields has a magnitude of 1.2 x 10-2 t if the dipole comes to stable equilibrium at an angle of 15 degrees with this field. What is the magnitude of the other field 5.22 aim an energetic 18 cav electron beam initially in the horizontal direction is subjected to a horizontal magnetic field of 0.04 g normal to the initial direction. Estimate the up or down deflection of the beam over a distance of 30 cm me 9.11 x 10-31 kg. Note, data in this exercise are so chosen that the answer will give you an idea of the effect of Earth's magnetic field on the motion of the electron beam from the electron gun to the screen in a TV set 5.23A sample of paramagnetic salt contains 2.0x, 1024 atomic dipoles each of dipole a moment 1.5x 10-23JT1. The sample is placed under a homogeneous magnetic field of 0.64T, and cooled to a temperature of 4.2K. The degree of magnetic saturation achieved is equal to 15. What is the total dipole moment of the sample for a magnetic field of 0.98 T and a temperature of 2.8 K? Assume Curie's law 5.24 A Roland ring of mean radius 15 cm has 3500 turns of wire wound on a ferromagnetic core of relative permeability 800. What is the magnetic field B in the core for a magnetizing current of 1.2 A 5.25 The magnetic moment vectors micro 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 s and micro 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 l associated with the intrinsic spin angular momentum s and orbital angular momentum l respectively of an electron are predicted by quantum theory and verified experimentally to a high accuracy to be given by micro 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 s e m s Micro 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 le 2 meters l which of these relations is in accordance with the result expected classically outline the derivation of the classical result. 2046.1 Introduction Electricity and magnetism were considered separate and unrelated phenomena for a long time. In the early decades of the 19th century, experiments on electric current by Ersted, Ampere and a few others established the fact that electricity and magnetism are interrelated. They found that moving electric charges produce magnetic fields. For example, an electric current deflects a magnetic compass needle placed in its vicinity. This naturally raises the questions like, is the converse effect possible? Can moving magnets produce electric currents? Does the nature permit such a relation between electricity and magnetism? The answer is resounding yes. The experiments of Michael Faraday in England and Joseph Henry in USA, conducted around 1830, demonstrated conclusively that electric currents were induced in closed coils when subjected to changing magnetic fields. In this chapter, we will study the phenomena associated with changing magnetic fields and understand the underlying principles. The phenomenon in which electric current is generated by varying magnetic fields is appropriately called electromagnetic induction. When Faraday first made public his discovery that relative motion between a bar magnet and a wire loop produced a small current in the latter. He was asked, what is the use of it? His reply was, what is the use of a newborn baby? The phenomenon of electromagnetic induction Chapter 6 Electromagnetic Induction Electromagnetic Induction 205 is not merely of theoretical or academic interest but also of practical utility. Imagine a world where there is no electricity, no electric lights, no trains, no telephones and no personal computers. The pioneering experiments of Faraday and Henry have led directly to the development of modern-day generators and transformers. Today civilization owes its progress to a great extent to the discovery of electromagnetic induction. 6.2 The experiments of Faraday and Henry The discovery and understanding of electromagnetic induction are based on a long series of experiments carried out by Faraday and Henry. We shall now describe some of these experiments. Experiment 6.1 Figure 6.1 shows a coil C1 connected to a galvanometer G when the north pole of a bar magnet is pushed towards the coil. The pointer in the galvanometer deflects, indicating the presence of electric current in the coil. The deflection lasts as long as the bar magnet is in motion. The galvanometer does not show any deflection when the magnet is held stationary. When the magnet is pulled away from the coil, the galvanometer shows deflection in the opposite direction, which indicates reversal of the current's direction. 
Moreover, when the south pole of the bar magnet is moved towards or away from the coil, the deflections in the galvanometer are opposite to that observed with the north pole for similar movements. Further, the deflection and hence current is found to be larger when the magnet is pushed towards or pulled away from the coil faster. Instead, when the bar magnet is held fixed and the coil C1 is moved towards or away from the magnet, the same effects are observed. It shows that it is the relative motion between the magnet and the coil that is responsible for generation induction of electric current in the coil. Experiment 6.2 and figure 6.2 The bar magnet is replaced by a second coil C2 connected to a battery. The steady current in the coil C2 produces a steady magnetic field. As coil C2 is wherever the term coil or loop is used, it is assumed that they are made up of conducting material and are prepared using wires which are coated with insulating material. Figure 6.1 When the bar magnet is pushed towards the coil, the pointer in the galvanometer G deflects. Joseph Henry 1797-1878 American experimental physicist, professor at Princeton University and first director of the Smithsonian Institution. He made important improvements in electromagnets by winding coils of insulated wire around iron pole pieces and invented an electromagnetic motor and a new, efficient telegraph. He discovered self-induction and investigated how currents in one circuit induce currents in another. Joseph Henry 1797-1878 Physics 206 move towards the coil C1, the galvanometer shows a deflection, this indicates that electric current is induced in coil C1. When C2 is moved away, the galvanometer shows a deflection again, but this time in the opposite direction. The deflection lasts as long as coil C2 is in motion, when the coil C2 is held fixed and C1 is moved, the same effects are observed. Again, it is the relative motion between the coils that induces the electric current. Experiment 6.3 The above two experiments involved relative motion between a magnet and a coil and between two coils, respectively. Through another experiment, Faraday showed that this relative motion is not an absolute requirement. Figure 6.3 shows two coils C1 and C2 held stationary. Coil C1 is connected to galvanometer G while the second coil C2 is connected to a battery through a tapping key K. Figure 6.2 Current is induced in coil C1 due to motion of the current carrying coil C2. Figure 6.3 Experimental Setup for Experiment 6.3 It is observed that the galvanometer shows a momentary deflection when the tapping key K is pressed. The pointer in the galvanometer returns to zero immediately. If the key is held pressed continuously, there is no deflection in the galvanometer. When the key is released, a momentary deflection is observed again, but in the opposite direction. It is also observed that the deflection increases dramatically when an iron rod is inserted into the coils along their axis. 6.3 Magnetic Flux Faraday's great insight lay in discovering a simple mathematical relation to explain the series of experiments he carried out on electromagnetic induction. However, before we state and appreciate his laws, we must get familiar with the notion of magnetic flux. Greek letter Phi B Magnetic Flux is defined in the same way as electric flux is defined in Chapter 1. Magnetic flux through interactive animation on Faraday's experiments and lenses law, HTTP, Micromagnet FSU.edu Electromagnet Java Faraday 2. Electromagnetic induction 207 A plane of area A placed in a uniform magnetic field B figure 6.4 can be written as Greek letter Phi BB. A BA cos Greek letter theta 6.1 where Greek letter theta is angle between B and A. The notion of the area as a vector has been discussed earlier in Chapter 1. Equation 6.1 can be extended to curved surfaces and non-uniform fields. If the magnetic field has different magnitudes and directions at various parts of a surface as shown in Fig. 6.5, then the magnetic flux through the surface is given by 1122dbaba.b, BAI at all 6.2 where all stands for summation over all the area elements to I comprising the surface and BI is the magnetic field at the area element DAI. The SI unit of magnetic flux is Weber WB or Tesla meter squared TM2. Magnetic flux is a scalar quantity. 6.4 Faraday's law of induction from the experimental observations. Faraday arrived at a conclusion that an EMF is induced in a coil when magnetic flux through the coil changes with time. Experimental observations discussed in section 6.2 can be explained using this concept. The motion of a magnet towards or away from coil C1 in experiment 6.1 and moving a current carrying coil C2 towards or away from coil C1 in experiment 6.2. Change the magnetic flux associated with coil C1. The change in magnetic flux induces EMF in coil C1. It was this induced EMF which caused electric current to flow in coil C1 and through the galvanometer. 
A plausible explanation for the observations of experiment 6.3 is as follows. When the tapping key K is pressed, the current in coil C2 and the resulting magnetic field rises from zero to a maximum value in a short time. Consequently, the magnetic flux through the neighboring coil C1 also increases. It is the change in magnetic flux through coil C1 that produces an induced EMF in coil C1. When the key is held pressed, current in coil C2 is constant. Therefore, there is no change in the magnetic flux through coil C1 and the current in coil C1 drops to zero. When the key is released, the current in C2 and the resulting magnetic field decreases from the maximum value to zero in a short time. This results in a decrease in magnetic flux through coil C1 and hence again induces an electric current in coil C1. The common point in all these observations is that the time rate of change of magnetic flux through a circuit induces EMF in it. Faraday stated experimental observations in the form of a law called Faraday's Law of Electromagnetic Induction. The law is stated below. Figure 6.4 A plane of surface area A placed in a uniform magnetic field B. Figure 6.5 Magnetic field B at the ith area element DAI represents area vector of the ith area element. Note that sensitive electrical instruments in the vicinity of an electromagnet can be damaged due to the induced EMFs and the resulting currents when the electromagnet is turned on or off. Physics 208 Example 6.1 The magnitude of the induced EMF in a circuit is equal to the time rate of change of magnetic flux through the circuit. Mathematically, the induced EMF is given by D. DBT Greek letter Phi Greek letter Epsilon 6.3 The negative sign indicates the direction of Greek letter Epsilon and hence the direction of current in a closed loop. This will be discussed in detail in the next section. In the case of a closely wound coil of N turns, change of flux associated with each turn is the same. Therefore, the expression for the total induced EMF is given by D. DBNT Greek letter Phi Greek letter Epsilon 6.4 The induced EMF can be increased by increasing the number of turns N of a closed coil. From EQS 6.1 and 6.2, we see that the flux can be varied by changing any one or more of the terms B, A and Greek letter theta. In experiments 6.1 and 6.2 in section 6.2, the flux is changed by varying B. The flux can also be altered by changing the shape of a coil that is. By shrinking it or stretching it in a magnetic field, or rotating a coil in a magnetic field such that the angle Greek letter theta between B and A changes. In these cases too, an EMF is induced in the respective coils. Example 6.1 Consider experiment 6.2. Oh what would you do to obtain a large deflection of the galvanometer B? How would you demonstrate the presence of an induced current in the absence of a galvanometer solution A to obtain a large deflection? One or more of the following steps can be taken. I use a rod made of soft iron inside the coil C2. 2. Connect the coil to a powerful battery. And 3. Move the arrangement rapidly towards the test coil C1. B. Replace the galvanometer by a small bulb, the kind one finds in a small torchlight. The relative motion between the two coils will cause the bulb to glow and thus demonstrate the presence of an induced current. In experimental physics one must learn to innovate. Michael Faraday who is ranked as one of the best experimentalists ever, was legendary for his innovative skills. Example 6.2 A square loop of psi 10 cm and resistance 0.5 Greek letter omega is placed vertically in the east-west plane. A uniform magnetic field of 0.10 T is set up across the plane in the northeast direction. The magnetic field is decreased to 0 and 0.70 s at a steady rate. Determine the magnitudes of induced EMF and current during this time interval. Michael Faraday 1791-1867 Faraday made numerous contributions to science. This, the discovery of electromagnetic induction, the laws of electrolysis, benzene, and the fact that the plane of polarization is rotated in an electric field. He is also credited with the invention of the electric motor, the electric generator and the transformer. He is widely regarded as the greatest experimental scientist of the 19th century. Michael Faraday 1791-1867 Example 6.2 209 Example 6.2 Solution The angle Greek letter theta made by the area vector of the coil with the magnetic field is 45 degrees. From X6.1, the initial magnetic flux is Greek letter phi B A cos Greek letter theta minus 20.110 W B 2 X final flux, min 0 The change in flux is brought about in 0.70 S. From X6.3, the magnitude of the induced EMF is given by 0 B T T Greek letter phi Greek letter phi Greek letter epsilon minus 310 1.0 M V 2 0.7 X and the magnitude of the current is minus 310 V 2 ma 0.5 I R Greek letter epsilon Greek letter omega note that the Earth's magnetic field also produces a flux through the loop. 
but it is a steady field which does not change within the time span of the experiment and hence does not induce any EMF. Example 6.3 A circular coil of radius 10 cm, 500 turns and resistance 2 Greek letter omega is placed with its plane perpendicular to the horizontal component of the Earth's magnetic field. It is rotated about its vertical diameter through 180 degrees and 0.25 s estimate the magnitudes of the EMF and current induced in the coil. Horizontal component of the Earth's magnetic field at the place is 3.0 x 10-5 t solution initial flux through the coil. Our initial BA cos Greek letter theta 3.0 x 10-5 x Greek letter pi x 10-2 x cos 0 degrees 3 Greek letter pi x 10-7 WB final flux after the rotation. Er final 3.0 x 10-5 x Greek letter pi x 10-2 x cos 180 degrees minus 3 Greek letter pi x 10-7 WB therefore, estimated value of the induced EMF is, NT Greek letter phi Greek letter epsilon 500 x 6 Greek letter pi x 10-7 0.25 3.8 x 10-3 VI Greek letter epsilon R 1.9 x 10-3 A note that the magnitudes of Greek letter epsilon and I are the estimated values. Their instantaneous values are different and depend upon the speed of rotation at the particular instant. Example 6.3 Physics 210 6.5 Lenz's Law and Conservation of Energy in 1834, German physicist Heinrich Friedrich Lenz 1804-1865 deduced a rule, known as Lenz's Law which gives the polarity of the induced EMF in a clear and concise fashion. The statement of the law is, the polarity of induced EMF is such that it tends to produce a current which opposes the change in magnetic flux that produced it. The negative sign shown in X6.3 represents this effect. We can understand Lenz's law by examining experiment 6.1 in section 6, 2, 1. In figure 6.1, we see that the north pole of a bar magnet is being pushed towards the closed coil. As the north pole of the bar magnet moves towards the coil, the magnetic flux through the coil increases. Hence current is induced in the coil in such a direction that it opposes the increase in flux. This is possible only if the current in the coil is in a counterclockwise direction with respect to an observer situated on the side of the magnet. Note that magnetic moment associated with this current has north polarity towards the north pole of the approaching magnet. Similarly, if the north pole of the magnet is being withdrawn from the coil, the magnetic flux through the coil will decrease. To counter this decrease in magnetic flux, the induced current in the coil flows in clockwise direction and its south pole faces the receding north pole of the bar magnet. This would result in an attractive force which opposes the motion of the magnet and the corresponding decrease in flux. What will happen if an open circuit is used in place of the closed loop in the above example in this case too, an EMF is induced across the open ends of the circuit. The direction of the induced EMF can be found using Lenz's law. Consider figures 6.6 and b. They provide an easier way to understand the direction of induced currents. Note that the direction shown by and indicate the directions of the induced currents. A little reflection on this matter should convince us on the correctness of Lenz's law. Suppose that the induced current was in the direction opposite to the one depicted in figure 6.6a. In that case, the south pole due to the induced current will face the approaching north pole of the magnet. The bar magnet will then be attracted towards the coil at an ever-increasing acceleration. A gentle push on the magnet will initiate the process and its velocity and kinetic energy will continuously increase without expending any energy. If this can happen, one could construct a perpetual motion machine by a suitable arrangement. This violates the law of conservation of energy and hence cannot happen. Now consider the correct case shown in figure 6.6a. In this situation, the bar magnet experiences a repulsive force due to the induced current. Therefore, a person has to do work in moving the magnet. Where does the energy spent by the person go? This energy is dissipated by joule heating produced by the induced current. Figure 6.6 .6 Illustration of Lenz's Law 211 Example 6.4 Example 6.4 Figure 6.7 shows planar loops of different shapes moving out of or into a region of a magnetic field which is directed normal to the plane of the loop away from the reader. Determine the direction of induced current in each loop using Lenz's Law. Figure 6.7 Solution I The magnetic flux through the rectangular loop ebbed increases. Due to the motion of the loop into the region of magnetic field, the induced current must flow along the path dab so that it opposes the increasing flux. 2 Due to the outward motion, magnetic flux through the triangular loop ABC decreases due to which the induced current flows along back, so as to oppose the change in flux. 3 As the magnetic flux decreases due to motion of the irregular shape loop ebbed out of the region of magnetic field, the induced current flows along dab, so as to oppose change in flux. Note that there are no induced current as long as the loops are completely inside or outside the region of the magnetic field. 
Example 6.5 A closed loop is held stationary in the magnetic field between the north and south poles of two permanent magnets held fixed. Can we hope to generate current in the loop by using very strong magnets? B A closed loop moves normal to the constant electric field between the plates of a large capacitor. Is a current induced in the loop I when it is wholly inside the region between the capacitor plates too when it is partially outside the plates of the capacitor? The electric field is normal to the plane of the loop C A rectangular loop and a circular loop are moving out of a uniform magnetic field region fig. 6.8 to a field free region with a constant velocity V in which loop do you expect the induced EMF to be constant during the passage out of the field region the field is normal to the loops. Example 6.5 Physics 212 Example 6.5 Figure 6.8 D Predict the polarity of the capacitor in the situation described by Fig. 6.9 Figure 6.9 Solution and O. However strong the magnet may be, current can be induced only by changing the magnetic flux through the loop. B No current is induced in either case. Current cannot be induced by changing the electric flux. C The induced EMF is expected to be constant only in the case of the rectangular loop. In the case of circular loop, the rate of change of area of the loop during its passage out of the field region is not constant, hence induced EMF will vary accordingly. D. The polarity of plate A will be positive with respect to plate B in the capacitor 6.6 .6 motional electromotive force. Let us consider a straight conductor moving in a uniform and time-independent magnetic field. Figure 6.10 shows a rectangular conductor PQRS in which the conductor PQ is free to move. The rod PQ is moved towards the left with a constant velocity V as shown in the figure. Assume that there is no loss of energy due to friction. PQRS forms a closed circuit enclosing an area that changes as PQ moves. It is placed in a uniform magnetic field B which is perpendicular to the plane of this system, if the length RQX and RSL. The magnetic flux are enclosed by the loop PQRS will be or BLX since X is changing with time. The rate of change of flux R will induce an EMF given by DD, DD BBLX TT Greek letter Phi Greek letter Epsilon D. DX BLBL VT 6.5 figure 6.10 The arm PQ is moved to the left side, thus decreasing the area of the rectangular loop. This movement induces a current I as shown. Electromagnetic induction 213 where we have used DX DTV which is the speed of the conductor PQ. The induced EMF BLV is called motional EMF. Thus, we are able to produce induced EMF by moving a conductor instead of varying the magnetic field, that is, by changing the magnetic flux enclosed by the circuit. It is also possible to explain the motional EMF expression in X6.5 by invoking the Lorentz force acting on the free charge carriers of conductor PQ. Consider any arbitrary charge Q in the conductor PQ, when the rod moves with speed V. The charge will also be moving with speed V in the magnetic field B. The Lorentz force on this charge is QVB in magnitude and its direction is towards Q. All charges experience the same force, in magnitude and direction. Irrespective of their position in the rod PQ, the work done in moving the charge from P to Q is, WQVBL since EMF is the work done per unit charge, WQ Greek letter Epsilon BLV this equation gives EMF induced across the rod PQ and is identical to EC. 6.5 We stress that our presentation is not wholly rigorous. But it does help us to understand the basis of Faraday's law when the conductor is moving in a uniform and time-independent magnetic field. On the other hand, it is not obvious how an EMF is induced when a conductor is stationary and the magnetic field is changing, a fact which Faraday verified by numerous experiments. In the case of a stationary conductor, the force on its charges is given by FQEBXXXXXBQE 6.6 .6 since V0. Thus, any force on the charge must arise from the electric field term E alone, therefore, to explain the existence of induced EMF or induced current, we must assume that a time-varying magnetic field generates an electric field. However, we hasten to add that electric fields produced by static electric charges have properties different from those produced by time-varying magnetic fields. In Chapter 4, we learned that charges and motion current can exert force torque on a stationary magnet. Conversely, a bar magnet in motion or more generally, a changing magnetic field can exert a force on the stationary charge. This is the fundamental significance of the Faraday's discovery. Electricity and magnetism are related. Example 6.6 A metallic rod of 1 meter's length is rotated with a frequency of 50 rev s, with one end hinged at the center and the other end at the circumference of a circular metallic ring of radius 1 meters. About an axis passing through the center and perpendicular to the plane of the ring figure 6.11. A constant and uniform magnetic field of 1T parallel to the axis is present everywhere. What is the EMF between the center and the metallic ring? 
Example 6.6 .6 Interactive Animation on Motional EMF, HTTP, Sirnetforms.com English to Induction HTM HTTP, WebPhysicsDavidson.edu Fislet Resources Boo Semester 2 Index HTML. Physics 214 Example 6.6 .6 Figure 6.11 Solution Method I As the rod is rotated, free electrons in the rod move towards the outer end due to Lorentz force and get distributed over the ring. Thus, the resulting separation of charges produces an EMF across the ends of the rod. At a certain value of EMF, there is no more flow of electrons and a steady state is reached. Using X6.5, the magnitude of the EMF generated across a length dr of the rod as it moves at right angles to the magnetic field is given by ddbvr. Hence, Greek letter epsilon Greek letter epsilon ddbvrr 0 brr brr Greek letter omega Greek letter omega d202 Note that we have used v Greek letter omega r. This gives Greek letter epsilon 21 1.02512 xx Greek letter pi xx 157v method 2 to calculate the EMF. We can imagine a closed loop OPQ in which point O and P are connected with a resistor R and OQ is the rotating rod. The potential difference across the resistor is then equal to the induced EMF and equals BX rate of change of area of loop. If Greek letter theta is the angle between the rod and the radius of the circle at P at time t, the area of the sector OPQ is given by 221 22RR Greek letter theta Greek letter theta Greek letter pi x Greek letter pi where R is the radius of the circle. Hence, the induced EMF is Greek letter epsilon BTRX DD122 Greek letter theta 221 D2 D2 Greek letter theta Greek letter omega BR BRT note. D2 DT Greek letter theta Greek letter omega Greek letter nu Greek letter pi This expression is identical to the expression obtained by method I and we get the same value of Greek letter epsilon. 215 Example 6.7 Example 6.7 A wheel with 10 metallic spokes each 0.5 meters long is rotated with a speed of 120 revmin in a plane normal to the horizontal component of Earth's magnetic field he at a place. If E 0.4 G at the place, what is the induced EMF between the axle and the rim of the wheel? Note that 1 G 10 4 T. Solution induced EMF 1 2 Greek letter omega BR to 1 2 X 4 Greek letter pi X 0.4 X 10 4 X 0.526.28 X 10 5 V. The number of spokes is immaterial because the EMFs across the spokes are in parallel. 6.7 Energy Consideration, a quantitative study in section 6.5, we discussed qualitatively that Lenz's law is consistent with the law of conservation of energy. Now we shall explore this aspect further with a concrete example, let R be the resistance of movable arm PQ of the rectangular conductor shown in Fig. 6.10, we assume that the remaining arms QR, RS and SP have negligible resistances compared to R thus, the overall resistance of the rectangular loop is R and this does not change as PQ is moved. The current I in the loop is, IR Greek letter epsilon BLVR 6.7 on account of the presence of the magnetic field. There will be a force on the arm PQ, this force ILXXXXXB, is directed outwards in the direction opposite to the velocity of the rod. The magnitude of this force is, FILB22 BLVR where we have used X6.7, note that this force arises due to drift velocity of charges responsible for current along the rod and the consequent Lorentz force acting on them. Alternatively, the arm PQ is being pushed with a constant speed V. The power required to do this is, PFV222 BLVR 6.8 The agent that does this work is mechanical. Where does this mechanical energy go? The answer is, it is dissipated as joule heat, and is given by 2 JPIR BLVR R2222 BLVR which is identical to EC. 6.8 Physics 216 Example 6.8 Thus, mechanical energy which was needed to move the arm PQ is converted into electrical energy the induced EMF and then to thermal energy. There is an interesting relationship between the charge flow through the circuit and the change in the magnetic flux. From Faraday's law, we have learned that the magnitude of the induced EMF is, BT Greek letter phi Greek letter epsilon however, QIRT Greek letter epsilon thus, BQR Greek letter phi example 6.8 refer to fig. 6.1 to a, the arm PQ of the rectangular conductor is moved from X0, outwards, the uniform magnetic field is perpendicular to the plane and extends from X0 to XB and is 0 for X, B. Only the arm PQ possesses substantial resistance R. Consider the situation when the arm PQ is pulled outwards from X0 to X2B, and is then moved back to X0 with constant speed V. Obtain expressions for the flux, the induced CMF, the force necessary to pull the arm and the power dissipated as joule heat. Sketch the variation of these quantities with distance of figure 6.12 solution let us first consider the forward motion from x0 to x2 b the flux are linked with the circuit spqr is b0 blxx2 blbbxb the induced cmf is b0 
BDDT Greek letter Phi Greek letter Epsilon 0 BLVXB 0 2 BXB 217 Example 6.8 When the induced EMF is non-zero, the current I is in magnitude BLV IRB figure 6.12 The force required to keep the arm PQ in constant motion is ILB. Its direction is to the left. In magnitude 22002 BLV FXB RBXB, the joule heating loss is 2 JPIR 22002 BLV XB RBXB, one obtains similar expressions for the inward motion from X2B to X0. One can appreciate the whole process by examining the sketch of various quantities displayed in Fig. 6.12b Physics 218 6.8 Eddy currents So far we have studied the electric currents induced in well-defined paths in conductors like circular loops. Even when bulk pieces of conductors are subjected to changing magnetic flux, induced currents are produced in them. However, their flow patterns resemble swirling eddies in water. This effect was discovered by physicist Foucault 1819-1868 and these currents are called eddy currents. Consider the apparatus shown in figure 6.13. A copper plate is allowed to swing like a simple pendulum between the pole pieces of a strong magnet. It is found that the motion is dampened in a little while the plate comes to a halt in the magnetic field. We can explain this phenomenon on the basis of electromagnetic induction. Magnetic flux associated with the plate keeps on changing as the plate moves in and out of the region between magnetic poles. The flux change induces eddy currents in the plate. Directions of eddy currents are opposite when the plate swings into the region between the poles and when it swings out of the region. If rectangular slots are made in the copper plate as shown in figure 6.14, area available to the flow of eddy currents is less. Thus, the pendulum plate with holes or slots reduces electromagnetic damping and the plate swings more freely. Note that magnetic moments of the induced currents which oppose the motion depend upon the area enclosed by the current's recall equation MIA in Chapter 4. This fact is helpful in reducing eddy currents in the metallic cores of transformers, electric motors and other such devices in which a coil is to be wound over metallic core. Eddy currents are undesirable since they heat up the core and dissipate electrical energy in the form of heat. Eddy currents are minimized by using laminations of metal to make a metal core. The laminations are separated by an insulating material like lacquer. The plane of the laminations must be arranged parallel to the magnetic field, so that they cut across the eddy current paths. This arrangement reduces the strength of the eddy currents, since the dissipation of electrical energy into heat depends on the square of the strength of electric current. Heat loss is substantially reduced. Eddy currents are used to advantage in certain applications like I-magnetic braking in trains. Strong electromagnets are situated above the rails in some electrically powered trains. When the electromagnets are activated, the eddy currents induced in the rails oppose the motion of the train. As there are no mechanical linkages, the braking effect is smooth to electromagnetic damping. Certain galvanometers have a fixed core made of non-magnetic metallic material. When the coil oscillates, the eddy currents generated in the core oppose the motion and bring the coil to rest quickly. Figure 6.13 Eddy currents are generated in the copper plate, while entering and leaving the region of magnetic field. Figure 6.14 Cutting slots in the copper plate reduces the effect of eddy currents. Electromagnetic Induction 219-3 Induction Furnace Induction furnace can be used to produce high temperatures and can be utilized to prepare alloys by melting the constituent metals. A high-frequency alternating current is passed through a coil which surrounds the metals to be melted. The eddy currents generated in the metals produce high temperatures sufficient to melt it. I've electric power meters. The shiny metal disc in the electric power meter analog type rotates due to the eddy currents. Electric currents are induced in the disc by magnetic fields produced by sinusoidally varying currents in a coil. You can observe the rotating shiny disc in the power meter of your house. Electromagnetic damping Take two hollow thin cylindrical pipes of equal internal diameters made of aluminium and PVC, respectively. Fix them vertically with clamps on retort stands. Take a small cylindrical magnet having diameter slightly smaller than the inner diameter of the pipes and drop it through each pipe in such a way that the magnet does not touch the sides of the pipes during its fall. You will observe that the magnet dropped through the PVC pipe takes the same time to come out of the pipe as it would take when dropped through the same height without the pipe. Note the time it takes to come out of the pipe in each case. You will see that the magnet takes much longer time in the case of aluminium pipe. Why is it so? It is due to the eddy currents that are generated in the aluminium pipe which oppose the change in magnetic flux, that is, the motion of the magnet. The retarding force due to the eddy currents inhibits the motion of the magnet. Such phenomena are referred to as electromagnetic damping. 
Note that eddy currents are not generated in PVC pipe as its material is an insulator whereas aluminium is a conductor. 6.9 Inductance An electric current can be induced in a coil by flux change produced by another coil in its vicinity or flux change produced by the same coil. These two situations are described separately in the next two subsections. However, in both the cases, the flux through a coil is proportional to the current. That is, er Greek letter alpha i further, if the geometry of the coil does not vary with ton then, dddbitt Greek letter phi for a closely wound coil of n turns, the same magnetic flux is linked with all the turns. When the flux are through the coil changes, each turn contributes to the induced EMF, therefore, a term called flux linkage is used which is equal to ner for a closely wound coil and in such a case ner i the constant of proportionality, in this relation, is called inductance. We shall see that inductance depends only on the geometry of the coil. Physics 220 and Intrinsic Material Properties This aspect is akin to capacitance which for a parallel plate capacitor depends on the plate area and plate separation geometry and the dielectric constant K of the intervening medium intrinsic material property. Inductance is a scalar quantity. It has the dimensions of ML2T2A2 given by the dimensions of flux divided by the dimensions of current. The SI unit of inductance is Henry and is denoted by H. It is named in honor of Joseph Henry who discovered electromagnetic induction in USA. Independently of Faraday in England 6, 9, 1 mutual inductance consider figure 6.15 which shows two long coaxial solenoids each of length L. We denote the radius of the inner solenoid S1 by R1 and the number of turns per unit length by N1. The corresponding quantities for the outer solenoid S2 are R2 and N2, respectively. Let N1 and N2 be the total number of turns of coils S1 and S2, respectively. When a current I2 is set up through S2, it in turn sets up a magnetic flux through S1. Let us denote it by Greek letter phi1. The corresponding flux linkage with solenoid S1 is N1112 2M 6.9 and 12 is called the mutual inductance of solenoid S1 with respect to solenoid S2. It is also referred to as the coefficient of mutual induction. For these simple coaxial solenoids it is possible to calculate M12. The magnetic field due to the current I2 and S2 is micro 0 and 2 I2. The resulting flux linkage with coil S1 is 2111022 nnlr any micro Greek letter pi 2.01212 nnrl in micro Greek letter pi 6.10 where n1l is the total number of turns in solenoid S1. Thus, from x6.9 and x6.10. M12 micro 0 N1 and Tor 2 1 liter 6.11 Note that we neglected the edge effects and considered the magnetic field micro 0 N2 I2 to be uniform throughout the length and width of the solenoid S2. This is a good approximation keeping in mind that the solenoid is long, implying L, R2. We now consider the reverse case. A current I1 is passed through the solenoid S1 and the flux linkage with coil S2 is N2 Greek letter phi to M21 I1 6.12 M21 is called the mutual inductance of solenoid S2 with respect to solenoid S1. The flux due to the current I1 in S1 can be assumed to be confined solely inside S1 since the solenoids are very long. Thus, flux linkage with solenoid S2 is 2222101 nnlr any micro Greek letter pi figure 6.15 two long coaxial solenoids of same length L. Electromagnetic induction 221 example 6.9 where N2L is the total number of turns of S2, from EC. 6.12, M21 micro 0 N1 and Tor 2 1 liter 6.13 using X6.11 and X6.12, we get M12 M21 M say 6.14 we have demonstrated this equality for long coaxial solenoids. However, the relation is far more general, note that if the inner solenoid was much shorter than and placed well inside the outer solenoid, then we could still have calculated the flux linkage N1 Greek letter phi 1 because the inner solenoid is effectively immersed in a uniform magnetic field due to the outer solenoid. In this case, the calculation of M12 would be easy, however. It would be extremely difficult to calculate the flux linkage with the outer solenoid as the magnetic field due to the inner solenoid would vary across the length as well as cross-section of the outer solenoid. Therefore, the calculation of M21 would also be extremely difficult in this case. The equality M12 M21 is very useful in such situations. We explain the above example with air as the medium within the solenoids. Instead, if a medium of relative permeability micro had been present, the mutual inductance would be M micro micro 0 N1 N2 Greek letter pi R to 1 liter. It is also important to know that the mutual inductance of a pair of coils, solenoids, etc., 
depends on their separation as well as their relative orientation. Example 6.92 Concentric circular coils, one of small radius R1 and the other of large radius R2, such that R1, R2, are placed coaxially with centers coinciding. Obtain the mutual inductance of the arrangement. Solution let a current I2 flow through the outer circular coil. The field at the center of the coil is P2 micro 0 I2 2 R2. Since the other coaxially placed coil has a very small radius, P2 may be considered constant over its cross-sectional area. Hence, Greek letter phi 1 R2 1 B2 2 0 1 2 22 R I R micro M12 I2 thus, 2 0 1 12 22 R M R micro from Ec. 6.142011221 R M M R micro Greek letter pi note that we calculated M12 from an approximate value of Greek letter phi 1, assuming the magnetic field B2 to be uniform over the area Greek letter pi R12. However, we can accept this value because R1, R2. Physics 222 Now, let us recollect experiment 6.3 in section 6.2. In that experiment, EMF is induced in coil C1 wherever there was any change in current through coil C2. Let Greek letter phi 1 be the flux through coil C1 say of N1 turns when current in coil C2 is I2, then, from Ec. 6.9, we have N1 Greek letter phi 1 MI2 for currents varying with time, 1 1 2 D D D N M I T T Greek letter phi since induced EMF in coil C1 is given by 1 1 D, D N T Greek letter phi Greek letter epsilon 1 we get. 2 D, D I M T Greek letter epsilon 1 it shows that varying current in a coil can induce EMF in a neighboring coil. The magnitude of the induced EMF depends upon the rate of change of current and mutual inductance of the two coils. 6, 9, 2 self-inductance in the previous subsection. We considered the flux in one solenoid due to the current in the other. It is also possible that EMF is induced in a single isolated coil due to change of flux through the coil by means of varying the current through the same coil. This phenomenon is called self-induction. In this case, Flux linkage through a coil of n turns is proportional to the current through the coil and is expressed as bn a bln is 6.15 where constant of proportionality l is called self-inductance of the coil. It is also called the coefficient of self-induction of the coil. When the current is varied, the flux linked with the coil also changes and an EMF is induced in the coil. Using x 6.15, the induced EMF is given by bd, dnt Greek letter phi Greek letter epsilon d, dilt Greek letter epsilon 6.16 thus. The self-induced EMF always opposes any change increase or decrease of current in the coil. It is possible to calculate a self-inductance for circuits with simple geometries. Let us calculate a self-inductance of a long solenoid of cross-sectional area A and length L, having n turns per unit length. The magnetic field due to a current I flowing in the solenoid is B micro zero and I neglecting edge effects, as before. The total flux linked with the solenoid is 0 BN and L and I O micro. Electromagnetic induction 223 I Allen 20 micro where NL is the total number of turns. Thus, the self-inductance is LI Greek letter beta Greek letter new Greek letter phi 20 NL micro 6.17 If we fill the inside of the solenoid with a material of relative permeability micro for example soft iron, which has a high value of relative permeability, then 20 RL NL micro micro 6.18 The self-inductance of the coil depends on its geometry and on the permeability of the medium. The self-induced EMF is also called the back EMF as it opposes any change in the current in a circuit. Physically, the self-inductance plays the role of inertia. It is the electromagnetic analog of mass in mechanics. So, work needs to be done against the back EMF Greek letter epsilon in establishing the current. This work done is stored as magnetic potential energy. For the current I at an instant in a circuit, the rate of work done is DDWIT Greek letter epsilon if we ignore the resistive losses and consider only inductive effect, then using EC. 6.16, DDDDWILITT total amount of work done in establishing the current I is WWLIIDT0 thus. The energy required to build up the current I is, 212W51 6.19 This expression reminds us of MV22 for the mechanical kinetic energy of a particle of mass M. And shows that L is analogous to M that is, L is electrical inertia and opposes growth and decay of current in the circuit. Consider the general case of currents flowing simultaneously in two nearby coils. The flux linked with one coil will be the sum of two fluxes which exist independently. Equation 6.9 would be modified into N1111112 to MIM where M11 represents inductance due to the same coil. Therefore, using Faraday's law, 121112 DDDDIIMMTT Greek letter epsilon. 
Physics 224 Example 6.10 M11 is the self-inductance and is written as L1. Therefore, 121112 DDDDIILMTT Greek letter epsilon example 6.10 Obtain the expression for the magnetic energy stored in a solenoid in terms of magnetic field B. Area A and length L of the solenoid B. How does this magnetic energy compare with the electrostatic energy stored in a capacitor solution or from X? 6.19. The magnetic energy is 21.2 BU 51.122 LBN Ni micro micro 00, zero since for a solenoid. 1.20202 micro micro N LBN from EC. 6.172012 BL micro B. The magnetic energy per unit volume is. BBUUV where V is volume that contains flux BUL202 B micro 6.20 We have already obtained a relation for the electrostatic energy stored per unit volume in a parallel plate capacitor refer to chapter 2, EC. 2.77, 2012 U A Greek letter epsilon 2.77 In both the cases energy is proportional to the square of the field strength. Equation 6.20 and 2.77 have been derived for special cases, a solenoid and a parallel plate capacitor, respectively but they are general and valid for any region of space in which a magnetic field or and an electric field exist. 6.10 AC generator The phenomenon of electromagnetic induction has been technologically exploited in many ways. An exceptionally important application is the generation of alternating currents AC. The modern AC generator with a typical output capacity of 100 MW is a highly evolved machine. In this section, we shall describe the basic principles behind this machine. The Yugoslav inventor Nikola Tesla is credited with the development of the machine. As was pointed out in section 6.3, one method to induce an EMF interactive animation on AC generator, HTTP, Micromagnet FSU.edu Electromag Java Generator AC HTML. Electromagnetic induction 225 or current in a loop is through a change in the loop's orientation or a change in its effective area. As the coil rotates in a magnetic field B, the effective area of the loop the face perpendicular to the field is A cos Greek letter theta. Where Greek letter theta is the angle between A and B this method of producing a flux change is the principle of operation of a simple AC generator. An AC generator converts mechanical energy into electrical energy. The basic elements of an AC generator are shown in Fig. 6.16. It consists of a coil mounted on a rotor shaft. The axis of rotation of the coil is perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field. The coil called armature is mechanically rotated in the uniform magnetic field by some external means. The rotation of the coil causes the magnetic flux through it to change, so an EMF is induced in the coil. The ends of the coil are connected to an external circuit by means of slip rings and brushes. When the coil is rotated with a constant angular speed Greek letter omega, the angle Greek letter theta between the magnetic field vector B and the area vector A of the coil at any instant T is Greek letter theta at assuming Greek letter theta 0 degrees at T0. As a result, the effective area of the coil exposed to the magnetic field lines changes with time, and from ek. 6.1, the flux at any time T is or BA cost Greek letter theta BA cost from Faraday's law. The induced CMF for the rotating coil of N turns is then DD cos DT DBN and BATT Greek letter phi Greek letter epsilon Greek letter omega thus, the instantaneous value of the EMF is Greek letter epsilon Greek letter omega Greek letter omega and BA sin T 6.21 where NBA is the maximum value of the EMF, which occurs when sin plus or minus 1. If we denote NBA as Greek letter epsilon 0, then Greek letter epsilon Greek letter epsilon 0 sin 6.22 since the value of the sine function varies between 1 and minus 1. The sign, or polarity of the EMF changes with time. Note from figure 6.17 that the EMF has its extremum value when Greek letter theta 90 degrees or Greek letter theta 270 degrees, as the change of flux is greatest at these points. The direction of the current changes periodically and therefore the current is called alternating current AC. Since Greek letter omega 2, x 6.22 can be written as Greek letter epsilon Greek letter epsilon 0 sin 2 Greek letter pi Greek letter nu t 6.23 where Greek letter nu is the frequency of revolution of the generator's coil. Note that x 6.22 and 6.23 give the instantaneous value of the EMF and Greek letter epsilon varies between Greek letter epsilon 0 and Greek letter epsilon 0 periodically. We shall learn how to determine the time averaged value for the alternating voltage and current in the next chapter. Figure 6.16 AC Generator Physics 226 Example 6.11 In commercial generators, the mechanical energy required for rotation of the armature is provided by water falling from a height, for example, from dams. These are called hydroelectric generators. Alternatively, water is heated to produce steam using coal or other sources. 
The steam at high pressure produces the rotation of the armature. These are called thermal generators. Instead of coal, if a nuclear fuel is used, we get nuclear power generators. Modern day generators produce electric power as high as 500 megawatts. That is, one can light up 5,100 W bulbs. In most generators, the coils are held stationary and it is the electromagnets which are rotated. The frequency of rotation is 50 Hz in India. In certain countries such as USA, it is 60 Hz. Example 6.11 Kamla pedals a stationary bicycle. The pedals of the bicycle are attached to a 100 turn coil of area 0.10 square meters. The coil rotates at half a revolution per second and it is placed in a uniform magnetic field of 0.01 T perpendicular to the axis of rotation of the coil. What is the maximum voltage generated in the coil solution here? Greek letter nu 0.5 Hz, N100, A0.1 square meters and B0.01 tons. Employing X6.21 Greek letter Epsilon 0 and BA2 Greek letter Pi Greek letter Nu 100 X 0.01 X 0.1 X 2 X 3.14 X 0.5 0.314 V The maximum voltage is 0.314 V. We are due to explore such alternative possibilities for power generation. Figure 6.17 An alternating EMF is generated by a loop of wire rotating in a magnetic field. 227 Summary 1. The magnetic flux through a surface of area A placed in a uniform magnetic field B is defined as or BABA cos Greek letter theta where Greek letter theta is the angle between B and A2. Faraday's laws of induction imply that the EMF induced in a coil of N turns is directly related to the rate of change of flux through it. BDD and T Greek letter phi Greek letter epsilon here Greek letter phi Greek letter beta is the flux linked with one turn of the coil. If the circuit is closed, a current I Greek letter epsilon R is set up in it, where R is the resistance of the circuit. 3. Lenz's law states that the polarity of the induced EMF is such that it tends to produce a current which opposes the change in magnetic flux that produces it. The negative sign in the expression for Faraday's law indicates this fact for, when a metal rod of length L is placed normal to a uniform magnetic field B and moved with a velocity V perpendicular to the field. The induced EMF called motional EMF across its ends is Greek letter epsilon BLV5. Changing magnetic fields can set up current loops in nearby metal any conductor bodies. They dissipate electrical energy as heat. Such currents are eddy current 6. Inductance is the ratio of the flux linkage to current. It is equal to my migration of birds. The migratory pattern of birds is one of the mysteries in the field of biology. And indeed all of science. For example, every winter birds from Siberia fly unerringly to water spots in the Indian subcontinent. There has been a suggestion that electromagnetic induction may provide a clue to these migratory patterns. The Earth's magnetic field has existed throughout evolutionary history. It would be of great benefit to migratory birds to use this field to determine the direction. As far as we know birds contain no ferromagnetic material, so electromagnetic induction seems to be the only reasonable mechanism to determine direction. Consider the optimal case where the magnetic field B, the velocity of the bird V, and two relevant points of its anatomy separated by a distance L, all three are mutually perpendicular. From the formula for motional EMF, X6.5, Greek letter Epsilon BLV taking B4X10-5 T, L2 cm wide, and V10 m S. We obtain Greek letter epsilon 4x 10-5x 2x 10-2x 10v 8x 10-6v 8 Makarov This extremely small potential difference suggests that our hypothesis is of doubtful validity. Certain kinds of fish are able to detect small potential differences. However, in these fish, special cells have been identified which detect small voltage differences. In birds no such cells have been identified. Thus, the migration patterns of birds continues to remain a mystery. 228 points to ponder 1. Electricity and magnetism are intimately related. In the early part of the 19th century, the experiments of Ersted, Ampere and others established that moving charges currents produce a magnetic field. Somewhat later, around 1830, the experiments of Faraday and Henry demonstrated that a moving magnet can induce electric current. 2. In a closed circuit, electric currents are induced so as to oppose the changing magnetic flux. It is as per the law of conservation of energy. However, in case of an open circuit, an EMF is induced across its ends. How is it related to the flux change 3? The motional EMF discussed in section 6.5 can be argued independently from Faraday's law using the Lorentz force on moving charges. However, quantity symbol units dimensions equations magnetic flux or WB Weber ML2T2A1 or BIEMF Greek letter epsilon V volt ML2T3A1 Greek letter epsilon BDD and mutual inductance MH Henry ML2T2A2 Greek letter epsilon 112 2 DD MIT self inductance LH Henry ML2T2A2 DDL 7
A changing current in a coil coil 2 can induce an EMF in a nearby coil coil 1. This relation is given by 2112 DDIMT Greek letter epsilon the quantity M12 is called mutual inductance of coil 1 with respect to coil 2. One can similarly define M21. There exists a general equality, M12 M21 8. When a current in a coil changes, it induces a back EMF in the same coil. The self-induced EMF is given by DDILT Greek letter epsilon L is the self-inductance of the coil. It is a measure of the inertia of the coil against the change of current through it. 9. The self-inductance of a long solenoid, the core of which consists of a magnetic material of permeability micro. Is given by L micro micro 0 and 2 L where A is the area of cross-section of the solenoid, L its length and N the number of turns per unit length. 10. In an AC generator, mechanical energy is converted to electrical energy by virtue of electromagnetic induction. If coil of N turn and area A is rotated at Greek letter new revolutions per second in a uniform magnetic field B, then the motional EMF produced is Greek letter epsilon NBA2 sin 2 where we have assumed that at time T0s, the coil is perpendicular to the field. 229 exercises 6.1 predict the direction of induced current in the situations described by the following figs. 6.1 Ata to F Even if the charges are stationary and the QVXB term of the Lorentz force is not operative, an EMF is nevertheless induced in the presence of a time-varying magnetic field. Thus, moving charges in static field and static charges in a time-varying field seem to be symmetric situation for Faraday's law. This gives a tantalizing hint on the relevance of the principle of relativity for Faraday's law for the motion of a copper plate is damped when it is allowed to oscillate between the magnetic pole pieces. How is the damping force produced by the eddy currents figure 6.18? Physics 236.2 use Lenz's law to determine the direction of induced current in the situations described by Fig. 6.19 A wire of irregular shape turning into a circular shape, the A circular loop being deformed into a narrow straight wire. Figure 6.196.3 A long solenoid with 15 turns per cm has a small loop of area 2.0 square centimeters placed inside the solenoid normal to its axis. If the current carried by the solenoid changes steadily from 2.0 A to 4.0 A and 0.1 S, what is the induced EMF in the loop while the current is changing? 6.4 A rectangular wire loop of sides 8 cm and 2 cm with a small cut is moving out of a region of uniform magnetic field of magnitude 0.3 T directed normal to the loop. What is the EMF developed across the cut if the velocity of the loop is 1 cm S1 in a direction normal to the longer side? B shorter side of the loop for how long does the induced voltage last in each case 6.5 A 1.0 m long metallic rod is rotated with an angular frequency of 400 rad S1 about an axis normal to the rod passing through its one end. The other end of the rod is in contact with the circular metallic ring, a constant and uniform magnetic field of 0.5 T parallel to the axis exists everywhere. Calculate the EMF developed between the center and the ring 6.6 A circular coil of radius 8.0 cm and 20 turns is rotated about its vertical diameter with an angular speed of 50 rad S1 in a uniform horizontal magnetic field of magnitude 3.0, X10-2T. Obtain the maximum and average EMF induced in the coil. If the coil forms a closed loop of resistance 10 Greek letter omega, calculate the maximum value of current in the coil. Calculate the average power loss due to joule heating. Where does this power come from 6.7 A horizontal straight wire 10 meters long extending from east to west is falling with a speed of 5.0 meters S1. At right angles to the horizontal component of the Earth's magnetic field, 0.30 X 10-4 WBM to a what is the instantaneous value of the EMF induced in the wire? B what is the direction of the EMF C which end of the wire is at the higher electrical potential 6.8 current in a circuit falls from 5.0 A to 0.0 A and 0.1 S. If an average EMF of 200 V induced, give an estimate of the self-inductance of the circuit 6.9 A pair of adjacent coils has a mutual inductance of 1.5 H if the current in one coil changes from 0 to 20 A and 0.5 S. What is the change of flux linkage with the other coil 6.10 A jet plane is traveling towards west at a speed of 1800 km H. What is the voltage difference developed between the ends of the wing? Electromagnetic induction 231 having a span of 25 meters, if the Earth's magnetic field at the location has a magnitude of 5x 10-4 T and the dip angle is 30 degrees. Additional exercise is 6.11 Suppose the loop in exercise 6.4 is stationary but the current feeding the electromagnet that produces the magnetic field is gradually reduced so that the field decreases from its initial value of 0.3 T at the rate of 0.02 T S1. 
If the cut is joined and the loop has a resistance of 1.6 Greek letter omega, how much power is dissipated by the loop as heat? What is the source of this power? 6.12 A square loop of side 12 cm with its sides parallel to X and Y axis is moved with a velocity of 8 cm S1 in the positive X direction in an environment containing a magnetic field in the positive Z direction. The field is neither uniform in space nor constant in time. It has a gradient of 10-3 TCM1 along the negative X direction that is it increases by 10-3 TCM1 as one moves in the negative X direction. And it is decreasing in time at the rate of 10-3 TS1. Determine the direction and magnitude of the induced current in the loop if its resistance is 4.50 ohm. 6.13 It is desired to measure the magnitude of field between the poles of a powerful loudspeaker magnet. A small flat search coil of area 2 square centimeters with 25 closely wound turns, is positioned normal to the field direction, and then quickly snatched out of the field region. Equivalently, one can give it a quick 90 degrees turn to bring its plane parallel to the field direction. The total charge flown in the coil measured by a ballistic galvanometer connected to coil is 7.5 mc. The combined resistance of the coil and the galvanometer is 0.50 Greek letter omega. Estimate the field strength of magnet. 6.14 Figure 6.20 shows a metal rod PQ resting on the smooth rails AB and positioned between the poles of a permanent magnet. The rails, the rod, and the magnetic field are in three mutual perpendicular directions. A galvanometer G connects the rails through a switch K length of the rod 15 cm. B 0.50 T, resistance of the closed loop containing the rod 9.0, assume the field to be uniform. A suppose K is open and the rod is moved with the speed of 12 cm S1 in the direction shown, give the polarity and magnitude of the induced EMF. Figure 6.20b Is there an excess charge built up at the ends of the rods when K is open? What if K is closed? C with K open and the rod moving uniformly. There is no net force on the electrons in the rod PQ even though they do. Physics 232 Experience magnetic force due to the motion of the rod. Explain the what is the retarding force on the rod when K is closed. E how much power is required by an external agent to keep the rod moving at the same speed 12 cm S1 when K is closed. How much power is required when K is open F how much power is dissipated as heat in the closed circuit. What is the source of this power G what is the induced EMF in the moving rod if the magnetic field is parallel to the rails instead of being perpendicular 6.15 an air cord solenoid with length 30 cm. Area of cross section 25 square centimeters and number of turns 500 carries a current of 2.5 A. The current is suddenly switched off in a brief time of 10-3 S. How much is the average back EMF induced across the ends of the open switch in the circuit? Ignore the variation in magnetic field near the ends of the solenoid 6.16 Obtain an expression for the mutual inductance between a long straight wire and a square loop of side as shown in fig. 6.21 B. Now assume that the straight wire carries a current of 50 A and the loop is moved to the right with a constant velocity, V10 meters S. Calculate the induced EMF in the loop at the instant when x 0.2 meters, take a 0.1 meters and assume that the loop has a large resistance. Figure 6.21 6.17 A line charge Greek letter lambda per unit length is lodged uniformly onto the rim of a wheel of mass M and radius R. The wheel has light non-conducting spokes and is free to rotate without friction about its axis fig. 6.22 A uniform magnetic field extends over a circular region within the rim. It is given by BB0 KRA, uh, R0 otherwise what is the angular velocity of the wheel after the field is suddenly switched off? Figure 6.22 7.1 Introduction We have so far considered direct current DC sources and circuits with DC sources. These currents do not change direction with time, but voltages and currents that vary with time are very common. The electric main supply in our homes and offices is a voltage that varies like a sine function with time. Such a voltage is called alternating voltage AC voltage and the current driven by it in a circuit is called the alternating current AC current. Today, most of the electrical devices we use require AC voltage. This is mainly because most of the electrical energy sold by power companies is transmitted and distributed as alternating current. The main reason for preferring use of AC voltage over DC voltage is that AC voltages can be easily and efficiently converted from one voltage to the other by means of transformers. Further, electrical energy can also be transmitted economically over long distances. AC circuits exhibit characteristics which are exploited in many devices of daily use. For example, whenever we tune our radio to a favorite station, we are taking advantage of a special property of AC circuits, one of many that you will study in this chapter. 
Chapter 7 Alternating Current The phrases AC voltage and AC current are contradictory and redundant. Respectively, since they mean, literally, alternating current voltage and alternating current current. Still, the abbreviation AC to designate an electrical quantity displaying simple harmonic time dependence has become so universally accepted that we follow others in its use. Further, voltage, another phrase commonly used means potential difference between two points. Physics 234 Nikola Tesla 1856 1943 Nikola Tesla 1856 1943 Serbian American scientist, inventor and genius. He conceived the idea of the rotating magnetic field, which is the basis of practically all alternating current machinery, and which helped usher in the age of electric power. He also invented among other things the induction motor, the polyphase system of AC power, and the high-frequency induction coil the Tesla coil used in radio and television sets and other electronic equipment. The SI unit of magnetic field is named in his honor 7.2 AC voltage applied to a resistor figure 7.1 shows a resistor connected to a source Greek letter epsilon of AC voltage. The symbol for an AC source in a circuit diagram is, we consider a source which produces sinusoidally varying potential difference across its terminals. Let this potential difference, also called AC voltage, be given by sin V7.1 where Vm is the amplitude of the oscillating potential difference and Greek letter omega is its angular frequency. To find the value of current through the resistor, we apply Kirchhoff's loop rule Greek letter epsilon T0 refer to section 3.13, to the circuit shown in fig. 7.1 to get sin T i or sin vi T r Greek letter omega since r is a constant, we can write this equation as sin mi 7.2 where the current amplitude m is given by m m v i r 7.3 equation 7.3 is Ohm's law. Which for resistors, works equally well for both AC and DC voltages, the voltage across a pure resistor and the current through it, given by EQS. 7.1 and 7.2 are plotted as a function of time in figure 7.2, note, in particular that both V and I reach zero, minimum and maximum values at the same time. Clearly, the voltage and current are in phase with each other, we see that, like the applied voltage, the current varies sinusoidally and has corresponding positive and negative values during each cycle. Thus, the sum of the instantaneous current values over one complete cycle is zero, and the average current is zero. The fact that the average current is zero, however, does figure 7.1 AC voltage applied to a resistor. Figure 7.2 in a pure resistor, the voltage and current are in phase, the minima, zero and maxima occur at the same respective times. 235 Alternating Current George Westinghouse 1846-1914 George Westinghouse 1846-1914 A leading proponent of the use of alternating current over direct current. Thus, he came into conflict with Thomas Alva Edison, an advocate of direct current. Westinghouse was convinced that the technology of alternating current was the key to the electrical future. He founded the famous company named after him and enlisted the services of Nikola Tesla and other inventors in the development of alternating current motors and apparatus for the transmission of high-tension current, pioneering in large-scale lighting. Not mean that the average power consumed is zero and that there is no dissipation of electrical energy. As you know, Joule heating is given by I2R and depends on I2 which is always positive whether I is positive or negative and not on I. Thus, there is Joule heating and dissipation of electrical energy when an AC current passes through a resistor. The instantaneous power dissipated in the resistor is 222 sin by R I art 7.4 The average value of P over a cycle is 222 sin by R I art 7.5 Aware the bar over a letter here, P denotes its average value and denotes taking average of the quantity inside the bracket. Since, I2 meters and R are constants, 2 2 sin by art, 7.5 B using the trigonometric identity. Sin toot 1 2 1 cos toot, we have, sin toot, 1 2 1, cos toot, and since, cos toot, 0. We have, 2 1 sin toot, thus, 21 to MPIR 7.5 C to express AC power in the same form as DC power PI2 R, a special value of current is defined and used. It is called, Root mean square RMS or effective current figure 7.3 and is denoted by irms or I. The average value of a function FT over a period T is given by FTT FTTT 10D, cos cos sin sin 2121221220000 Greek letter omega 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 TTTTTTTTTT figure 7.3 The RMS current I is related to the peak current I and by I 2 miles 0.707 I am. Physics 236 it is defined by 221 2 meters MIII 0.707 M 7.6 in terms of I, 
the average power, denoted by P is 221 2 meters PPI or IR 7.7 .7. Similarly, we define the RMS voltage or effective voltage by V2MV 0.707 VM 7.8 from EC. 7.3, we have VMIMR or 2 2 meters MVIR or VIR 7.9 equation 7.9 gives the relation between AC current and AC voltage and is similar to that in the DC case. This shows the advantage of introducing the concept of RMS values, in terms of RMS values, the equation for power EC. 7.7 and relation between current and voltage in AC circuits are essentially the same as those for the DC case. It is customary to measure and specify RMS values for AC quantities. For example, the household line voltage of 220V is an RMS value with a peak voltage of VM2V 1.414 220V 311V in fact. The IR RMS current is the equivalent DC current that would produce the same average power loss as the alternating current. Equation 7.7 can also be written as PV2 or IV since the IR example 7.1A light bulb is rated at 200W for a 220V supply. Find the resistance of the bulb, be the peak voltage of the source, and see the RMS current through the bulb. Solution We are given P100W and V220V The resistance of the bulb is 2 to 220V 484 100W VRP Greek letter Omega B The peak voltage of the source is V2311MVVC since PIV 100W 0.454 A 220V PIV example 7.1 237 alternating current 7.3 representation of AC current and voltage by rotating vectors phasors in the previous section. We learned that the current through a resistor is in phase with the AC voltage, but this is not so in the case of an inductor, a capacitor or a combination of these circuit elements. In order to show phase relationship between voltage and current in an AC circuit, we use the notion of phasors. The analysis of an AC circuit is facilitated by the use of a phasor diagram. A phasor is a vector which rotates about the origin with angular speed Greek letter omega, as shown in Fig. 7.4 The vertical components of phasors V and I represent the sinusoidally varying quantities V and I. The magnitudes of phasors V and I represent the amplitudes or the peak values Vm and M of these oscillating quantities. Figure 7.4 shows the voltage and current phasors and their relationship with time T1 for the case of an AC source connected to a resistor that is, corresponding to the circuit shown in Fig. 7.1 The projection of voltage and current phasors on vertical axis, that is, Vm sin T and M sin T, respectively represent the value of voltage and current at that instant. As they rotate with frequency Greek letter omega, curves in figure 7.4b are generated. From figure 7.4 we see that phasors V and I for the case of a resistor are in the same direction. This is so for all times, this means that the phase angle between the voltage and the current is zero. 7.4 AC voltage applied to an inductor figure 7.5 shows an AC source connected to an inductor. Usually, inductors have appreciable resistance in their windings, but we shall assume that this inductor has negligible resistance. Thus, the circuit is a purely inductive AC circuit. Let the voltage across the source be VVM sin T. Using the Kirchhoff's loop rule, Greek letter epsilon T0, and since there is no resistor in the circuit, D0 DIVLT 7.10 where the second term is the self-induced Faraday EMF in the inductor, and L is the self-inductance of figure 7.4A phasor diagram for the circuit in figure 7.1. B graph of V and I versus T, figure 7.5 An AC source connected to an inductor. The voltage and current in AC circuit are represented by phasors, rotating vectors. They are not vectors themselves. They are scalar quantities. It so happens that the amplitudes and phases of harmonically varying scalars combine mathematically in the same way as do the projections of rotating vectors of corresponding magnitudes and directions. The rotating vectors that represent harmonically varying scalar quantities are introduced only to provide us with a simple way of adding these quantities using a rule that we already know. Physics 238 The inductor, the negative sign follows from Lenz's Law Chapter 6, combining EQS 7.1 and 7.10. We have D sin D M V I V T T L L Greek letter omega 7.11 equation 7.11 implies that the equation for IT the current as a function of time, must be such that its slope ddt is a sinusoidally varying quantity. With the same phase as the source voltage and an amplitude given by VML to obtain the current, we integrate ddt with respect to time, ddddittvlttm sin greek letter omega and get cross constant vtl greek letter omega greek letter omega the integration constant has the dimension of current and is time independent. 
Since the source has an EMF which oscillates symmetrically about zero, the current it sustains also oscillates symmetrically about zero, so that no constant or time-independent component of the current exists. Therefore, the integration constant is zero. Using cos sin t Greek letter pi 2, we have iitm sin Greek letter omega Greek letter pi 2 7.12 where mmvil Greek letter omega is the amplitude of the current. The quantity Greek letter omega L is analogous to the resistance and is called inductive reactance, denoted by XL. XL Greek letter omega L 7.13 the amplitude of the current is. Then MMLVIX 7.14 the dimension of inductive reactance is the same as that of resistance and its SI unit is ohm Greek letter omega. The inductive reactance limits the current in a purely inductive circuit in the same way as the resistance limits the current in a purely resistive circuit. The inductive reactance is directly proportional to the inductance and to the frequency of the current. A comparison of EQS 7.1 and 7.12 for the source voltage and the current in an inductor shows that the current lags the voltage by Greek letter pi 2 or 1 quarter 1 4 cycle. Figure 7.6 shows the voltage and the current phasors in the present case at instant T1. The current phasor I is Greek letter pi 2 behind the voltage phasor V when rotated with frequency Greek letter omega counterclockwise. They generate the voltage and current given by EQS 7.1 and 7.12, respectively and as shown in Fig. 7.6b, Interactive Animation on Phasor Diagrams of AC Circuits Containing, R, L, C and RLC Series Circuits, www.animations.physics.unstw.eduojwachdml. 239 Alternating Current Example 7.2 We see that the current reaches its maximum value later than the voltage by one-fourth of a period T42 Greek letter pi Greek letter omega. You have seen that an inductor has reactants that limits current similar to resistance in a DC circuit. Does it also consume power like a resistance? Let us try to find out. The instantaneous power supplied to the inductor is PIVIT VTLMM sin sin Greek letter omega Greek letter pi 2x cos sin me VT Greek letter omega sin 2 2 meters me VT so. The average power over a complete cycle is L sin 2 2 meters me V peak sin 2 2 meters me V 0, since the average of sin 2 over a complete cycle is 0. Thus, the average power supplied to an inductor over one complete cycle is zero. Figure 7.7 .7 explains it in detail. Example 7.2 A pure inductor of 25.0 mH is connected to a source of 220 V. Find the inductive reactance and RMS current in the circuit if the frequency of the source is 50 Hz. Solution the inductive reactance 32 2 3 14 50 25 10 WLX LX X X X 7.85 Greek letter omega the RMS current in the circuit is VA 220 28 7.85 LVIX Greek letter omega figure 7.6 A phasor diagram for the circuit in fig 7.5 B graph of V and I versus T. Physics 24001 current I through the coil entering at A increase from zero to a maximum value flux lines are set up that is the core gets magnetized with the polarity shown voltage and current are both positive, so their product P is positive, energy is absorbed from the source. 1 2 current in the coil is still positive but is decreasing, the core gets demagnetized and the net flux becomes zero at the end of a half cycle. The voltage V is negative since DDT is negative, the product of voltage and current is negative. And energy is being returned to source, 1 complete cycle of voltage current, note that the current lags the voltage 2 3 current I becomes negative that is. It enters at B and comes out of A since the direction of current has changed, the polarity of the magnet changes. The current and voltage are both negative, so their product P is positive, energy is absorbed 3 4 current I decreases and reaches its zero value at 4 when core is demagnetized and flux is zero, the voltage is positive but the current is negative, the power is. Therefore, negative, energy absorbed during the cycle 2 3 is returned to the source, figure 7.7 .7 magnetization and demagnetization of an inductor. 241 alternating current 7.5 AC voltage applied to a capacitor figure 7.8 shows an AC source Greek letter epsilon generating AC voltage VVM sin connected to a capacitor only, a purely capacitive AC circuit. When a capacitor is connected to a voltage source in a DC circuit, current will flow for the short time required to charge the capacitor. As charge accumulates on the capacitor plates, the voltage across them increases, opposing the current. That is, a capacitor in a DC circuit will limit or oppose the current as it charges. When the capacitor is fully charged, the current in the circuit falls to zero. When the capacitor is connected to an AC source, as in figure 7.8, it limits or regulates the current, but does not completely prevent the flow of charge. The capacitor is alternately charged and discharged as the current reverses each half cycle. Let Q be the charge on the capacitor at any time T. 
The instantaneous voltage V across the capacitor is QVC 7.15 from the Kirchhoff's loop rule. The voltage across the source and the capacitor are equal, sin QVTC Greek letter omega to find the current. We use the relation DDQITDD sin cos m e v c t c v t t Greek letter omega Greek letter omega Greek letter omega using the relation cos sin t Greek letter pi 2. We have IITM sin Greek letter omega Greek letter pi 2 7.16 where the amplitude of the oscillating current is m Greek letter omega CVM. We can rewrite it as 1 mmv i.e. comparing it to mvmr for a purely resistive circuit. We find that 1e plays the role of resistance. It is called capacitive reactance and is denoted by xc, xc 1e 7.17 so that the amplitude of the current is mmcvi x 7.18 figure 7.8 an ac source connected to a capacitor. Physics 242 figure 7.9 a phasor diagram for the circuit in figure 7.8 b graph of v and i versus the dimension of capacitive reactance is the same as that of resistance and its SI unit is ohm Greek letter omega. The capacitive reactance limits the amplitude of the current in a purely capacitive circuit in the same way as the resistance limits the current in a purely resistive circuit. But it is inversely proportional to the frequency and the capacitance. A comparison of X7.16 with the equation of source voltage, X7.1 shows that the current is Greek letter pi 2 ahead of voltage. Figure 7.9a shows the phasor diagram at an instant T1. Here the current phasor I is Greek letter pi 2 ahead of the voltage phasor V as they rotate counterclockwise. Figure 7.9b shows the variation of voltage and current with time. We see that the current reaches its maximum value earlier than the voltage by one-fourth of a period. The instantaneous power supplied to the capacitor is PCIV and cost VM sint and cost sint sint 2 2 meters mv 7.19 so. As in the case of an inductor. The average power sin 2 sin 2 0 2 2 meters mmmc iv iv pt greek letter omega sin sin 2 0 over a complete cycle. Figure 7.10 explains it in detail. Thus, we see that in the case of an inductor, the current lags the voltage by greek letter pi 2 and in the case of a capacitor, the current leads the voltage by greek letter pi 2. Example 7.3a lamp is connected in series with a capacitor. Predict your observations for DC and AC connections. What happens in each case if the capacitance of the capacitor is reduced solution when a DC source is connected to a capacitor? The capacitor gets charged and after charging no current flows in the circuit and the lamp will not glow. There will be no change even if C is reduced. With AC source, the capacitor offers capacitive reactance 1E and the current flows in the circuit. Consequently, the lamp will shine. Reducing C will increase reactance and the lamp will shine less brightly than before. Example 7.4A 15.0 microth capacitor is connected to a 220V, 50 Hz source. Find the capacitive reactance and the current RMS and peak in the circuit. If the frequency is doubled, what happens to the capacitive reactance and the current solution? The capacitive reactance is F611, 212, 2, 2, 50 Hz 15.010 CXE Greek letter omega Greek letter pi Greek letter pi X. The RMS current is example 7.4, example 7.3. 243 alternating current 0 1 the current I flows as shown and from the maximum at 0, reaches a 0 value at 1. The plate A is charged to positive polarity while negative charge Q builds up and B reaching a maximum at 1 until the current becomes 0. The voltage VCQC is in phase with Q and reaches maximum value at 1, current and voltage are both positive. So PVC is positive, energy is absorbed from the source during this quarter cycle as the capacitor is charged onto the current I reverses its direction, the accumulated charge is depleted that is. The capacitor is discharged during this quarter cycle the voltage gets reduced but is still positive. The current is negative, their product, the power is negative, the energy absorbed during the 1-4 cycle 0-1 is returned during this quarter. One complete cycle of voltage current. Note that the current leads the voltage to 3 as I continues to flow from A to B. The capacitor is charged to reverse polarity that is, the plate B acquires positive and A acquires negative charge. Both the current and the voltage are negative, their product P is positive. The capacitor absorbs energy during this 1-4 cycle. 3 for the current I reverses its direction at 3 and flows from B to A. The accumulated charge is depleted and the magnitude of the voltage VC is reduced. VC becomes 0 at 4 when the capacitor is fully discharged. The power is negative energy absorbed during 2-3 is returned to the source. NET energy absorbed is 0. Figure 7.10 charging and discharging of a capacitor.
244 example 7.5 example 7.4 VA 221.04212 CVIX Greek letter Omega the peak current is 21.411.041.47 miles IAA this current oscillates between 1.47A and minus 1.47A and is ahead of the voltage by Greek letter Pi 2. If the frequency is doubled, the capacitive reactance is halved and consequently, the current is doubled. Example 7.5 A light bulb and an open coil inductor are connected to an AC source through a key as shown in Fig. 7.11 Figure 7.11 The switch is closed and after some time, an iron rod is inserted into the interior of the inductor. The glow of the light bulb A increases, B decreases, C is unchanged, as the iron rod is inserted. Give your answer with reasons. Solution as the iron rod is inserted, the magnetic field inside the coil magnetizes the iron increasing the magnetic field inside it. Hence, the inductance of the coil increases. Consequently, the inductive reactance of the coil increases. As a result, a larger fraction of the applied AC voltage appears across the inductor, leaving less voltage across the bulb. Therefore, the glow of the light bulb decreases 7.6 AC voltage applied to a series LCR circuit figure 7.12 shows a series LCR circuit connected to an AC source Greek letter epsilon. As usual, we take the voltage of the source to be BVM synth, if Q is the charge on the capacitor and I the current. At time T, we have, from Kirchhoff's loop rule, DDIQLIRVTC 7.20 we want to determine the instantaneous current I and its phase relationship to the applied alternating voltage V. We shall solve this problem by two methods, first, we use the technique of phasers and in the second method, we solve X. 7.20 analytically to obtain the time dependence of I figure 7.12 A series LCR circuit connected to an AC source. 245 alternating current 7, 6, 1 phasor diagram solution from the circuit shown in figure 7.12, we see that the resistor, inductor and capacitor are in series. Therefore, the AC current in each element is the same at any time, having the same amplitude and phase. Let it be I am sent Greek letter phi 7.21 where Greek letter phi is the phase difference between the voltage across the source and the current in the circuit. On the basis of what we have learned in the previous sections, we shall construct a phasor diagram for the present case. Let I be the phasor representing the current in the circuit as given by X7.21. Further, let VL, VR, VC, and V represent the voltage across the inductor, resistor, capacitor and the source, respectively. From previous section, we know that VR is parallel to I, VC is Greek letter pi 2 behind I and VL is Greek letter pi 2 ahead of I VL. VR, VC and I are shown in figure 7.13 or with appropriate phase relations, the length of these phasors are the amplitude of VR. VC and VL are, VR MMR, VC MMXC. VL MMXL 7.22 The voltage equation 7.20 for the circuit can be written as VL VR VC V 7.23 The phasor relation whose vertical component gives the above equation is VL VR VC V 7.24 This relation is represented in Fig. 7.13b Since VC and VL are always along the same line and in opposite directions, they can be combined into a single phasor VC VL which has a magnitude VCM, VLM. Since V is represented as the hypotenuse of a right triangle whose sides are VR and VCVL, the Pythagorean theorem gives 22 2 meters RM CMLM VVVV substituting the values of VRM, VCM, and VLM from EC. 7.22 into the above equation, we have 2 2 2 MMM CML VIR IX IX IRX XMCL 2 2 2 R. 2 2 mm CLV IRXX 7.25 A by analogy to the resistance in a circuit, we introduce the impedance in an AC circuit, MMVIC 7.25 Beware 2 2 CLZ RXX 7.26 Figure 7.13 A relation between the phasors VL, VR, VC, and I, B relation between the phasors VL, VR, and VL VC for the circuit in FIG. 7.11 Physics 246 Since phasor I is always parallel to phasor VR, the phase angle Greek letter phi is the angle between VR and V and can be determined from Fig. 7.14, tan C M L M R M V V V Greek letter phi using X7.22, we have tan C 60 X R Greek letter phi 7.27 equations 7.26 and 7.27 are graphically shown in Fig. 7.14, this is called impedance diagram which is a right triangle with Z as its hypotenuse, equation 7.25A gives the amplitude of the current and X. 7.27 gives the phase angle, with these, X7.21 is completely specified, if XC, XL, Greek letter phi is positive and the circuit is predominantly capacitive. 
Consequently, the current in the circuit eats the source voltage. If XC, XL, Greek letter phi is negative and the circuit is predominantly inductive. Consequently, the current in the circuit lags the source voltage. Figure 7.15 shows the phasor diagram and variation of V and I with Greek letter omega T for the case XC, XL. Thus, we have obtained the amplitude and phase of current for an LCR series circuit using the technique of phasors. But this method of analyzing AC circuits suffers from certain disadvantages. First, the phasor diagrams say nothing about the initial condition. One can take any arbitrary value of T say, T1, as done throughout this chapter and draw different phasors which show the relative angle between different phasors. The solution so obtained is called a steady state solution. This is not a general solution. Additionally, we do have a transient solution which exists even for V0. The general solution is the sum of the transient solution and the steady state solution. After a sufficiently long time, the effects of the transient solution die out and the behavior of the circuit is described by the steady state solution. 7. 6. 2. Analytical solution The voltage equation for the circuit is DDIQL VTCVM since we know that I DQ DT. Therefore, DDT D2 QDT2. Thus, in terms of Q, the voltage equation becomes figure 7.14 impedance diagram. Figure 7.15 A phasor diagram of V and I B graphs of V and I versus Greek letter omega T for a series LCR circuit where XC, XL. 247 alternating current 2 2 dd sin d d m q q q l r v t t c t greek letter omega 7.28 this is like the equation for a forced damped oscillator cac 14.37 b in class psi physics textbook let us assume a solution q q m sin greek letter omega t greek letter theta 7.29 a so that d cos d m q q t t greek letter omega greek letter omega greek letter theta 7.29 b and 2 2 2 d sin d m q q t t greek letter omega greek letter omega greek letter theta 7.29 c substituting these values in ac 7.28 we get cos sin m c l q r t x x greek letter omega greek letter theta greek letter omega greek letter theta sin 7.30 where we have used the relation x c 1 e x l greek letter omega l multiplying and dividing x 7.30 by 22 c l z r x x we have q z r z t x x z t m c l greek letter omega greek letter theta greek letter omega cos sin sin 7.31 now let cos rz greek letter phi and sync 60x z greek letter phi so that one tan c 60x r greek letter phi 7.32 substituting this in ac 7.31 and simplifying we get cos sin mem q z t b greek letter omega greek letter theta greek letter phi greek letter omega 7.33 comparing the two sides of this equation we see that mmm v q z i where m e q greek letter omega 7.33 and 2 greek letter theta greek letter phi greek letter pi or 2 greek letter theta greek letter phi greek letter pi 7.33 b therefore the current in the circuit is dd cos m q i q t t greek letter omega greek letter omega greek letter theta and cos greek letter theta or i m sin greek letter phi 7.34 where 2 to m m m c l v d i z r x x 7.34 and 1 tan c 60 x r greek letter phi Physics 248 Thus, the analytical solution for the amplitude and phase of the current in the circuit agrees with that obtained by the technique of phasors. 7. 6. 3. Resonance An interesting characteristic of the series RLC circuit is the phenomenon of resonance. The phenomenon of resonance is common among systems that have a tendency to oscillate at a particular frequency. This frequency is called the system's natural frequency. If such a system is driven by an energy source at a frequency that is near the natural frequency, the amplitude of oscillation is found to be large. A familiar example of this phenomenon is a child on a swing. The swing has a natural frequency for swinging back and forth like a pendulum. If the child pulls on the rope at regular intervals and the frequency of the pulse is almost the same as the frequency of swinging, the amplitude of the swinging will be large. Chapter 14, Class I for an RLC circuit driven with voltage of amplitude Vm and frequency Greek letter omega. We found that the current amplitude is given by 2 to mmmcl vdizrxx with xc1e and xl Greek letter omega l so if Greek letter omega is varied. Then at a particular frequency Greek letter omega 0, xcxl, and the impedance is minimum 220 zrr, this frequency is called the resonant frequency, 001 or 60 xlc Greek letter omega Greek letter omega or 01 lc Greek letter omega 7.35 at resonant frequency. The current amplitude is maximum, in VMR figure 7.16 shows the variation of in with Greek letter omega in RLC series circuit with L1.00 mh. C1.00 and F for two values of R, IR100 Greek letter omega and to R200 Greek letter omega, for the source applied VM100V. 
Creek letter omega 0 for this case is 1 LC 1.00 X 106 red as we see that the current amplitude is maximum at the resonant frequency. Since MVM are at resonance, the current amplitude for case I is twice to that for case 2. Resonant circuits have a variety of applications, for example, in the tuning mechanism of a radio or a TV set. The antenna of a radio accepts signals from many broadcasting stations. The signals picked up in the antenna acts as a source in the tuning circuit of the radio, so the circuit can be driven at many frequencies. Figure 7.16 variation of in with Greek letter omega for two cases, IR100 Greek letter omega, 2R200 Greek letter omega, L1.00 MH. 249 alternating current but to hear one particular radio station, we tune the radio, in tuning, we vary the capacitance of a capacitor in the tuning circuit such that the resonant frequency of the circuit becomes nearly equal to the frequency of the radio signal received. When this happens, the amplitude of the current with the frequency of the signal of the particular radio station in the circuit is maximum. It is important to note that resonance phenomenon is exhibited by a circuit only if both L and C are present in the circuit. Only then do the voltages across L and C cancel each other both being out of phase and the current amplitude is VMR. The total source voltage appearing across R this means that we cannot have resonance in our L or RC circuit. Sharpness of resonance the amplitude of the current in the series LCR circuit is given by IVRLC MM221 Greek letter omega Greek letter omega and is maximum when 0 1 dot LE Greek letter omega the maximum value is max MEVR. For values of Greek letter omega other than Greek letter omega 0, the amplitude of the current is less than the maximum value. Suppose we choose a value of Greek letter omega for which the current amplitude is 1 2 times its maximum value. At this value, the power dissipated by the circuit becomes half. From the curve in Fig 7.16, we see that there are two such values of Greek letter omega, say, Greek letter omega 1 and Greek letter omega 2, one greater and the other smaller than Greek letter omega 0 and symmetrical about Greek letter omega 0. We may write Greek letter omega and Greek letter omega zero Greek letter omega Greek letter omega to Greek letter omega zero Greek letter omega the difference Greek letter omega and Greek letter omega to two Greek letter omega is often called the bandwidth of the circuit. The quantity Greek letter omega zero two Greek letter omega is regarded as a measure of the sharpness of resonance. The smaller the Greek letter omega, the sharper or narrower is the resonance. To get an expression for Greek letter omega, we note that the current amplitude M is max one two miles for Greek letter omega and Greek letter omega zero Greek letter omega. Therefore, at Greek letter omega 1 2 1 1 2 1, IVRLC MM Greek letter omega Greek letter omega max 2 2 meters me VR. 250 or RLC R to 1 1 2 1 2 Greek letter omega Greek letter omega or RLC R to 1 1 2 20 1 2 Greek letter omega Greek letter omega 1 1 1 LRC Greek letter omega Greek letter omega which may be written as 001 LRC Greek letter Omega 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 0000111 LCR using 201 LC Greek letter Omega in the second term on the left hand side. We get Greek letter Omega 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 0000111 LLR we can approximate 101 Greek letter Omega Greek letter Omega as 10 Greek letter Omega Greek letter Omega since 0 Greek letter Omega Greek letter Omega 1. Therefore, Greek letter Omega 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 0 0 0 0 1 1 L L R R 0 0 2 L R Greek letter Omega Greek letter Omega Greek letter Omega 2 R L Greek letter Omega 7.36 at the sharpness of resonance is given by 0 0 2 L R Greek letter Omega Greek letter Omega Greek letter Omega 7.36 B the ratio 0 L R Greek letter Omega is also called the quality factor Q of the circuit. 0 LQR Greek letter Omega 7.36 C from EQS 7.36 B and 7.36 C. We see that 0 2 Q Greek letter Omega Greek letter Omega. So, larger the 251 alternating current example 7.6 value of Q. The smaller is the value of 2 Greek letter Omega or the bandwidth and sharper is the resonance. Using 201 LE, X 7.36 C can be equivalently expressed as Q1 Greek letter Omega 0 CR. We see from figure 7.15 that if the resonance is less sharp, not only is the maximum current less, the circuit is cursed to resonance for a larger range Greek letter omega of frequencies and the tuning of the circuit will not be good. So, less sharp the resonance, less is the selectivity of the circuit or vice versa. From X7.36, we see that if quality factor is large, that is, R is lower L is large, the circuit is more selective. 
Example 7.6A resistor of 200 Greek letter omega and a capacitor of 15.0 microth are connected in series to a 220V, 50 Hz AC source. A calculate the current in the circuit, V calculate the voltage RMS across the resistor and the capacitor. Is the algebraic sum of these voltages more than the source voltage? If yes, resolve the paradox. Solution given F6200, 15.0 C Greek letter omega micro X 220V. 50 HCV Greek letter new in order to calculate the current, we need the impedance of the circuit. It is 22222CZRXREF262203.1450 15.010 Greek letter Omega XXXX22212.3 Greek letter Omega Greek letter Omega 291.67 Greek letter Omega therefore. The current in the circuit is V220.755 A291.5 VIZ Greek letter Omega B since the current is the same throughout the circuit. We have 0.755 A21051 VRVIR Greek letter Omega 0.755 A212.3 160.3 VCC VIX Greek letter Omega The algebraic sum of the two voltages. VR and VC is 311.3 V which is more than the source voltage of 220 V. How to resolve this paradox as you have learned in the text? The two voltages are not in the same phase, therefore, they cannot be added like ordinary numbers. The two voltages are out of phase by 90 degrees, therefore, the total of these voltages must be obtained using the Pythagorean theorem, 2 to RCRCVVV 220V thus. If the phase difference between two voltages is properly taken into account, the total voltage across the resistor and the capacitor is equal to the voltage of the source. Physics 252 Example 7.77.7 Power in AC Circuit The power factor we have seen that a voltage VVM sint applied to a series RLC circuit drives a current in the circuit given by IM sint Greek letter phi where MMVIZ and Greek letter phi tan 1 XXRCL therefore, the instantaneous power P supplied by the source is sint sin MMPVIVT Greek letter omega Greek letter phi X cos cos 2 2 meters MVI Greek letter omega Greek letter phi 7.37 The average power over a cycle is given by the average of the two terms in RHS of x 7.37, it is only the second term which is time dependent, its average is zero the positive half of the cosine cancels the negative half. Therefore, cos 2 meters mvip greek letter phi cos 2 2 meters mvi greek letter phi cos by greek letter phi 7.38 this can also be written as 2 cos by z greek letter phi 7.38 b so, the average power dissipated depends not only on the voltage and current but also on the cosine of the phase angle greek letter phi between them. The quantity cost is called the power factor. Let us discuss the following cases. Case a resistive circuit. If the circuit contains only pure R, it is called resistive. In that case Greek letter phi 0, cos Greek letter phi 1, there is maximum power dissipation. Case 2 purely inductive or capacitive circuit. If the circuit contains only an inductor or capacitor, we know that the phase difference between voltage and current is Greek letter pi 2. Therefore, cos Greek letter phi 0, and no power is dissipated even though a current is flowing in the circuit. This current is sometimes referred to as wetless current. Case 3 LCR series circuit. In an LCR series circuit, power dissipated is given by X7.38 where Greek letter phi tan 1 XC, XLR so. Greek letter phi may be non-zero in RL or RC or RCL circuit. Even in such cases, power is dissipated only in the resistor. Case I've power dissipated at resonance in LCR circuit, at resonance XC, XL0, and Greek letter phi 0, therefore, Cos 1 and PI to ZI2 are that is, maximum power is dissipated in a circuit through R at resonance. Example 7.7 If for circuits used for transporting electric power, a low power factor implies large power loss in transmission. Explain B power factor can often be improved by the use of a capacitor of appropriate capacitance in the circuit. Explain. 253 Alternating Current Example 7.7 Solution We know that PIV cos where cos is the power factor. To supply a given power at a given voltage, if cos is small, we have to increase current accordingly. But this will lead to large power loss I2R in transmission B. Suppose in a circuit, current I lags the voltage by an angle Greek letter phi. Then power factor cos RZ we can improve the power factor tending to 1 by making Z tend to R let us understand. With the help of a phasor diagram figure 7.17 how this can be achieved, let us resolve I into two components. If along the applied voltage V and I perpendicular to the applied voltage, I as you have learned in section 7.7, is called the wattless component since corresponding to this component of current, there is no power loss. IP is known as the power component because it is in phase with the voltage and corresponds to power loss in the circuit. 
It's clear from this analysis that if we want to improve power factor, we must completely neutralize the lagging wetless current Ike by an equal leading wetless current Ike. This can be done by connecting a capacitor of appropriate value in parallel so that Ike and Ike cancel each other and P is effectively at V. Example 7.8 A sinusoidal voltage of peak value 283 V and frequency 50 Hz is applied to a series LCR circuit in which R3 Greek letter omega L25.48 mH and C796 micrinf. Find the impedance of the circuit, B the phase difference between the voltage across the source and the current, C the power dissipated in the circuit, and D the power factor. Solution to find the impedance of the circuit, we first calculate XL and XC, XL2L2 X3.14 X50 X25.48 X10-3 Greek letter Omega 8 Greek letter Omega 1 2 C X C Greek letter Pi figure 7.17 example 7.8. 254 example 7.961423.1450796 Greek letter Omega XXXX therefore 222384LCZRXX5 Greek letter Omega B phase difference Greek letter Phi tan 1C 60XR degrees tan point one four eight three fifty three one since Greek letter Phi is negative the current in the circuit lags the voltage across the source see the power dissipated in the circuit is 2PIR now I and 2 1 2 2 8 3 5 Four zero a therefore a W two forty three four thousand eight hundred px Greek letter omega d power factor cos cos minus fifty three dot one zero point six Greek letter phi degrees example seven point nine suppose the frequency of the source in the previous example can be varied a what is the frequency of the source at which resonance occurs b calculate the impedance the current and the power dissipated at the resonant condition. Solution at the frequency at which the resonance occurs is 0361125.481076 LC Greek letter Omega XXX 222.1 Red S0 221.1 Hz 35.4 Hz 223.14 R Greek letter Omega Greek letter New Greek letter Pi XB The impedance C at resonant condition is equal to the resistance. 3ZR Greek letter Omega The RMS current at resonance is VCVR 283213667. The power dissipated at resonance is 2266.7313.35 kWPIRXX. You can see that in the present case, power dissipated at resonance is more than the power dissipated in example 7.8. Example 7.8. 255 alternating current example 7.10. Example 7.10 at an airport, a person is made to walk through the doorway of a metal detector for security reasons. If she he is carrying anything made of metal, the metal detector emits a sound. On what principle does this detector work solution? The metal detector works on the principle of resonance in AC circuits. When you walk through a metal detector, you are, in fact, walking through a coil of many turns. The coil is connected to a capacitor tune so that the circuit is in resonance. When you walk through with metal in your pocket, the impedance of the circuit changes, resulting in significant change in current in the circuit. This change in current is detected and the electronic circuitry causes a sound to be emitted as an alarm. 7.8 LC oscillations We know that a capacitor and an inductor can store electrical and magnetic energy, respectively. When a capacitor initially charged is connected to an inductor, the charge on the capacitor and the current in the circuit exhibit the phenomenon of electrical oscillations similar to oscillations in mechanical systems Chapter 14, Class I. Let a capacitor be charged QM at T0 and connected to an inductor as shown in figure 7.18. The moment the circuit is completed, the charge on the capacitor starts decreasing, giving rise to current in the circuit. Let Q and I be the charge and current in the circuit at time T. Since DDT is positive, the induced CMF in L will have polarity as shown, that is, VB, V. According to Kirchhoff's loop rule, D0 DQ ILC T7.39 I DQ DT in the present case as Q decreases, I increases. Therefore, X7.39 becomes 22D10 DQQLC T7.40. This equation has the form 2202D0 DXXT Greek letter omega for a simple harmonic oscillator. The charge on the capacitor. Therefore, oscillates with a natural frequency 01 LC Greek letter omega 7.41 and varies sinusoidally with time as 0 cosmic Q Greek letter phi 7.42 where QM is the maximum value of Q and Greek letter phi is a phase constant. Since QQM at T0, we have cos Greek letter phi 1 R Greek letter phi 0, therefore, in the present case, figure 7.18 at the instant shown, the current is increasing, so the polarity of induced EMF in the inductor is as shown. 
Physics 256 0 cos MQ cute 7.43 The current IQ TDD is given by 0 sin me 7.44 where 0 meters meek let us now try to visualize how this oscillation takes place in the circuit. Figure 7.19 shows a capacitor with initial charge QM connected to an ideal inductor. The electrical energy stored in the charged capacitor is 21 2 meters EQUC. Since, there is no current in the circuit, energy in the inductor is zero. Thus, the total energy of LC circuit is, 21 2 meters EQUUC figure 7.19 The oscillations in an LC circuit are analogous to the oscillation of a block at the end of a spring. The figure depicts one half of a cycle, at T0, the switch is closed and the capacitor starts to discharge FIG. 7.19b, as the current increases, it sets up a magnetic field in the inductor and thereby, some energy gets stored in the inductor in the form of magnetic energy, UB12 lead 2. As the current reaches its maximum value M, at TT4 as in figure 7.19c, all the energy is stored in the magnetic field, UB12 lead 2 meters. You can easily check that the maximum electrical energy equals the maximum magnetic energy, the capacitor now has no charge and hence no energy. The current now starts charging the capacitor, as in figure 7.19d, this process continues till the capacitor is fully charged at TT2 fig. 7.19e, but it is charged with a polarity opposite to its initial state in figure 7.19a, the whole process just described will now repeat itself till the system reverts to its original state. Thus, the energy in the system oscillates between the capacitor and the inductor. 257 Alternating current The LC oscillation is similar to the mechanical oscillation of a block attached to a spring. The lower part of each figure in figure 7.19 depicts the corresponding stage of the mechanical system a block attached to a spring. As noted earlier, for a block of the mass M oscillating with frequency Greek letter omega 0, the equation is 2220D0DXXT Greek letter omega here, 0 came, and K is the spring constant. So, X corresponds to Q in case of a mechanical system F my MDV DT MD2 X DT2, for an electrical system, Greek letter epsilon L D D T L D2 Q D T2. Comparing these two equations, we see that L is analogous to mass M, L is a measure of resistance to change in current. In case of LC circuit, 0 1 looking for mass on a spring, 0 K, so, 1 C is analogous to K. The constant Kfx tells us the external force required to produce a unit displacement whereas 1 CVQ tells us the potential difference required to store a unit charge. Table 7.1 gives the analogy between mechanical and electrical quantities. Table 7.1 analogies between mechanical and electrical quantities mechanical system electrical system mass m inductance l force constant k reciprocal capacitance 1 c displacement x charge q velocity v dx dt current i dq dt mechanical energy electromagnetic energy 221122 ekx mv 221122 qulic note that the above discussion of lc oscillations is not realistic for two reasons i every inductor has some resistance the effect of this resistance is to introduce a damping effect on the charge and current in the circuit and the oscillations finally die away. To even if the resistance were zero, the total energy of the system would not remain constant, it is radiated away from the system in the form of electromagnetic waves discussed in the next chapter. In fact, radio and TV transmitters depend on this radiation. Two different phenomena, same mathematical treatment you may like to compare the treatment of a force damped oscillator discussed in section 14.10 of class Psi physics textbook. With that of an LCR circuit when an AC voltage is applied in it, we have already remarked that EC 14.37B of class Psi textbook is exactly similar to EC 7.28 here, although they use different symbols and parameters. Let us therefore list the equivalence between different quantities in the two situations. Forced oscillations driven LCR circuit cost 2 d 2 dx dx m b k x f d t d t t 2 2 d d sin d d m q q q l r v t t c t greek letter omega displacement x charge on capacitor q time t time t mass m self inductance l damping constant b resistance r spring constant k inverse capacitance 1 c driving frequency driving frequency Greek letter omega natural frequency of oscillations, Greek letter omega natural frequency of LCR circuit, Greek letter omega zero amplitude of forced oscillations, A maximum charge stored, QM amplitude of driving force, F zero amplitude of applied voltage, VM you must note that since X corresponds to Q, the amplitude A maximum displacement will correspond to the maximum charge stored, QM.
Equation 14.39 of class Psi gives the amplitude of oscillations in terms of other parameters, which we reproduce here for convenience. 0 1 2 2 2 2 2 2 2, 2 DDFA and Greek letter Omega Greek letter Omega replace each parameter in the above equation by the corresponding electrical quantity. And see what happens. Eliminate L, C, Greek letter Omega, and Greek letter Omega 0, using XLL, XC1E and Greek letter Omega 021 LC, when you use EQS 7.33 and 7.34. You will see that there is a perfect match. You will come across numerous such situations in physics where diverse physical phenomena are represented by the same mathematical equation. If you have dealt with one of them, and you come across another situation, you may simply replace the corresponding quantities and interpret the result in the new context. We suggest that you may try to find more such parallel situations from different areas of physics. One must, of course, be aware of the differences too. 259 Alternating Current Example 7.11 Example 7.11 show that in the free oscillations of an LC circuit, the sum of energy stored in the capacitor and the inductor is constant in time. Solution Let Q0 be the initial charge on a capacitor. Let the charged capacitor be connected to an inductor of inductance L as you have studied in section 7.8. This LC circuit will sustain an oscillation with frequency Greek letter omega 2 1 Greek letter pi Greek letter nu LC at an instant t. Charge Q on the capacitor and the current I are given by QTQ0 cos Greek letter omega TITQ0 Greek letter omega sin Greek letter omega T energy stored in the capacitor at time t is 22 to 201 1 2 2 2 EQ QUC V cos TCC Greek letter omega energy stored in the inductor at time t is 21 2 mu LI 2 2 2 0 1 sin 2 LQ Greek letter omega 2 20 sin 1 2 Greek letter omega Greek letter omega QTLCC sum of energies 2 to 20 cos sin 2 EMQUUTTC Greek letter omega Greek letter omega 2 0 2 QC this sum is constant in time as COA and C, both are time independent. Note that it is equal to the initial energy of the capacitor, why it is so think 7.9 transformers for many purposes, it is necessary to change or transform an alternating voltage from one to another of greater or smaller value. This is done with a device called transformer using the principle of mutual induction. A transformer consists of two sets of coils, insulated from each other. They are wound on a soft iron core, either one on top of the other as in figure 7.20 or on separate limbs of the core as in fig. 7.20b, one of the coils called the primary coil has NP turns, the other coil is called the secondary coil, it has N's turns. Often the primary coil is the input coil and the secondary coil is the output coil of the transformer. Physics 260 When an alternating voltage is applied to the primary, the resulting current produces an alternating magnetic flux which links the secondary and induces an EMF in it. The value of this EMF depends on the number of turns in the secondary. We consider an ideal transformer in which the primary has negligible resistance and all the flux in the core links both primary and secondary windings. Let Greek letter phi be the flux in each turn in the core at time t due to current in the primary when a voltage VP is applied to it. Then the induced EMF or voltage in the secondary with n's turns is DDSSNT Greek letter phi Greek letter epsilon 7.45 The alternating flux Greek letter phi also induces an EMF, called back EMF in the primary. This is DDPPNT Greek letter phi Greek letter epsilon 7.46 but VP, if this were not so, the primary current would be infinite since the primary has zero resistance as assumed. If the secondary is an open circuit or the current taken from it is small, then to a good approximations versus where versus is the voltage across the secondary. Therefore, EQS 7.45 and 7.46 can be written as SSDVNDT Greek letter phi 7.45 a PPDVNDT Greek letter phi 7.46 a from EQS. 7.45 a and 7.46 a, we have SSPPVN VN 7.47 figure 7.202 arrangements for winding of primary and secondary coil in a transformer, a two coils on top of each other. B2 coils on separate limbs of the core. 261 alternating current note that the above relation has been obtained using three assumptions, I the primary resistance and current are small, 2 the same flux links both the primary and the secondary as very little flux escapes from the core, and 3 the secondary current is small. If the transformer is assumed to be 100 efficient no energy losses, the power input is equal to the power output. And since PIV, I by SV 7.48 although some energy is always lost, this is a good approximation, since a well-designed transformer may have an efficiency of more than 95. Combining EQS 7.47 and 7.48,
We have PSSS PPIV and IV and 7.49 since IMV both oscillate with the same frequency as the AC source, EC. 7.49 also gives the ratio of the amplitudes or RMS values of corresponding quantities. Now, we can see how a transformer affects the voltage and current. We have VNN versus SPP and INN is PSP 7.50 that is. If the secondary coil has a greater number of turns than the primary ends, NP, the voltage is stepped up versus DP. This type of arrangement is called a step-up transformer. However, in this arrangement, there is less current in the secondary than in the primary NP ends, 1 and is IP. For example, if the primary coil of a transformer has 100 turns and the secondary has 200 turns, ends NP2 and NP ends 1 2. Thus, a 220V input at 10A will step up to 440V output at 5.0A if the secondary coil has less turns than the primary ends, NP. We have a step-down transformer, in this case, versus, VP and ZIP, that is, the voltage is stepped down, or reduced, and the current is increased. The equations obtained above apply to ideal transformers without any energy losses, but in actual transformers. Small energy losses do occur due to the following reasons. I flux leakage. There is always some flux leakage, that is. Not all of the flux due to primary passes through the secondary due to poor design of the core or the air gaps in the core. It can be reduced by winding the primary and secondary coils one over the other two resistance of the windings. The wire used for the windings has some resistance and so, energy is lost due to heat produced in the wire I2R. In high current, low voltage windings, these are minimized by using thick wire 3 eddy currents. The alternating magnetic flux induces eddy currents in the iron core and causes heating. The effect is reduced by using a laminated core I hysteresis. The magnetization of the core is repeatedly reversed by the alternating magnetic field. The resulting expenditure of energy in the core appears as heat and is kept to a minimum by using a magnetic material which has a low hysteresis loss. Physics 260 to the large-scale transmission and distribution of electrical energy over long distances is done with the use of transformers. The voltage output of the generator is stepped up so the current is reduced and consequently, the I2R loss is cut down. It is then transmitted over long distances to an area substation near the consumers, there the voltage is stepped down. It is further stepped down at distributing substations and utility poles before a power supply of 240V reaches our homes. Summary 1. An alternating voltage synth VT applied to a resistor R drives a current IM synth in the resistor, MMVIR. The current is in phase with the applied voltage 2, for an alternating current IM synth passing through a resistor R. The average power loss P averaged over a cycle due to joule heating is 1 2 I 2 Mr. 2 express it in the same form as the DC power P I 2 R. A special value of current is used, it is called root mean square RMS current and is denoted by I, 0.7072 meters MIII. Similarly, the RMS voltage is defined by 0.7072 meters MVVV. We have PIVI 2 R3. An AC voltage VVM synth applied to a pure inductor L, drives a current in the inductor IM synth creek letter Pi 2. Where MVM XL, XL is called inductive reactance, the current in the inductor lags the voltage by Greek letter Pi 2. The average power supplied to an inductor over one complete cycle is 04. An AC voltage VVM synth applied to a capacitor drives a current in the capacitor. I am synth creek letter pi 2. Here, 1, MMCCVIXXE is called capacitive reactance. The current through the capacitor is greek letter pi 2 ahead of the applied voltage. As in the case of inductor, the average power supplied to a capacitor over one complete cycle is 0. 5. For a series RLC circuit driven by voltage VVM synth, the current is given by IM synth Greek letter phi where 22 meters MCLVIRXX and 110 C60XR Greek letter phi 22 CLZRXX is called the impedance of the circuit. 263 Alternating current The average power loss over a complete cycle is given by PVI cost the term cost is called the power factor. 6. In a purely inductive or capacitive circuit, cost zero and no power is dissipated even though a current is flowing in the circuit. In such cases, current is referred to as a wattless current 7. The phase relationship between current and voltage in an AC circuit can be shown conveniently by representing voltage and current by rotating vectors called phasers. A phaser is a vector which rotates about the origin with angular speed Greek letter omega. The magnitude of a phaser represents the amplitude or peak value of the quantity voltage or current represented by the phaser. The analysis of an AC circuit is facilitated by the use of a phaser diagram 8. An interesting characteristic of a series RLC circuit is the phenomenon of resonance. The circuit exhibits resonance, that is, the amplitude of the current is maximum at the resonant frequency, 0 1 LC Greek letter omega. 
The quality factor Q defined by 0 LQR Greek letter omega 0 1 Q is an indicator of the sharpness of the resonance, the higher value of Q indicating sharper peak in the current. 9. A circuit containing an inductor L and a capacitor C initially charged with no AC source and no resistors exhibits free oscillations. The charge Q of the capacitor satisfies the equation of simple harmonic motion, 2 2 D 1 0 Q Q L C D T and therefore, the frequency Greek letter omega of free oscillation is 0 1 L C Greek letter omega. The energy in the system oscillates between the capacitor and the inductor but their sum or the total energy is constant in time. 10. A transformer consists of an iron core on which are bound a primary coil of NP turns and a secondary coil of N's turns. If the primary coil is connected to an AC source, the primary and secondary voltages are related by VNN versus SPP and the currents are related by INN as PSP. If the secondary coil has a greater number of turns than the primary, the voltage is stepped up versus DP. This type of arrangement is called a step-up transformer. If the secondary coil has turns less than the primary, we have a step-down transformer. 264 Physical Quantity Symbol Dimensions Unit Remarks RMS Voltage VML 2 T3 A1 VV to MV. VM is the amplitude of the AC voltage. RMS Current IAAI 2 miles. M is the amplitude of the AC current. Reactance. Inductive XL ML 2 T3 A2 XL L Capacitive XC ML 2 T3 A2 XC1 E Impedance C ML 2 T3 A2 depends on elements present in the circuit. Resonant mer Greek letter omega 0 D1 Hertz Greek letter omega 0 LC1 for a frequency series RLC circuit quality factor Q dimensionless 0 0 1 LQ RCR Greek letter omega Greek letter omega for a series RLC circuit. Power factor dimensionless cos Greek letter phi is the phase difference between voltage applied and current in the circuit. Points to ponder 1. When a value is given for AC voltage or current, it is ordinarily the RMS value. The voltage across the terminals of an outlet in your room is normally 240 V. This refers to the RMS value of the voltage. The amplitude of this voltage is V2 to 240 340 MV V2. The power rating of an element used in AC circuits refers to its average power rating. 3. The power consumed in an AC circuit is never negative 4. Both alternating current and direct current are measured in amperes. But how is the ampere defined for an alternating current? It cannot be derived from the mutual attraction of two parallel wires carrying AC currents, as the DC ampere is derived. An AC current changes direction. With the source frequency and the attractive force would average to zero. Thus, the AC ampere must be defined in terms of some property that is independent of the direction of the current. Joule heating is such a property. And there is one ampere of RMS value of alternating current in a circuit if the current produces the same average heating effect as one ampere of DC current would produce under the same conditions. 5. In an AC circuit, while adding voltages across different elements, one should take care of their phases properly. For example, if VR and VC are voltages across R and C, respectively in an RC circuit, then the total voltage across RC combination is 2 2 RC RC VVV and not VR VC since VC is Greek letter pi 2 out of phase of VR. 6. Though in a phasor diagram, voltage and current are represented by vectors, these quantities are not really vectors themselves. They are scalar quantities. It so happens that the amplitudes and phases of harmonically varying scalars combine mathematically in the same way as do the projections of rotating vectors of corresponding magnitudes and directions. The rotating vectors that represent harmonically varying scalar quantities are introduced only to provide us with a simple way of adding these quantities using a rule that we already know as the law of vector addition. 7. There are no power losses associated with pure capacitances and pure inductances in an AC circuit. The only element that dissipates energy in an AC circuit is the resistive element 8. In our LC circuit, resonance phenomenon occur when XLXC or 01 LC Greek letter omega. For resonance to occur, the presence of both L and C elements in the circuit is a must. With only one of these L or C elements, there is no possibility of voltage cancellation and hence, no resonance is possible. 9. The power factor in a RLC circuit is a measure of how close the circuit is to expending the maximum power. 10. In generators and motors, the roles of input and output are reversed. In a motor, electric energy is the input and mechanical energy is the output. In a generator, mechanical energy is the input and electric energy is the output. Both devices simply transform energy from one form to another. 11. A transformer step-up changes a low voltage into a high voltage. This does not violate the law of conservation of energy. The current is reduced by the same proportion 12. The choice of whether the description of an oscillatory motion is by means of sines or cosines or by their linear combinations is unimportant. Since changing the zero time position transforms the one to the other.
266 exercise of 7.1 A100 gray glitter omega resistor is connected to a 220V, 50 Hz AC supply and what is the RMS value of current in the circuit? B. What is the net power consumed over a full cycle 7.2 and the peak voltage of an AC supply is 300V? What is the RMS voltage? B. The RMS value of current in an AC circuit is 10A. What is the peak current 7.3A 44MH inductor is connected to 220V? 50 Hz AC supply. Determine the RMS value of the current in the circuit 7.4A 60 microth capacitor is connected to a 110V, 60 Hz AC supply. Determine the RMS value of the current in the circuit 7.5 in exercise of 7.3 and 7.4. What is the net power absorbed by each circuit over a complete cycle? Explain your answer 7.6 Obtain the resonant frequency of a series LCR circuit with L2.0H, C32 microth and R10 Greek letter omega. What is the Q value of this circuit? 7.7 A charged 30 microth capacitor is connected to a 27 mH inductor. What is the angular frequency of free oscillations of the circuit? 7.8 Suppose the initial charge on the capacitor in exercise 7.7 is 6 mc. What is the total energy stored in the circuit initially? What is the total energy at later time 7.9 A series LCR circuit with R20 Greek letter omega, L1.5H and C35 microth is connected to a variable frequency 200 VAC supply. When the frequency of the supply equals the natural frequency of the circuit, what is the average power transferred to the circuit in one complete cycle 7.10A radio can tune over the frequency range of a portion of MW broadcast band, 800 kHz to 1200 kHz. If its LC circuit has an effective inductance of 200 micra, what must be the range of its variable capacitor hint, for tuning? The natural frequency that is. The frequency of free oscillations of the LC circuit should be equal to the frequency of the radio wave 7.11 figure 7.21 shows a series LCR circuit connected to a variable frequency 230 V source. L5.0 H, C80 micraf, R40 Greek letter omega determine the source frequency which drives the circuit and resonance. We obtain the impedance of the circuit and the amplitude of current at the resonating frequency. C. Determine the RMS potential drops across the three elements of the circuit. Show that the potential drop across the LC combination is zero at the resonating frequency. Figure 7.21 267 Alternating current additional exercise of 7.12 An LC circuit contains a 20 mH inductor and a 50 microth capacitor with an initial charge of 10 mc. The resistance of the circuit is negligible. Let the instant the circuit is closed be T0 and what is the total energy stored initially? Is it conserved during LC oscillations B? What is the natural frequency of the circuit C? At what time is the energy stored I completely electrical that is? Stored in the capacitor 2 completely magnetic that is, stored in the inductor D. At what times is the total energy shared equally between the inductor and the capacitor E if the resistor is inserted in the circuit? How much energy is eventually dissipated as heat 7.13 A coil of inductance 0.50 HN resistance 100 Greek letter omega is connected to a 240 V, 50 Hz AC supply. A what is the maximum current in the coil B? What is the time lag between the voltage maximum and the current maximum 7.14? Obtain the answer so to be an exercise 7.13 if the circuit is connected to a high frequency supply 240 V. 10 kHz. Hence, explain the statement that at very high frequency, an inductor in a circuit nearly amounts to an open circuit. How does an inductor behave in a DC circuit after the steady state 7.15 A100 microth capacitor in series with a 40 Greek letter omega resistance is connected to a 110 V, 60 Hz supply? A what is the maximum current in the circuit B? What is the time lag between the current maximum and the voltage maximum 7.16? Obtain the answers to A and B in exercise 7.15 if the circuit is connected to a 110 V. 12 kHz supply hands, explain the statement that a capacitor is a conductor at very high frequencies. Compare this behavior with that of a capacitor in a DC circuit after the steady state 7.17 keeping the source frequency equal to the resonating frequency of the series LCR circuit. If the three elements, L, C and R are arranged in parallel, show that the total current in the parallel LCR circuit is minimum at this frequency. Obtain the current RMS value in each branch of the circuit for the elements and source specified in exercise 7.11 for this frequency. 7.18 A circuit containing a 80 mH inductor and a 60 microth capacitor in series is connected to a 230 V, 50 Hz supply. The resistance of the circuit is negligible. Obtain the current amplitude and RMS values. Be obtain the RMS values of potential drops across each element. See what is the average power transferred to the inductor D. What is the average power transferred to the capacitor? 
E. What is the total average power absorbed by the circuit? Average implies averaged over one cycle. 7.19 Suppose the circuit in exercise 7.18 has a resistance of 15 Greek letter omega. Obtain the average power transferred to each element of the circuit. And the total power absorbed. Physics 268 7.20 A series LCR circuit with L0.12 H, C480 and F, R23 Greek letter omega is connected to a 230 V variable frequency supply. A what is the source frequency for which current amplitude is maximum? Obtain this maximum value. B what is the source frequency for which average power absorbed by the circuit is maximum? Obtain the value of this maximum power. C for which frequencies of the source is the power transferred to the circuit have the power at resonant frequency. What is the current amplitude at these frequencies D? What is the Q factor of the given circuit 7.21? Obtain the resonant frequency and Q factor of a series LCR circuit with L3.0 H. C27 Micriff, and R7.4 Greek letter Omega. It is desired to improve the sharpness of the resonance of the circuit by reducing its full width at half maximum by a factor of 2. Suggest a suitable way 7.22 answer the following questions. A in any AC circuit, is the applied instantaneous voltage equal to the algebraic sum of the instantaneous voltages across the series elements of the circuit? Is the same true for RMS voltage B a capacitor is used in the primary circuit of an induction coil? C an applied voltage signal consists of a superposition of a DC voltage and an AC voltage of high frequency. The circuit consists of an inductor and a capacitor in series. Show that the DC signal will appear across C and the AC signal across L. DHO coil in series with the lamp is connected to a DC line. The lamp is seen to shine brightly. Insertion of an iron core in the choke causes no change in the lamp's brightness. Predict the corresponding observations if the connection is to an AC line. E. Why is choke coil needed in the use of fluorescent tubes with AC mains? Why can we not use an ordinary resistor instead of the choke coil? 7.23A power transmission line feeds input power at 2300 V to a step-down transformer with its primary windings having 4000 turns. What should be the number of turns in the secondary in order to get output power at 230 V 7.24 at a hydroelectric power plant? The water pressure head is at a height of 300 meters and the water flow available is 100 M3 S1. If the turbine generator efficiency is 60, estimate the electric power available from the plant G9.8 M S2. 7.25 A small town with a demand of 800 kilowatts of electric power at 220 V is situated 15 kilometers away from an electric plant generating power at 440 V. The resistance of the two-wire line carrying power is 0.5 Greek letter omega per kilometers. The town gets power from the line through a 4220 V step-down transformer at a substation in the town. I estimate the line power loss in the form of heat B. How much power must the plant supply? Assuming there is negligible power loss due to leakage C. Characterize the step-up transformer at the plant. 7.26 Do the same exercise as above with a replacement of the earlier transformer by a 40, 000, 220, V step-down transformer neglect, as before. Leakage losses though this may not be a good assumption any longer because of the very high voltage transmission involved. Hence, explain why high voltage transmission is preferred. Chapter 8 Electromagnetic Waves 8.1 Introduction In Chapter 4, we learned that an electric current produces magnetic field and the two current carrying wires exert a magnetic force on each other. Further, in Chapter 6, we have seen that a magnetic field changing with time gives rise to an electric field. Is the converse also true? Does an electric field changing with time give rise to a magnetic field? James Clerk Maxwell 1831-1879 Argue that this was indeed the case, not only an electric current but also a time-varying electric field generates magnetic field. While applying the Ampere's circuital law to find magnetic field at a point outside a capacitor connected to a time-varying current, Maxwell noticed an inconsistency in the Ampere's circuital law. He suggested the existence of an additional current, called by him, the displacement current to remove this inconsistency. Maxwell formulated a set of equations involving electric and magnetic fields, and their sources, the charge and current densities. These equations are known as Maxwell's equations. Together with the Lorentz force formula chapter 4, they mathematically express all the basic laws of electromagnetism. The most important prediction to emerge from Maxwell's equations is the existence of electromagnetic waves, which are a couple time varying electric and magnetic fields that propagate in space. The speed of the waves, according to these equations, turned out to be very close to Physics 270 The speed of light 3x 108 meters s, obtained from optical measurements, this led to the remarkable conclusion that light is an electromagnetic wave. 
Maxwell's work thus unified the domain of electricity, magnetism and light. Hertz, in 1885, experimentally demonstrated the existence of electromagnetic waves. Its technological use by Marconi and others led in due course to the revolution in communication that we are witnessing today. In this chapter, we first discuss the need for displacement current and its consequences, then we present a descriptive account of electromagnetic waves. The broad spectrum of electromagnetic waves, stretching from Greek letter gamma rays wavelength 10-12 meters to long radio waves wavelength 106 meters is described. How the electromagnetic waves are sent and received for communication is discussed in Chapter 15. 8.2 Displacement current we have seen in Chapter 4 that an electrical current produces a magnetic field around it. Maxwell showed that for logical consistency, a changing electric field must also produce a magnetic field. This effect is of great importance because it explains the existence of radio waves, gamma rays and visible light, as well as all other forms of electromagnetic waves. To see how a changing electric field gives rise to a magnetic field. Let us consider the process of charging of a capacitor and apply Ampere's circuital law given by Chapter 4 BDL Micro 0 ID 8.1 to find magnetic field at a point outside the capacitor. Figure 8.1 shows a parallel plate capacitor C which is a part of circuit through which a time-dependent current IT flows. Let us find the magnetic field at a point such as P, in a region outside the parallel plate capacitor. For this, we consider a plane circular loop of radius R whose plane is perpendicular to the direction of the current carrying wire, and which is centered symmetrically with respect to the wire fig. 8.1a, from symmetry. The magnetic field is directed along the circumference of the circular loop and is the same in magnitude at all points on the loop so that if B is the magnitude of the field, the left side of X. 8.1 is B2 Greek letter pi R, so we have B tour micro zero ID 8.2 James Clerk Maxwell 1831-1879, James Clerk Maxwell 1831-1879 born in Edinburgh, Scotland, was among the greatest physicists of the 19th century. He derived the thermal velocity distribution of molecules in a gas and was among the first to obtain reliable estimates of molecular parameters from measurable quantities like viscosity, etc. Maxwell's greatest achievement was the unification of the laws of electricity and magnetism discovered by Coulomb. Ersted, Ampere and Faraday into a consistent set of equations now called Maxwell's equations. From these he arrived at the most important conclusion that light is an electromagnetic wave. Interestingly, Maxwell did not agree with the idea strongly suggested by the Faraday's laws of electrolysis that electricity was particulate in nature. 271 electromagnetic waves now, consider a different surface, which has the same boundary, this is a part like surface fig. 8.1b which nowhere touches the current, but has its bottom between the capacitor plates, its mouth is the circular loop mentioned above. Another such surface is shaped like a tip and box without the lid figure 8.1c, on applying Ampere's circuital law to such surfaces with the same parameter, we find that the left hand side of X. 8.1 has not changed but the right hand side is zero and not micro zero i, since no current passes through the surface of fig. 8.1 b and c, so we have a contradiction, calculated one way, there is a magnetic field at a point p, calculated another way, the magnetic field at p is zero. Since the contradiction arises from our use of Ampere's circuital law, this law must be missing something. The missing term must be such that one gets the same magnetic field at point p, no matter what surface is used. We can actually guess the missing term by looking carefully at figure 8.1c. Is there anything passing through the surface S between the plates of the capacitor? Yes. Of course, the electric field. If the plates of the capacitor have an area A, and a total charge Q, the magnitude of the electric field E between the plates is QA Greek letter epsilon 0 C X. 2.41, the field is perpendicular to the surface S of figure 8.1c, it has the same magnitude over the area A of the capacitor plates, and vanishes outside it. So out is the electric flux Greek letter phi E through the surface S using Gauss's law. It is E001QQAAA Greek letter phi Greek letter epsilon Greek letter epsilon E8.3 Now if the charge Q on the capacitor plates changes with time, there is a current ID QDT, so that using ek. 8.3, we have DDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDD
b at the point p is non-zero no matter which surface is used for calculating it, b at a point p outside the plate's fig. 8.1a is the same as at a point m just inside, as it should be, the current carried by conductors due to flow of charges is called conduction current. The current, given by EC 8.4, is a new term, and is due to changing electric field or electric displacement, an old term still used sometimes. It is, therefore, called displacement current or Maxwell's displacement current. Figure 8.2 shows the electric and magnetic fields inside the parallel plate capacitor discussed above. The generalization made by Maxwell then is the following. The source of a magnetic field is not just the conduction electric current due to flowing figure 8.1a parallel plate capacitor C. As part of a circuit through which a time-dependent current IT flows, a loop of radius R. To determine magnetic field at a point P on the loop, be a part-shaped surface passing through the interior between the capacitor plates with the loop shown in as its rim, see a tiffin-shaped surface with a circular loop as its rim and a flat circular bottom S between the capacitor plates. The arrows show uniform electric field between the capacitor plates. Physics 272 charges, but also the time rate of change of electric field. More precisely, the total current I is the sum of the conduction current denoted by I, and the displacement current denoted by I Greek letter epsilon 0 d t. So we have 0 d d e c d c i i i t Greek letter phi Greek letter epsilon 8.5 in explicit terms, this means that outside the capacitor plates, we have only conduction current I I, and no displacement current, that is, I 0. On the other hand, inside the capacitor, there is no conduction current, that is, I 0, and there is only displacement current so that I die. The generalized and correct Ampere's circuital law has the same form as a gate point one, with one difference, the total current passing through any surface of which the closed loop is the perimeter is the sum of the conduction current and the displacement current. The generalized law is B lin D D D zero micro micro Greek letter epsilon zero zero I T C E Greek letter phi eight point six and is known as Ampere Maxwell law. In all respects, the displacement current has the same physical effects as the conduction current. In some cases, for example, Steady electric fields in a conducting wire, the displacement current may be zero since the electric field E does not change with time. In other cases, for example, the charging capacitor above, both conduction and displacement currents may be present in different regions of space. In most of the cases, they both may be present in the same region of space, as there exists no perfectly conducting or perfectly insulating medium. Most interestingly, there may be large regions of space where there is no conduction current, but there is only a displacement current due to time-varying electric fields. In such a region, we expect a magnetic field, though there is no conduction current source nearby. The prediction of such a displacement current can be verified experimentally. For example, a magnetic field say at point M between the plates of the capacitor in figure 8.2 it can be measured and is seen to be the same as that just outside at P. The displacement current has literally far-reaching consequences. One thing we immediately notice is that the laws of electricity and magnetism are now more symmetrical. Faraday's law of induction states that there is an induced EMF equal to the rate of change of magnetic flux. Now, since the EMF between two points 1 and 2 is the work done per unit charge and taking it from 1 to 2, the existence of an EMF implies the existence of an electric field. So, we can rephrase Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction by saying that a magnetic field, changing with time, gives rise to an electric field. Then, the fact that an electric field changing with time gives rise to a magnetic field, is the symmetrical counterpart. And is figure 8.2 of the electric and magnetic fields E and B between the capacitor plates, at the point M. B a cross-sectional view of figure, they are still not perfectly symmetrical, there are no known sources of magnetic field magnetic monopoles analogous to electric charges which are sources of electric field. 273 electromagnetic waves example 8.1 a consequence of the displacement current being a source of a magnetic field. Thus, time-dependent electric and magnetic fields give rise to each other. Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction and Ampere-Maxwell law give a quantitative expression of this statement. With the current being the total current, as in EC 8.5, one very important consequence of this symmetry is the existence of electromagnetic waves, which we discuss qualitatively in the next section. Maxwell's equations 1, E at Q Greek letter epsilon 0 and tilde Gauss's law for electricity 2, 0 B at and tilde Gauss's law for magnetism 3. D D or T E L D and tilde Faraday's law for D T 0 micro micro Greek letter epsilon 0 0 I T C E Greek letter phi B L D and tilde Ampere Maxwell law example 8.1 A parallel plate capacitor with circular plates of radius 1 meters has a capacitance of 1 nF at D 0. It is connected for charging in series with the resistor R1A across a 2V battery figure 
Calculate the magnetic field at a point P, halfway between the center and the periphery of the plates, after T10 3S. The charge on the capacitor at time T is QTCV1 EXPT Greek letter tau, where the time constant Greek letter tau is equal to CR figure 8.3 solution. The time constant of the CR circuit is Greek letter tau CR 10-3S. Then, we have QTCV1 EXPT Greek letter tau 2X 10-91 EXPT 10-3. The electric field in between the plates at time T is 0 0 QTQE A Greek letter epsilon Greek letter pi, A Greek letter pi 1 2 square meters area of the plates. Consider now a circular loop of radius 1 2 meters parallel to the plates passing through P. The magnetic field B at all points on the loop is 274 along the loop and of the same value. The flux at through this loop is the EX area of the loop EQXX Greek letter pi Greek letter pi 1 2 4 4 2 0 Greek letter epsilon a displacement current 0 D D E D T Greek letter phi Greek letter epsilon minus 61 D 0 dot 5 10 EXP minus 1 4 D Q T X at T 10 dash 3 S. Now, applying Ampere Maxwell law to the loop, we get the IIIC DDXX2120000 Greek letter pi micro micro 0.5x10-6 micro 0 exp minus 1 or B0.74 x 10 13 d 83 electromagnetic waves 8, 3, 1 sources of electromagnetic waves How are electromagnetic waves produced? Neither stationary charges nor charges in uniform motion steady currents can be sources of electromagnetic waves. The former produces only electrostatic fields, while the latter produces magnetic fields that, however, do not vary with time. It is an important result of Maxwell's theory that accelerated charges radiate electromagnetic waves. The proof of this basic result is beyond the scope of this book, but we can accept it on the basis of rough, qualitative reasoning. Consider a charge oscillating with some frequency. An oscillating charge is an example of accelerating charge. This produces an oscillating electric field in space which produces an oscillating magnetic field, which in turn, is a source of oscillating electric field, and so on. The oscillating electric and magnetic fields thus regenerate each other, so to speak, as the wave propagates through the space. The frequency of the electromagnetic wave naturally equals the frequency of oscillation of the charge. The energy associated with the propagating wave comes at the expense of the energy of the source, the accelerated charge. From the preceding discussion, it might appear easy to test the prediction that light is an electromagnetic wave. We might think that all we needed to do was to set up an AC circuit in which the current oscillated at the frequency of visible light, say, yellow light. But, Alice, that is not possible. The frequency of yellow light is about 6x1014 Hz, while the frequency that we get even with modern electronic circuits is hardly about 1011 Hz. This is why the experimental demonstration of electromagnetic wave had to come in the low frequency region the radio wave region, as in the Hertz's experiment 1887. Hertz's successful experimental test of Maxwell's theory created a sensation and sparked off other important works in this field. Two important achievements in this connection deserve mention, seven years after Hertz, Jagdish Chandra Bose. Working at Calcutta now Calcutta, example 8.1. 275 electromagnetic waves succeeded in producing and observing electromagnetic waves of much shorter wavelength 25 mm to 5 mm. His experiment, like that of Hertz's, was confined to the laboratory. At around the same time, Guglielmo Marconi in Italy followed Hertz's work and succeeded in transmitting electromagnetic waves over distances of many kilometers. Marconi's experiment marks the beginning of the field of communication using electromagnetic waves. 8. 3. 2. Nature of electromagnetic waves It can be shown from Maxwell's equations that electric and magnetic fields in an electromagnetic wave are perpendicular to each other. And to the direction of propagation, it appears reasonable, save from our discussion of the displacement current. Consider figure 8.2. The electric field inside the plates of the capacitor is directed perpendicular to the plates. The magnetic field this gives rise to via the displacement current is along the perimeter of a circle parallel to the capacitor plates. So B and D are perpendicular in this case, this is a general feature. In figure 8.4, we show a typical example of a plane electromagnetic wave propagating along the z-direction. The fields are shown as a function of the z-coordinate, at a given time t. The electric field x is along the x-axis, and varies sinusoidally with z, at a given time. The magnetic field y is along the y-axis, and again varies sinusoidally with z. The electric and magnetic fields x and y are perpendicular to each other, and to the direction z of propagation. 
we can write x and by as follows. x e 0 sin k z 8.7 of i b 0 sin k z 8.7 b here k is related to the wavelength Greek letter lambda of the wave by the usual equation 2 k Greek letter lambda Greek letter pi 8.8 .8 and Greek letter omega is the angular frequency. K is the magnitude of the wave vector or propagation vector K and its direction describes the direction of propagation of the wave. The speed of propagation of the wave is Greek letter omega K. Using EQS 8.7 and B for X and by and Maxwell's equations, one finds that Heinrich Rudolf Hertz 1857-1894 German physicist who was the first to broadcast and receive radio waves. He produced electromagnetic waves, sent them through space, and measured their wavelength and speed. He showed that the nature of their vibration, reflection and refraction was the same as that of light and heat waves, establishing their identity for the first time. He also pioneered research on discharge of electricity through gases, and discovered the photoelectric effect. Heinrich Rudolf Hertz 1857-1894, figure 8.4 A linearly polarized electromagnetic wave, propagating in the Z direction with the oscillating electric field E along the X direction and the oscillating magnetic field B along the Y direction. Physics 276 Greek letter Omega CK, where, C100 micro Greek letter Epsilon 8.9 of the relation Greek letter Omega CK is the standard one for wave C for example, section 15.4 of class Psi physics textbook. This relation is often written in terms of frequency, Greek letter New Greek letter Omega 2 Greek letter Pi and wavelength. Greek letter lambda 2 Greek letter pi k is 2 2 Greek letter pi Greek letter new Greek letter lambda c Greek letter pi r Greek letter new Greek letter lambda c 8.9 b It is also seen from Maxwell's equations that the magnitude of the electric and the magnetic fields in an electromagnetic wave are related as b0 e0 c 8.10 We here make remarks on some features of electromagnetic waves. They are self-sustaining oscillations of electric and magnetic fields in free space, or vacuum. They differ from all the other waves we have studied so far, in respect that no material medium is involved in the vibrations of the electric and magnetic fields. Sound waves in air are longitudinal waves of compression and rarefaction. Transverse elastic sound waves can also propagate in a solid, which is rigid and that resists shear. Scientists in the 19th century were so much used to this mechanical picture that they thought that there must be some medium pervading all space and all matter which responds to electric and magnetic fields just as any elastic medium does. They called this medium ether. They were so convinced of the reality of this medium that there is even a novel called The Poison Belt by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the creator of the famous detective Sherlock Holmes, where the solar system is supposed to pass through a poisonous region of ether. We now accept that no such physical medium is needed. The famous experiment of Michelson and Morley in 1887 demolished conclusively the hypothesis of ether. Electric and magnetic fields, oscillating in space and time, can sustain each other in vacuum, but what if a material medium is actually there we know that light, an electromagnetic wave, does propagate through glass, for example. We have seen earlier that the total electric and magnetic fields inside a medium are described in terms of the permittivity Greek letter epsilon and a magnetic permeability micro these describe the factors by which the total fields differ from the external fields. These replace Greek letter epsilon zero and micro zero in the description to electric and magnetic fields in Maxwell's equations with the result that in a material medium of permittivity Greek letter epsilon and magnetic permeability micro. The velocity of light becomes 1 volt micro 8.11 thus, the velocity of light depends on electric and magnetic properties of the medium. We shall see in the next chapter that the refractive index of one medium with respect to the other is equal to the ratio of velocities of light in the two media. The velocity of electromagnetic waves in free space or vacuum is an important fundamental constant. It has been shown by experiments on electromagnetic waves of different wavelengths that this velocity is the simulate propagation of electromagnetic waves i www.amanagoa.com waves.html to http www.fis.huaai.edu tab javant nujava m wave m wave html. 277 electromagnetic waves same independent of wavelength to within a few meters per second, out of a value of 3x 108 meters s. The constancy of the velocity of M-waves in vacuum is so strongly supported by experiments and the actual value is so well known now that this is used to define a standard of length. Namely, the meter is now defined as the distance traveled by light in vacuum in a time 1 c seconds 2.9979245 8x 108 minus 1 seconds. This has come about for the following reason. The basic unit of time can be defined very accurately in terms of some atomic frequency, that is, frequency of light emitted by an atom in a particular process. 
The basic unit of length is harder to define as accurately in a direct way. Earlier measurement of C using earlier units of length meter rods, etc. converged to a value of about 2.9979246x108 meters s. Since C is such a strongly fixed number, unit of length can be defined in terms of C and the unit of time. Hertz not only showed the existence of electromagnetic waves, but also demonstrated that the waves, which had wavelength 10 million times that of the light waves, could be diffracted, refracted and polarized. Thus, he conclusively established the wave nature of the radiation. Further, he produced stationary electromagnetic waves and determined their wavelength by measuring the distance between two successive nodes. Since the frequency of the wave was known being equal to the frequency of the oscillator, he obtained the speed of the wave using the formula V Greek letter nu Greek letter lambda and found that the waves traveled with the same speed as the speed of light. The fact that electromagnetic waves are polarized can be easily seen in the response of a portable AM radio to a broadcasting station. If an AM radio has a telescopic antenna, it responds to the electric part of the signal. When the antenna is turned horizontal, the signal will be greatly diminished. Some portable radios have horizontal antenna usually inside the case of radio, which are sensitive to the magnetic component of the electromagnetic wave. Such a radio must remain horizontal in order to receive the signal. In such cases, response also depends on the orientation of the radio with respect to the station. Do electromagnetic waves carry energy and momentum like other waves? Yes, they do. We have seen in chapter 2 that in a region of free space with electric field E, there is an energy density Greek letter epsilon 0 E22. Similarly, as seen in chapter 6, associated with the magnetic field B is a magnetic energy density B22 micro zero. As electromagnetic wave contains both electric and magnetic fields, there is a non-zero energy density associated with it. Now consider a plane perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the electromagnetic wave fig. 8.4. If there are, on this plane, electric charges, they will be set and sustained in motion by the electric and magnetic fields of the electromagnetic wave. The charges thus acquire energy and momentum from the waves. This just illustrates the fact that an electromagnetic wave like other waves carries energy and momentum. Since it carries momentum, an electromagnetic wave also exerts pressure, called radiation pressure. If the total energy transferred to a surface in time t is u, it can be shown that the magnitude of the total momentum delivered to the surface for complete absorption is UPC 8.12 Physics 278 Example 8.3 Example 8.2 When the sun shines on your hand, you feel the energy being absorbed from the electromagnetic waves your hands get warm. Electromagnetic waves also transfer momentum to your hand but because C is very large, the amount of momentum transferred is extremely small and you do not feel the pressure. In 1903, the American scientist Nichols and Hull succeeded in measuring radiation pressure of visible light in verified EC. 8.12, it was found to be of the order of 7x10-6 nm2, thus, on a surface of area 10 square centimeters, the force due to radiation is only about 7x10-9 n. The great technological importance of electromagnetic waves stems from their capability to carry energy from one place to another. The radio and TV signals from broadcasting stations carry energy. Light carries energy from the sun to the earth, thus making life possible on the earth. Example 8.2 A plane electromagnetic wave of frequency 25 MHz travels in free space along the X direction. At a particular point in space and time, E6.3 joules Vm what is B at this point solution using EC. 8.10. The magnitude of B is minus 886.3 Vm 2.110 T3 10 meters SEBCXX to find the direction. We know that E is along Y direction and the wave propagates along X axis. Therefore, B should be in a direction perpendicular to both X and Y axes. Using vector algebra, EXB should be along X direction. Since, JXKI, B is along the Z direction, thus, B 2.1 X 10-8 KT example 8.3 The magnetic field in a plane electromagnetic wave is given by by 2 X 10-7 T sin 0.5 X 103 X 1.5 X 1011 T. Oh what is the wavelength and frequency of the wave B write an expression for the electric field. Solution of comparing the given equation with by B 0 sin 2 Greek letter pi Greek letter lambda X T T we get. 320.510 Greek letter pi Greek letter lambda XM 1.26 centimeters and 111.1.510223.9 GHz T Greek letter nu X Greek letter pi B 0 B 0 C 2 X 10-7 T X 3 X 108 meters S 6 X 101 VM The electric field component is perpendicular to the direction of propagation and the direction of magnetic field. 
Therefore, the electric field component along the z-axis is obtained as S60 sin 0.5 x 103 x 1.5 x 1011 TBM. 279 electromagnetic waves example 8.4 example 8.4 light with an energy flux of 18 WCM2 falls on a non-reflecting surface at normal incidence. If the surface has an area of 20 square centimeters, find the average force exerted on the surface during a 30-minute time span. Solution The total energy falling on the surface is U18WCM2 x 20 square centimeters x 30 x 66.48 x 105 J. Therefore, the total momentum delivered for complete absorption is P586.4810J310 meters SUCX x 2.16 x 10-3 kgms. The average force exerted on the surface is F3642.1610210.1810 PTXXX. How will your result be modified? If the surface is a perfect reflector example 8.5 calculate the electric and magnetic fields produced by the radiation coming from a 100 watt bulb at a distance of 3 meters. Assume that the efficiency of the bulb is 2.5 and it is a point source. Solution The bulb, as a point source, radiates light in all directions uniformly. At a distance of 3 meters. The surface area of the surrounding sphere is 2 2 24 4 3 113 mar Greek letter pi The intensity I at this distance is 2 100 W 2.5 power area 113 meters I x 0.022 WM2 Half of this intensity is provided by the electric field and half by the magnetic field. 2021221020022 WM2 RMS and 1280.022 VM8.851310 RMS XX2.9 VM The value of E found above is the root mean square value of the electric field. Since the electric field in a light beam is sinusoidal, the peak electric field, E0 is E0 RMS2 2.9 VM X4.07 VM Thus, you see that the electric field strength of the light that you use for reading is fairly large. Compare it with electric field strength of TV or FM waves, which is of the order of a few microvolts per meter. Example 8.5 280 Example 8.5 Now, let us calculate the strength of the magnetic field. It is 1812.9 VM310 meters SRMS RMS EBCX 9.6 X 10-9T again. Since the field in the light beam is sinusoidal, the peak magnetic field is B02BRMS 1.4X 10 8 Note that although the energy in the magnetic field is equal to the energy in the electric field, the magnetic field strength is evidently very weak. 8.4 electromagnetic spectrum at the time Maxwell predicted the existence of electromagnetic waves. The only familiar electromagnetic waves were the visible light waves. The existence of ultraviolet and infrared waves was barely established. By the end of the 19th century, X-rays and gamma rays had also been discovered. We now know that, electromagnetic waves include visible light waves, X-rays, gamma rays, radio waves, microwaves, ultraviolet and infrared waves. The classification of them waves according to frequency is the electromagnetic spectrum figure 8.5. There is no sharp division between one kind of wave and the next. The classification is based roughly on how the waves are produced and or detected. Figure 8.5 The electromagnetic spectrum, with common names for various part of it, the various regions do not have sharply defined boundaries. Electromagnetic spectrum www.fnal.gov pub inquiring more light http imagine.gsfc.nasa.gov.docscience 281 Electromagnetic Waves We briefly described these different types of electromagnetic waves, in order of decreasing wavelengths. 8, 4, 1 Radio Waves Radio waves are produced by the accelerated motion of charges in conducting wires. They are used in radio and television communication systems, they are generally in the frequency range from 500 kHz to about 1000 MHz. The AM amplitude modulated band is from 530 kHz to 1710 kHz. Higher frequencies up to 54 MHz are used for short wave bands. TV waves range from 54 MHz to 890 MHz. The FM frequency modulated radio band extends from 88 MHz to 108 MHz. Cellular phones use radio waves to transmit voice communication in the ultra-high frequency UHF band. How these waves are transmitted and received is described in Chapter 15, 8, 4, 2 Microwaves Microwaves Short Wavelength Radio Waves, with frequencies in the gigahertz gigahertz range, are produced by special vacuum tubes called klystrons, magnetrons and gun diodes. Due to their short wavelengths, they are suitable for the radar systems used in aircraft navigation. Radar also provides the basis for the speed guns used to time fast balls, tennis serves, and automobiles. 
Microwave ovens are an interesting domestic application of these waves. In such ovens, the frequency of the microwaves is selected to match the resonant frequency of water molecules so that energy from the waves is transferred efficiently to the kinetic energy of the molecules. This raises the temperature of any food containing water. Microwave oven The spectrum of electromagnetic radiation contains a part known as microwaves. These waves have frequency and energy smaller than visible light and wavelength larger than it. What is the principle of a microwave oven and how does it work? Our objective is to cook food or warm it up. All food items such as fruit, vegetables, meat, cereals, etc. contain water as a constituent. Now, what does it mean when we say that a certain object has become warmer when the temperature of a body rises? The energy of the random motion of atoms and molecules increases and the molecules travel or vibrate or rotate with higher energies. The frequency of rotation of water molecules is about 2.45 GHz GHz. If water receives microwaves of this frequency, its molecules absorb this radiation, which is equivalent to heating up water. These molecules share this energy with neighboring food molecules, heating up the food. One should use porcelain vessels and not metal containers in a microwave oven because of the danger of getting a shock from accumulated electric charges. Metals may also melt from heating. The porcelain container remains unaffected and cool, because its large molecules vibrate and rotate with much smaller frequencies, and thus cannot absorb microwaves. Hence, they do not get heated up. Thus, the basic principle of a microwave oven is to generate microwave radiation of appropriate frequency in the working space of the oven where we keep food. This way energy is not wasted in heating up the vessel. In the conventional heating method, the vessel on the burner gets heated first, and then the food inside gets heated because of transfer of energy from the vessel. In the microwave oven, on the other hand, energy is directly delivered to water molecules which is shared by the entire food. Physics 282.8, 4, 3 Infrared waves Infrared waves are produced by hot bodies and molecules. This band lies adjacent to the low frequency or long wavelength end of the visible spectrum. Infrared waves are sometimes referred to as heat waves. This is because water molecules present in most materials readily absorb infrared waves. Many other molecules, for example, CO2, NH3, also absorb infrared waves. After absorption, their thermal motion increases, that is, they heat up and heat their surroundings. Infrared lamps are used in physical therapy. Infrared radiation also plays an important role in maintaining the Earth's warmth or average temperature through the greenhouse effect. Incoming visible light which passes relatively easily through the atmosphere is absorbed by the Earth's surface and we radiate it as infrared longer wavelength radiations. This radiation is trapped by greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide and water vapor. Infrared detectors are used in Earth's satellites, both for military purposes and to observe growth of crops. Electronic devices for example semiconductor light emitting diodes also emit infrared and are widely used in the remotes which is of household electronic systems such as TV sets. Video recorders and hi-fi systems 8, 4, 4 visible rays it is the most familiar form of electromagnetic waves. It is the part of the spectrum that is detected by the human eye. It runs from about 4x 1014 Hz to about 7x 1014 Hz or a wavelength range of about 700-400 nm. Visible light emitted or reflected from objects around us provides us information about the world. Our eyes are sensitive to this range of wavelengths. Different animals are sensitive to different range of wavelengths. For example, snakes can detect infrared waves, and the visible range of many insects extends well into the atraviolet. 8, 4, 5 ultraviolet rays it covers wavelengths ranging from about 4x 10-7 meters 400 nm down to 6x 10-10 nm 0.6 nm. Ultraviolet UV radiation is produced by special lamps and very hot bodies. The sun is an important source of ultraviolet light. But fortunately, most of it is absorbed in the ozone layer in the atmosphere at an altitude of about 40-50 kilometers. UV light in large quantities has harmful effects on humans. Exposure to UV radiation induces the production of more melanin, causing tanning of the skin. UV radiation is absorbed by ordinary glass. Hence, one cannot get tanned or sunburned through glass windows. Welders wear special glass goggles or face masks with glass windows to protect their eyes from large amount of UV produced by welding arcs. Due to its shorter wavelengths, UV radiations can be focused into very narrow beams for high-precision applications such as LASIK laser-assisted in situ keratomalusis eye surgery. UV lamps are used to kill germs in water purifiers. Ozone layer in the atmosphere plays a protective role, and hence its depletion by chlorofluorocarbon CFCs gas such as Freon is a matter of international concern. 283 Electromagnetic Waves 8, 4 Six X-rays beyond the UV region of the electromagnetic spectrum lies the X-ray region. 
We are familiar with X-ray because of its medical applications. It covers wavelengths from about 10-8 meters 10 nm down to 10-13 meters 10-4 nm. One common way to generate X-rays is to bombard a metal target by high-energy electrons. X-rays are used as a diagnostic tool in medicine and as a treatment for certain forms of cancer. Because X-rays damage or destroy living tissues and organisms, care must be taken to avoid unnecessary or overexposure. 8, 4, 7 gamma rays They lie in the upper frequency range of the electromagnetic spectrum and have wavelengths of from about 10-10 am to less than 10-14 am. This high-frequency radiation is produced in nuclear reactions and also emitted by radioactive nuclei. They are used in medicine to destroy cancer cells. Table 8.1 summarizes different types of electromagnetic waves, their production and detections. As mentioned earlier, the demarcation between different regions is not sharp and there are overlaps. Table 8.1 Different types of electromagnetic waves type wavelength range production detection radio, 0.1 meters rapid acceleration and receivers aerials decelerations of electrons in aerials microwave 0.1 meters to 1 millimeter klystron valve or point contact, diodes magnetron valve infrared 1 millimeter to 700 nm vibration of atoms thermopiles and molecules bolometer. Infrared photographic film light 700 nm to 400 nm electrons in atoms emit the eye light when they move from photocells 1 energy level to a photographic film lower energy level ultraviolet 400 nm to 1 nanometers inner shell electrons in photocells atoms moving from 1 photographic film energy level to a lower level x-rays 1 nanometers to 10-3 nm x-ray tubes or inner shell photographic film electrons Geiger tubes ionization chamber gamma rays 10-3 nm radioactive decay above do nucleus. 284 Summary 1. Maxwell found an inconsistency in the Ampere's law and suggested the existence of an additional current, called displacement current, to remove this inconsistency. This displacement current is due to time-varying electric field and is given by 0 d ddit Greek letter phi Greek letter epsilon Greek letter epsilon and acts as a source of magnetic field in exactly the same way as conduction current. 2. An accelerating charge produces electromagnetic waves, an electric charge oscillating harmonically with frequency Greek letter nu produces electromagnetic waves of the same frequency Greek letter nu. An electric dipole is a basic source of electromagnetic waves. 3. Electromagnetic waves with wavelength of the order of a few meters were first produced and detected in the laboratory by Hertz in 1887. He thus verified a basic prediction of Maxwell's equations for electric and magnetic fields oscillate sinusoidally in space and time in an electromagnetic wave. The oscillating electric and magnetic fields, E and B are perpendicular to each other, and to the direction of propagation of the electromagnetic wave. For a wave of frequency Greek letter nu, wavelength Greek letter lambda, propagating along Z direction. We have the XTE0 sin KC Greek letter omega TE0 sin 220 Greek letter pi Greek letter pi ZTE Z teeth Greek letter nu Greek letter lambda sin B by TB0 sin KC Greek letter omega TB Z TB Z T T 0 0 2 2 sin sin Greek letter pi Greek letter lambda Greek letter nu Greek letter lambda. They are related by E0 B0 C. 5. The speed C of electromagnetic wave in vacuum is related to micro zero and Greek letter epsilon zero. The free space permeability and permittivity constants as follows. 0, 0, 001 C micro Greek letter epsilon. The value of C equals the speed of light obtained from optical measurements. Light is an electromagnetic wave. C is, therefore, also the speed of light. Electromagnetic waves other than light also have the same velocity C in free space. The speed of light, or of electromagnetic waves in a material medium is given by 1 volt micro Greek letter epsilon where micro is the permeability of the medium and Greek letter epsilon its permittivity. 6. Electromagnetic waves carry energy as they travel through space and this energy is shared equally by the electric and magnetic fields. Electromagnetic waves transport momentum as well. When these waves strike a surface, a pressure is exerted on the surface. If total energy transferred to a surface in time t is u, total momentum delivered to the surface is puc. 7. The spectrum of electromagnetic waves stretches, in principle, over an infinite range of wavelengths. Different regions are known by different. 285 electromagnetic waves names, Greek letter gamma rays, X-rays, ultraviolet rays, visible rays, infrared rays, microwaves and radio waves in order of increasing wavelength from 10-2A ring or 10-12 meters to 106 meters. They interact with matter via their electric and magnetic fields which sit in oscillation charges present in all matter. The detailed interaction and so the mechanism of absorption, scattering, etc., depend on the wavelength of the electromagnetic wave, and the nature of the atoms and molecules in the medium. Points to ponder 1. The basic difference between various types of electromagnetic waves lies in their wavelengths or frequencies since all of them travel through vacuum with the same speed. 
Consequently, the waves differ considerably in their mode of interaction with matter too. Accelerated charged particles radiate electromagnetic waves. The wavelength of the electromagnetic wave is often correlated with the characteristic size of the system that radiates. Thus, gamma radiation, having wavelength of 10-14 meters to 10-15 meters, typically originate from an atomic nucleus. X-rays are emitted from heavy atoms. Radio waves are produced by accelerating electrons in a circuit. A transmitting antenna can most efficiently radiate waves having a wavelength of about the same size as the antenna. Visible radiation emitted by atoms is, however, much longer in wavelength than atomic size 3. The oscillating fields of an electromagnetic wave can accelerate charges and can produce oscillating currents. Therefore, an apparatus designed to detect electromagnetic waves is based on this fact. Hertz original receiver worked in exactly this way. The same basic principle is utilized in practically all modern receiving devices. High-frequency electromagnetic waves are detected by other means based on the physical effects they produce on interacting with matter. 4. Infrared waves, with frequencies lower than those of visible light, vibrate not only the electrons, but entire atoms or molecules of a substance. This vibration increases the internal energy and consequently, the temperature of the substance. This is why infrared waves are often called heat waves. 5. The center of sensitivity of our eyes coincides with the center of the wavelength distribution of the sun. It is because humans have evolved with visions most sensitive to the strongest wavelengths from the sun. Exercises 8.1 figure 8.6 shows a capacitor made of two circular plates each of radius 12 cm, and separated by 5.0 cm. The capacitor is being charged by an external source not shown in the figure. The charging current is constant and equal to 0.15 A. A calculate the capacitance and the rate of change of potential difference between the plates. Physics 286b Obtain the displacement current across the plate C is Kirchhoff's first rule junction rule valid at each plate of the capacitor explain. Figure 8.68.2A Parallel plate capacitor Figure 8.7 made of circular plates each of radius R 6.0 cm has a capacitance C 100 pf. The capacitor is connected to a 230 VAC supply with angular frequency of 300 red S1 What is the RMS value of the conduction current? B is the conduction current equal to the displacement current C. Determine the amplitude of B at a point 3.0 cm from the axis between the plates. Figure 8.78.3 Watt physical quantity is the same for X-rays of wavelength 10-10 meters, red light of wavelength 6800 A ring and radio waves of wavelength 500 meters 8.4 A plane electromagnetic wave travels in vacuum along Z direction. What can you say about the directions of its electric and magnetic field vectors if the frequency of the wave is 30 MHz? What is its wavelength 8.5 A radio can tune into any station in the 7.5 MHz to 12 MHz band? What is the corresponding wavelength band 8.6 A charged particle oscillates about its mean equilibrium position with a frequency of 109 Hz? What is the frequency of the electromagnetic waves produced by the oscillator 8.7 The amplitude of the magnetic field part of a harmonic electromagnetic wave in vacuum is B0510 nt. What is the amplitude of the electric field part of the wave? 8.8 Suppose that the electric field amplitude of an electromagnetic wave is E0 120 nc and that its frequency is Greek letter nu 50.0 MHz. A determine, B0, Greek letter omega, K, and Greek letter lambda B find expressions for E and B 8.9 The terminology of different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum is given in the text. Use the formula E for energy of a quantum of radiation, photon and obtain the photon energy and units of F for different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. In what way are the different scales of photon energies that you obtain related to the sources of electromagnetic radiation 8.10 in a plane electromagnetic wave? The electric field oscillates sinusoidally at a frequency of 2.0 x 1010 Hz and amplitude 48 VM1. 287 electromagnetic waves of what is the wavelength of the wave B what is the amplitude of the oscillating magnetic field C show that the average energy density of the E field equals the average energy density of the B field. C3x 108 meters S1, additional exercises 8.11 Suppose that the electric field part of an electromagnetic wave in vacuum is E3.1 NC cos 1.8 rad MY 5.4 X 106 rad STI. A what is the direction of propagation B what is the wavelength Greek letter lambda C what is the frequency Greek letter nu D what is the amplitude of the magnetic field part of the wave you write an expression for the magnetic field part of the wave. 8.12 About 5 of the power of a 100 W light bulb is converted to visible radiation. What is the average intensity of visible radiation at a distance of 1 meter from the bulb B at a distance of 10 meters? Assume that the radiation is emitted isotropically and neglects reflection. 
8.13 use the formula T0.29 cm K to obtain the characteristic temperature ranges for different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. What do the numbers that you obtain tell you? 8.14 given below are some famous numbers associated with electromagnetic radiations in different contexts in physics. State the part of the electromagnetic spectrum to which each belongs a 21 cm wavelength emitted by atomic hydrogen in interstellar space. The 1057 MHz frequency of radiation arising from two close energy levels in hydrogen, known as lamp shift. C 2.7 K temperature associated with the isotropic radiation filling all space thought to be a relic of the Big Bang origin of the universe. D 5890 A ring 5896 A ring double lines of sodium E 14.4 K of energy of a particular transition in 57 Fe nucleus associated with a famous high resolution spectroscopic method MUSPAR spectroscopy. 8.15 Answer the following questions. A long-distance radio broadcast use short wave bands. Why be it is necessary to use satellites for long-distance TV transmission? Why see optical and radio telescopes are built on the ground but X-ray astronomy is possible only from satellites orbiting the Earth? Why d the small ozone layer on top of the stratosphere is crucial for human survival? Why e if the Earth did not have an atmosphere? Would its average surface temperature be higher or lower than what it is now? F. Some scientists have predicted that a global nuclear war on the Earth would be followed by a severe nuclear winter with a devastating effect on life on Earth. What might be the basis of this prediction? 